morning and welcome to beautiful downtown Norwalk, Connecticut for the May edition of NHRL. This is our third qualifying event of the season and we are already off and running. We have had some incredible fights starting at 9 a.m. This is the start of the mainstream. Now we've seen uh, probably what, 30, 40 fights already? At least. Yeah fighting in all eight cages simultaneously. We've seen some great fights in the threes, in the twelves, and the thirties. Now, Chris, you got a chance to walk around the pits last night, and we already saw some incredible fights. Let's take a look here at some of that footage from uh, earlier in the morning. Now, one of the big things uh, that we're running here today is uh, fights all across, uh, all, of, uh, all across eight of cage, <laughs> eight of these cages on the Brett Zone. So go to NHRL.io to check in on uh, these fights as they happen throughout the day. It's very exciting, and uh, it really gives you a close, you know, uh, bird's eye view of each one of these fights. Yeah, the choose your own adventure style is a lot of fun. The Brett Zone is a, is a great concept, and you know, you get to follow the bots that you really want to see, even when there's just so many fights all happening at the same time. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the tournament format here today and uh, the way the brackets are working. We are going to, as we typically do, take the top four qualifiers from each weight class. We're going to have four, uh, four robots from the threes, four from the twelves, four from the thirties that will be invited to the finals in November. Now, if you happen to win first place in your division, you are going to go home with $1,000 cash and a golden dumpster. This is the prize that everyone seeks. And we have more than, uh, we have 160 Beetleweights upstairs. We have more than 200 robots in the field. Uh, we're gonna be checking out every single fight on the 12s and the 30s. And uh, we're going to catch the top 16 uh, fights uh, once, once we go to the top 16 in the Beatles. Now, um, we, uh, we're, we're gonna go and check out a good view of the pits. Here we see uh, those 200 plus teams up there from all over the country and all across the planet. We've got builders here from the UK, builders from Brazil, and builders from across North America. They are all desperately hoping to stay alive in our single elimination bracket. Now, uh, we see a lot of college teams up there today. We've got some large, large college teams that bring six or more robots. We've got some good high schoolers as well yeah. that, uh, that are going to be competing here today. We see uh, Team AGVS there in the uh, yellow and black jerseys. And uh, they've flown up from Brazil uh, with robots in all three weight classes. Now, come coming from so far away it's like it's it's a it's a make or break moment for a team like AGVS there's not too many opportunities where they can fly all the way to the USA to qualify for the finals so I expect some really aggressive driving out of them today now very exciting we're going to start with a big box fight here in cage four now I see standing cage side we've got Brandon Zelinski uh, captain of P1 on BattleBots uh, captain of Star Child on BattleBots, and uh, he is bringing Axis of Evil here. This is a modified version of Star Child. He is trying to work out some of the bugs that he, uh, he saw pop up in that design at the heavyweight scale. Now, uh, Star Child, his uh, little three pounder here at NHRL, has performed great. Um, but, you know, as you scale up, the physics change in your robot. And, uh, you know, he is going to be working through some of these physics problems in the NHRL qualifying season to uh, learn a bit more about this design. The, the 12 and 30 pound weight class is such a great place to workshop new ideas that may be more applicable to scale up to that 250 pound class. Uh, so this is where you see a lot of builders kind of doing some of those early iteration prototypes uh, to scale up later down the road. Now, Axis of Evil is kind of interesting. It looks like those big wheels are slightly smaller this time around. So uh, maybe he's getting better physics because he has to throw a shorter arm just kind of interesting. We see the, those kind of spokes, the, the nubs that are coming off of that wheel, uh, give it probably a little bit more climbing power uh, mm. to, to make its way up and over other bots 
uh, rather than just being kind of a smooth rim, that might provide a little bit better traction across this uh, plywood floor. I uh, also see what's new are the stabilizing uh, little uh, feet at the, uh, the end of, of the robot. We can also see uh, Ripperoni Captain uh, Anna Zolnikov there. She's going to be running her own robot, Little Rip, a little bit later here today. Uh, both Brandon and Anna are part of Team Omega, which is not a cult. It's not a cult. It's not a frat. It's not a fraternity. <laughs> uh, Team Omega has uh, done great on BattleBots this season. Ripperoni just really capturing the hearts and imagination of fans everywhere. And um, yeah, Brandon Zielinski working out uh, some of the bugs that, uh, some of the weaknesses, I would say, in, uh, in, in that Star Child design. But first, we're going to go and check in with uh, Cage 5 here. Is this a hole saw, Chris? I think it's a, it's a brush. It's a brush? Wow! Amazing. Oh. I love these weird robots. Please feed me as many weird robots as you can today. Oh, they bring I love me it. So this, much delight. You know what's really interesting about this bot, Luke? Uh, nine out of ten dentists recommend it. <laughs> good. Very good. Yeah, this uh, this strange brush robot. I don't think I've ever seen a front-facing brush before on a robot, Chris. No, no, absolutely not. I, um, I kind of love it. Like, as a concept, I could absolutely run this robot. You know, like, I, I, I could see, it, like, this, this, is, this is like my, uh, my spirit animal here, Chris. I don't know if this was their plan A. I think it might have been their plan Oral B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. It does look like uh, both the brush and the undercutter on its opponents, uh, they're both down here. Now that is like a like a steel wire grinding brush. Um, actually, kind of a clever concept to take into uh, into a fight because all of those wire bristles might stand a chance of snagging a belt, uh, of gumming up a, a vertical or a horizontal. That was like one of those uh, not technically an entanglement device kind of things. It's not an entanglement device. Yeah. <laughs> it is intentional. Yeah. Do see that belt there though? Just to the left. All right, it sounds like that was a knockout. Got a good high five there, cage side. All right, triumphant builders there in white. And the builder of the brush bot, kind of wondering uh, what happened. Peanut hamper. <laughs> Come back in six months for your uh, routine cleaning, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I think one of the nice things about a brush bot is, you know, your opponent is cleaner uh, on their way out of the box than uh, when they were loading in. Yeah, if you if you see there on the opposite side is Nemesis, uh, who is now just sparkling clean. <laughs> right. Now this is a good uh, cage side view. Uh, this is one of our corner cameras. We can see the loadout here. And we also uh, see the back of one of our house bots. Interesting factoid, yeah. if you're able to turn the bot off with that large dial, yeah. you earn a, a hefty prize. I think that that's maybe the, the whole point of the, uh, the brush. All right, now cage four, now the robots have moved to their respective corners. I'm really interested in seeing the performance of this Star Child variant, Axis of Evil, in the, the blue corner. Brandon Zielinski is desperate for better performance on his design. We see a good shot here of Team Honeycracked. All right, these bots look like they are locked and loaded. All right, now Swagmore here in the pink corner is a conventional egg beater spinner. And we're off. Big hit here. Now Brandon Zielinski uh, is really desperate to land hits on top of this egg beater. Now a big wheeled robot is typically favored to, uh, to win against a verse. This is the design, uh, you know, 
of, of a bot that really took these more compact bots into consideration. These, these style big wheel bots are, are built to go against these kind of dense bricks with a dangerous weapon in the front. Now, Brandon Zielinski would love, like, that his holy grail would be if he could snipe the belt here on this egg beater uh, spinner of Swagmore. But uh, as you can tell, there's a little cover over uh, over the belt to protect the belt uh, here from Brandon's robot. And uh, looks like the weapon on Axis Bert of might Evil be down. is down. Swagmore, though, is running great. Now with the weapon down, it's considerably uh, easier to win this fight, to go after these wheels, eat into the UHMW, perhaps break these tiny little legs here, these stabilizing legs. Now this is a round one qualifier fight. Both of these robots are hoping uh, to win here, to uh, win a higher seed in our uh, championship bracket. But uh, oh, look at that, Axis of Evil, it's come back. Miraculously, Chris. Oh! Now, it is a lot easier said than done to eat into those UHMW wheels. They are, uh, they are large, they are flimsy, they are flexible. So it's really hard to kind of dig your teeth in. Oh, wow, look at that lockup. Wow, are these robots stuck together? Brandon continues to run his weapon. Oh, it looks like one of those legs literally is uh, behind the weapon. Wow. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, the house bot ran straight into Brandon's weapon. That is a gentle unstick from one of our house bots. And we are back into it. An interesting choice by Brandon to continue to run his weapon instead of turning it off. And oh look wow, at that. The we're back. back. But the drive is impaired. Those wheels are not moving. It looks like this may be a win for Swagmore. Weapon running, drive is not running. Looks like Swagmore could be winning a knockout here. You hear the count out in the background from our ref. Swagmore run by Cody Graham, Team Honeycracks. See Brandon Zelinski and Anna Zolnikov. Cody getting a good hug here from his wife Zoe Lambert. All right, and Flo, the house bot, pushing the mini bot to the door. Now, I'm going to say I was really impressed by the weapon reliability on Axis of Evil. It ran great until it uh, had that huge impact with the house box. You know, hindsight, of course, is always 2020. Tough to uh, tough to guess that, you know, the house bot was going to come violently crashing into your, uh, <laughs> your working weapon, which is rotten luck. But um, desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Yeah. Interesting that uh, one of those those arms looked like it got stuck into uh, into the weapon on Swagmore. Having a, having your weapon like that locked up, uh, you know, with such powerful motors driving an egg beater like that, can actually cause a lot of chaos inside of your bot. You know, you're 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 actively trying to fire that weapon, but you're locked up. You could end up burning out some of your key electric uh, components. I see some uh, some movement happening over here in cage one. Now, this is going to be a 30-pound fight. Let's see Kitchen Grill loading in. Very exciting. The winner of that last fight was Swagmore. Axis of Evil losing their first fight here in their NHRL debut. Doesn't look like there's, you know, uh, to the naked eye, too many repairs that might need to be done upstairs. It's um, still all in one piece. Yeah. 
Looks like they can uh, reuse those wheels. That's pretty good. And they are sweeping out cage four. Let's check in here with cage six. Oh, what an interesting looking robot indeed here to the left. Looks like a uh, very tall, tall robot. And they've got that capture uh, piece of plastic here. Really hoping to capture their opponents and then uh, attack them, I suppose, with this, uh, this vert. Interesting, here in the pink corner. Wow. What an unusually shaped robot. I love seeing a robot that I've never seen before, especially geometry that I've never seen before. All right, uh, and I love on seeing over here a bot. to cage one. We've got the start of this kitchen grill. Oh yeah, let's get over to cage one. Bottom fight. We're gonna see a huge impact here. One, here we go. Kitchen grill is this absolutely menacing. Kitchen grill here is this big black vert facing off against rock bottom. This, uh, this poor silver robot, his weapon is already dead. Kitchen grill is a robot here from the UK. Kitchen Grill run by Jack Kelly from Newmarket, England, team Lean Mean. And uh, it is a lean, mean machine indeed, Chris. That is just a terrifying looking bot. Oh my goodness. Huge defensive wedge configuration with just a devastating vert behind it. Chris, if you're gonna fly here from the UK, you better you better come here to win, you know? That is, uh, and, and look at this, it looks like Rock Bottom has uh, appropriately hit Rock Bottom. This is a Team Nurk robot. You can see Jack Kelly giving us a, a good wave here to the camera, winning his first fight of the day. That has got to give you a ton of confidence going into the bracket. With his friend JP there, our first uh, Irish Irish uh, competitor. All right, we're going to segue over here to uh, cage seven. Team Blood Sports. Yeah, it is absolutely thrilling uh, winning your first match ever at NHRL. Pretty cool. Good round of applause there from the audience. Now, this is, if this is your first time tuning into NHRL, uh, uh, or you were here last time, we just expanded out into that area, adding new cages so we can run even more fights. Now we can see this very unusually shaped robot, this really uh, kind of forward facing, very forward heavy robot with an interesting armor package on the back. Facing off against a uh, also very unusual robot. I love that. Now our very tall vert is now on its head. I love a bot that has tape on it. 
Is near, it, near and dear to my heart. The geometry of these two robots is so interesting. This kind of short squat robot here to the left is, um, it's, it's very, it's, it's interesting. Like it's, it's got this vert, but it's hidden inside of the body. It kind of bumps along uh, because its wheels are mounted at the center of the robot. It's like a weaponized geometry home. I, uh, I don't think I've ever seen robots that are shaped like this before, Chris. You got a nice pin wow. here. Good pin here from the birds. It's a very interesting armor package that it has on the back. It looks just like a strap of UHMW. Yeah. Kind of bent into the arch, acts as a bumper. And uh, as we saw, you know, a uh, really good kind of self-writing. Uh, when it was on its head, it kind of oh, rolled no. around on that. Uh, this brick is upside down, and I don't think it's intended to run that way. No, that is its Achilles heel. I heard someone say Cage said, we need help. Yes, we need help. I love these robots. These are so great. Oh, wow, I think we got a little life out of the very, oh no, but our house bot has managed to remove a wheel. Wow. Oh no. Uh, nobody said that, you know, unsticks don't come with a price attached to it. Yeah, there's always a risk that comes with an unstick. is the end of this fight. Two really cool shaped robots. I, I love that. I love a homegrown robot. You know, I love something that you can clearly see was cut apart using power tools and put together. Interesting geometries on both of these robots. And uh, standing room only uh, next to these beetle cages, really getting you up close and personal with the action getting you very close to these builders. You can hear all of the conversations, you know, here if you're in the audience. It is a very, very cool experience indeed uh, to be here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Here we are just after 11 a.m. The stands have begun to fill up. It looks like it is, uh, we got quite a crowd that's building out there. Short Stack is a uh, Drexel Robotics offering. It is a top cutter with a very unconventional weapon that uh, is spinning so fast you can't see it in this particular frame, right? But hey, it's moving. It's it's kind of hitting. It's like a very dangerous bunt pan. <laughs> exactly. This team was very proud of this offering. Drexel Robotics is uh, relatively new to NHRL. I believe this is their like their only their second event. Trying some unconventional stuff, some new things. And it looks like they might actually be winning this fight by knockout. How exciting is that? That is pretty cool. Oh, wow. It looks like their weapon is gone. The weapon bar is over there in the corner, actually. Yes. Oh, boy. 
Oh, well, they were still moving and the opponent wasn't. That's where you want to be at the end of pretty much any combat robotics fight. I had a close look at Vanguard uh, last night up in the pits. It is a really beautiful bot. Here we see the crowd here in Norwalk today. Lots of people, families, great place to come, food trucks, games, prizes. Yeah. A and whole bot museum? Just y your kind of people, you know? Y robot people are the best kind of people. Come on by and say hi. So welcome, Kyle. It's so good to be here. What have you seen this morning that you liked? What have I seen this morning that I liked? Let's see. Uh, I saw Joe Fabiani. Oh, wow. Um, he's hanging out. He's got inside job. He's got Smeezus. This is the fourth time I've talked to Joe Fabiani, and he said that this is the last time he's ever bringing Smeezus. So we'll see if this is actually the last time he's ever bringing Smeezus. Um, excited to see that bot fight today. Uh, inside job, completely redone. Um, looks phenomenal. It's actually a brushless crusher. That's so cool. Right? It, inside Job is one of the more terrifying bots to watch because it's just like that slow, menacing, and the, no matter what, he always seems to find the right place to drop that thing. Yes. And you don't really see that out of uh, those kind of um, uh, stabby claw bots, those, those crushers. Like, it's just so hard to like, get the right kind of control and corral to drop that thing where you need to, but he finds it. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I think is the coolest about uh, the, that bot today is how much he has no problem running that beak right into any spinner weapon. Like, he, he just has complete faith in its construction and fabrication. Um, or he just doesn't care, right? I mean, either way, with Joe, it's kind of hard to tell, honestly. Um, but we're excited to have him here, and uh, that whole side of the pits is great. I mean, you saw um, the, the entirety of the Omega team there. Uh, I really enjoy what they're doing with the, with the with Axis of Evil. Axis of Evil. Such a cool-looking bot. We just saw it fight now. Um, they had to add wood screws to it this morning to make sure that it actually got some traction on the floor, so they, they drilled in five wood screws to make sure it could poke into the floor. So it's a very dangerous bot on every aspect now. You can cut yourself literally all over it. <laughs> Sounds like my bots. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, it's got some similar vibes for sure. Um, so... Um, has your, uh, your, your bracket predictions evolved uh, at all this morning, having seen so many fights? You know, we've been going uh, pretty much nonstop since 9 a.m. Yep. Have you seen any bots that really surprised you? Uh, I gotta admit, I have not actually watched fights this morning. I have just been in the pits talking to people, taking notes, having conversations. I've heard a little bit about what's going on, but I have not actually followed up on the entirety of the, the fights this morning. So uh, I'm here, I'll catch up. But at this point, I've just been talking to some really neat folks in the pits, um, seeing the improvements on bots like Harold, on bots like um, uh, Timber looks phenomenal today. I don't know if you've seen it yet. I haven't seen Timber yet, no. Timber has ablative glitter armor. Oh, fabulous. Uh, they, in fact, call one of their armor packages the glitter booty. Very excited about that. When that gets hit, it's gonna be explosive and awesome. Uh, literal glitter confetti everywhere, can't wait. Um, so I've been having uh, cool conversations with them. There's a whole team here from Puerto Rico today. Oh, cool. Very cool. Their bot is called Arsenal. It looks phenomenal. Awesome. Um, I can't wait to see them. All right, so speaking of cool bots, let's go to cage six. So what do we have here? Wow, so slow moving. So this is Bullhog and Naga. Naga, you see, that is there with the blue uh, kind of armor package around it. Mm -hmm. Wow, nice hit there from Naga, taking it back. Bullhog, Bullhog's got a very slow, methodical uh, uh, tempo to the way that it rolls around. Now it's upside down. Naga is being driven by our friend Christine Giver. She's with the Outside the Box podcast and YouTube channel. She uh, is so excited to be here. She brought her daughter today. Um, daughter has a mini bot that she's actually going to be driving a little bit later on that Tom Farkas big, uh, built for her. This is Christine's first ever 
robot competition. First time driving a bot. She said that this whole experience has been surreal for her. Uh, one of the things that I also noticed while I was talking to her in the pits this morning, she's completely themed out. She's wearing outside the box tights. Uh, are those available online? I think that they are going to be available for purchase <laughs> online. Yes, has the, the podcast logo on them and everything. I was like, are you wearing tights that match your, your podcast? She was like, of course I am. Oh, I know what I want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that, a pin into the corner there. Great control and aggression that we're seeing. And I think we're gonna pivot to cage one, where we have some uh, some other bots kind of loaded up, ready to go. Oh, I see a familiar bot. All right, so it looks like we have Brockus going up against Lil Rip. Brockus is a grabber bot from Brandon Bennett Young, known for control and durability, but look at how those grabbers are bent off to the side. The weapon on Little Rip is vicious. Nice pick and slam from Brandon Bennett Young. Beautiful Still, work. It's, they're, they're askew, but they are functional. Trying to get them back into position so he can do another grab after that beautiful suplex. It looks like he's got him most of the way down. There we go, he's all the way into position now. Perhaps waiting for some sort of a count out or, or assistance from the ref. Do you like the uh, the self writing assisting uh, circle on the back of Little Rip? They've added that in. It's actually zip tied on. Oh, brilliant! It's allegedly there to help them self write. It's oh, not there helping we go. right now. Oh. Right now, they need a little fluffy help. Oh boy. Brandon trying to pick a gentle spot to pick this bot up so he doesn't wreck himself. Operated by team captain Anna Zoldikov today. Not very common for that team. Normally they have their dedicated driver, Fred Moore, but he's unable to attend this event, so Anna is out there doing it all by herself. Captaining the, the team, driving the bot, doing it all. Nice hit there. That is not looking great for Fracas. Fracas is immobile up against the door. Will Brandon Bennett Young be able to get this thing up and moving? It looks pretty dead. Oh, boy. Not a great place to be. Yikes. Tom Farkas, Revenge of Mouse Mouse. Not only is it an undercutter, but I think the intended primary weapon is that flacking, uh, what's the name of that again? Flail. Flail. He calls it a flail bot. Uh, technically, flail bots are not allowed in NHRL. No. You have to have a primary weapon. So they decided to add the undercutter in. Uh, so now it is a double weapon bot with, and that flail, by the way, it looks silly, but that's an actual hard piece of steel. I uh, was holding that in the pits last night and that has a sizable heft to it. <laughs> I would not want to be flacked or flailed with uh, anything that resembled that. Um, but it, it, you know, it looks like the undercutter is still operational. So that's not just a weapon in name only. It's, it's going. And I would say Ma uh, Revenge of Mouse Mouse is really holding its own here. It looks great. And it looks very angry. Do you see those eyebrows? 
Yeah, I I do see the eyebrows. I also see the uh, very dangerous looking googly eye armor on the front. <laughs> uh, currently, Revenge of Mouse Mouse not moving. Oh, weapon is down. Looks like the drive is down. We're getting a count out. That's not good. Espresso Shot is your winner. And this is the team from Drexel. That is right, Drexel University, Dragon Robotics. They have brought a lot of cool offerings today. I think my battery died. Oh, sounds like uh, Tom said his battery died. Oh, that's unfortunate. I know that he wanted to conserve that battery by going light on the undercutter, um, but it looks like, you know, by keeping that weapon powered up the entire fight, he did sacrifice some of that battery powder and uh, we that might have been uh, the cause of his troubles there. And revenge might have to be saved for another another match. Yeah, no revenge this time. No revenge this time. What a cool looking bot though. I mean, this is like the mini bot you were driving for him, but like on so many little mouse mouse steroids. It looks great. It looks so good. Uh, it looks even better scaled up. It looks <laughs> angrier. It looks beefier. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, what he can do in uh, coming up matches because if he can get the balance between, you know, weapon and battery figured out, yeah. I think he could have a shot. It's still a tanky 3D printed bot, but... I appreciate Tom Farkas's journey in yes. robot building over the past... He's only been doing this, what, like a year and a half, two years? Like it's, A he's year tops, been, yeah. He's barely been doing this. He starts with a competitive non-spinner bot in first drink of the day. Extremely effective for a first bot. Does great with it. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to go sillier. And now he's kind of going back the other way. He's keeping the silly, but it's actually it's deadly. <laughs> All right, let's check out what's going on in cage four. So we have Buzzkill and Blue Cheese. Blue Cheese has been doing some massive damage today. It's an overpowered, ridiculous uh, drum spinner bot. It seems like Blue Cheese has it figured out where it can now dish out big hits and not completely disassemble itself. They have broken their weapon already once today, but ah. but in doing so, they uh, they actually knocked the weapon shaft completely out of Demigorgon. Yes, yeah, so, Demigorgon looked like a pile of pieces at the end of that match. Yes, Dem Brandon Bennett Young was like, I'm so proud of myself, I brought two Demigorgons today and they're both ready to go and now he's down mm -hmm. to one. Yeah. There's no recovering the other one, it's, it's dead. Look at that stance. He's ready. Blue cheese, you can see them down in the blue corner. They are just vicious. And they're going, ooh, ooh going up against ooh. Buzz Kill from Team Honeycracks. Blue cheese packs a punch. And I think it might need an unstick over there for Buzzkill. Doesn't look like Buzzkill's doing much of the moving. Now, nope, there we go. We got the, uh, the unstick from our friend Fluffy. I believe, Kyle, that is Flo. Oh, I apologize. That's <laughs> interesting. What's She'll Flo forgive doing? you. What's Flo doing in that cage today? I don't know. I think it said Flo. Oh. Whoa! Oh, and the weapon is off of blue cheese! Yes, that is a, that's a sentence we've said before at this competition. <laughs> And it looks like the weapon is now in two pieces. The weapon is in pieces. I might take back what I said about Blue Cheese not disassembling itself yeah, that, upon impact. That, I believe there is there are two chunks. Yeah, there's the other one up in the corner there. That's. It's still driving. It's still very mobile. Uh, or did I just jinx it again? I think you did. We got to stop saying these things. You are <laughs> ruining this bot's chances today. All right, nobody is going to want me to commentate on their fights. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we're getting a count out here. Team Honeycracked has a number of bots. Uh, all, I would say, captained by Zoe Lambert, who is a mentor to a ton of students in the field of robotics, and they just seem to be bringing more and more bots every time. And it really, uh, it, it held its own against Blue Cheese, and it came out victorious. And blue Cheese is, um, they're trying really hard not to be a glass cannon, but it <laughs> is a glass cannon. 
Uh, the thing hits yeah. ridiculously well, but we're getting two hits out of it in a, yeah. in a shot now instead of just the one. Now, I wonder what was different between the first fight and the second fight because it was able to hold itself together. All right, so here we are at cage seven. What, oh, we're already missing a wheel. <laughs> that's not a good sign. One. I hear counting. Knockout. All right, so that's a knockout. We just showed up at this knockout. Now it's still in its corner. Do you think the wheels fell off? Before it actually drove? That's quite possible. That's a cool little shell spinner. Here we are in cage five. So this is Caldera and Nitro Hornet. Looks like this match is about to get started. Caldera from Glenn Boxel. Nitro Hornet by Dylan McCarthy. Both of these bots, this is a classic NHRL fight, right? Both of these bots have been here dozens and dozens of times. You could have seen this match back in 2019, <laughs> almost. <laughs> it's like, they, these guys have been going at it for a while. I mean, I remember seeing them back when we were just spectators. Yeah. You know, back at uh, 50 Day Street. It's really incredible to see how far they've come. Caldara, one of the most vicious horizontal spinners in the competition. Nitro Hornet, just a reliable spinner. Reliable egg beater spinner just does great work. Consistent. Up, yeah, consistent. For years. Good driving, hard hits. Big squishy wheels, everything you want. I do love big squishy wheels. <laughs> 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 Looks like a gnarly weapon on Caldera. Both these bots up to speed relatively quickly. Caldera trying to get themselves just a little bit of room. Ooh. And boom! Oh, Minibot getting some work in. <laughs> we got a little hat. All right, big shout out to all of our fran fans watching from Brazil. Hello, guys. How are you? We're getting a huge Brazilian following for this event. We've got a whole bunch of uh, drivers and captains and teammates from Brazil. And uh, yeah, I've seen the YouTube chat. They are completely dominating <laughs> the conversation in there. They have a ton of enthusiasm. That's awesome. Wow, so Nitro Hornet doing a great job keeping control of this match here Ooh. at the middle section. That does not mean they're going to win, though. At any moment, Caldera can literally rip the batteries out of a bot with these hits. It's yeah. just such a vicious machine, and Glenn is a great driver. Oh, did I just hear a tap out? I do believe that's exactly what we have happening. Dylan has tapped out. Oh. I wonder what happened. Don't know, Dylan looks pretty disappointed. He's giving the thumbs up over to Glenn though, saying congratulations. Taking it in stride. Taking it in stride. Like I said, Dylan was dominating that fight. He was controlling the pace, he was controlling the direction. Everything was happening with his corrals and his really excellent driving. But then, man, Glenn gets a, a shot in. You don't know where it hit. It could have hit on one of the wheels, could have hit on uh, maybe the back plate. Somewhere Dylan said, no thank you, I don't want to do that repair. <laughs> and, yeah. and we're going to tap out. But see, that's why you have to keep fighting uh, and you have to keep going because even if it looks like maybe you're not getting the better of the exchanges the first few times, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You have to keep going and just hope that at the end of the day, you know, you can either break their face with your fist or maybe they have their own issue that comes, um, you know, into play that uh, you can kind of capitalize on. Glenn very pleased with his performance. Yeah, now Caldera are just a mainstay here. Yeah, I mean, it always does incredibly well. Glenn's becoming a better driver at every single event. You just see the, the instincts kicking in now where he's not even really thinking about how to drive. He's just doing what he needs to do. And you just gotta love the dynamic and relationship between Glenn and his son, Brian Boxel. 
uh, is there a better activity for a father and son or, or really any family to do together? I absolutely love the fact that they are a father-son team and that uh, Glenn is really kind of Brian's assistant in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> but Brian works very hard to keep these bots up and running. He will tell you, Caldera is probably the best bot in their fleet right now as far as like reliability, hard hits. Um, yep. You know, it's a cool, it's a cool machine. All right, so we are now going over to cage one. Oh, is this Arsenal? I believe this is Arsenal. This is very exciting. So Arsenal is the first bot we have had in this competition from Puerto Rico. Um, I know that they compete a lot in their, you know, home country. They're, they have a lot of experience, but this is, you know, their first time here competing at NHRL. Very excited to see how they do. And this is Voodoo 2. A very Witch Doctor-esque disc spinner. Hence the name, hence the name. What happened to Voodoo 1? Uh, it, it got replaced <laughs> by Voodoo 2. There might have been some dark magic at play. I don't know. Maybe the Voodoo 1 is at home being driven to help control Voodoo 2. Ooh. I I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't know how mystical arts uh, <laughs> translate to robots. It's best that we don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's not necessary. It does look very imposing. All black. Big weapon way out front. No forks, just that big plate. Sometimes there's no need to play the ground game when you just trust in your weapon and you trust in that front armor plate and you want to just smash. Well, yeah, no, no reason for uh, for the forky forks when you're going up against a horizontal with the, with the power of Arsenal either. Arsenal's got two basic we weapon profiles, one for cutting and slashing, one for slamming. It looks like they've got the kind of slamming weapon profile facing forward for this one. Now that looks like a relatively, I would say, short weapon bar. Yeah, a relatively short weapon bar, yep. So these guys are here from Puerto Rico. This is their first big event, they said, since the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah, so this is like four years in the making, this fight for them. Good for them. Good for them for sticking with it and, you know, not letting the pandemic kind of let it go by the wayside. We're so excited to have them here today. I was talking with them in the pits while they were waiting uh, to pass safety, and they were just so excited. This is Team Rumblebots. And team captain, and I believe driver of this bot is Ricardo Carrion. Oh, we're right into the wall. That's okay. Oh, looks. No, there we go. We got some weapon motion coming from Arsenal. And Voodoo 2 might be stuck in the plywood. Yeah, not looking great. That might require an early unstick. But I, I don't see the wheels moving or really much. Uh... No, there we go. There we go. All right, can it knock itself into the wall to unstick? Yes, it can. Right side up again. Let's go. Whoa! Voot Woo, Brandon McGinn. Voodoo 2, Voot Woo. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, and now we have Arsenal stuck on the, on the side rail. Yeah, not good. They do get one unstick. This is both of Fluffy's unsticks are happening all at once now. Now, I imagine this should be able to drive inverted. Yeah, it looks like the wheels touch the ground on both sides. Yeah. Nice pin there from Voot Woo. Voot Woo. Now both bots have used their unstick, so if one gets un, uh, stuck again, that is going to be a problem for them. And we're heading into the halfway mark of this fight. Oh, weapon almost back up to speed on Arsenal. Still no weapon coming from Voot Woo, but showing control, pin right up in there. Nice to see, you know, it looks like the drive is still working. You know what? I'm not going to jinx it. Don't do it. Just don't <laughs> say it. It looks like something's working maybe on the bot. It looks like there are two bots in the box. <laughs> and that is it. <laughs> that would not be a very interesting uh, commentation, so I'm going to have to do a little more than that. 
All right, so it does look like the right side drivetrain on Arsenal is out, but they are able to get that weapon up to speed, which is exactly what I want to hear. Listen to that hum. There it goes. Yes. There it goes. So even with their drive side issues, they might be able to pull out a knockout win in the last minute of this fight. Let's find out. And they're certainly looking more mobile right now than Voot Woo. Yeah, Voot Woo not moving at all. Are they dead? They could be dead. Could the University of Cincinnati team be out of luck? I'm hearing a count out. Beautiful wow. work from the team of Arsenal. Oh, I see the Puerto Rican flag being waved on the side of the box. They have earned that win. That is very exciting after years of waiting. Yeah, so cool to have a team here from Puerto Rico. Congrats. That was awesome. Nice work. Brandon McKinn did a great job controlling a lot of the pace of that fight. Unfortunately, Bot died there at the end. Yes. University of Cincinnati will live on in this competition. We'll see them back. I hear a lot of noise coming out of cage four. Okay, wow. so this is Thumb War and Sombra 30. Sombra 30 is a brand new bot from a Team AGVS. Which is very exciting, but I have to say, Thumb War looks a lot like a garbage disposal. Thumb War is a scaled down version of Bloodsport from Team Bloodsport, uh -huh. actually. And this is a new test bed for their 250 pound bot. Sombra, I mean. Sombra is um, being driven by Tamaki. Now this is from Team AGBS. They are from Brazil and winners of the 2022 McCord Award. If you were watching Havoc Hour last night, you see that they were yeah. awarded with that in the pits. And now they are out to dominate and prove themselves another year. Thumb Wars weapon seems to not be firing up at all. This is something that plagued the first version of this bot. And unfortunately, it looks like maybe some of the same issues translated. This one, nice hit there from Sombra 30. I love the self-writing sticks, by the way. Uh, they, they do look like a garbage disposal. It's vicious. It's just another reminder not to stick your hand <laughs> In. into it. <laughs> nice hit. Oh! oh without that weapon spinning anyway, but right. that is not good. Damage being shown, and now it looks like Thumbwar might be completely out of commission. Woo! Wow! Nice work for the Zombra 30 team. Tamaki showing his amazing driving skills. Tomas, the designer of the bot, captain of the team, giving him a big hug there. Now nice job, Tamaki, nice job. Amazing to see that scaled up to the 30 pound weight class. And they are here, it's all for nothing, all or nothing for them today because they said this is likely their only chance to qualify. Yeah, they don't, these are busy people. They have robot competitions back home. They have uh, championships to win back home. They came here to qualify and leave. Yes, and that is what they are here for. Nice job, Tamaki. Tamaki is driving this bot for this event. He might be passing the sticks off if they do qualify for the championship event. Uh, but he is proving his worth there on the sticks. Tamaki, you might recognize from Wasabi, normally drives that in the three-pound division. Now, it looks like Nick Bu Buckholtz was driving for... Oh, yeah, Nick Buckholtz is the captain of uh, Thumb War. Thumb War. Also a member Seth. of Team Bloodsworth. There you see Seth, yep, with his kit bot. Which looks relatively unscathed. He was, uh, yeah, he was kind of out of it. He was out of, out of a lot of the danger zones. So that was all right. So a little bit of work to do on Thumb War. But the team from Bloodsport, they are so experienced, and there are so many of them. Just yeah. the sheer number of, of teammates. I mean, they are going to be able to get that back into the pits and, and likely figure out what's going on. And like you said, this is a test bot for their scaled up version of Bloodsport. Yep. So, you know, they are here to kind of test it, break it, figure out its weaknesses, figure out its strengths, because that is all gonna inform the decisions that they make for their 250 pound version. 
One of the things that's really cool about Nick is um, very often he's a cage manager here, he's a referee here, he's very involved he in is. NHRL and a lot of the you know safety meetings and discussions that we have here. Um, so it's cool to see him take a little time, a bit of time off from that yeah. and actually come here as a competitor yeah. and show off what his bot can do. I hope that they get those mobility issues and those yeah. weapon issues figured out because I know that plagued the last version of this bot, yeah. so I want to see that thing firing up and doing well. And when that is at full health and full speed, I mean, is there a scarier bot? No, no, it's vicious machine. Yeah. Absolutely vicious machine. That being said, speaking of vicious machines, Tam uh, so Tamaki drove beautifully yes. with Sombra 30. Absolutely amazing. It was so cool when I went there to their pit table last night and you could see one pound. Yes. Three pound, <laughs> 12 pound, 30 pound, literally just like, like you grabbed them in a CAD and just expanded them and scaled <laughs> them up. Like just beautiful work. Um, that tri bar spinner is so vicious and uh, with Tamaki behind the sticks, I mean, very, very cool bot. I very hope cool. that they qualified today. It was really remarkable seeing them all lined up because it looked like a little bot family. Yeah. You know, you got the, the parent Sombras, little kid Sombra, <laughs> the baby Sombra. Uh, I, I am all for teams scaling up all of their, um, you know, their designs yeah. and, and having it amongst different weight classes. Uh, but man, just, just so many bots outside of the Sombras with Team AGVS. Yeah, they brought a full suite yeah. with them today. Very excited to see how that goes. I particularly am very excited to see Twin Beast back in the yes. competition. Is there a more, it's just so innovative and effective. Yeah. I think a lot of times, you know, when you want to bring innovation to a bot, you, there's a lot of teething issues that you have to work out. There's a lot of, you know, unknowns because you're likely doing something that hasn't really been tried before. Yep. But I don't know, you know, what the process was because this bot has been fighting a lot in Brazil. Yeah. So it's not like he just came here to NHRL to try it for the first time. This has been through several iterations. And it'd be really interesting to hear, you know, what it took to get it to this dominant force that it has become today. Absolutely. And as reliable as that bot is, Wagner's driving is impeccable. I mean, he's just amazing. Yeah. Like he does not make mistakes. You no. you have to be perfect if you want to just compete with him in a match. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to see how he does in the three pound division today. Yeah. I'm fully expecting him to be in the round of 16 and oh, deeper. Yeah. Um, I mean, most dramatic final we've ever had was definitely Twin Beast versus Eruption. Ended the entire event in a huge explosion, <laughs> filling the entire box with smoke. Um, I mean, you can't, you could not script a better no. ending to an event. No, I mean, yeah, that is definitely one for the ages. If you have not seen it, go back and watch it. It's incredible. And even if you have seen it, go watch it again. It's on our YouTube page. Yeah. Because it's, it's a classic. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of uh, Brian Boxel, very excited to see him today. Waddles is going yes. to be competing today. Uh, we do have Eruption back, and I am very excited about that. Yep. He's such a great driver, such a great competitor. It is always good to have him here. And he's so intense. Yeah. He's like, he's so into it. He's so committed. Um, and I think that work really pays off because yeah. we've seen just such incredible performances from him over, over the years. Yeah, I think he's got a really great chance of uh, qualifying with Waddles today. I think it's going to be pretty easy for him, quite yeah. frankly. All right. All right. So now we have two of my very favorite three-pound bots. This is Crash Fest and Newbert. 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 Oh, gosh. All right. So <laughs> Crash Fest is, it holds the distinction of being the only three-pound bot to go home with a golden dumpster that is not a kinetic energy weapon spinner. It can be done. It can be done. You just have to have an incredibly reliable machine and a very good driver in Robert Rund. Um, now, Robert was the winner of the May event in 2022. That's correct. So he is hoping he can have some repeat success. And uh, I was talking with him in the pits yesterday, and he said, you know, if I win this event as well, they're just going to cancel next May because I'm, they're just, they know I'm going to win. Newbert is uh, captain by Cole Wilson. He's from Avon, Connecticut. He's, uh, he's with Delta Robotics. He's 13 years old. An eighth grader at middle school. And he is a perennial competitor here at NHRL. You see him here almost at every event. Um, and I feel like he gets a little bit better every time. And, you know, I got to say, everybody loves Newbert. Yeah. It's just a very likable bot with a very confident driver. 
And a cute name. It is a cute name. Now, uh, Robert is no stranger to fighting bots like these uh, beater bars. That's exactly what Crash Fest is designed to do, those yes. giant forks out front, meant to take the impact of these weapons and hopefully break them. Oh, okay, so we're gonna head over to cage one, where it looks like we have loaded in Maximizer. Maximizer and, and Cthulhu, which is, these are two teammates fighting each other, I believe. All right, don't go easy on each other. <laughs> so Jake Hoffman. Now, is there a more excitable builder than Jake Hoffman? No, there is absolutely nobody that is more intense than Jake Hoffman. I literally walked up to the desk yesterday and Jake Hoffman was smashing their robot with a mallet, <laughs> trying to get the weapon shaft back into place. And uh, Jake looks up and goes, oh, it's up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cthulhu, you can see that beautiful LED panel on the back. I just love it. It's gorgeous. Provides no armor integrity, but it is very cool to look at. So Cthulhu is being operated by Corey Coakley from the University of Cincinnati BattleBots Club. Oh, teammate look. versus teammate here. Look at, yeah. oh, nice hit right there on the wedge of Maximizer. It looks like Maximizer, it's taking a little time for it to get the hang of its drive, but it looks like we're getting there. Lots of changes, small tweaks and changes to Maximizer, Jake was telling me. Nothing major, but bigger armor packages protecting the weapon system, different arm options to, uh, to attach the weapon to. It's a and little it, bit more optimized for vertical spinning weapons. It looks like the whatever changes they've made to their armor package have worked out because it's been taking licks from Kukubu this whole time, and it's still going. I don't nice. even really pin see a lot of damage. There. You can see the, the strategy with Maximizer is to pin with that wedge in the back and then do a quick pivot like that, which adds kinetic energy to that horizontal weapon. Look at that. Wow. Whoa. Cthulhu is looking way worse for the wear after this barrage of shots from Maximizer. Jake doing a beautiful job driving this robot. Yeah, Maximizer is really now coming to its own and is working exactly the way that I think it's intended, although the weapon may be down on Maximizer. Nice part about a bot like Maximizer, it does have multiple options for offense and yes. control. If it can't use its weapon, that's okay. It can just keep headbutting you. Wedging you and thwacking you. I mean, absolutely, yeah. Nice, smashing them into the corner there. Cthulhu is, oh, able to get themselves out, but there's definitely some mobility issues going on with Cthulhu, and now they're pinned up against the corner. They should still have an unstick left. Yes, although I don't see those wheels moving, so I'm not sure. Yeah, are they saving the battery or are they right. dead? Hard to tell, you know, they got trapped up on the wall at the same time. Oh, we got the weapon working, but are they driving? with about 15 seconds left in this match. Might be too late to count them out, but that's not how you want to go to the judges at the end of a match. No, it's not. Oh, they All do right. have a little they bit of drive. Bit. Yes, they do have some drive on that one wheel. Oh, and then Max uh, Maximizer coming in and smashing that weapon up against the wall. Wow, so both bots, I mean, are showing signs of damage. Maximizer lost its weapon. Cthulhu did lose that wheel and had some other issues plaguing it by the end of that match. So damage looks... Almost even, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, the Maximizer team definitely still mobile, still doing what they were doing, but uh, that weapon was dead. Yeah, and when it comes to control and aggression, I think you have to award that to Maximizer, yeah. but we'll see what the judges have to say because they lasted all three minutes. That was such a cool fight. The, they were telling me last night they were really looking forward to this match against each other. Um, and I'm glad it worked out as well as it did. Both bots looked great. They went the full three minutes, big hits. Now they're just showing functionality. They're showing that the bots, uh, what's working on the bots and what isn't to, to show to the judges. And at the end of the day, their teammates, it's all love. Oh yeah, it's all absolutely. Love. You gotta love the aesthetics of this team too. Jake looks like uh, they walked right out of the 90s with those <laughs> <Yeah>. pants. <laughs> 
love it. The 90s are coming back. They are, yeah. I mean, Jake wasn't even alive then, but, you know. Oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me that, Kyle. <laughs> I mean, it looks like both bots are going to be able to go to the pits and hopefully repair pretty quickly. I don't see a ton of necessarily structural damage, but hello, audience. Hey, everybody. All right, so we do have a unanimous judge's decision for Maximizer. Congratulations, Jake and team. Congrats. Well done. Well earned. That's what Jake was telling me. Small improvements, little changes, nothing big. The bot worked, yep. generally worked. Yep. We're just trying to improve these small things, these small tweaks, um, and worked out beautifully for the team. Nice job. And that is really the benefit of being able to compete every six weeks or which is essentially how often these events run. Yep. Uh, so if you're able to make it, you can make those incremental changes, test them out, and uh, you know, really, really see your progress over time. If you're only fighting once a year, it's hard. Yeah. It's at least harder to really um, make those small changes and judge their effectiveness over time. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest things that you see from this event changing the sport. The 12 pound division has just grown dramatically yeah. here. You know, we used to have like one competitive 12 pound bot yeah. and now the entire field is deadly. It's scary. <laughs> it's super it scary. scary. Um, and one of the things that, uh, you know, you see people like Jake working on with their bot, at their last event, that entire weapon module got ripped out twice. Yes. Um, so Jake spent some time welding titanium, getting a, a, a capstone piece in there to protect wow. it, um, making new legs that actually hold everything in place to hold up a little bit better against vertical spinners. Uh, obviously, we didn't see that in that match, but um, I'm Maybe very excited to see how that all tests out and works out. Obviously, some weapon reliability issues with yeah. that. We'll see what's going on there, but all in all, excited tap about that. Out. I didn't tap out. tap out. The I'm still here. Is I'm sorry, Kyle. You have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> you tapped out. I tapped out. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I wanted to show you this. Did you see these? Yes. This is uh, so cute. So these are little toys. Uh, they're apparently going to be available in the merch shop soon, but these are... Um, th they're so cute. Look at the shovel even lifts. It lifts, It the wheels work. Uh, and I think Robert said it's five bucks. So I mean, Yeah, that's Crash a Fest deal. 3D printed toy. I absolutely love it. It's so cute. Uh, he asked me to have it on the desk for him. I told him I would. And uh, look at how cute this is. I, I can't wait to, to pick one of these up for my kids because this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing. <laughs> I'm not sharing this yeah. one with my kids. No, that one's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the the collaboration between the builders and the merch store here, getting better every event, too. Yeah. What's going on in Cage 2? All right. Wow. So we have Steel Mountain down there in the blue corner. I love this bot. And then over there in the, the red corner, we have Anthony D'Ambrosio. Another perennial competitor here at NHRL. Absolutely. With Blackbird. Whoa, Minibot just going in, doesn't care. Just feed me into that horizontal weapon. It really is fearless. And, you know, doing the work for Tony, helping to pin it. So then he can get the hit in. All right, so Blackbird is really uh, taking it for a spin here. can't tell, perhaps they're stuck. <laughs> or he just wants to take it on a tour of the box. But either way, it looks like the weapon is, nope, it, it, it's just having power. It just jammed up by Blackbird, carting it around. Steel Mountain being driven by Lucas Biermeyer. Currently just stuck up and getting its bottom plate grinded away by Blackbird and Anthony D'Ambrosio. To, oh. wow, wow, there's an actual separation called, so that means probably one of the competitors Ooh. asked for it. Ooh, nice! Oh. Hit there from Steel Mountain. <laughs> Minibot not currently working. Mm. Looks like the right side of its drive is stuck up there in the corner. That's all right. Blackbird doesn't need it to win. No, just, uh, it's helpful. It's a helpful piece. 
One of the risks of having the minibot is damage to your minibot does count against damage to your whole team. Yes, so that is something that you have to weigh when you want to include a minibot in your configuration. If that minibot gets destroyed and it's a close fight, that might be the tipping factor that would lose you the, the judge's decision. Steel Mountain stuck up against the wall. Looks like Blackbird doing a nice job just gently moving them out. <laughs> The weapon started to spit up on Steel Mountain, and Blackbird did a perfect job getting underneath the weapon, launching them up against the wall. Steel right. Mountain really having a lot of mobility and drive issues at yeah. this point in the match. Blackbird having no issues. Drives working, weapons working. The bot looks like he just put it in a second ago. And this is this what is known as the D'Ambrosio? This is not quite the D'Ambrosio uh. technique, no. The D'Ambrosio technique is... Uh, it is. It has been figured out in a lot of ways. But what he will do is he will put himself between the mini bot or the house bot and his uh, disabled opponent to prevent an unstick. Oh, this is very reminiscent of Death Charge. It is. Yes. <laughs> Steel Mountain is. Oh, coming down on top of Blackbird. Not a safe place to be, especially if you're not planning for a top attack robot. Yeah, and it looks like Blackbird is now. Struggling a little bit, maybe with mobility. It might be just taking it easy. But, oh, I think we got, a, we got a tap out. I think we might have a tap out. Lucas seems very pleased with his performance. It was very entertaining. It may not have won, but it was very entertaining. Yeah, definitely needs a little bit of help from Brett the Brick getting back. All right, so we're now jumping into cage six. Ooh. Oh, it, it just finished. I think this may have been... Spartan? Uh, yes. From Team Stamina. Now Team Malice. That's correct. All right, so we are going to do a replay of what just happened in this fight. I'd love to know, because anytime Johnny is fighting, I want to see it. Whoa! Oh, ouch. So oh, Johnny stuck? stuck into the wall. The <gasps> weapon is all the way wedged into that piece of wood on the side rail. Wow. Oh. What is happening? So we got some break dancing going on while Spartan is literally stuck into the wood. Oh, no. So many opportunities Brett. Spartan could be taking advantage of here, but unable here to go. do so. Now Spartan back up to full speed. Gosh, I love this weapon blade on Spartan. Ooh, whoa, Ooh. that ain't good. Peace is flying. Looks like that may have been a tap out because neither bot are working. That was a tap out and I imagine Spartan came out on, on top, top of that, yeah. So Tilt is the other bot there. Tilt. They are uh, definitely not coming out on top of that match. No. Man, Johnny Sumpas, such an impressive competitor at these events, getting better every single day. And uh, if you think he's ever going to age out of this sport, you're completely <laughs> wrong, because he's, what, 17? I don't, he might be 16. <laughs> he's, he's young. He's a kid. And he is so impressive, not only with his bots, but just his the way he conducts himself, the way that he is a, a mentor and role model in the pits to yeah. other builders and takes other builders onto his team. All right, Ooh. so we are now heading over into cage five. So you can see Aluko and Eruption. Now these are two contenders to take the dumpster today. Absolutely. Uh, a logo from Team AGVS, and of course, Eruption for Brian Boxel. And it looks like they are just locked in a head-to-head -head match here. Yeah. Maybe not able to score a lot of uh, big hits. Wow, and that was a like driving course through these two bots, what we saw in the last few seconds of that match. So this one goes to the judges. Very interested to see how that works out. I didn't see any visible damage on either bot. It looked like both weapons were running. It looked like the drive was up and running on both. So the judges may have a uh, their work cut out for them, trying to figure out you know who came out on top. Yeah, I'd love to see some replays of that if we can get it. Just two of the best competitors in the three-pound division. And both of them seem to be shrugging a little bit, so I don't think either of them feel necessarily confident that one or the other one. 
Oh, okay, so we do have a unanimous oh. judge's decision for Brian Boxel and Eruption. Wow, that's a big win. That is an important win for Brian. All right, man, Brian Boxel just such a talented guy. And uh, here we are just checking into what's happening in cage one. Looks like we're loading in there now. Is this Carmen? So this is Carmen and Aerostar, two uh, very favored bots in the 12 pound division. Yes. Aerostar, one of the several swole bar robots we see here today. So Zoe Lambert over on Aerostar, Michael Shore on Carmen. Now Carmen has had a very successful run at NHRL in past events. Um, and I know it is favored to per potentially to win today. Definitely one of the contenders. So it will be very interesting to see how this match goes down. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see this match, quite frankly. I think uh, what's cool is that we've seen so many improvements on this Aerostar Swole Bar line yeah. since their last event here. Um, a lot more reliability, hopefully, out of these weapons. I know that they were a little bit worried about some of the internal pulleys on the weapon system working today, so we'll see how that has all sh uh, shook out for them. Just a cool concept, though. The swole bar is kind of a upscaled version of the Fingertech beater bar. Yeah, it's like they took the Fingertech three-pound beetle weight and then just, like, expanded it. And, and made it out of steel instead, <laughs> yeah. of, uh, instead of aluminum. Oh, Carmen looks so pretty. Carmen's a gorgeous robot. Very balanced robot. Just excellent drivetrain, mm -hmm. really powerful weapon. And Michael really, you know, puts in the work. He's here almost every event. He Same is. with Zoe, who lives quite far away in Maryland, still makes it work. You know, but that's what it takes sometimes to get to this level, is just grinding and competing over and over until you become the best. Ooh, that mini bot went flying. Wow. Aerostar actually getting the better of those two exchanges, but now it seems like Aerostar might be having some trouble wow. getting in the corner. Carmen taking full advantage, knocking him up into the air. I see a wheel. Oh, oh. no, that seems to be a wheel missing and some armor missing off the side of Aerostar, and Carmen just zipping around the box like it ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. Fortunately, I don't see any movement from Aerostar, either in its wheel that's left or the weapon. Yeah, that was very impressive. I mean, Carmen, this tight little compact bot, just so zippy, just ripped pieces off of Aerostar, and that fight is uh, presumably over. It sure looks like it. Wow, that was a quick one. Way to go, Carmen. You know, they are favored to win the 12-pound division for a reason. Yeah. There's Zoe trying to make it safe. <laughs> awesome. Oh. So this is inside job versus scrambled. Inside job is a crusher bot, a pincher crusher bot from Joe Fabiani. And an extremely effective one at this weight class, which is very difficult. A totally new weapon system on this one. It's actually a brushless crusher now. Wow. Very cool. And very zippy. Has to be, you gotta be able to drive extremely well if you're going up against all of these vertical spinners. And uh, in Joe's case, you gotta be okay with ramming that entire weapon system into a vertical spinning weapon. And he has no problem with that. <laughs> it's like a little ballet dance. I know, yeah, they're doing a little, a little pirouette there. <laughs> You see both uh, Brandon Zelensky and Joe Fabiani working together on Inside Job. Weapon getting up to speed on Scrambled there. Oh, nice. we got a pinch. Pinch and crush. Whoa. There it goes deep inside. Oh, wow. <laughs> A little bit of clipping is, there on the screen. Do you have any 
appears he's breached the armor. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out of that at this point. He says, I need you to release. She's counted them out. Can he release? Uh -oh. uh, he seems to be trying to. He's too powerful for his own good. Pausing the match. We've got to do an unstick here. That is the danger of bots like these. Now we're seeing the final moments of Inside Job versus Scrambles. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Luke! I love seeing Joe Fabiani and Inside Job. That robot is so incredibly cool. And uh, forcing his opponent into an unstick. All right. We're gonna go over here to Cage 5. Stag Beetlebot here uh, versus Red Panda. Stag Beetlebot is this black and purple robot uh, run by Michael Cross. Uh, he is a boss bot here in the bracket today, facing off against Red Panda. This was our most successful uh, rookie bot of the last competition, going the furthest uh, out of all of the other first-time robots. Uh, so this is absolutely a robot to watch. That looks like a loose wheel off of Stag Beetlebot, but as we've seen in the past, it can still operate pretty well on three. Probably doesn't want to lose another one, though. Red Panda run by uh, Jaron Leibson from Worcester, Massachusetts, from Team WPI, entering this competition with an incredible four and one record, uh, going incredibly deep in his inaugural run here at NHRL. Stag Beetlebot, though, tipping Jaron's robot up against the corner and grinding away at that bottom plate. Still having great mobility, even just on three wheels. Pretty incredible, Chris. Yeah, I got a close look at the, the bot uh, last night. Michael's added those, those thin strips of titanium uh, along the side front wheels as, uh, as an additional wheel guard. But it looks like we're having some mobility issues, and he's tapping. He's or tapping he's, on his glass. Maybe, maybe he's calling for an unstick. We'll see momentarily. And it looks like that is the end of the match. Michael coming over to, uh, to congratulate Jaron on uh, yet another win here for Red Panda. Now, Red Panda, as uh, one of the challenger bots, you know, defeating his boss here, the boss bot, uh, is going to have some incredibly good seeding once we get into the single elimination bracket. Uh, not surprising, Red Panda has performed great uh, in, in its debut. And it uh, looks like it, it may be poised to make another deep run here today. All right, something interesting happened here in Cage 7. Let's take a look. Now, uh, this was inside job and scrambles, and they were trying to uh, separate these two oh, robots. Oh, God. Wow, uh. using all of their force to get that beak of Inside Job out of the top of Scrambles. Inside Job is one of the most unnerving bots to watch, kind of literally sink that tooth right in through that top armor. Now, uh, we just heard that they were unable to unstick these two robots, so they're going to go to a judge's decision. I don't think that uh, you can really, uh, you know, call it for scrambled at all. I mean, like, uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty definitive uh, win here for Inside Job. Well, let's check in here with Cage 6. This is Fully Defined versus Prom Frida here. Fully Defined is our boss bot, one of our top ranked robots here in the bracket, facing off against Prom Frida, uh, run by Zack Knight. Looks like we just caught the tail end of this. Yes, the winner there is uh, is fully defined. Ian McInerney from Team WPI. I think he's their treasurer, Chris. He's in charge of the money on Team WPI. 
that's a, that's a good. That's probably the most important role when it comes to combat robotics. We've just heard word. Uh, unanimous judge's decision for inside job. Joe Fabiani uh, piercing the top of his opponent's uh, top plate and coming out uh, the victor in that fight. Now look at all these parts, pieces all over the box in cage six, fully defined in prom three to. Does look like fully defined uh, is the winner here in this fight. Gonna be opening up this box and uh, making these robots safe here in just a second. What's that little object there in the uh, the right hand corner, Chris? Like in the blue square? Is that like a battery? What do you, what do you like, think that is? I mean, is? it could be a battery. It looks like it could be a motor. I can't tell uh, from this angle, but I'm sure it's of critical importance. <laughs> yeah, when you see something that small, you're like, oh, I think that should be inside of a robot. One of the goals here in combat robotics is to keep all of your components inside your robot. <laughs> right, right. Keep them, uh, you know, uh, unignited as well. You know? I just saw a gloved hand kind of come into the screen and grab that. So my guess would be that that was a loose battery. Mm, yeah. Fully Defined is one of my picks for uh, a robot that's going to go very deep in the bracket today. Ian is an incredible builder. Uh, we have seen his, uh, his absolute glow up here at NHRL. Um, and uh, Fully Defined entering this, uh, this, this uh, competition with an incredible 23 and 13 career record with one Golden Dumpster winning in November of 2022. That is a pretty recent win. And uh, Ian, great builder. And uh, this is a really effective design at the three pound weight class. It really is. It's one of my favorite designs uh, that, you, that you see in this weight class. It's, it's, it's wide. Uh, it's able to corral. It really has that advantage in the uh, in the control game, um, and being able to control, but also having a powerful vert at your uh, you know in your arsenal. It's just such a great combo, and it's so fun to watch. All right, that uh, that match there, fully defined versus Prom Three, that went to the judges, and uh, we just heard a unanimous judges' decision for fully defined and Ian McInerney. Staying alive as a boss, probably going to get uh, pretty good top seeding there in the single elimination bracket once we uh, once we open that up. All right, we're jumping into cage five here. This is a fight between two horizontals, Red Hawk X versus Wormhole. Oh. Wormhole winning its first fight of the day and uh, facing off against Red Hawk X. I'm curious if Wormhole's horizontal is currently down. I don't see a lot of movement out of it. And it's also down now both forks. Now, Red Hawk X is the boss bot here in this fight. Wormhole advanced to uh, face Red Hawk X. Wormhole would love to win uh, this, this fight here. Wormhole is in black. Red Hawk X is in black and white. It does look like the weapon on Wormhole is down. Yeah, it's not, I don't know if that's coming back. see he's trying to get around to the back so that he can push that other operational weapon maybe into a wall maybe disable it and then it can come down to the control and aggression game but it might not be that easy Red Hawk X uh, entered this competition ranked 59 of all time with a 7 and 6 career record we're seeing uh, driver Mark Bellinger there with Red Hawk X really shoving around Steven Bogus and Wormhole in this fight. Weapon reliability has been a challenge for Wormhole. And, uh, you know, the thing that I like about Wormhole is that it's iterating very fast. Every single time that he brings it back to this competition, I feel like I'm seeing a brand new robot. He's very serious about improving this design, but you need to keep your weapon running for the full three minutes to win here at NHRL. You can see those pleated wheels on, uh, on the top of, of Wormhole. These are two very similar designs. Um, I believe that Wormhole probably started off life uh, as a uh, vector-inspired kit. Right. 
And uh, now it's just this big, chunky, 3D printed, fully custom thing. Great it really mobility. Is, yeah. it's, a, it's a gorgeous bot. I feel like uh, out of the most memorable bots from the last year, I mean, I, I feel like I, I see Wormhole in a lot of them. You know, Wormhole burnt to a crisp in its fight against, uh, you know, mixtape. Oh, that's right. Steven Vargas, super dedicated to the sport. Um, he competed out in California at roller games as well. You know, like he's flying all over the country to, uh, to become the best builder that he can be. And I do think that uh, at some point we're going to see Wormhole uh, really take a top spot as a boss. Wormhole took it the full three minutes here. This one will go to the judges. Wormhole entered this competition with a 10 and 17 record. Fun fact, Steven Bogus there works as a youth baseball empire. Um, and uh, his interests outside of combat robotics include game development, marching band, and baseball. I feel like, uh, you know, kind of simpatico there. <laughs> All right, we're going to go in here to cage seven. This is Dumb Drum versus Oop Funk. A little beater on beater action. Now, Dumb oh, Drum was a brand new robot in January, kicking Oopfunked into uh, onto the top of uh, of the house box. Chris, did my eyes deceive me, or did I see a circus clown standing oh. outside driving? Drum oh my drum. goodness! This is not something you see every day. I don't know what's happening. Wow, we may need to pause this match because we are seeing the bottom of Brett's. Oh. Wow. Uh, and as you can see, NHRL here, it's serious business. <laughs> we don't clown around. Wow, incredible. We didn't check anybody at the, uh, the door for uh, bubble guns, Chris. Oh, now here we are. We are in cage six, and I see Sombra. Run by Tomas from Team AGVS here in black, facing off against, oh no, Oreo here in white. Appropriately, it looks like an inside out Oreo, Chris. I am shocked to see that there is not a lot of movement coming out of Sombra right now. Now it looks like, oh no, Oreo could be a, uh, either a ring spinner must be a ring spinner. Oh boy, it looks like a count out has started. Oh no, Oreo here run by Josh Kubiak from Somerville, Massachusetts. This is a ring spinner here. MIT graduate, very smart, and defeating Tomas here with three pound version of Sobra, one of our most feared robots from Brazil. All right, now we have, uh, we've unstuck these two robots. We're gonna go back to uh, cage seven. Drum, uh, drum Dum versus Oopfunk. Oopfunk here in black, Drum Dum here in white. I could, could have sworn I saw a circus clown earlier driving Drum Dum, which is uh, shocking and uh, disturbing, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that really, I mean, like she committed to the uh, to the clown motif, you know. Like, I, I I know that you're terrified of clowns, Luke. Yeah. Okay, that's the sound that I don't like to hear, Chris. Okay, when I think of clowns, <laughs> just that shrieking clown, you know. Uh, yeah. I do love a theme, though. I mean, yes. listen, dress dress up, you know. Absolutely, live your live your truth, Chris. And Drum Dum is, is doing quite well here against Oop Funk. Looks like both of these weapons are still going. Can uh, Drum Dum tip over the house bot once again? Oh, high centered there on the uh, side rail. Uchtfunt here run by Sandy Vasquez from uh, Norwalk, Connecticut, from the Bad Crew. Oh, I think I've been calling this wrong. I believe that uh, Uchtfunt here is in black. Sandy is stuck. 
Sandy is uh, is wearing the clown outfit. I can see the stars now on the bottom of the uh, the robot. It's all starting to fall into place. Oh, I see. It looks like Sandy may be getting counted out. She is stuck up against the rail. Yep, they are walking to the door. This is the end of that fight. I wonder if the bar ended up going down. Normally that's something that uh, a bot, a beater bot would be able to kind of claw their way off of. But there could be a belt issue, could be a motor issue. Now we are seeing uh, the loadout here. Uh, your winner here is Dum Drum, the uh, white robot, and uh, Sandy making her robot safe here with Oopt Funt. Sandy, well done with the, uh, the theming. Hey, let's check in here with Allie. Oh my goodness, Allie, hello. Allie. Hi, I am so happy to be back. And you know, I think there's a lot of things on people's mind today. One, the coronation, the Kentucky Burpee, Derby that is, a Burpee, oh my gosh. Can you tell I'm a personal trainer on the side? And we have NHRL, which is, should be at the top of the list, but I could not get over the flag. I knew that this had something to do with what was with uh, England, and I met Megan. She's with the Northwestern Robotics team, and I got to ask about this getup right now. Are you celebrating Prince Charles, or I think there's another British team you might have a rivalry with? So obviously we've got the coronation today, which I'm missing because I'm in America, but there's uh, our first team that we were fighting it was from England, so we've got a little bit of British rivalry going on. They're from Ireland, so we've got the Union Jack, and uh, I wanted to have the flag just as we were fighting because I thought it was pre pretty fun, uh, especially since uh, they're coming to uh, America and they get a li little piece of home when they fight us. I love it. Now tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing right now. I see your team very hard at work. Yeah, I think we've got uh, four robots in the running now. Uh, so some of those are about to go, just about to go into fight, and this just came out of a fight. We lost both of our drive motors uh, due to some uh, due, due to a fork getting into our chassis. Uh, so we're just replacing those, and actually the, the team we were we were fighting were really helping us. Um, big shout out to JP, uh, helped us diagnose some issues, and has given us some really good advice for coming into going into matches in November as well, because this uh, robot will be going to November. This is Death Pact. And I know we joked about having that rivalry with the team from Ireland, but is there any other robots that you're really specifically watching, maybe afraid to compete against? Uh, as a team, we're really just trying to do as well as we can. Uh, I wouldn't say there are any specific robots, but uh, definitely some big names here, and we're really excited to be competing with everyone. We love the vibe every single time we come here, and uh, there are definitely some familiar names that we've seen before, and uh, we're hoping to do better than we have in previous competitions and uh, build on our experiences. Megan, thank you so much. Good luck. We look forward to watching you guys battle it out. Okay. Chris, we've got a coronation today. What's going on? I know. I hope, uh, I hope we don't leech into their ratings. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Coronation. Yeah. Ratings drop because everyone's watching uh, YouTube and Twitch instead. NHRL. This is the place where, uh, you know, kings are made. True. Oh, wow. Good turn of phrase. I love it. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, coronation today. I don't know. Everyone here is tuning into NHRL. I feel like you've made a better choice, you know? People have seen coronations before, right? Yeah, I mean, how many... You can read uh, about it on Wikipedia. I don't know how many saw blades are flying around uh, over there <laughs> across the pond today, but uh, we, we sure have plenty of them here. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, yeah, Death Pact had already qualified for the uh, November Championship. Uh, they were a brand new robot in January. They ended up taking them third place in that uh, competition. But uh, yeah, early loss to uh, their Irish brethren over there. Um, with um I want to know, hey, what's up? Wow. Oh. We've got a good question here. Hotshot, where's Hotshot? Austin McCord, you know, they're calling for your robot. They love Hotshot. I met another kid who's a huge Hotshot fan, and I almost, I broke his heart because I had to say, I don't think Hotshot's in the building here today. Uh, no, it's currently doing Mach 4 somewhere above Louisiana. <laughs> good, yes. All right, we can see we're loading here into cage five. And uh, I believe this is, uh, is Crush here on, on the left. Facing off against Chris Caps and Power Surge 2. Wow, it's a little Chris on Chris action here, Chris. <laughs> 
Crush, uh, run by Chris Monroe. He is our local um, letter carrier with the U.S. Postal Service, based here in Norwalk, Connecticut. So, uh, you know, catch him on Monday, dr uh, walking around, dropping off letters here in the community, facing off against Chris Capps uh, here with Power Surge 2. Power Surge 2 here is this robot in the foreground with uh, black and green. Chris Caps has Chris Caps has been doing incredibly well with this robot. Uh, we've seen huge improvements in performance. His drive style is uh, so incredibly aggressive, and he's upgraded some of the components in between competitions. This is going to be the fastest power surge that we've ever seen. Uh, he's upgraded the uh, the batteries here on on his on his uh, his robot. Now, Chris Munro, our letter carrier, is no slouch. He's a very good builder himself. His robot is ranked 63 of all time. Interestingly, wow, wow Chris Caps from Power Surge 2 ranked 61 of all time. These are two essentially uh, evenly matched robots. Power Surge 2 has a 9 and 8 record. Crush has a 7 and 6 record. That's, that's fantastic. Both have something to prove. Uh, both really resilient bots and really heavy hitters. Yeah. I feel like for this match specifically, I should change my name just temporarily to Chris, you know? Crass. 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 Now it looks like they are talking to one another. I hope they're not just socializing, you know? Like, you gotta be talking about the matches, Johnny. Look All at right? this crowd here. Wow. Incredible. There's some VIPs. I can see the VIP, you know, uh, ticket badge there. They are eager to see uh, this fight here between the two Chris's. Oh, wow. We're here at Cage 7. I see Polywog and I see Half Life. And Polywog run by Ribot Captain David Jin. This is his classic design. You can see Polywog in the Bot Museum. It is that famous. Polywog is green and black here, facing off against Half Life run by Matthew Lantry. It is a lifter, um, and uh, it is in red. And I'm going to give it to Half-Life. He has hung in there for uh, you know, quite a long time here with Polywog. Polywog is a knockout artist, absolutely loves to go for quick knockouts. And uh, Half-Life, his long forks have been able to keep Polywog's weapon at bay. David Jin, of course, former WPI student, recent graduate, runs Ribot on BattleBots, and has landed an incredible pin here on Half-Life. Polywog is just one of those bots that, that's built for damage, it's built for aggression, and it's built for control. It's, uh, you know, the, the, the hat trick of, of combat robotics, and yeah. it's, that's just one of the reasons why you'll find it in the Bot Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. Half-Life, I mean, when, when you have a control bot like Half-Life, you need to have incredibly good driving. You have to keep your fork squared up with your opponent. But we can see Polywog now starting to get under Half-Life and grind away at that bottom plate. See an overhead shot here of David Jin and Lucy Dew. Valkyrie Captain Lucy Dew on BattleBots. <laughs> David consistently getting under Half Life, but failing to, to uh, make that big knockout hit. Really, uh, instead, looking for pins in this match. There's his second 10 second pin. His forks are lower than uh, the, the forks on half life. It's pretty incredible. I'm gonna give it to both of these builders though. I am so impressed that the drive and the weapon has stayed up on both of these robots. All of these little exchanges. It looks like we are counting down to the final seconds of this match. That is it. This one will go to the judges. Wow. That was good. Polywog and Half Life. Legit curious, though. What's up? I said I'm legit curious. Like, what happened? Don't know. Only because I haven't been paying attention to that side of it. We've been up and downstairs. So.
Right, we see uh, Ribot Captain David Jin turning off Polywog here. We see Matt here on the left turning off his robot Half-Life. We're gonna go and check in now with Allie. Hey, Allie. Okay, so I know you guys are probably like, why are you clowning around up there? But I can't help myself. This chicken, um, the bubble gun, and I came over and I was like, Violet, I have to talk to you because this is phenomenal. But the story behind this is even better because she didn't want to live vicariously through her kid anymore. So she figured she would build this bot herself. Tell me more, Violet. So the Norwalk Cybears helped me build this kit bot. And as you had said, I was tired of living through my son and said, I'm just gonna do this myself. So I saw Positively Hysterical and he said, let's make this fun. And I said, 100%, I'm gonna make this fun too. So my colleagues at ASML, because I also work for ASML, are helping me with this gateway robot figure out how we can clownify for the next competition. We're thinking flaming bubbles, rubber chicken, something, but this is my first practice robot, and I think she did pretty good, and I built her, and I'm really proud, and my son is mortified, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, what's better? Do you want to win or just continue to mortify your son? It's a toss up here. Uh, so good, both of those. Both of those options are really thrilling to me right now, but really, it, it is, it's about having fun. Um, my competitor in the first round was a, a young man, a fifth grader, and I had so much fun just interacting with him and getting his tips and tricks, and I'm just here to have fun. So I have to ask you before we let you go, what is one tip you learned from him that you can take into your next round that you thought was so valuable? He said, just go full force. Just don't worry about, you know, how you're spinning. Don't worry about what you're doing. Don't worry about getting stuck on Brett. Just, just keep going, just keep moving forward and put your all in. And that's what I did, so. Violet, this has been so, so amazing. I cannot wait to see what you do next and good luck. Thank you, thanks a lot. I'm taking my chicken. Okay, bye. <laughs> Incredible. I, I love it. All the time you see where like parents that have been in the sport kind of bring their kid in, but it's yeah. like, it's so rare that you see it kind the, of the other the way kid around. The brought, brought, you know, his mom in. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, it, you know, my, my hope and goal as a parent is to one day, uh, you know, embarrass my own child, you know? Like, uh, I, I, could, I could see myself wearing a clown outfit here, you know? You haven't already? Bringing a winning robot, you know? It's great. All right, we're gonna check in here with Cage 4. This is another big box fight here. We're going to check in with Sombra 12 facing off against Voxel. Voxel had an incredibly powerful opening fight here uh, in, earlier in the day and um, facing off against a pretty formidable opponent with Sombra. Voxel, uh, wide boy drum, bulletproof reliability, winning record. There is a lot to like about Voxel Eight, at the 12 pound seven, uh, weight, weight six, class. Now, Sombra five, with a little bit of a four, reach advantage, three, but we'll just see how this two, is going to play out. One. Fight, robots, fight. All right, a big hit right out of the box from Voxel. Crossing the box, smacking Sombra in the face. Sombra is now tipped up against the rail. Flo coming in to save. That weapon is still running on Sombra. Oh! And here's a sick oh. hit in the face from Voxel. Sombra just returned it. But Voxel is getting under Sombra. That reach advantage is not working out in Sombra's favor in the opening of seconds of this match. Voxel repeatedly getting under his opponent. Sombra on its head. This is really what you're looking for. Can Voxel get under its opponent consistently? Tap out. That's a oh, tap wow. out. Interesting. Fast tap out from Tomaz and Team AGVS. The winner of that fight is Michael Shore and Voxel. Michael's part of Team uh, Defective here at NHRL. And uh, you can see him on TV as part of Team Shredder Bro on BattleBots. Now, uh, Tomaz, you can also see him on TV as part of Team Minotaur. So uh, we've got a little BattleBots on BattleBots action here uh, from two pit crew members. AGVS, an incredibly cool uh, company. Tomaz is the CEO of AGVS. Uh, they make autonomous uh, vehicles in Brazil, mm -hmm. a lot of warehouse robots, etc. And uh, they are using a lot of that, uh, that robotics experience to make great robots. 
Now here in cage six, I can see tomato soup facing off against kickstart. Tomato soup here is in red and white. It is a lifter. And kickstart looks like it is a custom vert, four wheel drive vert with rabbit ears and long forks. A little, uh, what would you say, a little end game-esque, perhaps? A little jackrabbit in there. One of, the, uh, one of the big things that you're looking for is the ground game in a matchup like this. You want to get under your opponent. You can see it works on both Tomato Soup and Kickstart. All right, we see uh, part of the side armor package off of Tomato Soup there in the far end of the cage. Now, Kickstart here is run by Cam Collins. Kickstart has already qualified for the finals, going six and one in their NHRL debut. This is a custom four-wheel drive vert running a brushless rectified robotics drive, placed second at the January 2023 NewBots event. Oh, we got an, a second pin here at a tomato soup. Another good pin here from tomato soup. Kickstart's really going to have to start racking up damage in this fight because uh, they're just showing aggression and control to the judges at this point. I do see a concerning piece of red plastic there. It looks like that is the wheel guards off of the left side of tomato soup. That's a little bit of damage. Marley Biagini here with uh, tomato soup. Attempting a lift. seconds left on the clock. Looks like the geometry of that lift was not favorable for Marley. Another good little hit there from Kickstart. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for bulletproof reliability, especially with the vert. Kickstart's run in the entire three minutes. That robot looks absolutely unscathed. Tomato soup has lost a couple of parts. As we come down to the final few seconds of this match, this one will go to the judges. Both of these robots took it the full three minutes. Incredible. Now, we're not judges, Chris, but uh, I think this is very clearly a win for Kickstart. There's a few things that they have to do mull over, but yeah. Here we see Joe Fabiani. Right, I can see loading into uh, loaded into cage one is Andy Russell and Octane facing off against Joe Fabiani and Smeezus. Gesundheit. Smeezus is this undercutter that has unconventional uh, <laughs> unconventional locomotion. I love this message on the front. Several people are typing. Dot dot dot. <laughs> That's why it's, it's the one message you don't want to see on Discord, you know? Yeah, yeah. When you're you're just trying to share your honest opinion. Here's a good look at that uh, that really interesting brush drive on Smeezus. Now, those are four independent brushes uh, that kind of turn and really kind of almost vibrate this thing along on top of the uh, on top of the plywood floor. And with that, uh, Smeezus is able to have that weight bonus. So it definitely has weight on its side in this match. I am expecting a massive opening hit in this fight. Semtex is very fast, very mobile, and its drum spins up so quickly. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here we go, there's Smeezes. Octane coming out, trying to pick its, uh, its angle. Testing a weapon on weapon hit. Oh! Andy liked the result of that. Tipping Smeezus on its head. The brushes on Smeezus here working great as it's upside down. Wow. And here we go. Octane tipping Smeezus up against the rail. Forcing a save very early in this fight. No save necessary. Joe is able to vibrate himself off of the rail. But it looks like that horizontal is down. Tap and there's out. your tap out. Wow. Andy Russell racking up a second win here for Octane. He is moving through this bracket with ease. Octane is the upgraded, newer version of Semtex. 
Uh, he's also running some decks in this fight. Joe Fabiani, of course, the captain of SME on BattleBots. Now, I do think we just had a judge, judge's decision come in from the last fight that we had just seen. Kickstart versus Tomato Soup. I believe that did go to Kickstart. All right, let's check in here with Allie. All right, well, we're zooming in on her shirt because Thacker's Loudmouth BattleBot Mama is here, and we could not miss a chance to talk to her. You can turn around now. Thank you for highlighting that. But you are here to support your daughter and her team, University of Cincinnati. So I am going to hand it off to you guys because you're the ones doing a lot of the hard work. And you're also pre-med, so I cannot imagine how busy you are. But this is a hobby. Yep. Uh, this is a reptile dysfunction. It runs uh, two weapon motors. It's got a whole gear system on the back. And it's really cool. It's really fast, especially with this friction drive. It's super responsive. We've got weapon drive motors going directly to the wheels, so it just takes off. It's great. And we got a 4 one ESC. It's really, it's really fun. And Korea, I got to ask, because when I was speaking to you off camera, I was like, this is your mom. I mean, she is decked out, ready to support you. And you were like, please don't put me on camera. And she was like, please put me on camera. So I want to know what it's like, because she flew here. You guys had a long drive to have the support from your mom. And also, is she, what, was she helping you? Yes. <laughs> she is, she's the team mom. Everyone loves her. Yeah, you, you see yes. Yeah. <laughs> that... Uh, she said that in a stream a while ago, and everyone else is saying it now. It well, good luck to you guys. We look forward to seeing you guys out there, and we're happy your mom is here to enjoy the ride. Thank you. University of Cincinnati, they've brought a ton of robots, probably a half dozen robots to the competition. I love to see them doing well. Now, look at this. I believe that this is Little Rip. Facing off against Brian Boxel and Waddles. We have BattleBots royalty on both sides of the cage here. We've got Anna Zolnikov, the captain of Ripperoni on BattleBots, running Little Rip here. The pizza-themed robot in the blue corner. Facing off against Waddles, Brian Boxel, who's on Team Bloodsport. And uh, he is running one of our top-ranked Beatles of all time. This Eight, is his 30-pounder, Waddles. Five, four, three. Two, one, fight. Good mobility robots and good fight. spin up right out of the box from both of these robots. Ripper Roni with that uh, classic chaotic yes. drive style. Big so, weapon on weapon hits there, and Waddles is at an angle. Lindsay and I on this season of BattleBots, both members of Team Copperhead have faced both of these teams. And I'll tell you, it's a scary place to be. Ripperoni, though, finding itself on its head and back on its feet. Let's go, Anna. Waddles, though, finding the back of Little Rip. Oh, no. Little pieces of pizza box going everywhere. Wow, Little Rip it, it, unable to, uh, to drive out of that corner. I can't tell if maybe there's a piece of debris under Little Rip or if it's had part of its uh, bottom armor package peeled up and now it can't get the traction it needs. Little Rip now backing up onto the, uh, onto the rail. Waddles going in for the kill, going in for those wheels. Little Rip finally saving itself. Let's see if that drive comes back. Oh! These hits are incredible. Wow! There's pieces of wood from the rail going everywhere. Oh! Huge hits! Oh, these two bots are turning this uh, cage into mulch. Now, Brian Boxel and Waddles holding off on this one kill shot here, waiting to see if Little Rip is stuck. Oh, my God! Oh my God. I can't... Can we get a close look at that? Brian Boxel is just as shocked as the rest of us. Knocking out Little Rip. Wow! Really good handshakes here between these competitors. Brian Boxel very happy with the performance of his undercutter.
I'd love to get a close look at the damage on Little Rip. Yeah, that was an absolutely explosive fight. I think there's uh, more wood than bot pieces. Is that, that is part of the bot that has been torn off. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Part of that bottom plate is, uh, is peeled up. Half of the bot is disconnected. Wow. Those hits from Waddles were so, so incredibly powerful. Getting under Little Rip, really peeling up parts of that, that bottom plate. You can see Anna Oops. here making her robot safe. Yeah, I am really curious what it's going to take to uh, put Little Rip back uh, into the box. What kind of repairs those are. It's very hard to unslice a pizza. True, very true. I wonder if this, if we're actually going to see Little Rip later in the day, or if this is the last, the first and last fight of the day for them. We see Tony D'Ambrosio here uh, helping out Anna, bringing that robot back upstairs. That is going to be a big repair job up in the pits. They might need to go over to the workshop to get an extra set of hands, you know, with Ed. I'm, I'm curious to know if Little Rip is actually designed to kind of operate almost like two independent bots because, um, you know, you, you have, it looks like, part of a drivetrain on one side, then you have that massive weapon in the middle. Right. It's not too easy to run wiring configuration around a weapon like that, so that's how they might have it set up. If that's the case, it's not going to be quite as labor-intensive, but, you know, if there's more intricate wiring in there that I'm not aware of, that, that could be a huge fix. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ripperoni, of course, some of the best theming, you know, here at the competition. I love a pizza theme. You know, I love a pizza pizza team. And uh, Team Omega, really uh, a dominant team here on the East Coast, made up of uh, strange and interesting people. <laughs> they, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love the energy that all their teams always bring, the branding. It's like, it's the complete package every time. All right, we're gonna go over here to cage six. Very cool, we've got Chainsaw Kitty here in black and Red Hawk in red. Chainsaw Kitty run by Keziah Sky here. And uh, Keziah, uh, a, uh, really just has come roaring out of the gate as a rookie. This is her third competition here at NHRL. She's entering this competition with a seven and four record. She is a boss here um, in the bracket, facing off against Josh Bellinger and Red Hawk. But first, let's check in with Allie. All right, I heard we got all of them in the shot because we need to get full, the full penguin suit here. But that is important. But what's really important is that you just got a knockout, Brian. Tell me more about what went into that knockout. Eight, seven, so six. We took the, the waddles from the uh, December championships last year, made very minimal changes, and just optimized everything. We thought that the robot that we had in December champs had a lot of potential, and that potential just showed. We knocked out Ripperoni, which, as we've all seen from the TV show, is tearing through the field on Battle Balls. That team knows what they're doing. So we are all super stoked to have taken out a team of that caliber in the fashion that we did. That was awesome. Do you think having a mascot helps here? No doubt, definitely boosts my confidence. I love these guys so much. Well, I can tell just by your voice, a little shaky because of that excitement, the adrenaline, but I just wanna know, how, what do you do to like settle that down and go into the next one and, and be successful in that one with the adrenaline running right now? We know that every 30 pound here, despite the fact that these robots aren't particularly high ranked, these are killer robots. Every robot has knockout potential. So we need to be very careful going into every match. Uh, our robot is modular. We have the option to choose between an undercutter and a vert. So we're gonna settle down, make calm, collected decisions about uh, what weapon to run for each fight. And hopefully it continues like this for the rest of the day. Great, well, we look forward to seeing what you do next. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. That was awesome. 
All right, we're going to go to cage six here to a fight in progress. We see Chainsaw Kitty here facing off against Red Hawk. Looks like both of the weapons here on these robots are down here, in the middle of this fight. Now, this is a Kitty. Good, good pin here from Chainsaw Kitty's mini bot uh, named Knife Cat. Knife Chris. Cat. Yes. Which is such a punk rock name for, uh, for a robot and its mini bot. Chainsaw Kitty, Knife Cat. I said they need a mini mini bot and call it Needle Kitten. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just a teeny tiny little, little, just a, you know, little knife there in the box, you know? Um, but uh, as you can see, you know, there's four robots here in the box. Both of these teams are running mini bots. And uh, Knife Cat successfully getting under Red Hawk. Every single time that your mini bot lands a pin like this, high centers its opponent, that is uh, control points that you are winning. And uh, Keziah and her boyfriend really doing great here uh, with the driving. This is their third competition ever, but oh. There's a little stutter there. I was wondering if Chainsaw Kitty was dead. It is not. It is still running. Yeah, at this point in the competition, you know, at this point in the match, you really want to show control. Can you land pins? Can you uh, high center your opponent? Can you hold these pins for 10 seconds? Keziah, as I was saying, entered this uh, competition at a 7-4 and four record with an all-time career record uh, uh, ranking of 41 and uh, facing off against a massive veteran in this sport. Josh Bellinger, even though he's young, has been competing here at NHRL for over two years. Now, uh, Chris, do you want to hear uh, some fun facts about Keziah? Yeah. She's got some of the most delightful ones. Uh, she is learning American Sign Language. She's been a student for the last three years. Uh, she's interested in VR gaming. And all of her team members on a team Sleepy Anime Girl Club, she met in virtual reality. I, I, so I just played a VR game not too long ago for the first time. And I think I'm really starting to understand my age now because... Yeah. I, don't, I can't tell if the nausea was coming from just being afraid that something was going to sneak up on me or from uh, just motion sickness. But I was just like, where's my NES? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for Marble Madness. That's pretty yeah. much my threshold. We just heard it from Control. Unanimous judge's decision for Chainsaw Kitty and Kizara Sky staying alive in the bracket, improving her career record to eight and four. Oh, Incredible. wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Now, uh, no, no, uh, you know, no surprise there. She is a boss for a reason. You know, uh, this is her third event, and you can see that uh, that quality really improve those improvements between the competitions. Just uh, that robot is looking absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can, you know, there there are a few rookies that you can pick out in the field uh, upstairs where uh, they are progressing much faster than their peers. Um, it is not just time in the box, but it's time practicing at home with driving. Yeah. It is testing out new components, really kind of putting in the hours back at home in your shop, trying out new things, and really understanding the interesting little nuances inside of the robot um, that set apart, you know, one rookie versus another. Um, and Keziah is super serious about this sport. Big BattleBot super fan. Uh, she and her, her boyfriend love BattleBots, and uh, yeah, just jumped headfirst into the sport with a really pretty impressive custom three pounder. Uh, maybe one day we'll see Chainsaw Tiger uh, oh. actually at BattleBots. That'd be yeah. pretty cool, huh? There you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, very cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, recruiting team members in VR. So using VR for good. Yes. Uh, Versus evil, Chris. <laughs> yes, the, the metaverse is uh, a place where you could uh, do both, I'd imagine. Yeah. Good and evil. Yeah, that's good. Now, I can see that we're loading into cage one. And uh, we are also loading into cage four. Interesting. Got a lot of big, bo big box action and a lot of simultaneous beetle fights going on uh, right now, also in uh, cages five through eight. 
But uh, this is a nice little break in the action, and we get to just hang out. This has been great. Any reflections on the first uh, five hours of competition so far today? Has it been five already? Let's see, uh, four, four and a half? Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. My goodness. Time is flying. It really is. Yeah. I mean, the, the new pace of the, the morning schedule with, like, you know, so many boxes going simultaneously, people being able to go on, on the Brett Zone and have that choose-your-own-adventure path. Uh, you know, we get to jump so far into the competition at a much earlier hour, and those hours just kind of fly by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, very good. Um, so, yeah, I would say uh, if you're watching here on YouTube and on Twitch and you want to see everything else that's happening inside of the uh, venue right now, go and check out the Brett Zone on NHRL.io. There's a live shot here of the pits. All of these builders are still alive in the bracket. I don't think we've eliminated anyone just yet. We're uh, still in our seeding rounds, you know, and uh, we're going to be kicking off our bracket fights here shortly. But it is a beehive of activity upstairs. Uh, we've got teams from all over the world. We've got Brazil here uh, with Team AGVS. They've brought four robots to the competition. And uh, sitting right next to them, looks like it's Team WPI and Brian Boxel. WPI, one of our early dominant college teams. Uh, you know, they've got Eruption, they've got Fully Defined, they've got Waddles. We just saw Waddles perform great in their fight against Little Rip. It's uh, really cool to see teams coming here to NHRL and really building up that fight pedigree and building out a brand name for each one of their robots. Now over here, we've got Team Pandemonium. We've got Beetlejuice there and Ariel. Uh, Ariel already qualified for the, uh, for the championship, coming in third in her qualifier uh, in March. Got Stag Beetlebot here and Michael Cross. And look at this, we've made it all the way to the UK. This is the, uh, the UK table here. And uh, our British builders. I can see us loading here into cage one. Looks like this is Swole run by Casey Jermiason and her husband Casey Jermiason facing off against what I believe is a Cornell robot here. You can see Casey Jermiasen uh, there uh, getting ready for this fight here in cage one. And we can see Swole here in the blue corner. Facing off against a Cornell Eight, robot here seven, in pink. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, good speed right out of the box from Swole. Pursuing its opponent. Good weapon on weapon hit, and it is considerably more quiet in the box now. Did that hit kill both of those weapons simultaneously? This is Swole against Rosie here. Rosie from Cornell. I can hear something. I think that is the weapon on Rosie. Rosie has survived. Rosie is an undercutter here from Cornell. The kids from Ithaca, they're very smart. They've killed the Swole bar. Swole, the swole bar is at an angle. Incredible. It is sitting out of its weapon housing. Another big hit. That is a great hit from Rosie. Now we're seeing some chaotic driving from Rosie, but it is effective. 
killing its opponents and really uh, dictating the pace of this fight. A minute 30 in this fight, got 90 seconds left. Is it a foregone conclusion? Has Rosie become stuck into the rail? Swole is looking very mobile. What has happened to Rosie here? Rosie is coming in, has asked for a save here from Fluffy. Rosie needs to be very careful that it doesn't run itself into the rail again. It is out of saves with 60 seconds left here on the clock. Swole is looking very mobile with this broken weapon. Another big hit there, concussive hit. Rosie on Swole. Twenty seconds left here in this fight. We've seen great drive and great weapon here from Rosie. Good drive, but a broken weapon here from Swole. As we enter the last 10 seconds of this fight, we will be taking this to the judges. All right, this one went the full three minutes. A nice little round of applause. We're gonna take this one to the judges. Now we see Casey Jermiason and Casey Jermiason. They're the husband and wife team uh, of, from Barcode Labs, uh, checking out uh, their, their weapon. Now uh, that first hit was so big that uh, it popped the swole bar out of that, uh, that weapon shaft. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good fight here. Uh, but first let's check in here with Allie. Yes, I have Christine Giver here, and she has her own podcast, and that's how she connected with Behind the Bots, NHRL's podcast, and decided, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. I am going to be a driver here for the first time ever. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. And now you said something that I found so interesting. You said, if Jameson Go was here, I wanted him to destroy my bot. And I want to know why, because you did win the first round already. I did. Um, I, I think that when you have an admiration for what somebody else is doing, like you want to get beaten by somebody who's considered the best. And that I think that would have been a great honor. Because you will not be taking home that honor, I want to know what's next on your list. Do you want to win your second round instead of getting it destroyed by him? Um, I would like to win my second round. I think it would be funny um, and, and, and enjoyable if eventually I fought Polywog um, because David Jin designed the robot that I am driving, so it would be fun to fight him. And as I just mentioned, it is your first time at NHRL. You guys made quite the trip. Indiana? Indiana. So what have you loved since being here? Um, it's just an amazing environment. I mean, this community is so welcoming, and that's something I've known since I started doing the podcast. So being here live and experiencing it in person um, has been amazing. Well, good luck to you. So excited to see what you do next. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, Christine Giver, fantastic podcast, so the much. Outside of the Box podcast. Uh, so you know, I've if you're seen. already on YouTube, you know, you should go and check it out. Now, Ricky, I believe you've been on the podcast. I, I have. Yeah. yeah. Christine was a lovely host. It was an absolute uh, joy to uh, be interviewed. So if you want to hear me talk even more uh, and without these robots getting in the way. Yeah. Go check out her podcast. Now, Ricky, uh, you're the captain of Mammoth on BattleBots, of course. Oh, that's and, right. And, uh, you know, you've got Mammoth out here in the Bot Museum. Yeah. You're, We're bringing uh, the species back. It's incredible. They're yeah. all over the country at this point, which yeah. is kind of worrisome. There's, there's this strange thing about having robots that you built in places that you are not. Yeah. And it... it uh, With other people running them. Right? I think it's uh, probably a lot like, like watching your children grow up. Yeah. You know, I just... It's a strange feeling, but like, go bloom. Yeah. 
Now, like a month ago or so, you shipped five or six mammoths cross country, right? Yeah, to depending Las Vegas. on how you, you count them. Um, yeah. We uh, by shipped, uh, we cannonball run a uh, Penske full of mammoths yeah. directly into um, Las Vegas, directly into the heart of Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, now, I caught your second weekend as uh, at BattleBots Destructathon. Oh, oh, how did it go? Uh, Mammoth, yeah, snapped its uh, its weapon chain, so not it's, great. Oh. Yeah, and I heard Trey Rosky say, uh, who engineered this robot? Uh, you know? Yeah. That yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's weird getting, like, text messages being like, did you, did you know this would break? <laughs> All right, we're going to go to another big box fight here with Cage 4. Now we've got iteration here versus uh, Vood, Voodoo, Voodoo 2. Uh, now we just saw the Jermiasins with Swole. This is uh, iteration. They're very Swole-esque robots. The, they just pop up like whack-a-moles, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. There's every cage you turn around, there's a Jermiasin. Now uh, Voodoo here run by the University of Cincinnati. This is a brand new robot. Oh, Ooh. that's a big hit from Voodoo. Voodoo looks to be able to get the upper hand in these weapon exchanges. Yeah, these are weapon on weapon hits. Not afraid to take it straight to that huge swole bar. No, it seems Tipping like. Tipping iteration up against the rail. Yeah, iteration is stuck. That is going to be a uh, fluff tastic unstick, at least. Oh, a flow tastic, excuse me. Now, flow coming in here to try and save iteration without. Uh, breaking anything on the robots. It, you know, it's hard to have a gentle touch with a 400-pound block of steel. Mm. Trying Words to its live best. by from Ricky Willems. Yep, yep, gentle. An iron fist with like a velvet glove. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think that Flo is maybe making it worse, Ricky. I, I'm helping, he says. Wow, that was half of a help because there's still one wheel that's up against the rail. Remember, the success of an unstick is not guaranteed, Luke. Yeah. It doesn't always work. Sometimes they're violent and disgusting, Ricky. We, we have chunks progressively falling off of iteration, but it is still moving. It's still driving. Wow. You can see Voodoo, all this. Voot Woo, you know? It's Landing right on top of a uh, Voot Woo. Voot Woo. It, it was originally Voodoo, and then they came back with Voodoo, mm -hmm. which I guess makes sense. And then it's, it's more. It's very difficult to say, though. Really. I don't. What is. Flo's hats come off. Oh, boy. And what a turn of events. Iterations tipped Voot Woo, Voo 2 up onto its head. Flo is going to need to get in, you know, get in the fray here to try. Oh, look at it swing. Wow. Flo has swung its its uh, little head off of, off of itself. Voo 2 has its unstick upcoming. Oh, and there it is from Iteration. Oh, Iteration. Good sportsmanship there, Casey. This is a good look for the judges when you uh, unstick your opponent and then push them around the arena, despite so far having lost most of the weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchanges. But it looks like the power is completely off on Vu2. If Iteration is able to... Oh, it's, uh, it's trying. It's trying, Luke. Look at this. But I think they're going to, uh, to escape the countout. Yeah, they are coming to the last few seconds in three, two, one. Is the wow. match going to the judges? That was chaotic. We saw Flo lose the top of her head. You love saw... to see that back and forth. I, I honestly think that uh, the Jermisons kept that fight alive. They could have let uh, Voodoo die, but they took it to the judges. Great sportsmanship there from the Jermisons. Absolutely. They could have won that match, you know, yeah. without a sweat if they needed to. Yeah. We're going to go back to cage one now. We have another 30-pound uh, fight. And look at this. I think it's Kablooey Tango. It is. It is. Kablooey Tango here in blue facing off against George from Northwestern University. Kablooey Tango uh, run by uh, the team behind Valkyrie. Lucy Dew, Valkyrie captain Lucy Dew, and Valkyrie designer Alex Kreese. This is an experimental four-wheeled version of Valkyrie. 
big powerful undercutter, huge billet on the front, facing off against George, which is a stripped down killing machine, just a spinning a massive chunk of steel very fast. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna see here what happens. I'm really interested to see that undercutter is gonna have a hard time with the front of George. Its armor is uh, pretty darn well set up to yep. defeat that. And just uh, one wrong, Eight, <laughs> one wrong seven, move on the part of Kablooey Tango, six, it'll ride five, up that front and just four, get absolutely obliterated three, by that vertical spinner. Two, yeah. One. Fight, robots, fight. These early exchanges are so important because Truly. you want to see who's able to get under their opponents. So far, it looks like that that angle on the front of George is a little too extreme, you know, for. Uh, yeah, Kablooey Tango's not riding up uh, at all on that, which is going to be a saving grace. Oh, big hit Oh, there. chunks coming off of George. That is the that is the top one half of the top of George. That front armor is gone. Oh! Each one of these hits can do extreme damage now. The whole front armor package is gone. Front armor and the reinforcements. Luke, that is the structure of the robot. Just I feel like I'm flailing I, around. I, I mean, I'm looking inside of somebody's body here. This I, is we are halfway through an autopsy, is what yeah. we're looking at. Wow. Kablooey Tango taking apart George. Those are some heavy hits. Heavy hits on a robot that is kind of the foil to that design. Yeah. The, can you imagine what's going to happen later when Kablooey Tango comes up against robots that have uh, maybe a more opportune area to hit? Pieces are going to go flying. Now well, the they already is, went flying. The box is opened up. I believe that this is a knockout. Lucy Dew and Kablooey Tango victorious here in Tap this fight. Tap out. Tap out, yes. The, the um, George, you can see, stuck on the minibot there, but that robot's weapon was not spinning. The wheels were struggling to move at all. Yeah. Half the front is gone. The left side of that front was gone. Wow, you can just kind of see inside of the skull of George. Yeah. The armor from the right side and the entire left front just removed, yeah. scalpeled out. Wow. Lucy Dew, a uh, brand new captain on BattleBots this season. First time uh, captaining a BattleBots team herself, taking over from Leanne Cushing, uh, who has moved to the West Coast, you know, but her robot stayed behind here on the East Coast. Lucy Dew uh, works at MIT uh, and uh, builds really interesting, um, uh, like, biomechatronics. Um, so, like, building uh, artificial... Um, uh, appendages? Yeah, appendages, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and um, an incredibly smart uh, robot researcher and ro roboticist. Very talented, very detail-oriented. You can see when a, a robot like Kablooey Tango gets in the ring, the uh, attention to detail that has gone into the robot. Um, and it's the same thing that has led Valkyrie to success in the past. Uh, you know, that it makes sense that Leanne has, has, has chosen Lucy as a... Uh, uh, it's someone to pick choice. up the torch. Yeah. So. All right, let's check in with our friend, Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. Lindsay. Uh, hi, Ricky. It's good to see you there. You um, listen, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna be real with you. The YouTube live chat right mm -hmm. now is, is going a mile a minute. We have about a million fans from Brazil watching, tuning in. Cheering on a who Brazilian is there. Fans? What? A Brazilian fans? Brazilian fans, yes. Um, and they're all here for Rato. Ah. Who has a, a big following in Brazil, and they have all carried over and followed us here. And uh, yeah, I need to learn Portuguese really quickly. Yeah, Rato is incredible. Have you have you met Rato yet? I, I've seen Rato. I haven't watched any of the fights this morning of Rato. Yeah. Has it, has it lived up? To uh, the he's hype? not fought yet. He oh, okay. Well, then yet. I'm not behind. The hype is high. <laughs> the right? hype is high. It hasn't lived up to it yet, but we <laughs> yeah. have great expectations. Yeah. yeah, his first opponent forfeited it, so oh, he I is see. still waiting. Oh, I see. I it was scheduled. I thought. Yeah, okay. but... Sorry, Luke. I'm I, trying to get, get him it. next to me. Oh my so, gosh. yeah, tune in shortly. We're going to have a little uh, one-two punch, me and Rato. I'll ask him a few questions. So, 
really looking forward to that because there are so many people here to see him. Now, uh, yeah, he wears a rubbery rat mask and he's got all the sunglasses times. on. Yeah, and uh, he is incredibly popular. He's like the yin to the dead mouse yang. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Okay, exactly. got it. I mean, I, I thought that we were popular. He's like a hundred times more popular than we are. Um, should we be intimidated? Yeah. Okay, all right, I'm intimidated yeah. now. He's an announcer there I was excited. In Brazil. Now and, I'm uh, intimidated. Yeah, he's an incredible announcer in Brazil. He's got a lot of fans, incredible. Uh, all right, we're gonna go check in here with Cage 5. Thanks, Lindsay. Oh my gosh, it is positively hysterical once again. Tom Farkas in his second fight of the day. Facing off against Moulton. Now, uh, Ricky, you've seen, uh, let's see, Stamper Paws. You've seen, uh, seen Hammer Paws. This is Flower Paws. Be a, a bouquet of, of terror, I think, is what we're seeing today. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, you know, this, this just is a wants weapon to give you flowers violently to your face. Mm -hmm. This weapon, not effective very often, but if your opponent has extreme allergies, it is basically a one-hit kill. Incredible. Tom Farkas, uh, one of my favorite builders of all time. He's the 2022 Rookie of the Year here at NHRL, and uh, he is single-handedly keeping NHRL silly. Look at this. I, you love it. Landing and, hits. Yeah, that is that is the frightening thing here. Look, its opponent's weapon is down, its drive seems to be suffering, and it is landing hit after hit after hit with that bouquet. I mean, he is dictating the pace of this fight, too. I think that Positively Hysterical is going to stay alive in the bracket here. Coming out of this fight completely unscathed. Yeah, you just, like, spit polish that, and it's ready to go into the next match. Charge Positively the Hysterical just wants to love you, Ricky. He just wants to give you flowers. Wow. Some days, if I can't get out of bed, I just think about the faith that Positively Hysterical has in me. Yeah. How, how it knows that I can do a good job. Yeah. It believes in you. You should believe in yourself, and, and it makes life worth living. Yeah. Just away we go. Wow, a bouquet of flowers. Incredible. I'm sure it smells great in that box. What do you think? Yeah, it's the only one here that doesn't reek of carcinogens. <laughs> uh, Wow, positively hysterical. Count out your opponent. Incredible. Well, positively hysterical is uh, looking a little slower now. No. No? Look at that. I, Great I, mobility. I think it's ready for a cat now. Aren't you so impressed with the locomotion on positively hysterical? It is, it is a wonderful system. Look Here at we that. Go. That is a. F Children look away from the screen. I think that Molten is losing this fight. The carnage. We are the going humanity. to the final five seconds of this fight. They are taking it to the judges. Wow, round of applause for Tom Farkas. And headed over to cage four now. Another big bot fight for you folks. Kronk is going to be going up against Semtex. You can see them loading in here. There's Kronk corner in the uh, the pink Eight, square in the blue square. Seven, we have Semtex. Six, five, Little, uh, Union Jack four, flag there. Three. Semtex, two, one of the uh, one, several five, British builders that we have here fight. today. From across the pond, Kyle. Sparks flying in these exchanges. Crunk's blade is is so exacting and able to really just cut slices out of its opponent. Uh, not the largest blade here, not the fastest blade Tap here, out. but absolutely surgical. Look at that. Tap out immediately. Those were, well, I'll say they were important chunks. <laughs> <laughs> Semtex is the original version of this series being built by Andy Russell. The new version, which is also at this event, is Octane. It looks very similar, but with a more purplish hue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but going up against the likes of Krunk with its original driver, Zack Knight. Pretty scary bot. 
Yeah, that, that robot has seen better days. I think we'll be able to progress here. That looks all repairable, but it is uh, going to be frantic time in the pits to, to get that up to snuff. He's got a lot of help in here today from, uh, from Great Britain. There's, I think, three separate teams, essentially. Now, Kyle, I wasn't able to, uh, to check. Oh, here we are, back at cage six, three-pound action. It looks like Kitsune, oh. and that's a tap out. Kitsune and Night Lights. Knockout. Kitsune, I think, winning that. Yeah, that was uh, Night Lights from Team Valkyrie tapping out frantically at the end of that. You can see that, that one hit that we just jumped in for there, uh, exactly what Kitsune wants to do. Go up, kind of nudge with the front, and then tail whip, just fling around and hit with that vertical, uh, excuse me, that horizontal spinner that's mounted on the back of the robot, so. We're, uh, we're gonna have to see, that was a pretty quick tap out. I'm interested to see what led up uh, to that. They were clearly on the ropes. Uh, maybe that was just a kill shot. Yeah, it looked like uh, Bam was very uh, uh, upset about where that hit landed on her bot, and she just needed to tap out very quickly to prevent any further damage. Right. Sometimes when you see that, um, you know, that one particular area, uh, some robots truly do have weak spots. Yeah. And when they take a hit, that's, you really got to stop if you want to have any chance of, of fighting in your next fight. All right, so now we're heading over into cage four. I see Demi Gorgon. And Axis of Evil. Demi Gorgon, of course, uh, piloted, uh, built and piloted by Brendan Bennett Young. Um, Axis of Evil. I don't see Axis of Evil I there. I don't either. Um, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I don't think that that is accurate. Let's see. Color the skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neither of those are no. the, the correct names for those robots. I'm trying to see, is there... No, no, neither of the large uh, cages have anything along those lines loaded into them. Oh, here we are, in cage... Uh, four, they are loading in. Oh, I see. Yes, they are right over there. Yes, yes. We just cut to the wrong uh, cameras. Folks. Yeah, we are in Forgive cage us. one there. I but see. that's that's okay. It was a much more interesting camera angle as it was. Look at that. It's so fluffy, and you're gonna die. Speaking of fluffy, uh, in cage one, where we were looking just a moment ago, that is fluffy about to fight voodoo. Hmm, voodoo. Voodoo. I think that is how they want to spell it. Kind of the same way as hoodoo, but more like voodoo. Mm -hmm. Voot woo, voot woo. See, uh... And Fluffy, Fluffy just wants to give you a hug. Yeah. Just, just a little hug. Fluffy, one really interesting design robot. We've seen these a few times. Uh, rotary lifting arms. Um, very interesting approach. Very interesting way to get your robot off the ground and be able to move them around the arena at your will. Um, takes an incredible amount of driving skill to pull off is yeah. the trouble. So uh, it, uh, it's also a low damage. So you have to not only be a great driver, but you have to be a great driver the entire time. But one of the big advantages is you got a lot of lifting power. You can pick up pretty much anything with those. Right. Not only do you have a lot of lifting power, but the, the electronics, or excuse me, the mechanics that drive those lifters are very compact compared to some other robots. Oh, that's interesting. So no. you can put more armor in, you can put more drive power in, uh, you can get a design that is really robust and can stand up to the hits while you try to control the match. Right, so and it's, it's, while it's not super dramatic to lift a bot up an inch and a half to two inches off the ground. That's all you need. I that's mean, all you need. It's very much, uh, you know, a kindergartner being picked up by Arnold Schwarzenegger here. It's, <laughs> you can, as long as they're not touching the ground, it doesn't matter how much they kick. So we're still uh, marching along here. Excuse There's me, we're maying along here. Yes, we are maying along now. There's the University of Cincinnati Robotics Club. That is uh, Tate Mitchell captaining this particular robot. Look at the focus on that man's face. 
Oh, it's got a little uh, powder puff tail. You know, from this angle, I do kind of see a little bit of a bunny rabbit look. Yeah, a little bit of that aesthetic with the little buddy, uh, fluffy tail. I mm -hmm. see it too. Ooh. Oh, those are fast lifters. You don't usually see that kind of speed out of them. But again, the... the uh, oh, wow. These are kind of cool. Yeah, this is, a, this is a different approach to these rotary lifters than we have seen before. Uh, they don't usually have four sides. Usually they're just flat plates. Yeah, so you slide them under the robot and just tilt them up. But right. this is... This is going to be very different, and this is going to... I, it looks as though this will be able to glide better on the arena floor. That would probably be the point, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I like this. It's, it's a very interesting design. I'm really hopeful that it works out because it's, it's an archetype we don't see much of. I love the use of the conduit clips in the back uh, as like the, the self-writing mechanisms for if it gets flipped over. That way it doesn't do the thing as it were if it gets lifted up into its backside. Very smart. And here's Voodoo, vaguely inspired by Witch Doctor. Mm, I did not realize that. I mean, I could put it together. It makes sense. But uh, it seems that there is something amiss with the Voodoo weapon. Um, Obviously, nothing is amiss with the uh, the fluffy weapon. That that's just no. chugging right along over there. Yeah, seen seen in perfect wor working order here. But this guy, he needs to do a little something, something on it. Yeah, a little bit of a, a curse following them into the arena today. Uh, interesting approach. You see this in smaller robots, Kyle, where. Um, some of the components just kind of float inside of the robot. Ah, yes, not not really a set place for them. They're just kind of flopping around in there. Mm -hmm. it, it's it has its advantages. It feels like it would be wrong, but actually having um, some compliance, some built-in compliance, means that you can have the robot get dented up and the battery just kind of moves instead of getting squished. You know, right. They're, they're advantages. Yeah, so when the shape of the container for all of those things shifts around, the stuff inside can shift around. Exactly. It makes sense. Um, with that said, it makes it harder sometimes to understand when you forgot to plug in a wire. Ah, yeah. So that may be what we're looking at here. We'll find out in a few moments. Don't worry. It's not like everybody's watching you work on your robot. No stress. No pressure. No Take pressure. Time. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> <laughs> we're not all waiting on you. It's not all down to how fast you can operate that screwdriver. It's fine. Let's see if it does the do. So that's Rob Vitolins from Team Fluffy. Team V with Fluffy. You know, putting the robot in the cage with the house bot named Fluffy is also... It's a, a little confusing. It's a choice yeah, that we made. It's a little confusing. But they added the PH. Yeah, that's yeah, true. But it's... Oh. What, what, what happened just there? happened? I, I, there, was, there was a commotion. I yeah. heard a ruckus. So Voodoo not where it's supposed to be. And no, Voodoo struggling to move. Oh, oh. what's that? The oh, minibot has, mini has, has been swallowed. Lodged itself under Senor Fluff, or Senorita Fluff. There it is. So that's what the commotion was. It seems as though Fluffy tried to eat the minibot before the match even started. How did that even happen? I have no idea. <laughs> and go Fluffy back and is watch not that a replay. light robot either. No, that's hundreds of pounds. Oh, the replay we all wanted just... So why? Why are they stuck? What, how, why did Fluffy drive into the minibot? Can we rename Fluffy Kirby? <laughs> just... Does Fluffy now have whatever uh, the minibot oh, powers And there he goes, were. he's eaten. He ate him. Just, he's whoop. gone. Slurp. <laughs> I never thought I'd see, see Fluffy like slurp another robot. <laughs> I had no idea Fluffy had slurping powers. That was amazing. All right, so everybody's intact now. Minibot seems to be working fine. It, Voodoo facing the corner, not quite yeah, sure why. Voodoo still really struggling on drive. It, it is working enough that we can start this match 
And uh, better to hope for some percussive maintenance than to take a Eight, forfeit. Yeah, seven, for sure. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Away we go. Well, that weapon is spinning up just fine. That's exciting. And they're kind of moving. Yeah, that is a movement. Uh, this is the most adorable, spinny, nuzzly situation I've seen in a while. Tiny robot versus egg beaters with a cotton tail. Oh, Kyle, do you know what I want to see? I want to see the minibot become the drive system I for think the that weapon that's... system on the main robot. I think that's pretty inevitable at this time. Ooh, they were actually able to get themselves turned around and facing towards Fluffy there. Fluffy spending all their time with the minibot, not really going after the main bot. No, I, I mean, have you seen that spinner, Kyle? Do you want to? No, no, thank you. That was a nice pin there from the, from the minibot. Voodoo's minibot pin. Put your face the in wall. there. I, I wouldn't want to do it. So here we go, Minibot coming in behind, trying to move. Yeah, there, there we you go. go. Look, that's controlled movement of a sort. It's just a detached drive system is all. Right, which is valid. We have um, seen that once before. Oh, interesting, that lifting bar already off center. Did not take a large hit in order to uh, put that off kilter. Fluffy really looks like something that uh, Eggman, a.k.a. Dr. Robotnik, would design in the Sonic video games, you I know? I can see that, yeah. Oh, we have... Did we entirely lose one? Yes, we did. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It flopped itself all the way off. How for a robot that is essentially non-functional, the, the way the team has dominated here from, from Voodoo is pretty yeah. impressive. Hard-working minibot here, hard-working. I'm realizing there is just no right rear wheel whatsoever on Voodoo. Oh, yeah. In fact, yeah. the left wheel also seems to be semi-gone. And I, did they just go into the arena that way and we missed it? Oh, that, see, that's the lifting action that they want. Yeah, and that was pretty smart, getting underneath their uh, their front plow with their weapon. The minibot has stopped. We are going to go to a countdown. I don't know that I would have just driven my face into the giant spinning weapon while you were about to win. Yeah, especially since they lost their other weapon just driving into the minibot. Yeah, we have no movement from either robot, and it's anyone's guess as to whether or not it will stay that way. I don't see any wheels spinning. Oh, there we are, it's back. Hey, there we go. Just barely. Just barely, a little bit of motion. And uh, that's the end of the match. This one will go to a judge's decision. Oh, that is not the way you want to end that fight. Yeah, that's, that's about the facial expression I expected. <laughs> Nobody's very happy I, with their performance. We want to be a little more kind than that, Kyle, than uh, the, the pay, cage side banter is right now, but suffice to say. Yeah, so, uh, I can see why they're feeling that way. We'll yeah. put it that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can see why they're feeling that way. It's disappointing. You it want is. your bot to work at least. And you want your opponent to work. Everybody yeah. here wants a good fight, and we, we want to really see... Uh, things shine you know the, the, especially new designs uh like we saw in this match you would think uh it'd be a perfect time to to show off what that new design can do and, and when it doesn't happen it's it's but that's what the pits are for they'll go upstairs they'll fix it they'll come back better faster stronger and we'll get to enjoy it next time yeah i just uh, i hope we get a little bit more lifty action from fluffy next time i think that's a very cool design super clever um so here we are watching Glacier versus Jam. This is cage six action. Tap and uh, that's tap out from somebody. I'm not sure who. Neither bot looked very happy in that shot. Not in the least. You can see that finger tech beater bar just kind of resting against the ground. Um, 
really the opposite of anywhere it would want to be. Ooh, is that finger tech or is that a custom job? This is a custom job yeah. on the other robot is finger tech. Ah, yes. This is a beater bar v beater bar kind of situation. That beater bar is looking pretty beat. Yeah, there it has seen better days. But it appears to be an aluminum beater bar, and you kind of you kind of expect that. Yeah, it's aluminum with steel reinforced plates. Ah. In the meantime, we are gonna go to Allie. Allie, how are you doing? Allie. All right, so there. I'm here with Kate, cookie crumbler, and anything with a cookie really draws me in. But then I was talking to Kate, and I realized it is her first time here. They have five bots. It is a family affair. So tell me a little bit about what brought you to NHRL and where, you came, where you're coming from. Of course. So um, our family works together, and we coach a team of students at our school. Um, and, you know, throughout the years, we've, always, we've been building robots with these kids, let, helping them do their own combat robotics competition. And we were like, we want to build our own bots and compete in our own competition. So we had my dad over here, who's coached the team for years, um, build his own bot along with the rest of us. And we even brought some of the bots from our middle school team here to be competitive in the competition itself. And you did tell me that your first round forfeited and you wanted to make sure that they knew that you wanted to meet them. Yes! Um, I believe their name was Prince, and I'm so sad because I didn't get to meet them. They left me high and dry, and I want to meet them. It's all about friendly competition here, and we can't wait to see <laughs> what you do next. Thanks so much for speaking with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the better team T-shirts I've seen in a while. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I talked to them in the pits earlier today. That entire side of the pits is full of enthusiasm. I, the... The characters that we attract in doing this. I mean, who would have thought that fighting robots in giant cages in front of an audience would have would attracted some, some interesting, interesting folks? Yeah, yeah but, but I'm, it's funny. You expect it, and then you just get surprised and surprised and surprised. <laughs> and it never stops. It's this wheel of, of wonderful, fun um, novelty that never ends. Uh, speaking of weird characters, uh, we did get a official confirmation, unanimous judge's decision for Fluffy in that last fight. Perfect. Eight, My so favorite seven, weird character in that particular six, fight. Congratulations five, to Rob. That's four, very good for him. Three. Let's head over to cage four. We've got a fight going. The Axis is a, <coughs> excuse me, Axis of Evil versus Demigorg. Morgan. Axis of Evil, of course, uh, the newest edition of the Star Child esque spinning robot from Brandon Zelinsky. Trying its best to rain terror down from above with its thwack spinner. Uh, my favorite thing thus far about Axis of Evil is the name of their new mini bot. It's called Geneva Suggestion. Oh, I did not notice this. <laughs> that is a delight. Isn't it delightful? It's a Geneva suggestion. Some Somebody is here to play the villain, and uh, I think it's going to be Axis of Evil. Demi Gorgon really struggling to move here. Again, Brandon Bennett Young in the arena. Um, veteran builder, very talented. Weapon not spinning right now, but drive system functioning to a large extent, we'll say. Brennan was telling me that he was super proud that he had two fully and complete versions of Demi Gorgon ready for this event, and then in their very first match had the entire weapon shaft ejected from Demi Gorgon after a massive hit from Blue Cheese. So he's now down to one because there's pretty much no recovering the, uh, the first Demi Gorgon he had running today. But this is why we come prepared. This is why you bring multiple robots because uh, Blue Cheese might. Oh, Ooh, that looked rough. You can see, Kyle, those uh, pl dense plastic UHMW kind of, uh, uh, they are training wheels, but uh, stabilizers, outriggers on Axis of Evil are flexible. So when it hits hard, it can actually hit the ground hard enough that its weapon hits the ground and, uh, yeah, it'll bounce itself all around the arena. Um, Which is just the kind of chaos that we enjoy at this particular uh, stage of the event. And more importantly, it's, it's chaos that they risk so that they can get a better hit on their opponent. If those bars weren't flexible, they'd never bounce around, but they might not hit their opponent as hard. And what fun would that be? 
Very true. And there, the flexibility also gives them a, a little bit more, um, a, a less of a chance of getting stuck. They can bounce themselves out of a lot of situations, whereas they would kind of get stuck up on those if they were less flexible and more rigid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really interesting to see the evolution of the big wheel design, the huge inspired robot builds. Oh, it looks like the weapon system now is down on Axis of Evil. Really amazing to see the weapon size on Axis of Evil. Uh, that is a big spinner for it a is. robot that size. We are going to go to the judges here. Both these robots functioning, but uh, I have my suspicions, Kyle. And that's the end of that match. Both bots showing their the, what's left of their functionality at this point. This one will go to the judges. Team Omega hanging out in their lovely Hawaiian gear, Hawaiian shirt attire, attire. Their ritual garb. That is what they wear, yeah. Uh, but they're not a cult. They don't have ritual garb. Uh, can you have ritual garb if you're not a cult? I mean, it's less likely. I, yeah. <laughs> it's less likely. Your chances of ritual garb going up <laughs> linearly as your chances of being a cult go down. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Down. Very true, very true. Uh, no, I believe we are going to a judge's decision. And, uh, please disregard that very final sounding knockout. Yeah, definitely not a knockout. Judge's decision. We'll see what they say. Team Omega fielding two robots at this event. You have Lil Riff and Axis of Evil. Mm -hmm. Both really cool robots. Really interesting designs. I, I love that they bring something new. And it's, it's one of those times when you have a talented team of people who have shown up... Uh, Certainly to try hard, but the thing that they want to do is see what they can do that's fun. Yeah. And uh, it's a magical thing when you get a group of people who are not only thrill seekers and fun seekers, but just really, really talented. Yeah, really talented builders, really talented people. And uh, with them today is Tommy Wong and uh, Droopy. Yeah. Joining uh, them at their pit desk and at their table. Uh, kidnapped all the way from California. You know, you gotta, you mm -hmm. gotta. Um, I gotta say, I went and looked at the new version of Droopy today. It looks phenomenal. It's intimidating. It's so scary. It, uh, it's a robot that, to me, I'm like, I don't know if I'd want to fight that with my 12-pounder. And then you realize it is in It's the, a three-pounder. It's a three-pound class robot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a really... The hits that that thing is capable, or I think that it will be capable of, um, is just going to make a great show. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Plus... All right. So we do have an official judge's decision on that last match. All right. So let's see. Here that should comes. be coming in shortly. There we go. Ooh, split decision for Demogorgon. Wow. I am surprised at that, Kyle. All right. So that is a little bit controversial, in my opinion. I think so. I, it's, uh, I kind of expected a split decision. Same. Uh, or at least a close. Sometimes you have a, a three to one. I'm sorry, a three to zero oh decision, but it's still close. Yeah. You know, uh, I did not expect... Demogorgon to walk away with that. Me neither. That's really, uh, that's really intense, actually. There, I mean, there was a, I don't know. I wonder what the logic there was. Don't know. I mean, they were uh, having weapon functionality issues and some some driving issues there at the end. That's true. So. And, and to be sure, uh, Brandon did an excellent job with the functionality that he was afforded yes. with the robot. I mean, of course, he, he always he, does. He, he do yes, true. But he really... It lined up and continued to to check all the boxes that you would want to see for control. Uh, a little bit less so for aggression, but still. Um, but it's, it's so hard to overcome that lack of a working weapon for most of the yeah. match. I, I really am surprised. It might have something to do with control. I mean, one thing about the just design of Axis of Evil, it's a hard robot to control in general. Right. So that might have something to do with it, and their weapon was not working at all at the end of that match. So... That's true. That's true. It's, they did kind of end up in the same level of functionality towards the end of the yep. match, and that, that means a lot. Yep, absolutely. So. Um, so we are now, we are going to go to our friend Allie, who has somebody for us in the pits. I do. Um, it's a very special day when you find someone. It's their first time to the States, and it's to be at NHRL. So I want to bring in J.P. McKinley. He is here from Ireland, and we were talking about the best pizza to get in this area. But what we should be talking about is how you did earlier this morning and why you decided to make this your first time to the States to come to NHRL. Well, I decided to come here for the first time because uh, the robot is about nine years old. So if it gets ripped off, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, and as for the first fight, yeah, we, we won. We had a few electrical issues. I think we might have worked through it, but that's what I'm going to find out in the, in the next fight. So, uh, yes, yeah. so four with Pendulum. Again, you were telling me that you fought a lot in the UK, first time here. Are you going in with a different strategy um, now being here, feeling this energy, seeing some of the bots you're competing against? Uh, yeah, after looking at some of the robots, I'm just here to have fun. <laughs> The, the robots that are here are just on another level. They, uh, Eight, I think seven, I'm going to come back next year six, and redesign five, everything and try, four, and try and compete three, properly like next two, year. Yeah. Well, one, we're so happy five, to have you. Good luck in your next fight, and I hope you find the pizza that we were talking about here. Thick crust thick pizza. Crust. You have to get thick crust. Yeah. Thank you. That's all right. Cage five. Here we are. We have uh, Revenge of Mouse Mouse. And uh, draft one, this is the first draft. Mouse Mouse just came out spinning that flail tail, and now it seems as though they have lost a wheel. Oh, and now they've, and lost, now the they've lost the flail. Yeah. I think there's still a tail. Uh, it seems as though the tail is wrapped up in the weapon of, of draft one. I believe that we have an entanglement situation going on I now. think we do. Uh... Revenge of Mouse Mouse has, has turned into a tow vehicle <laughs> for draft one. <laughs> Everybody um, is now spinning down their weapons so that we can get in there and try to separate these bots. But you know what's not fun? Separating a string from a spinner weapon. No, that is, a, it can turn into a nightmare. Let's hope that it's relatively straightforward here. I believe that that uh, flail mace end is attached by essentially a, a chain rather than a string. Are you sure? Uh, I'm it not looked sure. like a rope. I, I, I'm pretty sure he just tied a rope on. Look at that. That's oh, like that looks eye. like a knot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a rope. You're 100 yes. percent correct. You know, that's like a clothesline. Like that's what you would hang up your your uh, your your wet clothing with. No, that is that is 2,000 pound force rated rock climbing twine, Kyle. <laughs> That's not exactly Tom's you could, style. You could hang a horse from a hot air balloon with that. I love that it's a uh, like straight up eye bolt, like you would hang a plant from in your house too. Mm -hmm. This is what makes me so happy about this bot. They wanted this to just be a flail bot. That was the whole plan. But then when they when NHRO came back and said you can't just have a flail as your weapon, you have to have an active weapon. They put the undercutter on. I, I admire thin. that. It's cute. It's done a couple of good hits today. Really interesting, the, uh, not fake wheels, but the, uh, the clear wheels that are in the front, the, the little underrider things that it, it rides on so that that undercutter doesn't hit the ground. Uh, interesting to see how that will hold up in, in future matches, basically. You don't want that undercutter riding on the ground of the whole match. Yeah, not a great idea. All right, so they just removed the string. Let's see if they were able to get it all out of that housing for the weapon, though, because, you know, their job is to separate the robots. Their job is not to make sure your robots are functional after the fact. So it does look like they got a little bit of weapon there. Yep, that is spinning. And away we go, apparently. Oh, chunks. Ooh, that was a chunk ripped off. Yeah. I mean, we, we sleep on that front spinner a little bit, and obviously uh, Revenge of Mouse Mouse only has one wheel, but... That undercutter is, is no joke. Apparently not. Yeah, ripped off the whole side armor package there on draft one. Those are also some of the angriest googly eyes I've ever seen. Absolutely angriest googly eyes, yes. The, the eyebrows are what do it. I think so, yeah. we. It's amazing how those little touches. This is where, why I absolutely love Tom Farkas. He passed safety yesterday. So today he had time to make his bot look more evil so the ears went on like today the paint the paint job on the ears the eyebrows happened today all of that was today it worked this morning wow, and as far as tom's concerned crucial work for this robot yeah i mean we wouldn't i wouldn't be nearly as endeared if there were <laughs> if there were no ears on this robot with cute little pink insides i mean it's perfect it's just perfect this is like a premium example of robot rodentia and I'm, I'm so thrilled to see it. Now, I will say that string for the flail tail is still very... No, it is very much there. It could very much entangle an opponent. Uh, draft one is going to have to 
take some care not to inhale that again. Yeah, it's it's almost like a separate armor piece on the back. Just keep away a uh, keep away area for flail one. Oh no. Are we entailed entangled again? We somehow? I can't tell. I can't tell. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like they both just got stopped in that position. Yeah, this is the end of the match. This is going to go to the judges. Um, I can see this going either way, which is just wonderful. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is an entire... the the One of the weapons and wheels are missing on Revenge of Mouse Mouse. Yes, depending on how you classify the flail, you could definitely argue that that weapon is... You're right, is that is up to the judge. Now, for Tom, that's the main weapon. I understand, but we have established earlier that NHRL didn't consider it an active weapon. So true. does it count? Hard to say. We're going to cage six here. This is... Project Tucker and... Uh, Orcus, I think, is the other robot. Yes, Orcus is the other robot. Uh, interested to see how this goes. You can see there's a lot of debris in this arena. Um, the spinner here is a, uh, how do we want to say it? It is a horizontal spinner that uses counterweights on the end of strings, I believe. That Fun. Have, have now uh, exploded. You can see the top still able to spin, but yep, no longer spinning anything of weight. Yeah. Um, kind of a turbo flail. Turbo flail, I like that. Mm -hmm. a, a high velocity flail. Yeah, it's important to point out that flails are allowed. They just have to have their own motor system, their own weapon system that goes with them. Although we do allow flak bots also. So it's, it's a little bit of a fun one. It is, yes. And as I saw earlier today uh, on a wonderful t-shirt, thwack is not whack, Tom. <laughs> But the whole point of a thwack is to... Yeah, yeah. Thwacks do whack, but that does not mean that they are whack. Got it. You can embody something without being that something. Is it W-A-C-K or W-H-A-C-K? That's my question. You know, I don't know. I don't remember. I would. That's a t-shirt I want, Kyle. It's whack, not whack. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's, I think, where we need to go. Oh, God, that is a little horrifying sight there. This uh, is this is how Orcus rolls. Every every single time. Takes masking suggestions very seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so it looks like this one will go to the judges as well. Doing the, the fiddly diddly to get the robot safe, turned off. Safety lock, etc. You can see the look of consternation on his face. Not sure how that's going to go. Confusion, the, the, the sadness, it's just so emotive. <laughs> we're All right, we're going to so go. We're going to go see our friend Lindsay. Lindsay, what do you got for us? Hello. Um, whoa. So, yeah, there's still a ton of buzz happening in YouTube right now. It's uh, uh, the Brazilian fans are so enthusiastic. Uh, I've, I've honestly never seen anything like it. Would you say that the Brazilian enthusiasm is uh, waning or waxing? Oh, it's not waning. Okay. No, no. This is... Uh, it's just a building up to a crescendo that I imagine will happen when Rato <laughs> comes on screen. Um, I've already chatted with him, and he is excited to chat with me after his next uh, oh, his fight. So uh, I'm really looking forward to showing him all the enthusiasm on YouTube right now and the, the uproar he is causing just by being here. That's awesome. We're eager to see it. We are. I got to watch him do a test spin up earlier today. It's so cool. Um, all right, so we have a unanimous decision from that last fight. Draft one is your winner. They have beaten Revenge of Mouse Mouse unanimously. So congratulations to them. They will be moving on. Uh, Revenge of Mouse Mouse, a little bit more work to do. Perhaps they've got to add, add a danger tale. More, more mouse. Revenge of Mouse Mouse Mouse. More Revenge of Mouse Mouse Mouse. Revenge, Revenge of Mouse Mouse. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Revenge, Revenge, Mouse, Mouse, Mouse. Revenge, Revenge, Mouse, Mouse, Mouse. Uh, this the Reckoning. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 
Some part part two. Part reckoning part two. <laughs> I'm yeah. into it. Um, Extended cut. Tom Farkas, absolutely love the fact that he's building more competitive but also weird robots, right? So it's such a fine line to walk building these robots that that have this flair and are still. Um, yeah, competitive and entertaining, and you never know what's going to happen. And it's it's a wonderful ability that he brings. He's doing a great job of just keeping NHRL a little weird. Yeah, just a little is, weird. That's what we want. Yeah, you got to have it. You got to have it. Uh, all right, so we are going to go talk to Ali. She has one of our competitors from Puerto Rico. Yes, oh. I have Ricardo here. It is their first time, and we I was Juggle asking them. To the desk with uh -oh. your bot, please. Juggle not to the desk with your bot. Well, if you're jungle not, go to the desk with your bot. But let's get back to Ricardo. You were telling us that there's not a lot of combat robotics in Puerto Rico. So I really want to know, how did you even get into this? Honestly, uh, it will have to be our, because we're the sec second generation of Robobots. The original team was founded in 2004, and they competed from 2004 and 2007 in Robot Wars in the show on ABC, in the heavyweight class. And they, the first time they competed, they became like national heroes because they won, and the robot was called Alakarang, and it was, uh, it came back completely untouched. It just de it devastated. And so they kind of became like a, like uh, like a, the pride of our campus. So our team has a, a, kind of like a legacy. And so we, it's kind of the most pop, one of the popular, most popular teams on our campus. So we got interested and also we all of us here, we're mechanical engineer majors and we like robots and who doesn't like robots fighting? Well, welcome to NHRL. I know you said this morning that the first fight, you still got a knockout, correct? Yeah. But it wasn't the way you thought you were going to get one? No. Uh, our competitor, they managed to damage our one of the uh, gearboxes in our dry train, so we lost uh, the motion in our robot. But our weapon was stronger than their weapon, so we managed to disconnect one of the cables, one of the electrical systems. And we managed in the remaining 20 seconds a KO in the first round. Congratulations and good luck carrying on the le legacy of RumbleBots. I know that's a lot of pressure, but I think you can do it. Can't wait to see what you do. Thank you pretty much. What a cool team. Ed, this is it's one of my favorite things seeing. We've got, uh, as he said, a kind of a second generation going on. Yep. Um, robot combat has been around a long time, but it had this, this kind of blow up. Uh, as a lot of uh, RC type sports did. And now it's it's this whole new group of people that are getting involved, saw what happened in the you know early 2000s, the late 90s, uh, and have come back. People end up fighting their, uh, their mentors, uh, their heroes from television. It's this kind of wonderful uh, revitalization of the sport and we're just in the thick of it. And it's the kind of sport where if you are learning, if you are innovative, you can continue to be competitive from 1999 all the way till now. That is the wonderful thing. You know, imagine if you had, uh, uh, I'm terrible with uh, sports ball references, but just imagine if you had uh, a Hall of Famer coming back from 40 years ago, 40 years ago, and still being able Eight, to like, you know, seven, do the thing. Do yeah. the thing. Absolutely. We get to have that, Four, which is wonderful. Three, We're going to head two, over to uh, one, one of the fight. cages. I'm not Robots sure which cage fight. six, apparently, it is. Um, there we are. There we are. Oh, this is one of the more entertaining um, <laughs> robots. Really, um, oh, interesting. What, uh, we had a bit of a camera glitch there, Kyle. I'm not sure yeah, how that, that was that was a older fight, I believe, older fight footage. I, I no. thought so, I was very excited to see it, and then it, it just poofed. And then it just poofed. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Shogo not going up against instant regret here. Jogo Nod is the big spinning disc weapon over there in the pink square. Instant regret down there in the blue square. Instant regret uh, has been able to get its uh, Jogo Nod counterpart on its back, which is really what it wants to do. Jogo Nod is uh, 
that entire weapon system is incredibly precarious, in my opinion. Yeah, it looks pretty uh, sketchy. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot for it to be disabled. It hits hard, don't get me wrong. Sure. You don't want to be on the wrong end of it. Yeah. Uh, but instant regret, if they can get around even a little bit, get their opponent upside down, they can take out that weapon belt. Um, it's just Juggernaut is very quick to self-right, very quick to turn around. Maybe not the best control in the game, but uh, it's a hard thing to take advantage of in that brief moment where it's moment. Instant Regret, one of the many Bad Crew Team Cybears competitors here today. This is uh, captained by Jesus. And uh, what a wonderful job controlling this match. Slamming Juggo not into the wall, holding them in place. They're able to hold that pin for 10 seconds before they have to back off. I see the weapon belt has gone down on Juggernaut. Of course, the weapon here on Instant Regret has barely been functioning the entirety of this event. Yeah, they're essentially a push bot, control bot, since this has started. Now, that said, uh, Instant Regret, much better uh, general shape to be a push bot than Juggernaut. Juggernaut is now upside down, and as you can see, when they're upside down, their wheels don't touch the ground, so they are just no, that, floating around up there. That is a non-invertible design. The weapon system really needs to be able to at least twitch in order to self right And they're getting nothing. I mean, you know, it's hard to twitch without a belt. Yes. Got it. Speaking of which, we're live streaming on Twitch for the first time. And I'm wearing a belt. That's awesome. I had to bring it full circle. <laughs> live streaming on YouTube and on Twitch for all the kids who like the Twitch. No twitching at all from Juggernaut. They are just uh, flailing. Yeah, yeah, and instant regret here. Having some left side drive issues does seem to be able to function a little bit, but not enough to really, you know, semi-controlled movement, let's say. Yeah. Uh, some robots really able to drive okay on just one wheel. Not so much instant regret. We're going to, while, while we uh, wait for this judge's decision to come in, we're going to go to Allie. Allie, how are you? I'm great, but I'm going to need some help pronouncing this because I just counted and there are 18 letters and that's like 10 more than words I can usually pronounce. So why don't you tell me, Milo, helicopter chopter? Helicopter chopter. I love it. Now, they are a brother team from Boston, 8, 12, 13. I'm sorry, I sold you short here, but tell me a little bit about, this is your second time here. What did you guys build? I think it had a dog bowl at first, right? Yeah, so the first time we came, it was a dog bowl, uh, an aluminum dog bowl, and it was flipped upside down and bolted to the base, but it got completely ripped apart. So we decided to upgrade to the 3D printed TPU this time around, and yeah. And how is it working with your older brother? Do you guys get along well? Um, most of times, yes. <laughs> I know, it's tough working with family, but you guys got a forfeit through the first round, and now you guys are off to the second. You're driving? Who's driving? Um, I'm driving my mini bot. Okay. I'm driving the main bot. All right, mini bot, mini bot. It has been great talking to you guys. Good luck in the next round, and tell me one more time how you pronounce this name. Heli Kabopto Chopter. Heli Kabopto Chopter. Good luck. <laughs> I have been practicing that name all week. Heli Kabopto Chopter? Heli Kabopto Chopter, yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And you got to be able to say it fast for a fight, right? Uh, yeah, at least three times. Uh, easily. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they specifically chose that name to trip us up. I understand. Yeah. That was their whole goal, was to make us uh, stumble about. So I want to prove that we can do it. I'm probably going to mess it up at least three that's, or four times. That's okay. Yeah. It's a long day. It's hard not to. It's uh, Bennett Dower's cool kid. They're looking for yeah. their first win ever here today. They do have a bye, but they want to actually get the W, get right. the knockout, get the... And I think they've got a good With chance. With Helen Kabopto Shop. Yes. It's a really cool bot. Love the fact that they've upgraded already to printing the thing out of TPU. A lot of people don't even figure that out until the, at least their third the or fourth The learning event. curve is just incredible. 
Yeah. And I don't mean that in a, well, it's it's incredible at the rate it goes and the rate it has to go, but also how, how quickly people pick it up. It's, yeah, I mean, he's 13, right? And yeah. his little brother's, what, eight? Like, they're figuring out, oh, you know what? This would work a lot better if we used TPU printed materials. That seems to be what everybody else is doing. Let's work that out. Yeah, um, half of kids are just practicing, you know, their acronyms at that point and don't, they have no idea what TPU is. No, I mean, they might, they still might not know what the acronym is, but they printed the bot out of it, yeah. so. Sometimes that's all you need to know. All right, so we're going to talk, so that is a overhead spinner, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about a vertical spinner. So here's a really good example of a vertical spinner in Krunk. Um, so vertical spinner, they're very destructive. They've got a lot of stability and they knock their opponents into the air while keeping their own body kind of pinned to the ground with those hits. They do have a, very, a bit of an issue with gyroscopic precession. Which is, which is to say, basically, that, that robot has a big spinning disc, yep. which creates these gyroscopic effects, and it's hard to steer. Right. The whole robot will tilt if you try to turn left or right. And people can take advantage of that by going underneath your bot, knocking you into the wall, taking, uh, taking you out of the game. Mm -hmm. um, it needs a good ground game, and they do take a little bit of time to spin up. Maybe not as big as some of those large horizontal spinners, but they do take a little bit of time right. to get there, up to full speed. There is time in between each hit, usually, where it's just not at full strength. And of course, we see limited weapon size. Limited weapon size, important just because of the gyroscopic possession. It will, it will have more problems as the weapon gets bigger. So here's some gyro dancing you could see here. This is Sombra. And you can use the gyroscopic procession to self-right as well, which we could see Sombra doing there. But if yeah. they're turning, they're going to pop that one side up into the air. Depending on where your opponent is, they can take full advantage of that side of your robot being off the ground. Exactly. But you see that immense hit where the robot flies up into the air. Uh, one of the greatest advantages of the vertical spinner class is that they throw their opponents up in the air and they're completely um, at their opponent's mercy until they can either situate themselves on the ground yep. um, or their opponent decides to stop hitting them. Wow, that was a beautiful hit there from Yob Null. Probably one of the most deadly vertical spinners in that weight class. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is your vertical spinner crash course. Uh, we'll uh, have more crash courses later. Yeah, I like this addition to the uh, to the broadcast. I think it's a good idea. We'll talk a little bit about how these weapons work, what the advantages are, why some people choose them, um, why some people choose some other ones. And maybe next event, we'll add in those weapons that everybody says we should have, but we shouldn't, like uh, tasers or um, acid. Right. <laughs> oil spill, oil slicks. Oil slicks is always a good one. Uh, EMP devices, that's my other favorite one that comes up all the time. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I like uh, having my cell phone and... Uh, you know, not <laughs> getting in trouble with the FCC. Yeah, all of those are really good, generally speaking. But yeah, um, I, I am really excited to see this. We have so many people uh, at home who are watching. Uh, this might be your first time. This might be your second time. Um, or maybe you're just wonderful and you're enthusiastic to watch, but you have questions about why do we call this? Why do we say that? What's going on here? The, we're trying to help uh, bring you all into the fray and, and make you experts too. Because uh, yeah. the, the more the more you know, the more you get to enjoy what's going on around you. Yeah, and I'd say by the numbers, the vertical spinner is the most common robot that you'll find at NHRL. There's mm -hmm. a lot of advantages to it. Um, you do have to build it well in order to do well with it. But if you get those things working, man, you get some big hits. You get some deadly, deadly machines out of it. We will sometimes talk about uh, the meta, you know, the meta game yep. of combat robotics. And that's all about playing to the strengths of basically what, what robot uh, is going to be most successful against the other robots that happen to be competing, um, most people will come down to the vertical spinner to say. We're gonna go back to Allie. Allie is upstairs with another yes. builder. I'm with Casey with Iteration. They are very familiar with NHRL. We have covered them a lot because they are pretty good. And they are here again. But I want to know, you know, you were here in March. Now it's May. Are you going with a different strategy this time? Yeah, so we actually went with two different versions of our beater bars this time. Iteration had a new weapon. Um, weapon armor configuration and swole was kind of the basic version from we had that we had previously so this time we're going completely different we tried two different versions today and have moved forward with iteration so we're seeing what we have left from spares and making it work between the two 
Is there anyone that you would be really excited to fight in the next few rounds? So Casey is actually really excited to fight Kronk. Again, we fought Prom Hedda in the last but um, in March, and so we're, yeah, they're both together, um, working together. So it's been fun to see the competitiveness between the two. Well, great. Good luck to you. We can't wait to see what you do. I know you've come in second once before, so I bet we're going for first this time. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I like the modesty. We don't have a lot of spares left, so we'll see. Thanks so much for talking to us, and good luck. Awesome. Thank you so much for that interview with CJ, Casey Jermiasen. Uh, I love the swole bar concept. I think it's really cool. I think it's interesting that it's made out of mild steel at that weight class. Yeah, it's sometimes you want that, though. The trouble, well, there's a lot of troubles with going with hardened steel. Uh, if you're hardening it before the factory, using hardened stock to make it out of, it's very hard to uh, obviously do the machining. Mm -hmm. And what you end up doing is introducing this chance of cracks mm. uh, and like a, an explosive failure. Um, and you'd kind of rather have something soft that could bend a little bit maybe. Maybe it gets a little unbalanced. Uh, and you could put hard things on the end of it right. that actually do the hits. Um, yeah, the knuckles essentially is what right. Exactly. Being. Imagine brass knuckles that you have, um, you know, for your uh, backyard brawls that I'm sure you're all having at home. <laughs> uh, they're the equivalent of brass knuckles for your robot, essentially. And I love we see that. that a lot in the smaller weight classes, and it makes sense again to see it in the larger ones. Yeah, it's such a cool idea to just literally scale an idea from the three pound up to the twelve pound. It seems to be very effective. Um, normally, those finger tech beater bars at the three pound are aluminum, are they not? Exactly. So steel is already a step up. Yeah. But again, going back to the the knuckle dusters, at that the three pound robots have spots to attach hardened steel yep. impactors, and so you see the same thing at the uh, larger weight classes. You can, if you want, attach hardened steel or a hard facing, or some other sort of treatment or addition that is going to make it just you know a little bit. Uh, a little bit more intense. So they do have uh, one issue that they're, they're kind of working their way through the, today. Mm -hmm. I spoke with Casey this morning. Apparently, their inner pulley, mm -hmm. the one that's connected to their motor, sure. is nylon. Yes. They intended to have aluminum ones, mm -hmm. but they are not going to be arriving now till Thursday. There was a delay in the shipping of those. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're running the nylon ones, uh, which means that uh, there's a little bit more fear of that melting, burning out, whatnot. Yes. Um, so that that's something to keep an eye on with those swole bar bots today. And it's something we'll see, especially as the day goes on. Um, it'll spin up fine, more than likely. It'll spin up fine a few times. As it sits there, it has to do it over and over again. It heats up, it melts, and it fails. Yeah. So keep an eye on that, folks, and see you know if the performance degrades over the course of the day or even the course of a single match. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to go to cage eight right now. So this is Fidget Killer and Bloodfish. You gotta love the names of these robots. It's amazing. We've had probably thousands of robots here at this point, and the names just keep coming. I I keep expecting the creativity to uh, hit its apex. So Fidget Killer struggling to spin up, and it looks like Bloodfish is a, a wedge bot with a tilted spinner on it, a uh, diagonal sp a spinner of some sort. A little Texas twistery, maybe? Not yeah. Quite. Hard to say. It, it looks like that may be more of a uh, saw blade type deal, Kyle, than you a... You think you're right. And the idea, I would assume here, is for the front wedge to get under the opponent, and you can push that saw blade into your opponent as it goes up against the wall, um, slicing, dicing, uh, you know, slap chopping. Looks like they are having a little bit of issue with their left side drivetrain, which is making them do these cool little pirouettes. Mm -hmm. Like a ballerina. Why was my ballerina Italian? Uh, you're allowed to be an Italian ballerina. Okay, well. Ballerino. Well, is, is that right? I guess it would make, especially in Italian. In Italian, it would make sense. There we go. Nice pin for Bloodfish up against the wall there. Fidget spinner, or what is it? Fidget killer not really getting out of that. It's interesting. The weapon is 
intermittently spinning up on Fidget Killer. Yeah, it, uh, it's one of those things where I think you have uh, either ESC or connection to that ESC issue. Um, brushless motors are hard, Kyle. Brushless motors are hard. It's true. Nice little shot of the back graphic on Bloodfish. Cool branding, you gotta appreciate that. Look I at the, certainly the do. the rubber peeling off of the wheels on Fidget Killer. I wonder if that rubber was added after the fact or they're just delaminating the way it always does. All right, we are now finished with that match. That will go to a judge's decision. While we wait uh, on that decision, we are gonna head to another fight in cage one. All, All right. right, so we are now finally into the bracket of the 30 pound division. This is Sombra 30 versus Catalyst, two big vertical spinners, Sombra being the tri-bar drum spinner, Catalyst being this giant disc spinner over there in the pink corner. Both these robots absolutely lethal, absolutely incredibly hard hitting. Uh, we're gonna see some action here as long as these two robots are uh, on their A game. Now the brackets finally starting means that you can log in and check out the brackets. They are going to be on NHRL.com. Um, these ones Eight, are true finals seven, for NHRL six, May, 20, uh, five, May 23rd, four, or 2023, three, 30 pounds. Two, one, the winner of this five, fight has to go on to face five, Waddles in the next the round. Force and Whoa. armor already removed from Catalyst. Catalyst getting taken apart in the corner, not moving much. Ouch. Sombra not taking any chances, immediately hitting as soon as its opponent even attempts to move. You have a fire in the arena. Oh, those are electronics, Kyle. Yeah, that's not good. And it does look like that frame is the same shape it was when that bot came into the arena either. No, that uh, used to be a flat plane and Tap is out. now a, uh, I don't know, Twizzler? A little bit of twisty, a little bit twisty. Tamaki doing an excellent job of driving Sombra 30. Excellent work. Nice job, Tamaki. Tamaki is driving this bot with the goal of getting it qualified. But if he keeps driving like that and keeps hitting like that, this bot's not just gonna qualify. Tamaki's gonna be walking out of here with a golden dumpster and $1,000 today. Very impressive work. So that means Sombra gets to face off against Waddles in the next round in the qualifying quarterfinals. Whew, that'll be a tough test for them. Truly, here we go with the replay. You can see Sombra immediately taking that fork and the side armor off. And it was really just that one hit. Critical damage. Uh, absolutely not, uh, his opponent absolutely not able to recover. Very decisive win. Extremely. Tamaki, just such a talented driver. True. And having so much fun. Look at just the joy on that man's face. He's having a blast out there today. Breaking toys. There you see Rato in the background. He's here to support his friends. I am really cool. absolutely interested to see how the rest of those fights go. I think, I mean, Sombra always has a good day. Yeah. I, I've never seen them show up to an event and, and not full send, uh, so what's not to be excited about? Oh, Lindsay, Lindsay, you're back. Hello. Um, I'm back again. Um, as you can imagine, uh, just the very sight of Rato uh, on the stream. I, I didn't think the chat could go any faster, but uh, it is. Uh, but what I wanted to share is something really interesting um, that I'm seeing in uh, Twitch. People are sharing photos of their setup at home oh. uh, where they're watching Bread Zone. They have the mainstream on. Now, listen, I've been working from home for three years from this. I only have this laptop, uh, no other monitor, nothing. Uh, but some people out there, just to watch NHRL, literally have eight screens. Whoa. It's like a command center. <laughs> um, and they're doing it right. So if you're like me and you're just watching on a laptop, you're doing it wrong. You got to get eight monitors. At least. At least. Lindsay, I Make gotta ask 10. you, how's your uh, how's your Portuguese coming along? 
not good. <laughs> Boy Mallow. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Well, you'll learn by the end of the day. I'm sure you'll have at least, you know, 100 words figured out in that vocabulary. Uh, I've learned the word for rat. <laughs> <laughs> it's ratto. Every journey begins with a single step. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We are so happy to have our friends from Brazil joining us on the stream today. And uh, it's so happy for all these beautiful people watching from home and tuning in. Yeah. I mean, thank you for watching. We're, we're going to actually take a moment to thank the wonderful people who bring this to you. Look at the team here. They work incredibly hard, and the setup they have is absolutely nuts. I mean, we talk about lots of monitors. I'm sorry. I don't think there's anyone watching at home. In fact, I worry about someone watching at home with that sort of yeah, screen Yeah, that setup. would have that setup, yeah. But it's, yeah, I was stunned. I'm still stunned every time I show up and see the level of equipment that we that we put together to make sure that you folks at home can watch this and get the best viewing experience. And possible. their ability to just adapt on the fly as the day goes on, as the tournament changes, as the needs change, is just so impressive. And, and critical. I mean, you can't, we, this is the house of havoc, yeah. right? Uh, everything is changing, everything is different every moment. It is hard to plan for anything, and we try to plan for everything. We do. And we're still surprised, and yet they still keep up, so. Uh, so thank you guys. We really appreciate there. you for making us look good and uh, bringing us all these great fights. All right, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to come to you with another tutorial. We're going to talk about horizontal spinners. So horizontal spinners are a, a, a more classic kind of design here. They're very destructive. They have giant weapon size and diameter. Uh, one of the big weaknesses, low stability. Whenever you hit something, not only does your opponent fly far away, so do you. Right, there is no way to stay uh, moving in a straight line when your horizontal spinner hits an opponent. And then the other big one for them is spin-up time. Usually if you have a larger weapon, it takes you a little bit more juice to spin that weapon up. Here's probably one of the most powerful horizontal spinners here at NHRL with litter box. You can see after that hit, they were shut down. Look at that massive smash hit there. Yeah, some of the horizontal spinners that we have here, just it's truly the largest weapon class uh, available, the most kinetic energy and do the most damage, um, but also are real loose cannons. Uh, yeah. Almost literally, they will bounce, uh, bounce around like nobody's business, which makes for a great show, but takes some, you know, some real constitution, some real nerve to be able to bring that into an arena and um, keep it together, keep it cool and keep it coming at your opponent. Yeah, this is STF, AKA Save the Frogs from the uh, WPI Ribot team. You can see their death charge and then coming up against Try Hard. And as Kyle said, these are, these are a classic design. A lot of um, people think of Tombstone on, on TV, they think of uh, some of the classic robots that brought... Mechavore was a big one that had yeah. a horizontal spinner. Um, Mechavore, one of the first robots to just really be able to dish out a lot of destruction on TV. A lot of people's favorite back in the day. There we see what a drift did to our dear friend Crash Fest and Robert Rund. Yeah, and yet Robert Rund uh, still continued that match for quite a while, I think. With one wobbly wheel, yeah. That's, yeah, that's how he that's rolls. That's the Robert... How dare you? That's the Robert <laughs> Rund way is what I was going to say. But yes, that's how he rolls. He rolls on whatever wheel he has left or just using his little sand shovel. Yeah, it's the mobility that comes out of almost no robot left <laughs> always stuns me. So, um, I love that we're adding these tutorials about the different weapon types, different robot types. We'll be talking a little bit more throughout the rest of the day about the different types of weapons that you can see here at NHRL. And, uh, and folks, too, we want to hear back from you. Let us know what robots do you want to know more about. What parts do you want to hear about us and just have us give you information? Or, yeah. um, uh, you know, we, we want to know. Yeah, we're we here absolutely. You. We're here to, to make sure that this sport is accessible to everybody, not just the folks that have been watching robot fighting since 1999. Um, so, you know, if you've got questions, if you've got, put it into the chat. Lindsay will help and answer. If not, make a super chat, and then all of us will answer, which will be great for you. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we are so excited to be here with you today and bring you these fights and uh, show you what this community is really capable of. Yeah, and that really is the opportune word there, the community that is being built or has been built and continues to build uh, around Norwalk Havoc, around uh, National Havoc, rather. Yeah. Uh, NHRL is just uh, is stunning. 
It is really a treasure, and we are um, really lucky to have it here. Yeah, so, so fortunate. Best we can give back, uh, best we can grow it. Be stewards of the growth of the robot combat world. I love that. I absolutely love that. It's a haughty title, but I'm taking it. <laughs> so. Um, <sighs> so how are you doing at this event? You Last event, you had like 8 million things going on in your True. life. True, yeah. Has things calmed down? Things have calmed down. Um, the, yeah, I think, I think I am coming back with a uh, fresh excitement. We, Good. We have spent, since the last event, we have spent a tremendous amount of time buttoning down um, all kinds of things. Basically, we have all kinds of amazing uh, safety procedures here. We have uh, all things that we do uh, to improve builder experience, to work on putting the best live stream on, on television. Yep. And we have tried to lock those down because you've, well, you're one of us. I was going to say you've seen us, but at the end of the day, it's an exhausting event in a good way. Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure that it's not only an incredible event, but a reliably incredible event. And, um, and that's really been the focus. It's like, we can do amazing things here at Norwalk. How do we do amazing things without breaking a sweat? Amen to that. All right, so, so right now we're going to go see our friend Allie. Allie, you have Tamaki for us. Yeah, speaking of amazing things, they just be Catalyst. And I was talking to him, and he was reminding me that he hasn't been here since December. So what a way to come back in 2023. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm really happy because of the, of the, we won this, this fight now. Uh, I was a lot nervous on this fight. Yeah. I was talking with Corey, the, the, the builder of Catalyst, and his mod is amazing. So, and his weapon was really, really strong. So I really was really scared to, to, to break something on the robot, but in the end, we, we did well. Uh, yeah. So was that the most anticipated fight you were like nervous about today, or is there another competitor coming up that you're like, you're, you're ready to go, you're a little nervous about? Yeah, for now, the, the next opponent is going to be really tough, too. Uh, I'm really scared, uh, scared of Waddles, uh, strong bot, uh, strong weapon. So I'm, I'm a lot nervous, too, to, to compete for this, this, this fight. All right, well, good luck to you. Happy to see you moving on, and I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. Welcome back to Norwalk. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I will say this. Um, Brian Boxel is no stranger to taking out Brazilian bots. Uh, very excited to see if he's able to do that at the 30-pound weight class with Waddles. I'm excited, too. We will see. We're Speaking of larger weight classes, we are going over to cage four. We've got Drew Maddock and... Um, iteration. Iteration. Yeah, oh, Iteration is back. All right. So there we see Drew Maddock. There's Casey with Iteration. So I was talking to the Jermiasons. They said Iteration is their platform where they are going to try new things, new armor packages, new weapon motors, new types of uh, add-ons to these bots, whereas their main one, Swole, is just going to stay kind of as the base Eight, operating seven, system. Six, right, right. Five, and four, I think it's important for a lot of people to have that grounded. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Away we go. Look at the size difference here. It's amazing the, the variety and the approach that we have uh, to different things. And as you go larger in the weight classes, that uh, variety and, and differential in size just becomes more and more obvious. Uh, whoo, big hit there. Uh, iteration, I notice Kyle is... Uh, Slowing down after big hits, it pauses for a minute. That's then, a wheel that's supposed to be attached uh, yeah. to dramatic, dramatic, dramatic. dramatic. Yeah. And tap that's a tap out. out. All right, so that would be Ethan Sketch tapping out. Your winner is going to be iteration, Casey Jeremiahson. Definitely some work to do on that bot, though, after they get it back into the pits. Yeah, I, what I was starting to say there is I, I notice a pause after big hits, and a lot of times that indicates some sort of electrical problem. Ah, uh, interesting. And, and that can uh, take you out by surprise. And, and even if it doesn't take you out by surprise, a half a second of being vulnerable is, is an incredibly uh, dangerous thing yeah. to have happen to your robot on a regular basis. Uh, so hopefully that's something they can work out. 
Uh, if not, it doesn't seem to be getting in their way yet. So we're going to go to the replay here. Iteration just barely missing the opponent. Nice and hit. And getting a hit. But that one big hit from iteration on Dramatic is really all it took. Uh, the weapon started to suffer, the drive wheel came off, and it was all over. Dramatic is a captain by Ethan Sketch for the University of Cincinnati Robotics Club. Combat Robotics Club. The CRC. A little bit wobbly there without its wheel, eh? Just, just a little. It's got a little weeble wobble going on. Vaca Tank and Rock Bottom doing their best to get prepped in arena number one. Both 30 pound competitors. Vaca Tank there uh, looking modeled. Yeah, drummy as can be. This is probably the uh, best robot from the Milk Tank team. Well, the most competitive robot from the Milk Tank team. We, sure, you're we right, you're right. I shouldn't, I shouldn't put a qualification on it like that. You're absolutely right. The, all, all Milk Tank robot teams are special in their own way, but this one probably hits the hardest. Yes, yes, I will agree with you. Um, and lasts the longest in most fights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's a great bot. I, I'm excited to see them. The, you see them go with this. Uh, Rock Bottom brought to you by Garrett Short. It is a NERC offering. Um, they, it is the biggest weapon this team has ever fielded. Giant undercutter spinner, super heavy weapon bar. Yeah, it, it is no joke whatsoever. If uh, Vaka Tank was looking for an easy uh, course to a victory here, they are not going to get it. No. We uh, normally are waiting on, on competitors or um, other sorts of things to get ready. Um, in this case, if we actually have so many cages and so many fights going on, we're currently waiting on judges to make sure that yeah. we can properly assess this fight if it goes to a judge's decision. Um, so interesting. The, the winner of this match will have to go on to face Kablooey Tango in the next round of the tournament. That would be really interesting to see uh, uh, if this was a horizontal undercutter on horizontal Eight, undercutter seven, matchup. Yeah. Six, uh, really a good five, test for Kablooey four. Tango. Three, to see if their four-wheel drive is a better solution one. than the two-wheel drive. Robots Eager fight. to see. I anyway. certainly know Lucy Dew prefers the four-wheel drive undercutter to anything else. Let's Here see. Here we go. Rock bottom uh, hitting a hit and taking a hit. Yeah, very difficult robot to control, it looks like. It is all over the place out there. It takes a, uh, a really smooth hand to be able to uh, properly probably drive uh, an undercutter with only two wheels on it. Vaga Tank is moving. They're doing their thing. Now, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Rock Bottom is another one of these robots we see that has real, I should say real, traditional wheels uh, with studs attached to them. Yes. A titanium tread plate that cut into the floor and give it a little better acceleration and, and grip. Fun fact, that's because of a math problem. They did a little bit of an issue, or had a little bit of an issue picking their wheel diameters and actually bought wheels that were uh, a little bit too small. Oh. So they had to add these cleats after the fact Tap in order out. to just raise the bot up enough to make weapon clearance. Oh, there you are. So sometimes you have to fix one problem, and in doing so, you give yourself a little added benefit like uh, plywood magnets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Plywood magnets. Cleats, plywood magnets. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I just, <laughs> I hadn't mentally made that association, but it's, it's perfect. That's the whole point. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta magnetize yourself to the plywood, and you do so with cleats. So, so folks at home, if you'll allow me to get a little nerdy for a second, right? If you have uh, a robot in the arena, uh, it doesn't matter how much power you put into that a robot. If it's just sitting in the arena on its wheels, uh, you can't accelerate any faster than gravity, right. usually, right? Because you can only push on the ground as hard as gravity is pulling you down on the, on the ground. Uh, you get to cheat with plywood magnets, and that's why we call them plywood, or that's why Kyle is calling them plywood magnets here, and I will forever be calling them plywood magnets. 
if you're digging into the floor, you can accelerate as fast as you want. That's exactly right. All we're right, guys, go. so now we're going to go on to another weapon no, type. God. This is actually my favorite weapon type. Kyle, they've already had so much of my nerd. Uh, yes. They're going to get more? They're going to get more. Okay. Well, here we They're going to get a little bit more. All right, so let's talk about hammers. Hammers are my favorite kind of weapon. So tell us the benefits, the strengths of a good hammer, Ricky. Well, the neat thing is, is that most robots don't have a lot of armor on top of their robot. Yeah. In this case, uh, you get to rain, you know, a hellfire down on top in the what is usually the least armored place uh, on your opponent. So that is really valuable. You can hit over and over and over again. Some of those hammer hits are so fast, uh, and they have to be fast because you want them to hammer over and over again. Uh, and you can see just one, two, three, four. Vertical spinners, rarely do you get that kind of repeat blow after blow after blow. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they tend to hit a little less hard, so you need that over and over the and over. The multiple hit situation, um, yeah. And, but if you hit it, like you can see here, this smoke coming out, if you can land a good hit, I mean a really good hit, pierce through somewhere that isn't armored as well, you can take out an entire robot with any one of those hits. You gotta love that. Are they, they're a little bit more challenging to build, to design for? Yeah, it's, it's not an easy, uh, especially considering the progression of robots now, it's not easy compared to some of the other designs that we see. Beautiful. But and that, by the way, was knockoff white, uh, an offering from team, uh, uh, I mean, when you talk about hammers in the 30-pound class, when you talk about hammers, knockoff white absolutely nails it. Yeah, they are, quite frankly, the best. Um, they, they, were, they also brought you shatter in the heavyweight weight class. Absolutely. Um, and knockoff white is basically half a shatter. Exactly. We're going to go to Allie now. Allie, tell us, uh, how's the internet? Oh, I'm sorry. No, excuse me. How, I, how's the pits? I don't know how it is, but what I can tell you is that we've got the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club. That is new, but we know that Andrew Davis is no stranger to NHRL. But what he did this time is so no. He brought like 10 kids, 10 kids with him. This is their first robot robotics competition. Why did you start this club? You're an English teacher, by the way. I pegged him for a science guy. I know nothing about science or math. Um, I started this club because I got the money from making finals last year, and instead of donating the money to some college that I knew nothing about uh, and kids I didn't know, I wanted to kind of give back to the kids that I know and the community that they, you know, live in. Uh, it would be cool to kind of set up a cool club. So I'm going to bring it on over to Richard here because he's been in this club for three to six months. You've changed the answer, so we're going to go with between three and six. Yep. <laughs> so what drew you to being part of this robotics community? I like to work with my hands a lot. Um, I was part of a robotics club in my last school last year. Uh, I'm in 10th grade. Um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn about robotics. So we know Mr. Davis, Andrew Davis, but I want to know, how is he as a teacher, as a club coordinator, how would you describe him? Strict and frustrating. <laughs> um, no, 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 he's, he's, he's great. He, he pushes us, he, uh, he teaches us a lot. Well, that's great. And I know one, at least uh, two people from the team already secured a win, so that's great. Can't wait to see what you guys do. Thank you for bringing them all here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, wow. that's the kind of community building we really like to see. It's exactly what we hope uh, comes out of the money that comes from finals to different STEM charities. Uh, I, I, I couldn't be happier. I love the fact that Drew, who's been a part of Team Shredded, he's been here forever, he's brought his kids, he's amazing. A, a pillar of the community. Yeah, absolutely. And he is an English teacher. We've always like talked about how cool it is that he's an English teacher, but could you imagine that conversation like, okay, listen, administration, I want to start a combat robotics club. And they're like, but don't you teach Shakespeare? Mm. <laughs> yes. Truly the, the road less taken yeah. for an English teacher. Truly the road less taken for an English teacher. He's a great guy. Uh, I'm sure his students were just overjoyed to join in. And especially when he showed his bona fides, I mean, he has done phenomenally at these competitions forever. Yes. He's got so many bots, just a full suite in all the weight classes. He's such a great guy to have in that role. I love the fact that he brought a bunch of kids with him. There's so many of them here, too. It's great. It's a perfect uh, competition for them. It's not too far of a drive. And uh, I hope they do really well. I mean, even if they don't, I hope that they grow into the role and 
uh, just, you know, find the kind of joy that we so often see on new builders' faces. <laughs> Amen to that. So. Amen to that. Um, yeah, so very cool for Drew Davis. I mean, obviously, he's he's been a steward of new builders and new drivers here with his own children. So glad that he gets to bring uh, kids from his school out here. I think that's going to be awesome. Oh, yes. Now, these are this is uh, back into... Uh, the 12 pound division. This is the Arsenal bot from Puerto Rico versus Fluffy from Team V. Not to be confused with the house bot. It, this is Fluffy with a PH mm -hmm. with a little fluffy tail. This is an acidic Fluffy, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a basic Fluffy. Does not look basic to me. <laughs> I guess it all depends on where it falls on the pH scale. Indeed. The This is going to be an interesting one for Fluffy, though. Their weapon didn't seem to hold up too well. No, it, it was almost immediately uh, bent, and then eventually over the course of the fight became detached, and that is against an opponent that had a... Uh, it's certainly a working weapon, but... Um, Intermittently working. Yes, and also a weapon that was a little easier to avoid. Yeah, this is uh, a giant horizontal spinner. Yeah, these are these weapons are going to get hit. So it's a question of do they stay on better than they did last time? Good Eight, question. Seven, six. But we're all about five, answers here, Kyle. Four, and three, experimentation. Two, one, we're about to find, fight. We're about to find Robots out. Robots fight. Arsenal and Fluffy. Ooh, away they go. Yeah, Fluffy has no issue shoving those arms directly into Danger's way. And there we go. We've already uh, lost one and two. Maybe some issues, Kyle. Oh, the top plate is being removed from Fluffy as we speak. Yeah, Fluffy has been disseared, and now it has been, uh, it's missing a wheel. The top plate is starting to be removed. Right-hand drive troubles on Arsenal, but um, no right-hand drive whatsoever on Fluffy, so. Ooh, oh, that was a nasty hit there from Arsenal, just knocking Fluffy across the arena. Big gouges and absolute, uh, absolutely getting shredded the front of Fluffy. So even though Arsenal has to crab walk their way, that is what that particular kind of movement is called, when you kind of shuffle your way around the arena, you can still control the direction. It just takes a little bit longer. You have to be a little bit more strategic about it. Ooh, nice hit there. You can see the metal on the back of Fluffy just getting um, bowed out. And those conduit clips, which are kind of used to keep Fluffy from... Tap oh, out. yeah, I'm surprised it took them that long to tap out, quite frankly. I mean, their bot was just getting so much damage. All right, so Team V forfeits. And that means Arsenal from Puerto Rico will be moving on. Oh, sorry, they tapped out. And they just need a little bit of assistance to get to the door. A gentle nuzzle. We're gonna go to the replay here. You can see it, it did manage to take one good hit on that weapon and just a hair's breath, or uh, just a, a baby's breath to, to knock it off. It was kind of all over from there, Kyle. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of way to come back. Once your weapons start falling off, your wheels start falling off, that's all she wrote. You can see a, a very dramatic picture of that weapon laying in the middle of the arena. Yeah, uh, there's many pieces of that bot that were laying in the middle of the arena. Cool offering, neat bot, not really able to hold up to that onslaught. No, I, I think there's potential there. Um, and it's, it's a robot that I would like to see revisited simply because it wasn't, uh, the design wasn't really what failed. It was the implementation of the design, I should say. The, the approach that they wanted to test out really didn't get a fair shake here. Yeah. Uh, at least in my opinion. So I'm, I'm hoping they come back just to fix those a little bit better and uh, we can really see how it does. Team Fluffy brought to you by, or Team V with Fluffy brought to you by Rob Vitolins. Cool bot, cool design. 
Um, hopefully he's able to get it back together for some rumbles or some other events later on today or for when we actually get into the tournament. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For this weight class, we're currently in the tournament for the 30 pound. We are waiting for the tournament star to start for the three pound and 12 pound. We're still going through our qualifying rounds. Yeah, conduit clips, so smart. I'm you just glad just... that the cottontail stuck on. That's, yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Really happy for the uh, team behind Arsenal. Seems like they're gonna get a great seating in that tournament. Yeah, I think, uh, I won't, I certainly won't say they're gonna cruise through the uh, tournament by any means. No. But I think they're gonna get a good seating. I think they're gonna have some good matchups. Really, really eager to see their fights. Yeah, I would say that they would have had a really good chance uh, for, for, for placing in that tournament maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. Now that 12 pound division is scary stacked. It's amazing, well, they, you know, uh, uh, nature abhors a vacuum, right, yep. is the phrase there was, uh, a period of time where 12 pounds were, were kind of the redheaded, um, you know, stepchild of the, of the competition. They people either wanted to go for 30s or they wanted the ease of going for threes, and 12s kind of got um, a little less action. And they have taken off dramatically yeah. as the three-pound class grew, uh, and builders wanted to grow from there up. They went to 12, and now they're, uh, you know, slowly working their way up to the 30-pound. We're going to go back to Alley. Speaking of builders. Uh, how we are, are adjusting things right now, but we are live, and I've got um, some smack talk going on right here. It's pretty great because there's the potential that you guys are going to fight each other, and this is Dad. Where, did I get this wrong? Is this Dad? Tell me. I, yeah. I, don't make I think I'm Dad. Dad. Well, I don't know. We don't have a lot of proof of that matter, but <laughs> probably Dad. Right, so this is a pretty big deal, and from my perspective, um, if what tell me first, what would need to happen for you guys to fight each other? I have to win my first match against uh, Jack, Jack Catch, and then we fight. All right, so if this happens, I don't want you to give away your entire strategy since your competitor is sitting next to you and possibly giving you a ride home. But uh, what do you think you have to do to beat your dad? Drive at him. Short and concise. Um, what do you think you have to do to beat your son? Well, I mean, I've been practicing all these years. Um, oh, wait, beat him in the match. Now I got it. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do. <laughs> but it'll be fun to watch it tear, be torn up by someone you love. Oh, I know. How awkward will this car ride? Did you guys travel together? We're, we're driving to Texas after this, so. Oh. Well, I am not jealous of that. It, you can't lose. I cannot lose this fight. All right, well, stay tuned for that. I'm fingers crossed that this works out in this favor because I think it'll be an entertaining match for both of you. One last word you guys have. Um, if you had to give advice to your dad to fight you, what would it be? Uh, spin up. Try it. To see what happens. It'll be fun. All right, stay tuned. Well, maybe we'll put a camera in that car to Texas just for fun. That would be uh, something to watch. Yeah, come ride with us. It'll be lots of fun. Classic <laughs> rock, 18-hour drives. You got it. All right, good luck, guys. Can we see him? <laughs> that son literally just said, what are you going to do, Dad? Try me. Like, uh, that was... Not how you want to start your day, especially yeah. when you do have that long drive home afterwards. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, quick correction. So we are already into the 12-pound bracket, by the way. Um, that was round one action, Arsenal versus Fluffy, which means Arsenal will go on to face Voxel mm. in the next round. Uh, so we'll be starting round two in the 12-pound tournament very shortly. Sounds good. We'll head back for some more big box action in cage four. Cage four, I can't quite see. Oh, we've got Brandon Bad and Young back again. I see Brazilians lurking, but I don't think they're fighting right now. No, that is not them. Yeah, I can't quite see who we uh, have there in the arena, but I'm eager to see. That's Demi Gorgon. Yes, but, but who are they fighting, Kai? Demi Gorgon is up against. Bakabot? No. No, no. Away we roll. That is a nasty vertical spinner. Ooh, that's not good. Drive side on the uh, right uh, side of Demi Gorgon. 
God. flailing about. Wow. Oh, massive. We talked about vertical spinners earlier and some of the uh, air time that they can dish out onto their opponents. It's a great example. Demi Gorgon just kind of floating along sideways. It's just the vibration of that weapon spinning that's causing it to move. Yep. It is back a bot. Okay. Back a bot. This is first round action in the 12 pound tournaments. The winner of this match will go on to face Buzzkill in the next round. And it does look like the University of Cincinnati's Bakovat will be moving on. Knockout. Bakovat captained by Casey Schumard of the University of Cincinnati Combat Robotics Club. Wow. That is a long spin down there. On yeah, that's not good. It does happen sometimes. You know, I got to love the overalls as a uh, as a fashion choice for a combat robotics event. Lots of pockets. Lot, yep. Yeah. Storage of plenty. And obviously plenty of branding opportunities there as well. That's true. We'll see the replay here. So you can Back see about kicking its opponent just into the air. All of the rubber from the wheels of Demi Gorgon just shredding off after that first hit. Mm -hmm. Let's go, he says. Yes. All right, back a bot. So they will be going on to face Buzzkill in the next round. Exciting, exciting. And uh, looks like we did get a spin down finally from Demi Gorgon. That's always good. At least it's not a wait till the batteries die situation. Now, I, Kyle, I remember there was some uh, level of debate on the Demigorgon versus Demigorgon pronunciation. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I say it both ways, so I'm yeah. really not one to, uh, to comment on that. In the same boat, Kyle. In the 12 pound world, we have Sombra 12 versus, <laughs> excuse me, going up against Sneezus. This is uh, the fifth time that Joe Fabiani tells us that this is the last time that Sneezus will be competing at this competition. Right, right. So we'll see how that goes. This might actually be the last time. No, I expect another half dozen um, last times, at least. It's very possible. Sneezus has a very uh, unique method of locomotion. It's kind of got whole saw drive. How would you describe that? Um, rotated studded, uh, rotated, uh, rotary studded procession. Ooh, yes, that's very technical sounding. Yes, I like it sounds it. fancy. Uh, essential. Oh dear, that is that a is penguin. a penguin. Eight, Whenever Joe's seven, involved, eight, penguins often seven, mean fire, six, but I don't think that's five, happening. Four, penguins are three, are never a good sign, two, though. Anything could happen one, when a penguin enters fight, the arena. Robots fight. We're gonna get all Mr. Popper up in here. And away we go. You can hear the robot. Um, oof, that is a nasty sounding spinner. So it does look like one half of uh, Smeezus' drive is not working great. Wow, nice hit there from Sombra 30. I think that may be the end of the match almost immediately, yeah. Smeezus really struggled to do much of anything there. Oh! Oh, no! The Penguin is full of foam! Uh, I think that may be a shaving cream dispensing Penguin, Kyle. I love it. Oh, my goodness. And it came out the bottom side of the penguin. Why? Just why? The humanity. That's a happy penguin. With a clean shave. Tap out. You know, you gotta love how game Tamaki was. They said, hey, can you please kill our mini, or kill our penguin? And yeah. he was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, no problem. I built, a, I built a murder bot. Why not murder a penguin? <laughs> <laughs> I 
the that, penguin fell off. Can you please kill it for you us? You know, one day someone is going to come back here and they're just going to sound bite me saying, why not kill a penguin? <laughs> And that is how PETA started protesting at your house for the next six yeah. months. And here we go. Uh, you can see Smeeze is trying to eat its own penguin. Boom. Nice hit um, there. And it was just really that one hit that knocked out the remaining functionality on Smeezes. And there goes the foam just filling up that corner. If there's one thing Joe loves doing, it's making the, the crew here clean up after his matches. Yeah, I, I don't think he likes the staff here very <laughs> but or he likes us a lot one oh, of the look two. look look joe's cleaning up oh joe's taking care of it he's getting a picture and now he's scooping up all of the f thank you joe look at that joe fabiani makes a mess and oh. cleans it up oh that might be that may well be an expanding, like, insulation foam. Now oh, that I see it that's not drip. good. That's not good. That may be a very sticky situation in a very short period of time. Oh, yeah. He's got to get in there and clean that up right away. Once that starts hardening, that's going to be no fun for anybody. You oh. know, the Joe way would have been just light it on fire. Yeah, that is normally the Joe way. I'm, I, You know... That's what I was saying. Penguins normally equal fire for Joe. Doesn't it have to do with some weird nature fact that he found out about penguins? I I don't know. Uh, I'm worried about any nature fact that likes to combine penguins and fire. So apparently when penguins have to go number two, mm -hmm. it is a volcanic eruption of sorts. Wow. So that is why it happens to go that way. At any rate, let's go to Allie. Allie, uh, who do you have for us? Any other topic in the world, Allie, please. Yes, so this is um, not that, very far different. It, this is Celine, and we have about four, I believe it's four high school teams here, and it's part of this newer program, and we'll get into that all later, but I did want you to introduce you to Celine. Martin Van Buren, which is in Queens, and she's part of an all-girls team. Celine is adorable. She told me, I asked, how was your morning? She goes, terrible. But I want to know, you've only been doing this for such a short time, and you guys are here for your second time. What came, why did you come back? You said the first time you didn't even compete? Yeah, but the second time I really wanted to compete because I saw all these cool bots and I was like, whoa, I want to compete. So it took like a long process to make my bot, but it was really good. And I asked Celine, she drives and she builds. What is your favorite? Building it. And how did you get into building? Again, you're only in ninth grade and this is your first year in this program. What inspired you to get here? So I used, when I was a kid, I used to build lots and lots of Legos. And then I saw the BattleBots Netflix show and I was like, well, I want to do it. So I joined the robotics team. And here you are. Well, I know you said you had a terrible morning, but I know you're still here supporting your teammates. So I hope you have a better afternoon. Thanks for chatting with us. You're welcome. And I hope you have a good morning too. <laughs> oh. Wow. So much positivity. Yeah, that's uh, so cool. And I mean, you know, not to undermine whatever uh, struggles led to having not so good a day, but you're getting to see robots just absolutely obliterate each other. It can't be the worst day possible because you could always not have robots obliterating And if you're, if you're like Celine and you're a fan of engineering, of builders, mm -hmm. of fabrication, the pits is like the most amazing place to be in the entire right, world. Right, right. Some people are here uh, to enjoy the process of putting their robot together and taking it apart and putting it together again more than anything else. Absolutely. And be around a bunch of other people who are just so good at this craft. Yes, yes. There's Eight, seven, six, five, All right, four, in cage four, Cthulhu three, is going up against two, Blue Cheese. One. Fight. Cthulhu Robots is, uh, you know, kind of your bog standard horizontal spinner. Blue cheese is really interesting. So they have a giant drum, 3D printed, um, and it basically uh, lifts and chucks without having those big, horrible, not horrible, big, intense impacts on their opponent. Wow. It can really tank a lot of force. Uh, into that big blue spinning weapon. Wow. Uh, really unique, interesting approach. Uh, something I've thought about doing for a while. So, um, you know, you jerks taking the thing I wanted to do, but. Yeah, what a neat idea. This is cool. Right, that, um, oh, it, it is down a belt now. So that spinner is not spinning at all, but. Oof. Um, that was a big hit from Cthulhu. Yeah, unfortunately, if you had to pick a uh, weapon to not take blue cheese against a big horizontal spinner is absolutely that weapon. 
Uh, for a vertical spinner where you could just kind of envelop your opponent's weapon in that big flexible blue thing, you know, that, that's almost exactly what they want. When they can come in from the side with a huge hit, uh, it's hard to counter. Yeah, you can see some of the bracket that's holding that weapon in place on Blue Cheese is somewhat askew now. Mm -hmm. Belt's missing, bracketology askew. Doesn't seem to be driving anywhere. No, this, the, oh, oh, we are back. We got a little life. No, I think the, the wheel on that one side is just barely touching. So uh, they got themselves rocking and they were able to get a little bit of movement out of it. Now they're stuck up against the wall with a minute and 12 seconds left in the fight. Just uh, waiting for the kill Cthulhu is. And the both uh, drivers are having the robots wait patiently until the blade spins down on Cthulhu. I don't know, I'm feeling uh, crazy just looking at it. Blue Cheese, captained by Matt Luther. Knockout. Let's head back up to Lindsay. Speaking of the internet that I jumped the gun on earlier, how you doing up there, Lindsay? Uh, you know what, I'm hanging in. Uh, Still trying to learn Portuguese, still failing. But uh, <laughs> I actually wanted to show off some of the things on my desk sure. that builders have given me and uh, I think are pretty great. So uh, yeah, first I actually just got this sticker from Alicia Garnache, uh, her bot frustration. Robots give me frustration. Oh. I have to agree. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of buzz over the return of Droopy, and um, we got this Droopy sticker. They're for sale uh, here, so, you know, that's uh, He's pretty He's blushing. Aw. Yeah, I mean, it also kind of looks like acne. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll go with blushing. Um, my favorite piece of uh, anything ever is this milk tank plush bot. Uh, this is Ashley's, as you can see. Uh, have you seen anything cuter? This is made by the artist duo Eel Monkey Art, so look them up because they have these for sale. Um, we have this $100 bill, legal tender, as I've been told, um, in Money Shot Land. So I think it's uh, not U.S. tender, but uh, it might buy me something with uh, the team uh, money shot, but pretty cool. And then um, we've got this little mini crash fest, which I know we've already kind of covered on the stream. Well, look at it go. So cute. It's so cute. And then these uh, NHRL blocks made by Eamon, who is NHRL staff. You see him in the um, uh, workshop downstairs. He, he does everything here, and uh, he's made these really cool little cubes. So last but not least, I think this came from Ashley of uh, Team Milk Tank, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, looking very royal. I like it. So yeah, uh, if you're a builder, you're watching this, come give me some stuff and I'll put on a stream. <laughs> and then I'll take it all home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got to feed the, uh, you know, your, your uh, memorabilia cabinet somehow, you know? That's exactly how Lindsay does it. She just sets up in the pits and says, I'll, I'll feature your stuff if you... Yeah. I always go home with like uh, two dozen stickers after one of these. Yeah, I always have a lot of stickers at the end of these. Nowadays, it's been a lot of poker chips. I get a lot of those after these. And uh, for some reason, bot parts. I've been getting a lot of those lately. I should start asking for poker chips. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's yeah. pretty great. I have a top plate for links. We've got to auction that off at some point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, make some money. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, I'm glad to be back. I was, uh, let's see, I went on a VIP pit tour, and then I uh, also walked around inside of the pits a little bit and uh, saw some cool stuff up there. Oh. I am really excited for the uh, the next portion of the bracket. Eight, Our single seven, elimination, uh, six, you know, competition five, here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, 
Three. All right, so two. we're gonna go to cage six where we have Ratfish and Frostbite already going at it. Ratfish here uh, is this big wheeled black and orange robot. It's a lifter with these huge forks. And Frostbite, the frosty white and black robot here. What is the active weapon on Frostbite, Kyle? I, I don't know. I guess it would be the spinny uh, object on top. Oh, it's an overhead spinner. Oh, it's yes. spinning so fast, I had no idea. It is clearly a very destructive weapon. We can see bits of these foamy wheels getting uh, peeled apart. You can see Ratfish is rapidly losing foam. You want to keep the foam inside the wheels, Ratfish. Two minutes left here in this fight. Oh, and I don't know if they're going to have enough yeah. foam for two more minutes of a fight. It's pretty bad, especially that right side wheel. You can see it is barely the shape of a wheel anymore. It's now more like of an oblate spheroid. Good, good grammar there. That's fantastic. Thank yeah. you. I'm gonna have to look that up in the dictionary later. Uh, you know, if you're Ratfish here, one of the things that you want to do is stay squared up and keep those forks pointed at your opponent. You want to stay as far away from Frostbite as possible. Now, this is a single elimination fight. Uh, if uh, Ratfish loses this fight, he will be going home to uh, North Carolina very early Ooh. in the day. Ratfish gets pinned up against the uh, side rails, able to wiggle themselves loose. Now, I haven't seen the uh, the lifter here on Ratfish do much work at all. It's very difficult for them to get underneath of uh, a frostbite here. Oh, there, there we go. go. I you willed it into existence. You got it. Yes, I love it. Wow, 65 seconds left here on the clock. 60 seconds. Now, a horizontal spinner really likes to stay absolutely parallel with the floor. And uh, every single time that you can, uh, that Ratfish is getting it up onto the side, that uh, robot is not happy. 45 seconds left, Ratfish is desperate to stop oh, the blade. No the weapon has been stopped so far, right there. You don't see anything happening, and... Wow, with 30 seconds left, will Frostbite have enough time to make it to the judges? Tap out. It's a tap out. Wow, okay, so I believe that was Jay O'Donnell tapping out with Frostbite. Wow. Ratfish really hanging in there and winning that fight. Incredible. All right, we're going to go over to cage five here. All right, we've got Money Shot here in bright green and uh, Double Trouble there. Uh, the horizontal that's stuck up against the corner here. Awaiting their one unstick for this match from Brett the Brick. Everybody gets one. And Money Shot spun up. They are ready to kill. Money Shot, just a beautifully designed robot. This is their second competition. Money Shot was a brand new robot uh, uh, back in March. It does look like Double Trouble is stuck on its head, stuck up against the rail. Will Money Shot come in here and save, or will they allow their opponent to die? Double Trouble has successfully gotten its uh, weapon at least pointed in the right direction. Yeah, they are not going to get counted out with that movement. It feels like, oh, they are getting a full count on here. Is this the end of the match, or is that... That is a knockout, so your winner is Money Shot. Wow. Incredible. Dave Wright of Wright Robotics. Nice work, buddy. You know, second robot competition, winning matches, doing well. Yeah, you love to see it. You love to see it. We just saw the Money Shot uh, merch upstairs on uh, Lindsay's desk. And, uh, you know, I feel like if you've got merch, you're taking the sport seriously. David is definitely taking the sport seriously. If you look at the spinner on that, it's actually themed with the bot. So smart. I love it. Let's go to our friend Allie. Allie, who do you got for us? I'm really trying not to go into a whole song and dance here because we have Timber, and if you're a Kesha fan like I am, you know. Anyway, that's not about what we're talking about. We're talking about this is a completely different design than if you saw Timber in our last competition. And Lydia, I want to know why. What's different about it? Um, so in March, I had a horizontal bot, and the blade was also horizontal. and. Both of my opponents um, were low down to the ground, so I couldn't hit them. And 
I decided to put a wedge on it so I could have them feed up into the weapon. Sounds like a great reason to do that. Now you're preparing. I know you said you might be up soon. How are you feeling right now, Lydia? Are you hyping yourself up with some Kesha? <laughs> I'm excited, but also nervous. Now we have a part of this called the shiny hiney. Mom, do we want to turn it around? Okay, glitter is a big part of this one, and of course, Kesha. I mean, it, this is all in line. What is this? Let me talk about all the glitter on here. When does it come out? What does it do? So, on my weapon, when I spin up my weapon, this glitter comes out, but when I get hit in the back, like, shiny hiney? the shiny hiney explodes. Amazing. Well, I cannot wait to see this in action. Oh. Yes, hashtag everywhere. This is a family affair. We have got another brother with a bot as well. But good luck to you. Can't wait to see the glitter go everywhere. Thank you. Wow. I love this team. The kid, they, the, these are truly kid-designed robots. Yeah. And the parents are just there to help them implement those designs, create those designs. They're not, they're not giving them suggestions. They're not, yeah. and they're redesigning the robot and saying, no, 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 that's not going to be effective. And that's why you get cool stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. A this blade is, of glitter armor. What? Come this, on. This is one of our most wholesome family teams. I mean, like, there's a lot of family teams up there. And one of the coolest things is that the uh, the parents, the the Weiss, the Weisses, they said, uh, you know what? Just draw the robot that you want to build, and we are going to help you build that. Yep. We're going to build it together. And that is so cool. Like, you're you're empowering your kids to make design decisions themselves, and uh, having them come here and compete really kind of have them work through a lot of those. Um, really foundational kind of sports emotions that you need to go through, like winning, losing, good sportsmanship, you know, um, you know, um, smiling in the face of defeat, you know, um, yep. you know, thinking your way through an engineering problem when you go home and, um, you know, coming back with something brand new and cool. And uh, Timber is looking fantastic. That Timber is, a really, is really looking cool fantastic. Design. I love their other bot too, Harold. Yeah. Big wedge bot. One of the cool parts about Harold is, you know, a lot of wedge bots have a Eight, stopper at the top seven, to prevent you from six. going over top of them. Their stopper is a finger tech beater bar. So yeah. smart. Yeah, smart. All right, we're going to check in here with Cage 5. All right, we've got Steven Bogus here and Wormhole facing off against Rick Roller. Great name. Yeah, I think I saw Steve, uh, you know, uh, Rick, Rick Astley, you know. Uh, wow, in the audience. Look at this. Rick Roller. The weapon is down, but uh, its mobility is still quite good. So two three-pound robots in, the, uh, in cage number five. Now, again, we are now in the single elimination bracket. The loser of this fight will be going home. And look at this. Steven ripping off one of the wheels on Rick Roller. Yeah, that's not great. Definitely doesn't help with the rolling. Rick Roller is down a wheel, down a weapon. Two minutes left here in this fight. Rick Roller captained by Jonah. Jonah Astley. Jo doesn't say, just Jonah. <laughs> Single name, like Madonna or Cher. Yeah. The Jonah. Just just Jonah. Yeah. Stephen Bogus, really, uh, you know, I can see some impaired driving uh, here. And look, I think the weapon on Wormhole is Looks down like as well. Looks like it is, yeah. So with a minute and a half left here in this fight, it's really going to come down to pushing. And... Uh, you know, the driving on both of these robots looks a little impaired. Yeah, it looks like the right side drivetrain on Wormhole is not uh, not as functional as you want it to be at this point in the game. Kyle, with 80 seconds left here in this fight, I'm going to tell you a fun uh, Stephen Bogus fact. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so three weeks ago, Stephen he had flew out to California to fight at uh, Robo Games. Cool. I was there to spectate at Robo Games. Yes. And uh, our community director Gil Hova he set us up in a uh, an escape room. So uh, I escaped successfully with uh, the Brandeis University Combat Robotics team, Gil, <laughs> and uh, and Wormhole here, uh, Stephen Bogus. That sounds Steven like is so a fun. great escape room artist. Really? Yeah, smart kid. Yeah. Uh, his uh, his day his day job he works as a uh, baseball umpire. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, builds killer robots. That's pretty great. And escapes from rooms regularly. Escapes from rooms. Good escape uh, room artist and uh, baseball umpire. 
So, uh, yeah. Big fan of Steven. That's cool. Smart guy. 20 seconds left here in this fight. These bots are dancing around each other, trying to show some control, trying to show a little bit of aggression. No weapons are working, and half the drive is down on both of these bots, but they are still able to function enough that they're not going to get counted out. You see this sometimes in a really battle damaged fight uh, where both of the opponents, they've hurt one another so much they are going to be limping to the end. This one will go to the judges. I do think, however, this will be a win for Wormhole. Uh, he was able to disable his opponent's uh, wheel and weapon earlier in that fight, scoring him more points. I believe you are correct. The winner of this fight will go on into the following round. They'll face either Frustration or Canterbury, depending on how that fight goes. Interesting. And the other one will uh, go home or go wait to join up with a Rumble. All oh, right. wow. Okay, so Thumb War knocking its minibot for some reason. Not quite sure why, but they're facing off against Lil Rip. Yeah, this is our 30-pound version of Ripperoni on BattleBots run by Anna Zolnikov, the captain of Ripperoni on BattleBots. Now, in the other corner, we've got a miniature Bloodsport run by uh, Nick Buckholtz from Team Bloodsport. That's correct. Nick was telling us that this is his new test bed for so many things to do on Bloodsport. They want to try out different configurations, different weapon setups we with this We see this, this kind of wild, like, seven, metal six, crown coming out of the five, top of that the That is war. the self-writing mechanism in this two, particular fight. I absolutely one, love five, it. It looks like a garbage five. disposal. Oh, I am hearing a big spin-up here. I think that, that spin-up is from Little Rip. Yeah, big spin-up, Little Rip. Hannah driving the bot herself today. Ooh. Big hit there. Thumbwar coming out on top. And the weapon on Little Rip is down. Oh, no, it's not. It's back. Ow. Huge concussive hit. And look at that. Tipping Thumbwar perfectly. On the self-writing mechanism, it's basically a tripod up in the air on its weapon blade and on that mechanism. And look, Little Rip comes in and does the save. No Slight need for your save there, Fluffy. Slightly controversial save there from Little Rip. Fluffy now needs to get Thumb War back onto its feet. All right, Thumb War off the wall because of the giant slam from Fluffy. Thank you, Fluffy. Love it. Now let's see if the weapon on Thumb War is going to come back. Minute 45 left in this fight. That weapon on Thumb War has been struggling all day. They have really been having a hard time with it. So hopefully they're able to get it back working in this match with a little concussive maintenance. Now one of the big differences between Ripperoni and Little Rip is that uh, Little Rip, from what I've under, from what I've heard, has not been able to get that counter flywheel running at no. uh, the 30 pound weight class. The counter gyro flywheel is uh, one of its super big keys to success on BattleBots. Without it, it is a giant. And look at this, Anna's tipped her opponent up against uh, itself one more time, and Thumbwar is out of saves. Knockout. This is a knockout. Nice Little Rip work. is your winner. Anna Zolnikov really channeling that chaos energy that you need to drive Little Rip. Excellent driving job from her. And look at this in the fan, you know, uh, sitting in the audience, we've got a Ripperoni fan here with the Ripperoni box. Incredible. Kyle, when you buy Ripperoni merch online, they send it to you in one of these pizza boxes. It's really? Cool. That's so lovely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. All right, let's take a look here at this fight. This was incredible. Ripperoni tipping Thumbwar up against itself. Thumbwar became a, uh, a little tripod. Ripperoni came in here with a concussive save and then successfully tipping its opponent up again uh, into that uh, really compromising position. This is maybe not the self-rating mechanism that they want to carry over to battle bots. So that being said, Lil Rip will go on to the next round to face off against Chibata. Chibata. Hashtag Chibata. Hashtag Chibata. Brought With to you by Rato. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a great fight. It should be pretty fun. 
And it, it turns out Lil Rip doing okay against these uh, horizontal spinners so far. So we'll see how that works out for them. Yeah, absolutely. Now the weapon was working really strongly on Thumbworth at the beginning of that match, but after they got turned into a tripod, we did not see any weapon action from them in that match. Very curious to see what happened, what improvements they're gonna have to make going forward. But as far as this tournament goes, they are eliminated. See Nick Buckholtz there making his robot safe. He's on Team Bloodsport. He's also a referee here at NHRL. Yeah, very often. And uh, he's built smaller versions of Bloodsport several times over, runs them at competitions all over the East Coast. And uh, Little Rip, a perfect scale model replica of Ripperoni, a very popular robot on this season of BattleBots. All right, so we have some bracket information for you to share at the 12 pound weight class. All right, so as you can see, we're looking at the round of 16 where we've gotten so far. We've got Octane moving forward. We've got Cthulhu moving forward. Maximizer, Sombra, of course, beating Smeezus, and Carmen. Not only did Sombra beat Smeezus, they also beat a foam-filled penguin. It was delightful. Yeah, I saw that. It kind of like exploded, and then there was some kind of uh, shaving cream or something in there. I believe it was actually uh, insulation foam, expandable insulation foam, because Joe ran in there so fast to clean it up because I think he was afraid of it drying and hardening inside the <laughs> arena. <laughs> I love Joe Fabiani. He's, That's great. He, he's everything we need in this sport, especially in this tournament. Now, there's a couple of fights that are coming up. I can see a Voxel v. Arsenal and Krunk versus Iteration, Buzzkill and Bakabot. And uh, those are going to be some good fights. So it looks like we have three more qualifying fights uh, before we build our uh, next, next round of the bracket. This is all now into round two of the 12 pound tournament. It's just some of these guys had a bye in the first round. So um, yeah, we are really excited to see how this goes forward. All right, so this is the 30 pound bracket. As you can see, moving on so far, we have Waddles versus Sombra coming up. Very excited to see that. Death Pact will either go up against George or Kitchen Grill. Both of those bots are so cool. Uh, we've got Kablooey Tango taking on Vodka Tank, and Lil Rip will be facing off against Chibata. Wow. That's going to be a very popular uh, fight on the internet. I'm going to call it that is, right yeah, now. It is, yeah, two very favorited bots. I think that's going to be great. Chibata's been doing a really good job today. What a cool bot. Very hard hitting, and not something you typically see from a Brazilian team. Kitchen Grill, I'm really looking forward to seeing their next fight. This is one of our UK robots, and it is a very heavy hitter. Now, um, if he's able to advance, he's going to be facing two Northwestern University robots in a row, yep. both in George and then later on in Death Pact. Yeah, he's got uh, two really big AR-500 weapons and an S7 tool steel weapon that are just vicious looking. The bot itself looks like a, like a Batmobile or something. It's beautiful. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely custom. Um, and, uh, you know, when you fly across the Atlantic Ocean, you're really here to win because... Uh, even if you take home first place, you're going to be basically breaking even on all of your travel costs. Yeah, he said that he's here to qualify because he's not really going to have a chance to qualify outside of today. So yeah. that is the whole point of being here. Uh, but he picked a rough one to qualify on. He's got all the Brazilians that he's got to contend with in that weight class as yep. well. So that's going to be oof, a tough one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so cool to have that whole kind of section of British builders here th for this event. Yeah, it is really cool. Um, yeah, we've got English builders up there and Irish builders. Yep. Uh, and I think I heard there was maybe a Latvian up there as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. And then um, obviously we have our Puerto Rican team here for the first time. Like, cool. Gotta love that. They yeah. are such cool guys. Their bot's doing wonderfully in the 12-pound division. Yeah. Um, plus it's called Arsenal. I mean, come on, how cool is that? It's so hard to find cool combat robotics names this late into combat robotics naming. Sure. Uh, but I love that one. And it, they're doing phenomenally. They're moving on well, well in the tournament. So we'll see how they do later on today. Yeah, that's really great. Um, yeah, and I'm loving this new bracket view as well. Like, this is really right. great. Yeah. Very helpful. All right, we're going to check in here on Cage 5. We can see Polywog from Ribot Captain Eight, David Jin seven, facing off against six, Glacier. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Glacier is brought to you by Spencer Macri from Stores, Connecticut. This is with Frost Robotics. Oh, I get it. 
Yep. Frost. Glacier. Glaciers. Right. Snow. Ice. Facing off against the frog of Pollywog. This is a devastatingly effective classic design from David Jin. Typically, he'll come here to one qualifying event, qualify for the finals, bring it back for the finals. He's a pretty efficient builder, I would say, when it comes to this robot in particular. Yeah. David Jin, huge fan of tight little compact drum spinners. Minotaur-esque drum spinners is how he likes to describe it. Just a very talented driver. If you want to see somebody who really takes advantage of gyroscopic procession in their driving strategy, David Jin is the pinnacle of that, in my opinion. Two minutes down here in this fight, it looks like Glacier has lost its weapon, and uh, it is being bullied around in the box by a Pollywog. Wow, hit after hit here. I believe that's a wheel from Glacier over there in the corner as well. All right, this is a 10-second pin here, Six. pinning uh, his opponent Four. up against the, uh, Three, the house bot. Two. One. All right, release. One of the big things that you're looking for with David Jin's drive style is that he stays so close to his opponent and he knows exactly how to get to any corner of the box. He was able to land two back-to-back 10-second -back pins there. Tap out. And that is turning a himself out. a tap out. Yep. Incredible. It's interesting, he didn't have the weapon up while he was pinning them, but the tap out happened and then he spun his weapon up just to show everybody, hey, I know I just won this fight, but this weapon still works. Now, Kyle, prepare yourselves for Joy and Delight. Brazilians on the live stream, get hyped. We have Lindsay up there with a very special celebrity all the way here from Brazil. Guys, we have Rato here. Hi, welcome to NHRL. I know this is your first time here. I just want you to take a look at this screen and see the- Apologize th about this, <laughs> but I, I don't know what happened here. I'm very nervous. Uh, I'm very nervous to speak in English too. You're doing great. Uh, uh, Apollo <laughs> and uh, it's my first time with my robot if in an event. In at all, so I don't know what will happen. You know what? You have thousands of minutes. people excited to see what will yes, happen. Yes, yes, everybody, everybody, everybody wants to see Entrada. How can I say? <laughs> Everybody wants to see Shibata. Shibata! Entra. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. So you're fighting Lil Rip next. Yes, How I do love you feel? pizza. I love a pizza. <laughs> but it's a, it's a crazy robot. Oh, yeah. I saw, but he's <laughs> so strong. Yeah. And, uh, let's go see what Shibata will do. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? It, that's what combat robotics I, is? I tested, I tested Shibata on my bathroom. You know that. <laughs> On my bathroom. On your bathroom? Yes, yes. I, I, I turn on I turn on Shibata, close the door, and I test it. I don't know what happened with Shibata. I don't know what will happen in a few minutes. <laughs> That's why you have to tune in and find out, because we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm very curious. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, thousands of people are cheering you on. They support you no matter what. So I hope you feel the love, and I hope you're enjoying uh, your first I'm time. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm loving this. <laughs> I want to bring this to Brazil. Yes. I have an event, too, uh, called uh, Street Bots, and yes. uh, I know we'll... we'll we're doing something important here today. Yes. You, me, I believe that. I really believe it yes. too. So many kids, families, people with a new interest in combat robotics. It's so important, it's so big, and you are leading it. You're one of the leaders in Brazil, and I hope that feels really good. Oh, thank you very much, <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right. Best of luck. Back to the desk. Let's go, Rato. Let's go, Chabata. Now, wait, Lindsay, Lindsay, before we lose Rato, oh, thank you very does much. Rato have a message for his fans in Portuguese? Uh, real quick, Rato, do you have a message for your fans in okay. Portuguese? Oh. So I will tell uh, to, in Portuguese to my yeah. uh, fans. Uh, gostaria de agradecer todo mundo aí. Uh, todo mundo sabe que tá vendo que a gente construiu o Shibata em 20 dias. Não vou mentir para vocês. Uh, 
Eu ganhei a primeira da WA, eu ganhei a segunda da WA, pura sorte, porque eu tô tendo problemas com o robô. Tô tendo problemas com o robô. Então, vamos ver se a gente vai, se a chibata vai entrar. Então, obrigado a todo mundo, pessoal. Vocês estão fazendo história. Valeu mesmo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. I understood none of that, but I loved it all. Let's go, Rato. <laughs> Oh, I love this guy. He, this is his first event. This is his first time fighting. Yeah. Uh, he told me that he chose to do it here because he has no choice to do, but to do it, but to do it here. He could not have his first event back in Brazil. There's no way it could happen. Rato is an announcer extraordinaire in Brazil. Yes. He's fantastic on street bots. Uh, he puts our work to shame. I mean, uh, he's really, really very good. Pure enthusiasm, pure yeah. energy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to see how he does today. I think that his bot is doing phenomenally so far. He's been testing it, working on it meticulously. He's really putting in the effort. I'm very he impressed. He tested it in his bathroom. You know, that's... It's a, uh, a choice. It's th There are more dangerous choices. Yeah, there's also less dangerous choices, there too. There are definitely choices that have less of a chance of flooding your entire house. Yeah, or breaking through your door. Well, we don't know what kind of a door he has in his bathroom. Oh, okay. Right. Could be a steel <laughs> door, I suppose. Yeah, that's a good point. Didn't think of that. <laughs> Pretty great. Uh, yeah, you know, it. Uh, I, I don't know how much of that story was true. But he does, they do have test I believe that story 100%. Do you really believe that story yeah, 100%? Yeah, 1,000 percent, all right? All right, well, I'm just saying he, he still has a bathroom, uh, allegedly, so <laughs> it worked out okay. Don't test your robots in bathrooms, folks, all right? That's an awful idea. <laughs> Yeah, please use uh, test boxes, well-built test boxes uh -huh. only. Yeah. Um, or, you know, an actual box. Maybe he's got fighting. Lexan in his bathroom, Kyle. That's what I'm saying. He might have a Lexan door. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> Lexan walls, you know? Who knows? <laughs> All right. So you can see George is here adjusting their weapon, trying to get it ready. George, one of the uh, Nurk bots. Classic Nurk bot, I guess you could say. Uh, they'll be going up against Kitchen Grill. Now, this is the first of two potentially uh, robots that Kitchen Grill will face from NERC. And uh, both uh, George and Death Pact have similar geometries. And uh, I guess if he, uh, if, if here, uh, if Kitchen Grill can achieve success, you know, he's looking at a pretty good position in the bracket. We don't have a whole lot of 30-pound fights left on the day. We don't. And uh, for the record, just a little bit of news there. So Emperor was not able to compete in their first round, which means Death Pack does move on to the next bracket. So if uh, Kitchen Grill is able to defeat George, they will have to face Death Pack in that next round. Yeah. All right, now George, pretty good mobility into the pink square. Kitchen Grill, though, has been ready for the last 10 minutes in this box. Typically not a great sign when you see the wrenches coming out right before the uh, the starting bell, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, true. It could be a psychological tactic as well. Look at that fight stance. It's a Jameson Go-esque fight stance. He's getting deeper than Jameson Go into that yeah. fight stance. Jameson Go lower, you know? Go lower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a good overhead shot here of Cage One. Now remember, you can always tune Eight, into the Brett Zone on NHRL.io and see five, all of the camera angles four, here inside of Cage three, One. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Good. Ooh, good speed here from Kitchen Grill. Big shower of sparks. Wow. Getting able to under get on George. The side of George, able to rip off pieces of that side armor. Love that. Kitchen Grill just vaporized its own mini bots. Pushing George up against the rail. Kitchen Grill dancing into light. Looks like George will have to, uh, to get a save very quickly here in the first 30 seconds of this fight from the house bot. And Kitchen Grill is spinning up. It is ready to go. It feels like Kitchen Grill is willing to fight the house bot as well. Like uh, the whole screen went red. Jack's telling me he's here to fight. He wants to have fun. He wants to qualify. Oh, it is just that menacing waiting here. Now, if Fluffy, the, the driver of Fluffy here, gives up, 
Jack might go in there and try and self-write the robot himself. Right now, he's very politely waiting for Fluffy to do their very delicate work. Oh, it's so polite. I don't mean to stereotype, but the British are pretty polite, aren't they? Yes, they are. They are polite in that, uh... He's waiting in his queue to kill, yeah. all right? And they, he is. He's very considerately waiting to murder Fluffy George. is gone. Jack, what are you going to do? Are you going to let your opponent die? He is going to play conservatively. Smart choice here. At this point in the tournament, this is a very good choice to make. As George gets counted out. Oh, he might have spoken too soon. He's coming in and attacking. Now, we don't know. Cage side, maybe Nurk asked for that. Knockout. It's a knockout. Incredible. Kitchen grill, one of the robots to watch. Yeah, this bot drives beautifully. It hits hard. I am very impressed. Now, Kitchen Grill advances and will face another North, uh, North uh, Western team in uh, Death Pact. Now, Death Pact has already qualified for the uh, November Championship. And uh, we're going to be seeing if uh, he can do it twice in a row here with these kids from NERC. Let's take a look here at this replay. George came out of the gate. That weapon was not running from the first uh, hit here. Oh, that is a big factor in this fight. This big shower of sparks that was completely from Kitchen Grill, successfully tipping his opponent up against the rail and allowing it to die. This is the end of the road for George. Kitchen Grill will, adv will advance to face another Northwestern robot. Death Pact, the former James. Yeah, Nurk was really struggling with the weapon at the beginning of that match. We saw them with the wrenches out, working on the shaft for that weapon. They were still not able to get it operational. Now we've got a good shot here of our VIP area, sponsored by ASML. And uh, these VIP... Um, all right, we're going to go over to cage Eight, four here. Seven, We've got six, Crunk in the pink corner, five, iteration four, in the blue. Three, two, one. Fight. Winner of this Robots match goes on to face Cthulhu in the next round. I would say Crunk is heavily favored to win. Iteration been doing a great job today, but that weapon on Crunk is just vicious. Zach Knight, uh, the driver of Crunk. Now, typically he runs Promheta here. He built Crunk and gifted it to his brother, Joe. Joe is not here in the competition today, and Zach is eager to qualify Crunk. But I'm gonna give it to Casey Germiason and her husband, Casey Germiason. They have kept oh. the weapon on iteration running. And the second I said it, the weapon went down. Yeah, that weapon-to-weapon -weapon impact was not great for Iteration. And there we go, another big pop into the air from Krunk. Iteration still fully mobile, but that weapon is down. Casey doing an excellent job with this uh, tactical driving. Oh, another big hit from Krunk. Zack Knight is such a tactical driver, capable of staying squared up with his opponent. Barely a wasted movement. There you saw a nice bobble one hit, and then he hit him again just before they hit the ground. This is a driving clinic from Zack Knight. Now it's starting to sound very quiet in the box. Is it possible that the weapon on Krunk has gone down? Or is he realized that he's got a lot of time left in this particular match and he wanted to save the weapon? Yeah, that's a pretty smart, uh, smart idea, I suppose. Is that really Zach's style, though? I feel like he likes to go for knockouts, Kyle. He does. He likes to make things go kablooey. And uh, this might be a knockout. Wow, that was a very uh, gentle unstick attempt from Flo. Tap out. Uh, tap out. There we go. Casey and Casey have tapped out. Zach Knight already coming over to, uh, you know, say hello. It looks like the house bot has just violently crashed uh, into something. Tap out. 
Did he violently crash into Krunk, Kyle? I don't believe so. I believe he was trying to push uh, Casey over into the wall and uh, <laughs> went a little bit too far wow. with iteration. Now, Zach Knight is one of our best builders in the 12-pound division. Um, he and his team, Team Defective, have really dominated this weight class, uh, and they share parts, they share learnings, and uh, there are a lot of Team Defective robots at the very top of the, uh, the brackets at each competition that they, uh, they appear at. We've got a, a good uh, replay here of uh, how he did it. Zach Knight really piloting Krunk to victory here. Incredible. They're gonna have to go in and sweep out parts of, uh, of iteration here. And uh, the Casey's going back to Minneapolis early with, uh, with their robot based around the swole bar. Yeah, iteration is their experimental kind of version of the swole bar robot. This is where they're testing new configurations. Uh, the test did not work out great in that particular match, but it's a cool design. It's a cool robot. I would love to see what that bot can do once they are able to get the uh, the aluminum pulleys that they were expecting for this event. They have to be running the nylon interior pulleys because the, uh, the aluminum ones were still shipping. So this is cannon fodder versus wake. Now, Wake run, of course, by Angel of the Doll. It's one half of Wake and Bake. Only now, uh, this is the full-scale three-pound version. I think that this may be the, like, uh, two-pound version, Kyle. Really? Yeah. Uh, Alex Peza was, uh, was planning on coming to NHRL and uh, running Bake, but uh, Angel decided just to run uh, Wake in his stead. I did not know that. That's crazy. Now it looks like the uh, the weapon on this black and gold robot has gone down. Angel Vidal on Team Shreddit uh, on BattleBots this season. And uh, he is a fantastic Beetleweight builder on his own. He works as an engineer and a designer. built a really nice little uh, compact egg beater here in Wake. Cannon Fodder brought to you by Trevor Zastemer from Team Cannon Fodder. He works as a software engineer. He likes mountain biking, skiing, and electronics. Wow, nice. How about long walks on the beach, Kyle? Uh, I don't think his bot's going to be walking anywhere after these hits. Now it sounds like this may be a count out on cannon fodder. Angel Vidal eager to keep the, the, uh, the fight going. You can see him drop down to the ground just to get a better look. It looks like the uh, final seconds of this match could be counting down here. Angel! Wow, Angel surviving to the very end. That is the risk of good sportsmanship. This one will go to the judges. I think very clearly this is a win for Angel, but that was a very unlucky bump. I am so impressed that Angel's just running his two pound wake bot yeah. in this division and doing well, just won a match. All right, we're gonna go over to cage one. I think I see Maximizer in there facing off against Rosie. Rosie is a uh, Cornell robot here. Maximizer is from the University of Cincinnati. Eight, seven, These are two college six, students. Five, and uh, four, this is going to be an three, incredible fight. Maximizer is one, one of my favorite fight, robots in this weight class. Fight. Yeah, Jay Kaufman, one of the coolest characters at this event. So many improvements on Maximizer specifically geared around facing vertical spinning weapons like Rosie. Now, Maximizer is a Thagomizer-style robot. Uh, Thagomizer, originally built by Sean Becker from Southern California. He's competed here with this design, and several people have been inspired by it. Jake worked with, um, with Sean to scale up this design to 12 pounds, and he's doing great with Maximizer. 
In his uh, debut with Maximizer back in March, he splits the weapon of the number one ranked 12 pounder in this competition and uh, split it right in half. Yabnal just, just cracking that weapon. Jake and I were talking uh, earlier this morning and Jake told me that one of the big improvements that they made was uh, armor packages specifically to prevent vertical spinning weapons from crashing into the weapon housing and knocking the weapon housing out of sorts, uh, yeah. which was a big problem that they had at the last event. So yeah. this is a new arm setup made almost entirely out of aluminum and then there is a titanium capped wedge that prevents uh, prevents the, the system out. from being removed. A beautiful tap out there. Wow. So what Rosie, a dominant robot. Rosie, brought to us by James Courtney from Combat Robotics Una uh, Cornell, is now out of this competition. Jake Hoffman will be advancing. This is a very scary 12-pounder indeed. And uh, I just love the way that that robot works. It tries to break your weapon with its face, this big, chonky, armored face, and then whip around with that tail and attack, uh, attack the wheels. I don't want a Twizzler, but thank you for the offer, children. That was very nice of you. Look at that hit, just bam, perfect Thagomizer-style smack there. Uh, we saw another great example of that whip around tail taking off the wheel violently from Rosie. Yeah, Rosie's not going to be needing that wheel anymore. All right, just a little bit of news. We got confirmation that the judges did unanimously choose Wake in the previous fight. So congratulations to Angel Vidal. All right, we're gonna go over to cage four. There's another big box fight here. Eight, We've got Buzzkill here in the pink six, square, facing five, off against Bakabot in three, the blue corner. Two, one, fight, robots fight. Bakabot is a big uh, vertical spinner. Kind of giving me monsoon vibes, perhaps. Yeah, invertible design, very well built. Dishing out massive hits today. Maybe backlash wave vibes, maybe deep six vibes. And Buzzkill, this really uh, bulletproof uh, undercutter here from Team Honeycraft. Zoe Lambert and her team. Now this one's captained by Liam King. He's a phenomenal driver. Liam told me yesterday when we were discussing this spot that he's trying to bring a, a win home for Zoe and the team. They're always here. You can always find them in the same section of the pits, answering questions for the newbies, helping people out, loaning out tools. Now here comes that save with 60 seconds into this match. Buzzkill's now back off of the rail. Its saves are now gone. Big hit there on Bakabot. Wow, listen to that. Attempted weapon spin up not working, you can see. Bakabot making a lot of noise, not a lot of weapon happening. Can Casey get this weapon back up and running? Look at how just twisted the frame rails are around that weapon though. Yeah, I don't even think the weapon can spin because it's hitting its own uh, frame rail. Yeah, it's all bent, and uh, it looks like that material is just permanently warped in that direction. Yeah, they're gonna have to replace that for sure. Looks like UHMW, perhaps. You know those those wings there. Casey Schumacher now is basically relegated to a push bot, but with a fully active undercutter weapon on Buzzkill, that's not a pleasurable place to be. Every time you're going to push into that bot, you're going to cause a lot of damage to yourself. Now, if you're Buzzkill, what you want to do is go for the wheels here, so really that uh, you can stop Bakabot from moving. But uh, it's pretty clear that, you know, with 40 seconds left here in this fight, that Buzzkill is ahead on the points. They yeah. really just need to hang back, kind of play it conservatively, continue to show aggression and control, but, uh, you know, you've got to take it to the judges. You don't want to get stuck, especially because Buzzkill's burned up its one and only save in this match. 
Absolutely. You don't want to come in there for a massive hit and find yourself completely and totally disassembled due to your own weapon. Winner of this match goes on to face Maximizer in the next round. Awesome. All right, with 10 seconds left, both of these robots have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges. I do think that this is very clearly, though, a buzzkill win. Bakabat uh, going home early in this fight. That's my guess. Bakabat run by the University of Cincinnati and uh, buzzkill. Pretty, pretty incredible uh, here. Going to take it to the judges, but you know, I'm not a judge. But I have seen an awful lot of these. I do think it's going to be a unanimous decision. Casey Schumard was having a really good time post-fight, uh, laughing, but obviously there was a little bit of a look of disappointment on his face. Bakabat's been hitting very hard uh, throughout the day today in these qualifying rounds, and uh, I think he was expecting to go far into the tournament. But the veteran buzzkill and Liam King might be sending them home. We'll see what the judges say. Making it safe, getting it ready to be removed from the box. All right. All right, so let's go see our friend Allie. Allie, how's it going out there? I am going well. This is something that I feel like is relatable to us that are no longer in our teens like this team. But, you know, you step on the scale and you're like, whoa, that should be like five pounds less. This happened to them, but it was one pound. They had to shed one pound from their three, bot, three pound bot and they did it. They got it from four to three. Tell me how you did it. And I should mention, this is Christopher from Project Tucker. He's a high school student doing amazing things. Uh, all right, um, basically, once we, thought, once we um, saw that it was four pounds, we were scared at first, and we basically lost hope because then we were like, what can we do? Like, there was nothing at first. We didn't think that there was nothing we could do. But then we ended up finding out that I, I had an extra um, part in my bag that was basically much more smaller because, like, the original blade that we had was basically big. It was, like, close to a pound by itself alone. So we ended up replacing it with a much more smaller one, which is, like, 0.30-ish, I believe. So we did that, and it ended up bringing it down by like half a pound. So then we we're like, oh, what else can we do? Well, we ended up finding out that, oh, we don't really need four wheels. So we basically ended up removing four of the wheels. And then we thought that was it, but then we left the motors in because we didn't think it would be really that important. But then after we put it on the scale, it still was over three pounds. So now we have to go through the hassle of basically removing both motors, which took a while, because then we have to unsolder, then we have to unscrew all this, which was an inconvenience at best. But once we did that all, we put the plate on and everything, put the battery included, and it ended up being under barely under three pounds. It was like 2.98. So it was like. But you did it, and you are a newer team. Joshua will pan out because I know Joshua was talking to you a lot as well. Um, you guys are excited to be here. Are you going to come back for the next round with maybe a bot that's like 2.9 to start with? Absolutely. I mean, we're excited to crush the competition. Even though we might be inexperienced, beginner's luck, and we also came here to learn, so you can never improve without losing. What a quote. You can never improve without losing. I'm going to tell myself that a lot more. Thank you, guys. We can't wait to see you back again. I know you might have a grudge match, and now you're ready to go with a one-wheeled bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do. Well, we're not around. Easy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Incredible ethos there. Uh, you know, I'm oh, overweight. Instead of forfeiting this uh, competition, I'm going to remove as many wheels as I can yeah. to make weight. I love it. Amazing. I only need one. Yeah. You just got to show motion. That's all. Technically. Technically. Sure. Yeah. I love it. Those kids are great. Uh, cool bot. Yeah. I love that he just happened to have another weapon in the bag. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Smart. You got to come prepared. Cool. Now, I see that we're loaded into cage one. Oh, this is yes. going to be a big fight here. We've got Brian Boxel and Waddles in the pink corner facing off against Sombra 30 and Tomaz from Team AGVS in Eight, the blue corner. Seven, a big six, do or die five, moment for both four, of these teams. Three, Winner of this two, match gets into the semifinals for the 30 pound division. Fight. Look at the size disparity of these bots. Huge hit there. And the winner does qualify for the World Championship Finals. Oh! Another big hit from Waddles on Sombra 30. Waddles, this modular offering from Brian Boxel, hard hitting, going with their undercutter configuration. 
I can see the weapon, though, on Sombra is still running. Tomas is hoping to violently self-right by crashing into the rail. Waddles, though, is going for a knockout here. And they are chipping away at those wheels. We can see the team here celebrating oh. cage side. With two minutes left, there is a huge amount of time on the clock. It does look like the weapon on Sombra has gone down. And keep in mind, ripping away at wheels on a bot like Sombra is very problematic. It's translational drive, which means it's a direct spin on those wheels. If the surface of those wheels gets compromised, that spin very well might stop, just like we're seeing right now. A minute 45, and uh, Brian Boxel and his friends are celebrating cage side. Team WPI has slain a very formidable opponent in Sombra 30, and uh, they are a minute and a half away from qualifying for the championship. Seems like the weapon might be all the way down on both of these bots, or Waddles is just saving it. It's possible. Oh, there it is. He was saving it, Kyle. 60 seconds left. Will Brian come in here for a knockout? Good little shower of sparks. Tomaz is desperate to keep his weapon pointed toward his opponent. His weapon is the hardest thing on that robot. He'd rather not have Waddles go for the, uh, the wheels. Nice for the work body. from the minibot on Waddles, pinning them up in the air to give uh, give Waddles a good shot. Big oh. hit here for Brian Boxel. 30 seconds left. This has been a trouncing, Kyle, a trouncing. Absolutely. Welcome to America, Sombra 30. This is how Waddles hits. We might not name our bots in the most intimidating way but they certainly do hit. However, with the last, uh, as we enter the last 10 seconds, this one will go to the judges. Brian Boxel is celebrating. I think that he knows that he's won this. Qualifying for the finals, Waddles, Brian Boxel. Incredible. Tamaki been doing a wonderful job all day. Definitely not a bad way to end the tournament. Wow, the boys from WPI are very excited about their performance after that fight. Right. Let's check out this replay. Boom, perfect hit there from Waddles. Waddles. Waddles coming in, smacking the side. Waddles is hitting so incredibly hard in this competition. Uh, you know, Brian was saying that uh, he was getting the robot dialed in at the end of last year. I'm gonna say, Brian, it's dialed. It looks pretty dialed to me, absolutely. Brian's strategy was perfect on this too. He was not wasting shots. He was not coming in and taking hits that were unnecessary. Once he realized that weapon was down and the drive was compromised, he was very judicious about what he was gonna do and where he was gonna hit. So smart. Well worth the celebration. We'll see what our judges have to say, but it, I think that's gonna end up being unanimous. We'll have to see. There you have it, unanimous decision for Waddles. They will be moving on to the semifinals and they qualify for the 30, uh, the uh, World Championships in November. Congratulations, Brian Boxel. That's amazing. Now, Kyle, I'm gonna just tell you, I had Waddles on my list for predictions, all you right? You did, you did. Check mark Luke, here we go, all you right? Know, you know, I also had Waddles on my did list you? for predictions. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, check mark us, Kyle. <laughs> okay, so this is grade pending. Grade pending is from an all-girls school. Oh, and they're going up against uh, Ch Chainsaw Kitty. Kezaya Sky and Chainsaw Kitty here in black. Grade pending here in uh, blue and silver. Now, uh, the, the, the robot here in black is this absolutely devastatingly effective vertical spinner. Okay, Zaya is absolutely serious about this. Wow, ripping off both oh, of the wheels. Oh, the wheels Incredible. Wow. So uh, 
Great Pending was an engineering capstone project for this all-girls school in Queens, and now it is uh, in pieces. Yeah. Uh, Kezia is was very worried about her bot's performance today, but uh, after watching just the end of that fight, I don't know why, that was vicious. What a hit. I mean, Kezia, phenomenal driver. Her bot hits hard. Um, she barely makes any changes to it between these competitions, too. She just she gets it ready. She tightens everything down. And boom, look at this just volley of hits. No mercy from Chainsaw Kitty and Kezia Sky. Beautiful work. All right, Kezia stays alive here in the bracket and will advance. That robot is looking super, super strong right now. Uh, all of her wins have been super convincing today. Uh, so, yeah. She's got forward. three full copies of that robot. I mean, just professional work. Check this out. This is Harold. Harold's run by a seven-year-old, maybe an eight-year-old. I think he's eight now, yeah. Yeah. And perfectly designed robot. Listen, wedge on both sides, scary spinning finger bar, uh, figure beater bar on top. Yeah. I love that. So smart. And a actually, you know, favorite to win, like, just from the geometry here, the rock, paper, scissors, you know, if you can feed your horizontal straight up into that weapon, Harold could pop the uh, horizontal, no problem at all. And you can see these uh, wheel protectors that he's added since the last event, putting to good work here. Obsolete spare parts, I believe, is part of the Red Hawk line. Ooh, nice hit there. All right, now I, I've seen something interesting here with Harold. Now, uh, Harold sent in a question to the podcast uh, a couple of months ago, uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, asking um, Evan Arias, do you run double belts on your Fingertech beater bar? And uh, I think that he is running double belts here on he Harold. Is. I asked him about it this morning, and he is definitely running the double belts. The two big changes on Harold are uh, A, the caution tape. Uh, and the side protectors, which is a big problem they had at the last event. They kept losing wheels because horizontal spinners would get in there and rip them out. Um, so you can see those are working beautifully right now. And then the big design change was the double belting on the weapon system, which uh, they did get a lot of help with from Evan Arias and suggestions from Evan Arias. You can see that one of those belts, though, has gone down. And, uh, yeah, this is the benefit of double belts. He's got the other belt to keep it running. Pretty, Evan Arias, famous proponent of double belting. As we enter the last 10 seconds of this fight, it looks like this one will go to the judges. Perhaps Harold is the winner here. Hard to say. Yeah, both bots performing very well in that matchup. All right, we'll send this one to the judges. The Weiss family staying alive in the bracket, perhaps. All right, we're going to go check in with Ali the most important parts of this whole NHRL tournament, the pit desk. So we want to show you how we get the teams ready to go. So first, we'll pan on over here in this microphone. This is where he has the tough duty of warning people that they better get their butts over to these computers so that they can check in for their fight. So we have he has perfected this to have that firm but friendly voice that you hear over the microphones here if you are watching in studio. Then I was told that, again, this is like way above my pay grade. So I, they explained this to me that they're, all these boxes, right, it's showing you who's up next and your competitors. So you come on in. You can see we've got our Schenectady team that's being low, uh, run by Coach Davis. I call him Coach Davis, but he's teacher Mr. Davis, I should say. They're waiting to check in. Once their opponents come, then we go over to this screen and they are told where to head downstairs. So this is quite the production. And if we pan, you can see we got a lot of teams ready to go. And I know we got to point out that this is Ashley from Milk Tank. So basically the moral of the story is turn around, Ashley, give a wave. If you are a competitor long enough, we will make sure that we hire you and you work here for an event. That's really the moral of the story. How does it feel beyond the other side of things today? It's definitely 
a different feel. So this is my second event working in a row, but um, it's a little chaotic, but it's a little crazy, but everybody is super patient with us and we are trying to be super patient with them. So I, we're having fun. We're getting through it. You are doing a great job. Thank you so much, Ashley. Glad to have you on the team. So yes, this is what's going on. And we'll give you one last pan of all the teams that are gearing up to fight here. I can see our Brazilian team getting ready. Again, we got the Davis team, the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club. They're new. It's a lot of good matches coming up here. Oh, thanks a lot there. And uh, speaking of people that got roped into working here, uh, yeah. I'm Ricky Willems. And I'm Sam Hansen. Hello. Thank you uh, for joining us today. We are uh, both uh, obviously robot builders and competitors ourselves. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a certain gravity where you just can't stay away from, from working with NHRL after a certain point. Is, is it FOMO or what? what is it? No, I think it's... Um, I think it's excitement. I think it's just like earnest, eager excitement to be a part of something really cool. At least that's for me. Hard to say. Uh, speaking of excitement, I'm excited to see what happens here in cage number one. We have Carmen and Swagmore. Swagmore uh, from Team Honeycracked. Um, a uh, lovely, you can see there on the left-hand side, red and black egg beater spinner. And Carmen, a absolute veteran of the class. Sam, so, yeah. I was going to say, could you tell us a little bit more about just what happened? The doors are uh, closing, locking. Yeah, there's a, a pretty specific process for this. Um, folks will turn their radios on, and then they will turn their robots on, and then they will remove the weapon lock, and that robot is ready to go. Cool. And yeah, that happens in order for each robot. Um, so, that, you know, close the doors, nothing moves before, uh, exactly. before things are ready to go. Now, as we get ready for the fight, uh, this fight, of course, being the uh, second round uh, of this bracket, uh, do we have any early predictions, do you think? Uh, Carmen, obviously, is a veteran. Yeah, Carmen Eight, is a terror. Seven, I, I think that's where I'm six, leaning. All right, well, five, we will find out. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Away we go. Swagmore is a uh, relatively young design, shall we say. Oh, and it is immediately having some trouble moving. After you take a few hits from Carmen, that does happen. A lot of gyro walking on Swagmore. That weapon is still very much up to speed. They're quick with the self right though. That's true, that's true. Oh, but Carmen not giving an inch here. Hit after hit, very measured attacks. Just enough to pop them up, wait for the reset. Swagmore stuck in the corner. We're going to have Fluffy come in here for an unstick. Looks like Swagmore is going to get its one unstick attempt from Fluffy. <laughs> you will notice Swagmore is stuck on the sticky surface hmm. left over from Joe Fabiani's um, Sneezes explosion. There is Sneezes all over that corner. All right, it is self uh, right in. The weapon is back up to speed. Looks like Carmen did what Fluffy could not. Freeing Swagmore. Oh, but now Carmen is stuck in the corner. Oh, this is not a good place for Carmen. I wonder what's gone wrong. The drive system is twitching. Swagmore kind of crab walking its way away. Fluffy going to do it. Fluffy can, but it's tough when oh, they're in the man. corner there. Look, you see if we can get a closer look. These are the uh, oversized finger tech beater bars um, on uh, Swagmar. It has the oversized. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, there it is. It's like Carmen the free again. Oh, that is a brutal, brutal hit. Oh, and no mercy. Swagmore stuck up on the ledge with no more unsticks. We'll see if he can get himself down. He's desperately trying. Could Carmen reach there if, if they want it? Maybe just barely. Cody Graham doing his absolute best to get uh, Swagmore off of the wall to no avail. Knockout. Your winner by knockout today is Carmen. The crowd likes that one. And you know what Cody does too? Even with the loss, there were uh, there were smiles and giggles there. Now, of course, the question is, how do we safely get that robot off the corner of the arena? 
And the answer to that, hopefully, is our lovely helper robot, Fluffy. Big old Fluffy. 300 pounds or so? Yeah, I think 320 last I heard. And I can see she shakes the whole cage in those those attempts to, to free Swagmore there. Yeah, a good hit from Fluffy on the side of the arena. You can, uh, you know, feel it in your gullet. And we have uh, no stopping the large robot fights. We're going to Octane and Aerostar in cage four. Aerostar is a uh, multi-bot, Octane a, um, I want to say expat, but that's not right, a uh, British visitor uh, that has come over. We, we talked to them earlier. Um, really interesting um, set of robots that the Brits have brought over this time around. Uh, some of them old designs, some of them new. It's a very different landscape over there as far as robots go. The meta is a little different, what you expect, what you build for. And I, I always love seeing it. Same with the Brazilians. Any team that comes from another country, seeing how they're going to react is, is really something. Yeah, they don't have to face a lot of the same robots uh, where they're from when they come here. I know the, the Brazilian scene is, is a lot more the vertical spinners, and so there's horizontal spinners and, and lifters and stuff here that you might not see as frequently over there, where in the UK, it's, it's a lot of flippers. And a lot of flippers, a lot of lifters, very different landscape. So. Uh, we are making our way through the 12-pound bracket. There are two more fights left in the 12-pound bracket. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, in the in this round of the 12-pound okay. bracket. Not, we, we've got quite a ways to go in the 12-pound overall. And, oh, well, we are, have been summoned to cage six here. Moon fight and Naga. So uh, moon cake, moon I cake. believe, is the uh, round white one? Yes, yes. Um, Naga being the blue drum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mooncake is an interesting robot. It, it's got a, it's a ring spinner. Okay. Um, not the full shell does not spin. The entire body does not spin. But it's got this ring of of kind of spinning death that comes around the outside of the robot. Um, and unfortunately, going up against a drum like Naga, it, it's kind of a rough matchup. Yeah. Tossed like a coin. Yeah. Uh, luckily, with the ring spinner design, though, you do have invertibility. Yes, oftentimes you can. You can't get that, generally speaking, with the shell spinner. Right. Um, but it works just fine with Mooncake. Now I want a Mooncake. Have you ever had like a, an actual? I've only had a Moon Pie. No. Oh, okay. Well, it's, uh, I don't know a lot about them, but they're you know really a nice treat. You should try one sometime. Hmm. Uh, anyhow, let's see. <laughs> Aside, because apparently I'm hungry. Uh, Naya flipping Mooncake pretty well there. I think this, uh, yes, the outside ring on Mooncake is just down for the count. So it is very much just a uh, coin flip after coin flip. Oh, the weapon's spinning up just a little bit. That's good. With the last 10 seconds, let the judges know your weapon is still functioning. I mean, it can be very important, but uh, Naga really seems to have dominated this fight. I'm not expecting a big surprise coming from the judges on this one. And that is your match. Immediately back to cage four. Another team, a Honeycrack member, Eight, Zoe seven, uh, in six, yellow there, just five, waiting for four, her opportunity. Three, two, one. Away fight, we go, Aerostar fight. being the multi-bot here. Octane in black. Some grinding away. No hits with a bite yet, though. Now, sometimes uh, that is the downside to spinning these weapons very fast. They, they don't bite in as much, and the robot doesn't get hit as often. But boy, when it connects. Octane's weapon apparently hitting the ground there, bouncing about. Oh. Ooh. Solid connect from Octane. Absolutely. I see a belt of some kind on the floor there, Sam. I'm going to have to think that's coming from Aerostar. It certainly appears that way. That said, the mini bot from Aerostar, this blue wedge 
moving around, really doing a wonderful job um, dividing the attention of Octane, shall we say. Octane tossing him left and right now. It took a minute for Octane to get in the swing of things, but... Uh, uh, but it's gone a bit oh. quiet in there. Yeah, Aerostar's beater bar is now down, no longer functioning. Octane's drum having some ground clearance issues, it seems like. Yeah, the weapon spins just fine, but it is bumping, uh, bumping the floor over and over again. Now, what Octane really wants to do is get knocked back over somehow, uh, flipped upside down so that weapon can spin up again. It's going to be hard to accomplish. Yeah, it seemed to be doing uh, gyro self-rights pretty, pretty easily, but without that drum going. Yeah, self-writing uh, using the gyroscopic force of the drum, very popular. Um, you know, it's one less moving part. Well, several less moving parts in some cases. Um, Oh, interesting. Octane now looking very much dead in the water. Aerostar springing. All right, that, uh, that might be enough. Little extra to life. I think yeah. we're going to get a countdown, Sam. I don't know. It's it's moving. And we're so close to the, the 10 seconds left on the clock that. Oh, interesting. Aerostar, it was kind of a, a you know good sportsmanship move. It was struggling quite a bit more where it was. All right, yes, this is going to go down to the judges. We are coming in on the last five seconds. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah, both robots stayed aggressive through the match. Both robots really worked hard to do the best, best they could with whatever damage they could inflict. Uh, it's really going to come down to how the judges saw the damage um, play out. I think the damage to me is a little more dramatic on Aerostar. That's a... It didn't just stop yeah. working. There's, it, it's mangled. Absolutely, that, that drum is, uh, or the uh, beater bar on Aerostar, uh, a bit crooked. But we'll find out. At the same time, um, the uh, front of its opponent is, clearly has big chunks out of it and prevented it from working at least after a time. So good luck. You can see some of these big hits here. Oh, the mini bot take it. There you are. So that last hit you just saw there was what knocked that uh, uh, that belt off its pulley on the drive side of Aerostar. And after that, it was it was really hard for Aerostar to control the match. Like they they put in a valiant effort, but um, and now granted, before that, excellent control. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, having a wedge mini bot can and really uh, up your control game. And the wedge minibot really never let up. It was effective the entire time. Yeah. We're going, I think, to Chris in the pits after this. We're going to get an inside look, see what's going on. Chris, how you doing? Sam, Ricky. I'm here with Brandon Bennett Young, uh, BattleBots alum, Team Mammoth alum. But we are right here next to Fracas. Let's take a look at some of the damage that Fracas has seen today. Brandon, uh, tell us a little bit about your lineup today and how this all happened. So Fracas was uh, designed me to lift her bot, a suplexing robot, but fought Ripperoni or Little Rip. And the main thing with Ripperoni has a really big reach on there, so it does a lot of damage coming into the jaw. So with the jaw here, you actually can see a lot of the head got bent pretty badly, so it couldn't really do its suplexing thing. And sort of at the end, when I couldn't really get over, it tried to hit me back over, but it got a really good shot in the base plate here. So you can sort of see right oh. there, grade A damage right on the base. Uh, I thought about fixing it, but probably not. It's pretty well screwed up. Between the base plate there and the lifting arms in the front, it's uh, super duper dead. So do you think that you're going to make any modifications for this for the future to improve the resilience, or do you think that you're going to go with something maybe new? So with this, uh, with this machine, one of the big goals is to have a control robot. I want to have something that can really do some action, but in sort of an orderly way. So there's some ideas, maybe more billet aluminum, maybe some more welded steel different ways. Another machine actually is going to use sort of a cattywampus, my little three-pounders ideas, and we try to implement that into a different robot entirely. So between the two ideas, 50-50. Uh, are we going to see Phenomenon again this year? Oh, yeah. Phenomenon isn't here because trying to save up the energy to fix it for next time. Uh, Megatron gave me a lot to think about. 
As someone who's been on the business end of Phenomena, I'll tell you, it's one bot not to mess with. I'm really excited to see what iterations you make on this in the future. And you gave me a taste of some of the ideas that you're working on, and they're silly, and they're fun, and I think that they might work. It's one of those things that you can't plan for. Absolutely. Hoping to get something more fun around here, too. All right. Back to you guys at the desk. Can't ask for more than that, Sam. No. Love Brandon. Love Fracas. Pretty unfortunate. <laughs> a little bit. But that's, you know, that's the name of the game. And going up against Ripperoni, it's, uh, you know, you can't, you can't plan for that. Yeah. And even if you could, you're still going to have a, a hard time. It's, it's tough to put enough armor on a robot that lifts and grabs. Uh, it's, it's a lot of movement going on, a lot of moving parts, a lot of steel. Uh, it's, it's hard to get the armor where you need it. Yeah, but to be, to be fair, Brandon, if anyone can do it, Absolutely. it's going to be him. So uh, we got a lot more fights coming today. Uh, let's see. We're probably about a third of the way through most okay. of our brackets, I'd say. Yeah. Um, we're going to cage seven here, a little more three-pound action. Now, we've seen draft one, or at least I commentated on draft one a little bit earlier, and they're going up against inside job here. Okay, draft, so. draft one is the horizontal spinner. You can see with the, uh, the orange, the white, or the orange and silver and black. And inside job is a crusher robot. Is that, is that correct, I believe? Yes, that is the idea. That is a, a pincer on the top of that robot, uh, and a very effective one at that. A big, nasty piece of steel. There you go. That's exactly what Inside Job wants to do. And then, oh, you can see it. It's very Ooh. slow. Are we going? But that, oh, interesting. The pinch. Oh, oh. it's a tap. That's Couldn't why it handle the pinch. They tapped. Ooh, and wow. that is the end. Now, for the folks watching at home who might have noticed that's a, uh, a slow pinch, something to keep in mind, the slower your pinch is, the more oomph is behind it. It's the opposite of most of the weapons here, where you the spin it, faster you spin it, the more it, the more it kicks you. The slower a pincher goes, generally speaking, uh, the more torque it has behind it and the more it can crush for it. Some, some of these three-pound robots can crush with thousands of wow. pounds of force. Now, Ricky, it seems... Like, uh, there's a balance to strike, though, with your, with your pincher speed, uh, considering we have a pin limit, so you can only pin your opponent sure. for 10 seconds. Yeah, and if you are going to run out of time to pin your opponent, you don't want it to take half of that time for your pinch to occur. Yeah. So it's, it is a, it a delicate uh, balancing act that the designers of these robots really need to play. Uh, it looked, and of course, we didn't see the entire match there on this stream. And, and as a reminder, if people want to hop on over to the Brett Zone, you are all at any time able to go and watch any one of our live streams um, through NHRL, through through um, our Brett Zone. Yeah. Uh, we, I want to say the Brett Experience, but that is a separate thing. But you can get the experience of watching the Brett Zone and watch <laughs> all of these fights uh, simultaneously, like that scene out of uh, Back to the Future 2. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'll, anything I can do to <laughs> reference back to the future in my day-to-day -day life, um, put on 12 channels at once and okay. just, you know, absorb the madness. And you can choose your, uh, your Eight, angle on that, too, seven, which is pretty convenient. Six, yeah, it's, five, it's a very four, interesting interface three, and really two, gives you complete one, control of the experience fight, you want to have. Robots fight. Moving over here, we are in uh, cage six, I believe that is. Yep. Uh, we lost our video feed for a moment here, but we've got Tomato Soup and Big Al are the two robots fighting. Uh, Tomato Soup, of course, looks like a Campbell's can. And Big Al is a uh, lovely finger tech meter bar. Yeah, Tomato Soup looks a little familiar as well. Uh, looks like one of the SSP kits. Yeah, we're going to see that more and more, I think, Sam. Um, more and more builders have decided that they need an easier way to get new people involved in this, and have started producing these really wonderful kits. Um, some are more do-it-yourself than others. Yeah. Um, I've got my hands on a couple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the SSP is, is a really nice one. SSP, I think, has uh, some, some uh, more marketable abbreviation uh, acronym behind it, but last I heard, it's generally shameless self-promotion. Yeah. 
And there's your match. Knockout. Tomato soup taken. Like you do. Referee Jim over there using the house bot to uh, bring everyone to the cage door. And as, as folks are taking their robots out of the ring, they're gonna follow the uh, opposite order in which they put them in the ring. Let's look at the 12 pound bracket. As you can see, we only have uh, two more fights left in the first round of the um, the 12 pound matchups here. We are going to have a, uh, well, let's see. We've got two more rounds uh, until we get to the finals. Okay. And um, anything yeah, uh, to see. you're looking forward to on here? Well, Carmen is always a robot to watch. I would really love to see a Carmen Maximizer matchup. Maximizer, also one of my favorite robots, really unique design. Carmen, a heavy hitter. I, I think that would be a wonderful matchup. Um, going to the 30 pound, uh, we are even a little bit farther here, moving through the brackets. Um, Sombra right. just just took out, uh, just taken out by Waddles rather. Uh, Kablooey Tango and Vaca Tank is going to be a really exciting matchup. That'll be a fun one. And of course, uh, Lil Rip, everyone is excited to see them do their thing. Yeah. Speaking of excited, look at this crowd. All right. Shiny Heine. <laughs> Words I didn't expect to be saying today. <laughs> wow, here we are in cage three. That is about the cleanest I have ever seen a cage at this wow. time of day. How did that happen? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Away right, so they roll. Bullhog with the red drum fight. here. A twin beast with the dual drums. Really fast charges. Oh, no, they don't need the unstick. They, we hear a call for an unstick, but it was able to free itself from the wall. Yeah, Twin Beast, uh, absolute monster in terms of both uh, aggressive power and drive strength. Really impressed with the, the tangential drive. That Absolutely. Using. Just a, a motor shaft on a wheel. It, it's something that, you know, I think a lot of American builders are very worried to try. There's a lot of things that can go wrong, but if you really get your setup right, boy, does it work great. Oh, and there you are. All Bullhog right. has Jeff been out. assassinated. I mean, that was a tactical strike. And quick. Brett doing its best to uh, bring Bullhog back to the door. Well, you can see the glittery remains. Oh dear. We are going to have uh, Timber, and who's our other I think robot? That's Grim Ripper. Grim Ripper, all right. Ah, yes, you're right, Grim Ripper. That is a lot of glitter in the arena, Sam. Yeah, well, uh, that's part of NHRL. Uh, Once you come to an NHRL event, you really never get the glitter out of your home. No. No. We, uh, well, We'll use uh, old, old used-up floors uh, for other things at at, uh, at the NHRL, and and one of that is we make test cages from them. Mm -hmm. um, but we're putting these floor panels on our CNC, and uh, that thing is covered in glitter as well. I'm not at all surprised. I, I came home from one of these events, and I changed the air filter in the interior cabin of my car. Oh my! Goodness. And I pulled it out, <laughs> and it was just red glitter everywhere. Um, That's like and I, I thought, you know, I'd you. Like, I had bathed. It was not me just like jumping in to the car immediately. Like there was, there was a period of time. It's developed it's, an aura. Right, right. I like to think it's, uh, you know, like a, a tree in the springtime shedding pollen. 
Eight, That's basically seven, where I find it when it comes to, five, to glitter. Four, three, two, one. Fight, And Robots away fight. we go. Oh, that is so much more glitter. Wow. And there's more. Wow. Neither. Ooh, that is a big hit. And the disc going everywhere. Oh, still spinning. It's hot and it's tapping out. out. Like a spinning top. The Timber folks absolutely delighted at their own robot's destruction. For, for a Lisa Frank binder with a saw blade? No. Mm -hmm. Could have gone worse. We're going to go to an instant replay, get that pivotal moment here. Grim Ripper circling, circling, circling. There's the hit, and there it goes. You can see that disc is just spinning and spinning like it has a mind of its own. Whatever the opposite of a chicken with its head cut off, that is the weapon disc we're seeing in action. Like a chicken without its head cut off. Oh, that is kind of the opposite, isn't it? Grim Ripper's a cool bot. I really like the shape of it. Um, it seems like it would fare well against other horizontals with the almost entirely sloped sides. Yeah, absolutely. The, the sloped sides would give it an advantage against horizontals and against any, basically any vertical spinner that has a poor ground game. Ricky, um, mm -hmm. what's going on in cage seven here? Oh, cage seven. Droopy. It, oh, dear. Droopy is going up against I saw Uranus. Um, and it looks like Droopy is the only bot moving in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see a wheel on the ground. That's definitely not Droopy's. No. Uh, Droopy being 100% wheelless. Really one of the more interesting designs here. Um, an incredibly heavy hitting. Oh, my goodness. That was a really intense hit, Brad. Wow. What, does he owe you money? I think that... The wedge on the front of the, of, of I saw Uranus. That, is, that was incredible. No, yeah. So, so that one is Brett. Yeah, that's that's the original Brett right there. Uh, he, he can be sensitive. Uh, yeah. He's in there getting hit by beater bars, horizontal spinners, occasionally getting tickled by a lifter, I, I guess. Anger can be pent up and released. But he looks so happy. <laughs> Look at those eyes. That's true. Uh, can we get Brett switched to red, eye, red yeah. eyes, please? Angry eyes, no. Engage angry eyes. You can see Tommy with his uh, lovely droopy shirt, excited at a win, no doubt. Uh, you know, actually, he looks a little concerned. For his opponent after getting smashed by Brett. I, oh, I see. It's, it's all just caring. Getting the mini bot ready. This is an important process in the tournament, removing <laughs> dead robots from the cage. All right, we're going to head to cage three with Knee Biter and T800. T800 is in the blue square. It's the black robot with the orange wheels. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. Fight. Knee Biter is fight. Is the purple robot? Yes, I believe so. T800, I'm assuming, is a Terminator reference. Is that a belt in there already? Yes, yes, it is. I. It appears that is from, uh, from T800. It's like a solid high centering going down on T800. Uh, wow. And their micro mini bot can't yeah, that really help in any way. One of the most micro micro mini bots. Oh, and it's shredded. It <laughs> was. I was like, I don't know how it can get any smaller than that, <laughs> and uh, can be smaller if it's in pieces. Some good exchanges. 
Not as much spin from T800, though, it looks like. No, I think... Uh, and some wheel guards glowing on the underbelly. The, the metal is just being shed bit by bit. Like a herding dog in the spring. Shedding everywhere. Here comes the unstick. And right with the <laughs> follow up, knee biter ready. All right, the count out coming just over halfway through this match. Knee biter taking home the win. Solid performance from them. Oh, okay. Hmm. So T eight hundred. Yes. That's, they're part of a, a very large school team. Yes, yes, we had, um, uh, The VBs? Not the, v, uh, no, another, uh... Yeah, from Martin Van Buren, the... Yes, oh, I see that, VBs, yeah, Van Buren, I see what you mean. Yeah, they, uh, they sent a, a massive group, I think 13 robots, uh, something like 20-some kids, descended upon Norwalk all at once. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, but we're going to go to cage two first. We've got uh, Sombra in the three-pound class going up against Mantis. Uh, Sombra, of course, we have seen in all three-weight classes here today, a absolutely violent uh, drum robot. Uh, going up against Mantis, which uh, is a mini-bot, at least in today's, I'm sorry, it's a multi-bot, at least in today's configuration. Eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight. And away Robots we roll. Fight. Mantis off to a little bit of a slow start. Somber even more so, and then making up for lost time, zipping its way across the arena. All right, they found their footing. Let's see if they can connect with a hit. Sombra, once it is planted on the ground, it is almost unstoppable. Little hard to aim, and then it just shoots off like a rocket. Nice. Distraction by the minibot coming in to protect the main bot. Looks like some mobility issues, though, on the left side of Mantis. Yeah, it is struggling already, Sam. The weapon is still spinning, and I doubt it will get counted out. But, What's uh, going on with Sombra, though? Sombra has stopped moving. I think it is just waiting for his opponent to do something. Um, I'm waiting for both of them to do something. Oh, you know, this may be, I, I see the faces. Yeah, so Summer is not in good shape. They're able to move, uh, but only intermittently. I wonder if attempting to spin the weapon is, is causing uh, some sort of brownout with the drive. It's certainly possible. Um, I also see just, you know, a complete stop. Um, this could be huge. This could be huge. Sombra being defeated at this point in the competition would be absolutely shocking. Because Mantis is not out of it. Their weapon is still spinning. They, they are obviously having some mobility issues, but this, this could be theirs. Yeah, this is absolutely Mantis's fight to lose right now. Sombra doing its absolute best to, to stay in the match without a weapon. Um, but you got to remember, too, that... Uh, this is a Brazilian team. They are absolutely weapon-driven robots. Yeah. It's like a touch of crab walking as well from the Sombra team. Yeah, the Sombra team is having basically every issue you can have. Uh, they're just dealing with it very well. Brownouts, drive side issues, weapon down, and yet still able to maneuver all over the box. I think the mini bot is pretty intermittent as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Mantis, I'll point this out. It has been trying to move towards Sombra for every moment of this match. The attempt it to was be there. aggressive is, is very strong. I wonder if the mini bot could push the main bot. I do love it when that happens, but uh, you don't see it very often. This is going to be tough because Sombra clearly had more ability to go to its opponent and didn't appear to try. Yeah. Uh, at least not very often. And Mantis um, had less ability but, but put it to 100% use. Um, That's going to definitely be a tough one to judge. Yeah, I, I do not envy those folks. In the meantime, we are going to head over to cage one. Arsenal is lined up to go against Voxel. Should be a good match. No, you know, that is not what looks like is happening. Right yeah, there. that looks like a milk tank. Um, yeah. We will see. Uh, yeah. And Kablooey Tango. Kablooey Tango, exactly. Going up against uh, a milk tank robot whose name is escaping me at this point. Is it Vodka moment. Tank? It's not Vodka Tank. Um, Bovine tank. Just how many cinnamons? Cinnamons. How many cinnamons do we have, Sam? How many two. synonyms do we have for cow? That's how many robots. Steer uh, tank. Heifer tank. I'm going to steer this conversation back towards robots. We have what I think is going to be a really fun fight. Um, I just don't know Eight, if it's the next fight we're going to see. Seven, They're counting down, six, so I assume so. Five, four, three. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. And away we go. It is Vodka Tank. You were quite right, Sam. I the used Blue to work Tango. at a farmer's market, so. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have doubted your wealth of experience. A lot of mobility from Kablooey Tango. Not so much from Vodka Tank. No, Vodka Tank is... Uh, stuck on something. Something is under that robot. It is being high centered. And I have a feeling that in an unstick situation, Fluffy could come in and save the day. But Kablooey Tango would be foolish not to take full advantage of this if they can. Look at that. Look at that high wow. center. They're practically hovering. Tap out. And that is a tap out to Louis Tango taking home the win. Vodka Tank, you know, minimizing the amount of damage that they have to take on. Now, with that win, we have come fur far enough in this, in this event uh, that Kablooey Tango has now qualified to come back for the finals at the end of the year. That's huge. Yes, that is a... That is a, a All right, so Kablooey Tango, they have already qualified, I believe. Um, oh, okay. That sounds right, actually, now that, now that uh, I think back. Now, granted, I think they still would have qualified today if they had not. But yeah. um, if, for those of you uh, uh, who aren't aware at home, uh, in each weight class, there are a select few golden tickets that are issued to the top finishers in each weight class. So Yeah, so it's the, the top four. Correct. Unless they've already qualified in a, a prior event. Right, in which case that, uh, does that ticket still get dropped down to the yeah, next Yeah, I believe person? so, yeah. I believe so as well. We're going to go to cage three for another three-pound matchup here. Uh, oh, we've Prom. got Prom had a... <laughs> <laughs> Prom Hedda going up to one of um, Eight, a very entertainingly seven, named robots. Six, Just slap a gearbox five, on it. Four, three, two, one. Fight. Robots GOI. Gasagoy? Gasagoy, yeah. Promfita. Prom Hedda. Prom Hedda. Prom Hedda. Wow, Ten that out. is an absolutely. Um, Quick one. It looks like absolutely. there was a wheel that went off of uh, just slapping gearbox on it. They should have just slapped a wheel on it. Yeah. Man, it, starting to just get uh, absolutely furious in our pacing of these. We have Voxel in cage four uh, going up against Arsenal as we were 
Uh, trying to get set up earlier. Uh, All right, this is a 12 pound match in cage four. Countdown and we're off. And away we go. That is um, a very quick approach and then a very quick stick on the wall. Um, Looks like Voxel is, is stuck up on the wall there. Yes, correct. Arsenal with a horizontal spinner. Uh, a horizontal would be spinner. It is. Oh, oh, oh there, there it go. goes. Oh, so Voxel, one of the most punishing robots here in terms of being able to give hit after hit. This is, <laughs> yeah, this fight is no exception. One on stick almost immediately in the fight, and Voxel, of course, puts Arsenal up against the wall. So they immediately need another. What a, a quick and decisive way to end a match. All right, Flo coming in for the unstick. Flo equipped with a fire extinguisher. Uh, won't be using it here, though. Uh, so after this, both robots will have received their one unstick, so now it's up to them. Oh, was there a tap out? No, I mean, that, that was uh, the end. That was the second unstick um, for Arsenal. And so they didn't get unstick, and that was the end. Oh, my mistake, my mistake. It did seem quiet in there. Too quiet. Some big Voxel fans, like four very intense Voxel fans. Oh, look at that crowd, excited to be oh. on screen, excited to be here today. <laughs> I spy. See, an Aperture Science t-shirt, you don't see those every day. No, but it was a triumph. Oh, well, they, they do what they must, you know. Ah, <sighs> so, what do you think the most um, energetic this crowd has been today? Mm, today? <sighs> You know, I've, I've been judging over on uh, cages five through eight for a, a good bit of the day. Uh, and over there, oh, geez, it's hard to say because I, I was so focused on the robots themselves. I, I understand. I think all the Brazilian teams have really brought out the energy. Oh, no doubt. Today. Speaking of energy, I hear Chris is on the other end of the line sitting up in the pits. Hello, Chris. Ricky Sim, I'm here with Lucy Dew and Kablui. You just came out of a fight with one of our dairy-based bots here at NHRL. You're making your way through the bracket. Thoughts on the event so far? Um, the event's been pretty fun. I, Kablui's only had two fights so far because we had one forfeit, but so far it's working really well and I'm very optimistic. Uh, anything that you need to do to get the bot ready for the next round? Um, so we are fighting Rip, Little Ripperoni next round, I believe. So just need to make sure everything's still working um, and we might tune the weapon a little bit so that we can get a little bit of a faster spin up. But yeah, I think that's about it. Is it new news to you right now that you have qualified for the world championship? I believe that Kabuli Tango has qualified in the January event at its first event, but it's pretty great to qualify again. So we'll just keep winning. Do you know who you're up against next? Little Rip. A little, okay. So a couple, again, uh, some BattleBots alums going at it. What do you do in a situation against such a high powerful vert? Uh, for Kabuli, I think we just kind of make sure the weapon spins up really fast and then just, just go for it. I think looks like Lil Rip doesn't take horizontal hits super well. So I think we'll be able to take the hits a little bit better. So as long as we get in there and deal some big hits, I think we have a good chance. Awesome. Well, you heard it. Back to you guys. Really excited to see those matchups. Uh, yeah. Little Rip absolutely kicks like a mule. And obviously, Louis Tango is no one to mess with. So I, I think that's going to be one of our highest class fights of the day. Now, over to cage two, a three pound fight. Ooh. We have Spartan going up against Whirlwax. What a name. What is the or Do you happen to know the origin on that no. one? I don't know the reference if there is one. Uh, who knows? It's a Honeycrack team, though. The Honeycrack team is just this never ending fount of of interesting builds. And I don't know, I guess they just keep recruiting youthful, energetic, 
excited eight, creative people, seven, and that's six, kind of its own five, amazing thing. Yeah. They managed to pull that off. Three, two, one. And fight, robots, fight. Go. Spartan in black from the pink square. Whirl Wax, really a uh, really wonderful oh, design. Cool, it's a side spinner. It is a side spinner. It can spin itself or a round as if it was. Oh, um, it can thwack with the spinner. That's exactly. so cool. I love that. It's it's kind of a sideways thagomizer approach. Yeah. Um, that said, neither of these two. Ro oh, I spoke too soon. I was going to say neither of these two robots spinning their weapon, but uh, Spartan now up at full cool. speed. Solid impact from Spartan there. Yeah, unfortunately for Whirlwax, there's a huge amount of that robot that isn't where it's supposed to be anymore. And now it is very much stopped against uh -oh. the wall. He's saying keep hitting it. No tap outs from the Honeycrack team. No, full carnage, full violence. Might as well, you're, you're in the single elimination portion of the tournament. Yeah, there's no saving yourself for later here. I think that's going to be it for Whirl Wax. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. Uh, there are chunks of Whirl Wax all around. Yeah, all around the arena. Spartan, one of the most aggressive looking three pound robots that we have oh, here. It looks so mean. It looks, yeah, it looks like the, it looks like it bullies other robots. Yeah, it's spiky, it's, it's bladed, it's so Maybe cool. it's one of those really like lovely but deceptively nice goth kids. Yeah. We're gonna go over to cage three. Crush and Zane, oh, we are right at the end. We are entering a count out. All right, what is happening though? Looks like Zane can't move. Yes, Crush is the winner. Knockout. Zane was the uh, droopy-esque robot pushed up against the side of the arena there. It's hard to make droopy-style robots work well when they are upside down. Uh, it seems hard when it, they're right side up. <laughs> that's true, too. You just really, once you get stuck, since you don't have wheels that have the power to actually move you across the floor, it's hard to spin up and it's hard to actually like get moving again. It's that balance thing again. You you gotta balance the torque of your weapon with the speed of it. Exactly. Because uh, you need the you need the torque to push yourself away from the wall if you're stuck there, but you need the, the speed. You need to, the speed to be able to hit hard. Yeah. So it's this yeah, it's this balancing act. Um that said, uh, you know, they'll have some time in the pits. Maybe they'll figure out uh, a little better balance for the next fight. All right, making sure they're safe and out of the box. All right, let's check out cage one. Ah, this is the fight I was excited for. We've got Lil Rip and Chibata. Lil Rip and Chibata. Chibata. Chibata bing, Chibata boom. I have yet to see Chibata fight. I know they, they've got some under their, under their belt so far today, but I'm excited to see what it can do. You know, this is one of the most food-themed fights we've had in a while. <laughs> I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is it the same Chibata? I don't <laughs> So, again, here we have a factoid popping up. If Chibata wins, they're going to qualify for the November World Championships. Okay. And that's, first off, that alone is, is pretty fantastic. I believe Lil Rip has, has already qualified. I'm not sure about that um, one, but. Yeah, so, so Lil Rip is already good to go. Uh, they will not, you know, they don't get that golden ticket because they already have one. Yeah. They don't need um, it. If Chibata loses here, we're going to see who that ticket does end up going to. Oh, uh, okay. Could it be them? Uh, I, I can't work my brain through the brackets far enough. I think it's possible, but unlikely. Okay, yeah. Well, we can see already uh, some burnt pizza there on the front. Uh, Anna Zolnikov looking ready, looking excited. Chibata, our... Um, Famous internet friend, Arato. The sunglasses are a nice touch. They really, 
they set off the whole look. It's like everyone getting settled, doing a little twitch here and there, making sure the robot is responding properly. That doesn't look like any ciabatta I've ever seen. I think it smelled different. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, we've got another Brazilian team here. We have a lovely amount of competitors who have made their way. That's an incredible distance to travel. And I am um, really excited for all the viewers that we have at home in Brazil watching this. Uh, the fact that we can uh, not only capture audiences in Connecticut, not only in the United States, not only um, in North America, but as far as Brazil, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. We really appreciate Eight. it. Seven, Fighting eight, robots, six, universal. Five, yeah, it's the universal four, language. Three, we are all joined two, by robot one. Fight, robots, And away fight. we go. Ciabatta. Boom, right off the bat. Oh, that is a Ciabatta massive hit. The better of that exchange. Lil Rip, um, oh, they paused a moment, but they are spinning up. Ciabatta, I don't think he's going to let that fly. They're going to hit again. Oh, the wheel is gone wow. from one side of Lil Rip. They can still gyro walk and, and do a pretty good job being mobile, but... Um, Shibata hits hard. It sure do. Wow! Shibata is a monster, Sam. Lil Rip just gonna try and make sure their weapon is pointed at their opponent as best they can. Um, it's gonna be tough to drive at them with the one wheel going, and looks like some struggle bus on the weapon as well. Ooh. Solid hit. Sends Lil Rip into the glass. And is that is that the second wheel? Yep. Is there Little Rip is uh, kind of able to move itself about just with that weapon, oh, but they've I, been boxed. They have. They are sitting there, um, and the weapon has stopped. I think that is going to be the end of the medal. Look at this, a very happy rat. That means Chipata's back in November. Tap We're going to be seeing a lot more Brazilians. That's exciting. Oh, some very, very happy builders. That is uh, less happy Anna Zolnikov and Brandon Zelinski. But you know what? They already, they, they dusted that robot off. They um, brought it back here and put on a good fight. And I know by the time November rolls around, they are going to be- Oh, it'll be ready. Uh, swinging harder than they've ever swung before. Man, good stuff. I love a, a proper de-wheeling. Right, it just absolutely amputated those wheels. We're gonna go to Chris now in the pits. Chris, what can you tell us? Hey guys, I'm here with Kazaya and one of our boss bots today. This is Chainsaw Kitty. Uh, you are making your way through the bracket today. Tell us a little bit of how things are going for you. Um, they're going quite well. Um, she's having another very destructive event. Uh, March was also a very destructive one. Um, doing great, it's the same Kitty in every fight. New batteries, that's about it. You have an awesome fork configuration here. You have this chonky weapon blade. Look at the belt that you would see, like you would normally see something like this on it, like a 12 pounder. Uh, this thing hits hard, you got the control down. Uh, do you know who you're matched up against next? Uh, next is Cuddle Crusher. Uh, Cuddle Crusher, I think that's what its name is. Do you have a strategy going into that match? Um, they're sort of like this lifter hugger sort of thing, so I think I might be able to just go straight in there. Hopefully my forks go right under it. All right. That's um, my hope. So I know a little something about you. You are a um, an ASL aficionado. Let me hold Chainsaw Kitty. Do you have a little something that you want to share with those fluent in ASL out there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kaziah. Good luck today. Uh, you know, you, you only got a few matches left, technically. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. It feels weird. We're through so quickly as a boss. I'm used to having more fights. <laughs> Good luck. Keep doing what you're doing. I hope to. <laughs> Back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. What a... What a what a cool robot and what a interesting piece to have as a boss yeah. uh, boss fight here. I, I, I like the boss selection this go around. It's, it's about the best selection I think we've had. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting way to structure the brackets. Yeah. 
uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to set us up for some really good finals today or some really good semifinals. Basically, as we get closer, you know, the, the uh, what we sown becomes reaped, <laughs> as, as uh, goofy as that sounds to say. And, and our, our bracket master, Gil, mm. he, he does an amazing job. Yeah, I don't know um, how that man puts the amount of information into his brain that he does. Uh, I assume that in, behind his eyes are just spreadsheets at any moment, just rolling, streaming, Matrix style. We're going to go to cage four here. Uh, if uh, Kitchen Grill wins, they qualify for November. Now, if Death Pack wins, then Vaca Tank qualifies for November. So. The, this is Kitchen Grill versus versus Death Pack here. And it, it's interesting because the, you know, the winner of this fight is not automatically the one that gets that golden ticket. Yeah, I would expect uh, Team Vodka Tank to be rooting on Death Pack here pretty hard. You know, it's, it is always interesting to see that. And people start off with those strategies like, oh, I hope this guy wins so that I can go. Or I hope this guy wins because of that. Or this gal does this. And then two seconds later, they're like, ooh, pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, it all goes and out And I window. absolutely love that about this. Eight, seven, six, Here we go. five, four, That is a downright Jameson-looking power stance, that man. One. Fight. Robots fight. All right, some glancing. No, that is not helicopter chopper. Look at those mini mods. All right, Death Pack looks to be the vertical spinning Woo! robot with the white bits on top, now inverted. Wow, those Ooh. are big hits. Kitchen Grill looks really cool. Lot, you know, that's true. I wonder where that, where that name came from. We're going to have to look into that. Uh, what a beautiful robot, though. Oh, that is a bad place to get hit for Death Pack. I'm hearing sad weapon noises as well. I, I am too. I'm wondering, though, if it's more that the weapon is being turned down for, you know, sportsmanship purposes. Fair. Well, not just sportsmanship purposes. You get this far in the bracket, you don't want to destroy your own robot uh, needlessly. Yeah. So you might not want to hit as hard if you're already winning. Which it seems like uh, Kitchen Grill is. So far, absolutely yes. And we are coming down. This is a uh, final count. All right. Knockout. Kitchen Grill from England took that one by KO. And again, absolutely beautiful robot. Their top armor looked really nice. Yeah, I you know, I give that a lot of credit. It it doesn't take it does take some weight. Uh, yeah. but the people that put that time into just making it look that much better, really wonderful. You see a lot of flat topped robots, and when they take that extra bit to get the nice slopey mm. armory, it just it's perfect. Chef Kiss. Yeah. Here we are with Hedago Bopto Chapter. All right, in cage two versus Softlock. There's Helico Bopto Chapto. Chapta. Chapta. Helico Bopto Chapta. So close. That was my first try, too. <laughs> it's, it's tough, too, <laughs> sitting here behind the desk because, uh, you know, Eight, any of the displays here seven, just, just six, cut off a Helico Bopto. Four, Bopto. three, Bopto two, one. Fight, robots All right, away fight. we go. Okay, you got the beater bar on soft lock out of the blue corner. Oh, look at that Ooh. spinning top. That is a Pointing. beautiful little dance. Awesome. With the one eye, too. Yep. So cute. Well, it's one eyed and one horned. It could go flying. It's not purple, and I hope it doesn't eat people, but. <laughs> Let's see. This is, this is a tough place. I don't know that Helicobopto Chapter has the, 
torquing that weapon to self right. I don't know, but it sounded like their uh, brushless for their weapon oh, it's reset. Oh, yeah. heard that start sequence. Oh, yeah, I hear that motor trying its best, but I think there's a stripped gear or gearbox. Oh. That is going to be the end for Helico Bapnu Chapter. Knockout. Softlock taking the win, taking a, a nice W. Not a lot of damage. That's going to be incredibly meaningful as they continue to move forward in this competition. Quick match, but a, a good one. I, I love a, a nice uh, coining. Yeah. I mean, that was some of the most. Oh, look at our crowd. Super excited. Smile and wave. The whole bit. All right. From the Helico team, oh, some disappointed faces, but I think they have a long career ahead of them. Yeah, I, I think there was some hope they'd go further today, obviously. But um, that was a fun match. It looked cool. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of there. Cage three, another three pound match. Aluko uh, sitting over here seven, in the pink square six, and Espresso Shot five, sitting in the blue. Four, three, the Espresso two, Shot really one, fun five, wedge design robots, for five, that robot. Four. It's like a samurai armor to me kind of deal. Having a lot of trouble moving though. It looks like Aluko is not having trouble moving. Just pacing around the arena. And I'm not seeing spin on espresso shot at this point. It, it certainly had it. Um, really interesting design. It's like an upside down boat almost. If you ever saw the brave little toaster. It's the vacuum. It's, it's halfway in between the vacuum and the big electromagnet at the end. Oh, yeah. If you want to combine two characters from a 1980s cartoon into one robot, Then Espresso Shot and the Brave Little Toaster are here for you today. Wow! Ooh, roof fence hit. hit, roof shot. Oh, there are big pieces of Espresso Shot um, absolutely dislodged from where they are supposed to be. Still functioning. I, well. I was going to say, I think moving. that might have actually helped Espresso Shot. Yeah, it looks like, oh, I see some <laughs> shifting in the frame, but they're moving. Aluko well, seems unscathed by that. Huge hit they delivered. Some some new compliance in espresso shop, but it's working out for them. Whoa! Ooh. Got chunks of ceiling coming down. And there it is. Yeah. Now, this robot has just become a multibot. Oh my goodness, bisected. Still not tapping out. They're still in it to win it. No, th this is still anybody's game. I mean, it's a much, very much an uphill battle for espresso shot, but both of these robots are still moving. Oh, I think I see a battery hanging out of the back of espresso shot. Yikes. Oh, additional chunks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, that Very may flat. be the end of the match. Yeah, that is uh, a motor system just, just dangling as a flail. That was a great one. Absolutely. All smiles from the Espresso Shot team. Oh, they wanted more hits. They know what's up. You love to see a team that just Absolutely in until the end. Tear me apart. Going home anyways. Hey, fewer pieces to put in the bag. Yeah. At some point, you can just stuff them in your pockets. Right, right. We're going to bring back uh, cargo shorts. We're going to go to cage one. Oh, boy. Maximizer, one of my favorite robots, going up against Buzzkill. Eight. Seven, Maximizer is six, long. Five, it is four, surely so, three, Sam. Two, one. 
Fight. Robots yep. fight. Either one of these robots will qualify for November with a win here. Dang, that's that signature move from Maximizer. Yeah, Maximizer doing its absolute best to uh, swing that tail around uh, at the last minute and attack its, a, you know, its attacker. Attack its opponent, I should say. Buzzkill, very sleepy, always trying to get some Z's. Got him. Not too sleepy in this match, though. I no, see they're him spinning. Um, not exactly fast and furious, but definitely doing their best to uh, stay engaged, deliver hits. It's so hard against Maximizer because it, so quickly you can go from attacking what you think is an innocuous point on the robot to getting a mouthful of weapon. Maximizer in the sticky corner. Inverted now. Buzzkill seems like a compact robot compared to Maximizer. Back right side up for Maximizer. Like the uh, undercutter on Buzzkill looks to be stopped. Yeah, we don't see a lot of action from Buzzkill right now, and a very sad drive side on its right hand side. Uh oh. Unfortunately, Maximizer, ooh, no, Maximizer Freeze frees itself. itself, but was briefly stuck against the wall, or in the wall, I believe. Just a minute left in this one, but is that going to go for the full minute? Looks like Fluffy's gonna come in for a one on stick. And that did it. Buzzkill's back in it. Still no weapon though. Maximizer's still got it going on. Looking to swing that horizontal spinner around. Hit the broad side of Buzzkill. Thirty seconds remain. Buzzkill, of course, a uh, with its B theme, is another Honeycracked team entry. Buzzkill no longer moving at all. We're going to have a count out just, just before, before they the are bell. saved by the bell. Mm. Nice job by Maximizer. Out. Sam, what more can you tell us about Maximizer? Well, I can tell you a little bit about Ohio. A little bit about Ohio. Those excited, excited fans, excited team. And that's uh, from Jake Hoffman. Yes. And he went to University of Cincinnati studying mechanical engineering. Looks like it's paying off with Maximizer. Yeah, that is a well-designed, well-thought-out robot. We're going to go over to cage two now, another three-pound match. Caldera is going to be fighting Seven, Mondo Bizarro. Six, Both of these robots. Five. Um, Four, certified three, veterans here two, at NHRL. One, yeah, Mondo fight, Bizarro is like a fight. robot that is a decade old. It has been around for a long time. There are uh, kids competing here at Norwalk, uh, in Norwalk today at NHRL, uh, who are older, I'm sorry, who are uh, younger than Mondo Bizarro, which is just amazing to think about. Caldera in orange with the mini bot here. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. Brett looking increasingly non -plus. Caldera just dishing out uh, hit after tap hit, out. and there is a Ooh. tap out. Mondo Bizarro with the tap out there. It looks like they were de-wheeled on the, I don't know if they're inverted or not. But the side. Yep, yep. Nice job by the Caldera team. Mondo Bizarro team looking a, a little less excited. Understandable. You get to this point in the um, this point in the bracket, you, you really start hoping, like, ah, oh, am I gonna go all the way? Am I gonna be in the finals? Am I gonna take this home? Never 
Never a good point to go home. No. But the farther you get, kind of sometimes the more disappointing it can feel. Brandon's a vet, though. He, he's he's lost before. He, he knows. He knows how to handle it. Yeah. Eight, seven, right. six, five, four. Case three. three here. We got power yeah. serve. Right. Two versus Whoa! Quake. 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 That is the most intense roof shot I have seen here in a long time. Propelled as if by rockets into the ceiling of the arena. The wheel off awake there. My goodness. Absolutely action packed. You can see hit. that weapon is now hitting the ground. It cannot cleanly spin up. The mini bot trying to right. Oh, and power surge comes in for the right of Wake there. So now back in it. Looks like the beater bar is down on Wake, as well as that one wheel being off. It, it yeah, it's uh, no. I mean, both both weapons are spinning. All right. Uh, just intermittently. Oh, I, I, I mean, power surge seems like it's holding in there. This is really anybody's game. I think it's just going to come down to. Who gets a, a good, lucky, hard shot with their weapon against the opponent? Um, both of them aren't giving their uh, counterpart an inch. Power Surge still taking it to weight. But Wake hanging in there. Minibot hanging in there. Right, power All search right. two pinning Wake now for the maximum allotted time. They're gonna pull back and Wake get out of the corner. All right, a lot of pins here. Power search trying to rack up those control points. Seems like they still had weapon available to them. One. Opting that to save it for the end of the match, perhaps? It, I mean, it, it is a uh, problem trying to run that when it is in contact with the ground. When it's not, oh. it spins up just fine. Are and they, once they, it's going, they can keep it going. They might be inverted now, which which might uh, the ears that certainly not help the ground when they're inverted. Celebrating right off the bat. And called as a knockout. All right. That one was all about that first hit. Truly, it uh, really set the tone for the rest of the match. Uh, both robots certainly stayed in it. They gave it their all. But uh, in the end, there's only so much you can do. Wake hit the roof so hard. Shook the whole building almost. And after that, it, there wasn't too much. Some struggle to get the weapons going. A few taps here and there from the mini bots. A lot of pins. But that first hit from Power Surge was enough to do it. All right. Nice job to Chris and Power Surge. Oh, I'm so excited about this fight. This is Eruption versus Eight, Event Horizon. Seven, six, five, Eruption from four, Brian Boxel. Three, two, Event Horizon, one, the fight, rare ring spinner fight. at the three pound weight class. Such a cool robot. There's a couple of shots online. You can find them on the NHRL social media on Instagram of the inside of Event Horizon. It is just like clockwork in there. So well put together, so meticulous. Very talented people. 
Brian Boxel ranks number three of all time with his uh, his Beetleweight eruption, and he is heavily favored to qualify for the November championship here. But uh, first, he's going to have to get through this robot from Boston, run by Lucas Tang, Event Horizon from Northeastern, uh, Northeastern University's combat robotics team. Brian Boxel just kicking uh, Event Horizon all around here like a uh, like a hockey puck here, Kyle. Bam. Spin up time is so fast on Event Horizon, just a very well built machine. Wow, big heads here, roof shots here. Just when you think Event Horizon is out. They get back up to speed. This is incredible. That ring spinner refuses to die. It's so impressive. Bam, nice hit there. Just sparks flying off of the weapon on eruption. 90 seconds left here. With 75 seconds left here, Brian uh, remains squared up with his opponent. Event Horizon uh, really struggles, you know, just by the nature of that design to show control. It uh, doesn't have forks. Oh, got high centered on its on a almost got uh, got stuck on its own detritus, Kyle. <laughs> 50 seconds left here in this fight. Brian Boxel now finds himself on his head. And the weapon's not spinning. Is the bot moving? What's happening? Oh, my oh no! This God, could be the Kyle. upset of the day if this happens right now, Luke. 40 seconds left. Brian Boxer, will he call for a save here from the house bots? He does have one save left. He's got to use it. What a horrific turn of events for Brian Boxel and Eruption. Okay, yeah, it's still it. mobile. It's still Stay mobile. Alive. That was rough. 15 seconds left. This one will go to the judges. That was a nail biter. Nice pin in the corner. You've got to pin them. You've got to wear out the clock. Try to win this judge's decision. Don't let him get those hits while your weapon is down. Smart move, strategic driving by Brian Boxel. That is the end of that fight. Incredible. Wow, just squeaking it by. Wow. All right, that one will go to the judges, and we're going to check in uh, with the judges here and their uh, their results shortly. All right, we've got a fight in progress here in Cage 2. We've got Blackbird versus a dozen bolts. There is uh, a minute, uh, six, 65 seconds here on this fight. Blackbird is in black and red. A dozen bolts is in black and orange. And Tony D'Ambrosio from Team Omega on BattleBots, Team uh, Ripperoni, Team Starchild on BattleBots, successfully tipping uh, this robot here from Drexel University in a dozen bolts. Big hits from Blackbird. Blackbird is one of my favorites to qualify here for November. And uh, Tony D'Ambrosio, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing great. Tony D'Ambrosio, probably the most strategic driver on the shredded team. 20 seconds left here in this fight. The Drexel Dragons here uh, caught high centered under the minibot of Blackbird. Logan Adams trying desperately to get his bot a dozen bolts out of the corner here. This match went the full three minutes. We've got two back-to-back -back judges decisions. Blackbird showing that absolutely aggressive, dominant drive style that is characteristic of Tony D'Ambrosio's uh, entire vibe here at the competition, Kyle. Absolutely. By the way, we do have confirmation on the judges decision from that last match. By split decision, scraping by, by the skin of their teeth, Brian Boxel and Eruption. Wow, incredible. Whew, that was a close one. They are heavily favored to not only qualify, but win 
here in this uh, in the three pound division. I, that's a type a tough one. That is a tough one. All right, we're gonna check in here with Chris. Hey guys, I'm here with the uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Ratto and Chibata. Chibata, you just came off of a um, yeah. you know a huge win against Little Rip, one of the heaviest hitters here in the 30 pound weight class. Did you take any damage? Yes, no, the, uh, just damage in the weapon. Uh, I'm taking I'm taking a little uh, manutation here, and you just damage here. Just some uh, damage on the weapon tip. Yes, I see. Yes, it is. Here, but it's dangerous because he's cut here. Inside. Oh, on the inside, you yes, took. You yes. did take a hit. Yes, I, I can. I, I will take this one and put. Do you know who? Do you know who you're up against next? I don't know. I don't huh. know yet. So no strategy coming up. Now, uh, uh, Rato, you um, you obviously uh, have your own street bots uh, thing going on in Brazil. Yes. And I think you have about nine million uh, fans right now in our YouTube uh, chat. Yes. Will you please tell them all to calm down? Yes. <laughs> uh, can, can I tell in Portuguese for my sure. super score? Sure. Então, galera, pega leve aí, pega leve. Tamo, tamo já mundial é nosso. Se bate dentro forte, mas pega leve aí porque a galera aqui não tá entendendo nada, eles não estão acostumados com isso tudo. Mas vamos comemorar, vamos comemorar, estamos na semifinal e o Chibata vai passar por uma lavadinha aqui rapidinha para voltar cheirosinho para a próxima luta. That's ok? I think so. I just tell Rato. you for my subscribe to come down. Take it easy. Take it easy, my friend. Rato, thank you so much. Good luck in the rest of the competition. Okay, thank you very much. Here we go. Back to you guys. <sighs> All right, we're going to go to a fight in progress here in Cage 3. We've got David Jin and Polywog facing off against Ryan Klingman and Apex Predator. There's 90 seconds left here on the clock. Now, uh, confusingly, both of these robots are both black and green, Kyle. It's a good color scheme, you know? Now, uh, this robot here that's upside down, this is Apex Predator. And uh, Polywog, this dense little drum spinner that uh, is running great, just getting around to the back of Apex Predator here. David Jin, one of the most dangerous drivers in this competition, just absolutely vicious with every single one of these hits, barely a wasted movement. Ryan Klingman, he, he builds uh, combat robot kits. So if you like Apex Predator, the design, you might be able to purchase it from Ryan. However, this is a good pin here from David Jin, Ribot Captain David Jin on Apex Predator. Yeah, something to be said for all custom, right? Yeah, absolutely. By the way, I don't think I have ever been so charmed by a man-sized rat before. Yeah. I love Ratto. Ratto's awesome. Ratto's great. <laughs> 25 seconds left here in this fight. David Jin really uh, putting Ryan Klingman through his paces. Wow, uh, Ryan really having some mobility issues now upside down. Oh! A roof shot, Kyle. Wow, Ryan almost able to take advantage of David being having his back turned. David quickly turning around and taking control of this fight again. Wow, this was amazing. Both of these robots, great mobility, great weapon. At we the end, yeah. saw shots. But uh, very clearly, I would say, Polywog in control of this fight. Let's take a look here at this replay. Quite frankly, this is a really great testament to the uh, durability of Apex Predator. Yeah. Taking all those shots over and over again, just getting roofed multiple times. If you can go the full three minutes with uh, David Jin, you're doing something right. Full three minutes, weapons working, drive working. Fantastic work. These are both such cool looking bots. They really are. I love it. All right, we're gonna head over to cage one. I can see Zach Knight, so is that Krunk? And the winner of this match is going to qualify for the NHRL November World Championships. There's an awful lot riding on the result of this fight. Cthulhu. We've got Krunk there in the pink corner, and we've got Cthulhu here from the University Eight, of Cincinnati in seven, the blue. Six, if Cthulhu wins, five, they will be the second four, University of Cincinnati three, bot to qualify two, for the 12 pounds. One. Fight, robots, fight. Good speed right out of the box from Krunk. 
Nice head from Cthulhu. Bring the weapon on Cthulhu in the opening seconds of this match. But Crump finds himself on his head. Zack Knight trying to violently self right by crashing into the rail. Instead, crashing into the mini box. Huge hit there from Crunk on Cthulhu. And this is where Zack Knight really thrives, just being right on top of his opponent, not allowing them to spin up. I believe that the weapon on Cthulhu is down. Yeah, there's no movement from it. Now we have an update on that match that we just saw in Cage 3. The unanimous uh, decision went for Polywog and David Jin. No surprise there. Now, great work here from the Minibot of Cthulhu, taking Krunk for a ride and smashing that weapon straight into the rail. This is a good pin. They can hold that for 10 seconds. Zack Knight has to stay away from the Minibots. Ironically, it's the more dangerous of the two robots that he's facing in Cage 1. Minibot wearing Krunk as a hat there for part of the match. Let's see if Krunk is able to get spun around and attack the main bot, because it doesn't look like they, they're going to win the ground game at all with the Minibot. Thulu's weapon is just all the way down. Nothing functioning on that at all at this point. A I don't see a left. belt anywhere in this arena, so I wonder what killed that. Yeah, maybe it was vaporized by Krunk, Guile. Uh, Cthulhu run by Corey Coakley, uh, the brother of Owen Coakley, and uh, Team RACR, and uh, he's from Ohio. Now with 60 seconds left, and uh, way ahead on the points, uh, Zack Knight just has to stay alive here with Brunk. Really not make any uh, driving errors, not get stuck on a seam. Can't get stuck, tipped up against the rail. That minibot of Cthulhu looks very sluggish here. Cthulhu seems to be having a little bit of drive issues as well on one side. Well, maybe not, maybe they're fully functional. There they go. 22 seconds, it looks like Zack Knight is 20 seconds away from qualifying for the November championship. That's the end of the match. Zach has survived the full three minutes. We're gonna send this to the judges. The judges will decide between these two who is going to be going to the championships. My vote though is for Kronk. I agree, Zach Knight did a phenomenal job driving in that match. Started out rough. Now we see Team Cthulhu there from the University of Cincinnati. And uh, they are an incredibly passionate and devoted group of college students. They really are. And, uh, we're gonna take you here to back-to-back -back action in cage four. Now the winner for this match qualifies for Eight, the NHRL November seven, World Championships. Six, five, four, now this is a 12 pound three, fight. Carmen two, in the pink corner, Sombra 12 fight. in the blue. Robots fight. That high pitched squealing whale here. Coming from Carmen. The winner of this match will go on to face Maximizer, also from the University of Cincinnati. Incredible, two roof shots in a row for Carmen on Sombra. Carmen is this mostly red robot. Sombra is black and red. Carmen currently upside down, now self-righted, finally. Ooh. These the weapon, weapon to weapon on... hits are favoring Carmen almost every time. Whoa! Now the drive could be down on Sombra, but Carmen is coming in to kill. Oh, and look, they just seem to shake something loose. Now that Carmen, uh, now that Sombra is on its head, it's able to drive itself a little bit better. Huge hit there from Michael Shore and Carmen. Wow, Carmen just dominating this matchup right now. There's only been 60 seconds that have elapsed in this fight. That is amazing. And the drive again is down on Sombra. 
Sombra is calling for an unstick. I think that perhaps the uh, it's high centered on uh, its base plate. Perhaps there's uh, something that's peeled up on the base plate. Carmen successfully getting under Sombra. Not surprised with all of those hits that knocked them end over end. Tomaz is such an incredible sportsman. And uh, yeah, watching his robot getting counted out here. And uh, it will be Carmen that will advance in this bracket. Tomaz is eliminated with Sombra 12. Let's take a look here at this replay. These Carmen, shots look are... at this, back-to-back -back roof shots. Incredible. You can see the armor package just flailing off the side of Sombra. He says, no, thank you, we're done. Incredible. Nice job, Michael Shore. Now, uh, the result of the last match was Krunk by unanimous judges' decision. So Krunk will qualify and Carmen will qualify, uh, both in the 12s here. So that means Carmen will go on to face Maximizer in the next round. Krunk will face either Voxel or Aerostar, depending on how that match goes. Now here's the really interesting thing. If Carmen and Voxel both Tap survive, out. they both qualify. They are going to, it's gonna be a father-son uh, face-off here in the 12s. Absolutely. An expensive match for the Shores. All right, uh, here we've got in the pink corner, Ook Funk and Half-Life here from Matt. And uh, yeah, we've got Violet here, the, uh, the clown. And you know what? She was doing balloon animals out there for the kids. It was incredible. It was great. Bubble guns and balloon animals for the children. So many balloon animals out there. The kids were all super excited about it. I had like three kids come tell me about their cats, their balloon cats. Yeah. While I was having my dinner. I was very, uh, very pleased to see how happy they were. I love that. I can't wait to see what those kids are going to remember about this event when they get older. They'll be like, Mom and Dad, do you remember when we went to that place with the loud noises and balloon cats? <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the blue corner, we've got Matt Lantry Eight, and Half-Life. This is uh, the red six, robot here. Five, it is a lifter four, facing three, off against Oop Funk. Two, Good one, speed right five, out of the box. Robot Matt Lantry taking to Oop Funk. Shoving her back into uh, a mass starting corner. Oopsfutt really struggling to square up with her opponent. Matt Lantry pushing uh, Violet into the corner here with Oopsfutt. Wow, yeah, two of the forks just got bent out of the way after that weapon contact with Oopsfutt. Effective self right though here for Matt Lantry. That's what you want to see with the lifter. Let's see if he can lift. Can he lift? He's it's got the pin. pin. It's a pin. I want to lift, Matt. I want to lift. And it sounds considerably more quiet in there. Has the weapon on Ookt Funt gone down? Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound active at the moment. But then again, we haven't seen any lifts since Half Life. Uh, rescued themselves too. So, oh, there we go. They're up in the air now. A minute 45 left. The weapons come back on Oops Funds. And yet another pin here from Matt Lantry, pushing that weapon straight into the house spots. Violet very wisely deciding to turn off the weapon so that she doesn't damage it up against the house spot. See if she can get out of this pin and spin up that weapon one more time. Another pin. Another pin! Two, three, four, wow. Five. Matt Lantry is driving great in this match. He really is. The drivetrain on Half-Life is very impressive. They're just zipping around, able to really get control of a lot of these engagements. Now he's got his arms up there in the air. I'm assuming that's to, uh, what, protect them a little bit, perhaps? Turning his robot into a, you know, just a forky wedge bot. Well, we already see those forks are now a bit askew. So he's probably trying to defend that lifter a little bit. Another pin with a little bit of a lift. That's all you need. You just need the wheels off the ground. You don't need a crazy lift. Yeah, Matt is doing great. Really, every time that you see a control bot here in the box, I mean, you're playing this game on hard mode. You've got to have great driving control, a great drivetrain, 
20 seconds left in this fight. I think that Matt might win it on the pins alone. Wow, another pin. Now they've taken it the full three minutes where this one will go to the judges here. But at this point, I'd say a good 40% of this match was spent pinned with half like pinning Ushkult. That is amazing. Well done, Matt Lantry. This one will go to the judges. We're not judges, Kyle, but Matt may be advancing here. We can confidently say that Matt did a great job. Yeah, that's true. And that Violet had a lot of fun. Violet is fantastic. I, I hope that we see Violet, uh, you know, for the rest of the year. This is great. Kyle, you need to have a theme when you come here, you know? It really does help. And she really embraces it, too. I mean, li literally was running around the pits with a bubble gun for part of the day. I loved it. That's awesome. And unironically, just having conversations with people. Yeah. Casting joys and bubble, or bubbles around. You know, combat robotics is an expression of joy and delight. You know, like, you're here to have fun. You're here to inspire the kids. You know, you're here to uh, have the most violent afternoon of your life without hurting anybody. Oh, wow, unanimous decision for Half-Life. You've got to love a unanimous decision for a control bot. Well done, Matt Lantry. Yeah, good job there, Matt. All right, so they will be moving on to the next round where they will face either Steel Mountain or Softlock. Now, Kyle, look at this. This is very cool. We got a scale model uh, version, a one pound version of Sombra. We've seen uh, Sombra, you know, competing here today on Team AGVS. And uh, look at that. We've got a little miniature version. You know, I guess if you're uh, gonna be going to an ant weight competition at some point, yep. uh, this is an absolute killer in the box. I love that they have uh, one pound, three pound, 12 pound, and 30 pound all represented here today. And Tamaki was kind enough to drop this off at the desk for us. Does this mean that this is ours now? I highly doubt that. All right, let's take a look here at our 12 pound bracket. We've got just one fight left uh, in in the uh, this second round of uh, of this bracket. Voxel versus Aerostar. We're gonna see Michael Short Sr. running Voxel, the 12 pounder, facing off against Zoe Lambert and Aerostar with the small bar. Now, interestingly, if Voxel is to advance, we'll face um, his son's friend <laughs> Zach Knight and Krunk. These are uh, builders all from Pennsylvania. And if for, uh, for some reason, you know, uh, both Michael Shores, Michael Shores Sr. and Jr. are able to uh, advance with both Carmen and Voxel, they could be facing, and we could see a father-son final, which would be awesome. It would be absolutely amazing. I would love to see that. Also, very happy for the Maximizer team for qualifying in this event. Great event for them. Let's talk about the 30-pound bracket. Quarterfinals are complete. We now get to see Waddles take on Kitchen Grill, two beautifully machined bots. And then over on the other side of the bracket, two horizontal demons, Kablooey Tango versus Chibata. Very excited about that match as well. Chibata's been hitting so hard today. Yeah. Uh, this 30 pound bracket was just full of killers today. We are down to the final four. I'd say this is a great set of qualifiers. The thing I really like about this too is we've got two American teams in Waddles and Kablooey Tango, and we have two teams from international, uh, you know, that international teams that flew in. Kitchen Grill from the UK and Chibata from Brazil. It would be incredible to see a Brazil-UK final here. I would absolutely love to see that. In the meantime, let's go to our, talk to our friend Ali. Ali, what do you got for us? So we are in the thick of the action. It's funny because as teams clear out, you think it'd get quieter up here, but it actually gets louder because look at the amount of work that needs to be done. We're here with Power Surge 2, and they're going to take on Caldrea. And I just learned that they battled them last week in New Jersey. So I want to know, while you keep working, I don't want to distract you, how did that go last week? So um, so I ran this um, heavier bar on it. It was way thicker than what I'm running now. It didn't really get up to speed, so I didn't really have a weapon. So I just kept ramming into a no weapon. He eventually cut off huge chunks of me, but it did go three minutes, but it was just him beating me up. So, so he won. 
He won. He won handedly. I just had to clarify because I did see him come back over here and taunt you a little bit. Um, but it was friendly taunting. Now you're preparing for this rematch, we're going to call it. Um, what are you going to do differently than last week other than obviously use uh, your weapon a little bit or hope your weapon stays on a little bit better? So um, I got this new bar. It got bent in the bake fight just now. So I literally just went down to shop. Put it in the biggest vice I had the biggest sledge gear, just kept beating it till it bent back in place, so. All right, well, we cannot wait to see you take them on. Good luck. We're gonna go back to the desk. Thank you, thank you. All right, I love Chris Caps and Power Surge, too. He's doing great. Uh, we're gonna go over first to cage five, though. We've got Synthesis facing off against Nitro Hornet. There's Dylan McCarthy, Eight, Nitro Hornet seven, standing by. Six, Synthesis five, is uh, from four, Corey Nason three, from Team Shredded. Two, and one, uh, he is five, running an two, emulsifier, five. a little three pound version of emulsifier here. With Synthesis really uh, hoping to break the drum on uh, Nitro Hornet. Now, Nitro Hornet is an OG robot. They, uh, they've been fighting with us since the 50 Day Street days. And uh, this is Dylan's first time back to the competition in several years. And the question is, can Dylan hang with the, uh, the competition here today? I think that this match and his earlier matches show that he can. Oh yeah, phenomenal driver, absolutely chaotic in the box. And his machine works incredibly well. Now it looks like the weapon on Synthesis is down, and Nitro Hornet is uh, driving backwards, limping, perhaps dragging something on the floor there. Corey landing a good pin on his opponent. And I see a little puff of smoke from Nitro Hornet. This weapon, this robot could tap be dead. Out. It is a tap out. Wow. All right, so we are now going to skip right over into cage two. So this is Emotional Dream and Backlash Wave. Emotional Dream here run by Skyler from Stores, Connecticut. Uh, entering this competition with a three and one record, ranked 147. And uh, facing off here against Backlash Wave. And, um, you know, one of our all-time favorite builders uh, here in Backlash Wave, William Marchese from Long Island, New York. Long Island, AKA God's Country. Yeah. Just one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. It's an island and it's kind of long, you know? <laughs> That's what I say. Yeah, it's a pretty descriptive name. Now, uh, both of these uh, robots, they're ready to go. The box is locked. Skyler is 14 years old, by the way. Yeah, a middle school student here. And Backlash Wave here in red and white. Oh. Here oh. Kicking Skyler back into his corner, and that robot looks dead, Kyle. That wow. was a that is a, yeah, I was about to say, one shot kill. Beautiful hit there from Backlash Wave. Oh, there we go. We got a little bit of motion from Emotional Dream. Another huge hit there from Backlash Wave. This weapon is hitting so hard on Backlash Wave. I was about to say, you're not allowed to unstick. Get back there, Brett. No way. Skyler just tapped out. We've got a win here for William Marchese and Backlash Wave. Wow, dominant performance from William Marchese. Nice job. Not only is he one of the most fashionable people in the pits, that was a dominant performance. Nice work. All right, we're gonna jump straight into action here with Cage 3 and Red Panda and Nuck Tuck. Eight, seven, Nuck Tuck brought to you by four, Nick Sorensen from three, Team Ribot, WBI. Nuck Tuck brought up by Jared Leibson, also from Team WBI. This is a little WBI on WBI action. You know, Nuck you Tuck, see that a little bit around here. Of course, here uh, is this blue and white robot, Red Panda, black and red. Now, 
Now, Nick Sorensen, uh, an incredibly good driver and good builder. And uh, yeah, on Team Ribot on BattleBots. And uh, we're gonna see, you know, looks the like the Elder Team WPI member. Nice know? pin from Nuck Tuck there. And uh, Red Panda trying to get out of the side control. Excellent maneuvering. It does seem like the weapon might be down on Nuck Tuck. Oh, but it's still working on Red Panda. No problem there at all. Yeah, that weapon is definitely down on Nuck Tuck. Red Panda was our uh, our rookie that went the furthest in its debut. Uh, in its first competition here at NHRL, it ended the day with a four and one record. That is incredibly good for a rookie. And uh, we are seeing why here. Jaron Leibson is really, uh, you know, giving Nick his run for his money here. Minute 40 left in this fight. Yeah, Nick is doing a phenomenal job of driving. But it is just hard to compete with that very, very brutal disc. Nice pin there from Nuck Tuck. Good job. Oh, wow, look at that. Jammed Nick him right into the corner. Successfully sticking him in the corner. But that weapon refuses to die on Red Panda. Good shower of sparks there. 75 seconds left here in this fight. A good pin here from Nick on on Jaren. Wow, Red Panda really struggling to get out of the side control position. Another good pin here with 60 seconds left in this fight. Wow, the drive ability on Nuck Tuck is amazing. It is so mobile, it is so controlled. That is what you get from uh, multiple competitions of experience. The ability to have spatial awareness inside of the box, pick the uh, angle that you wanna take, and landing pins like this one that we see here. Definitely don't discount the fact that Nuttuck is not dealing with any gyroscopic procession issues right now because their weapon is not spinning. Every time Red Panda turns, they lift up a little bit, allowing Nuttuck to take some advantage of that. As we enter the last five seconds of this match, both of these robots have escaped to the countout. This one will go to the judges. That is gonna be a fun one for the judges to call. They're gonna have to study that rule book real closely. Now you've got damage on one side, uh, Red Panda killing Nuck Tuck's weapon very early in that fight. That is a huge number of points for damage. Eight, seven, but we saw six, a lot of control five, and aggression, four, uh, control three, specifically from two, Nuck Tuck. One. Fight, robots fight. All right, we're going straight here into cage six. We've got Sombra here in pink and Scrambled here in blue. Tap out. Wow. Looks like Sombra has tapped out. Yes, Scrambled has won that fight. They will advance to face Voxel V1 in the round of 16. Amazing. Man, that's two quick losses in a row for the Sombra line. Rough portion of the day for Team AGVS. The thing that I love about Tomas, though, is he's always smiling, you know? He's having the best day ever here. Um, even if his robots are being eliminated, you know, he is, um, he's an engineer at heart. He's going to take these learnings, go back uh, to Brazil, and uh, figure out what is happening with the, uh, the weapon and the drive on Sombra. Scrambled run by a teenager here named Grant, and uh, they're in the teal shirts. And uh, Grant is doing great, advancing to the round of 16. Great. Wow, yes, yeah, Scrambled so far has beaten Fifan and Sombra. I cannot wait to see how they do up against Voxel V1. Um, really cool robot, really cool design. All right, let's check in here with Ali. All right, I am here with Drexel. They're coming on over. I kind of sprung this on them a little bit, but I did find out they're one of the NHRL scholarship recipients, so that's what brought them here, and we love to hear it. And they had a pretty good day here. They are eliminated now, but we were talking about, this is their faculty advisor, that they did have such a strong day here, and I want to learn about 
what just happened in your final match that kind of took you out for the count? Um, one of our bolts came loose on our beater bar and it kind of just kept getting stuck when it was spinning, so we couldn't spin up fully. And we couldn't drive anymore because of that. Uh, we had some really good hits in the beginning and we were doing really well. It just, head on head, it just happened to come out with uh, Blackbird on top. But you lasted the full three minutes, we right? Went the whole three minutes, minutes, judge's decision, second round. Um, I mean, this is the first year for this team and only the second time competing at Norwalk. So uh, I think they've come a long way. You certainly have a great cheerleader and your faculty advisor. What is something you've learned from coming to NHRL that maybe you didn't think you would learn about this robotics community? About the community in general, they're all so nice. Uh, everyone's so nice. We've gone to multiple tables for help and even just talking to the teams before and after fights. Uh, we've reached out to Blackbird before the fight and after the fight. Uh, we, we actually got a wheel from them that we cut in half from the fight. Uh, let me get that. He's going to go get that for us. But, and as you all know, because you're all pros watching this, Blackbird is a very great competitor for them to go down to with their only their second time. And there's the wheel. Yes. <laughs> they lent you that? Yep. We traded a wheel for okay. a pog. Seems like a fair trade to me. Well, congratulations on a great showing today. We can't wait to have you back. We'll and definitely be back. I mean, one, we got to thank NHRL. Uh, big shout out to them for some sponsorship this year. This is the first year of this team, and it helped us get it off the ground. And we will definitely be back for future events. We love to hear it. Well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I know you're sticking around. Great job, guys. Eight, seven. Six, oh five, yeah, two four, great competitors here, three, Polly Whip and two, Cemetery one. Drive. Fight, robots fight. Cemetery Drive here in black and purple. This is a Crash Fest uh, inspired lifter uh, built by Crash Fest builder Robert Runt and uh, given to his friend. So uh, this is a pretty, uh, pretty good little scale model replica. The description provided for this bot is Crash Fest with cooler colors. <laughs> Polly Whip run by DJ Jesu uh, and from Red Hook, New York, very close to my own hometown. I was gonna say, yeah. Yeah, so I uh, love seeing DJ here in the competition. Maybe we can uh, commute together one of these times, DJ. Fifty seconds down here on the uh, on this competition, we got these big, wide, drifting arcs of Holly Whip, hoping to eat at the wheels of Cemetery Drive. Look at that tipping Cemetery Drive up against the corner. Now, with the Crash Fest like robots, you're really looking for drivability. This is a very drivable robot and they're really feeding those long steel forks into your opponent's weapon. It is remarkable to see Crash Fest's performance uh, and compare it to the performance of Cemetery Drive. It really shows that driving pedigree for Robert Run. It is hard to uh, replicate that. Another attempted pin there from Cemetery Drive. What a durable robot Cemetery Drive is. They've just been taking these grinding hits for the entirety of the last two minutes. You can hear, though, that the drum on Polly Whip is dragging along the floor. It's making contact with the floor, just bumping along. That's that not great for motors, that's not great for speed controllers, and it's not great for your battery either. That is difficult to see here with 40 seconds left. Judges here are going to ask themselves who dictated the pace of this fight. This one may very well go to the judges. 30 seconds left. One of these robots is going to be advancing to the round of 16. One will be going home. Cemetery Drive. Uh, yeah, cool paint uh, color. You know, I love this. The anodized uh, forks, you gotta love that. We're down to the last five seconds here in the fight. They will take this to the judges. The judges will decide who will be advancing to the round of 16. 
great fight here. Cemetery Drive, Crash Fest, but make it goth. I love it. Eight, Very cool. Seven, six, All right, we're going to go over to five, Cage 3 here. Four, We've got three, Beetlejuice two, facing off one, against Sinister. Fight, robot Beetlejuice fight. run here by oh. Ariel Smith. Now, Ariel has already qualified for the November Championships with her green and black horizontal robot here. Sinister, run by uh, the new team from, uh, the new educational team from Shredded team member um, Drew Davis. So these kids are here from Schenectady, and uh, this is a very educational experience indeed, going up against a very highly ranked, ranked robot in Beetlejuice. Sinister is run by Isaiah from SCRC. Beetlejuice here in black and green, ranked number nine of all time here at NHRL, which is incredible with a 15 and seven career record. For every loss, they win two. So, uh, you know, that is pretty amazing performance for, uh, for a horizontal. Especially a bot that was based off of the vector kit. Just so impressive to see how much this bot has changed and improved in its time here. And it hasn't been that long. No. No. Uh, Team Pandemonium started competing here at NHRL last summer. They're coming up on their one-year anniversary. They've already qualified a robot here for, uh, for 2023. They were on the cusp of qualifying at the end of last year. Wow. By the tap way, out. oh, we have a tap out. Your winner is Beetlejuice. Beautiful job there by Ariel Smith. Uh, we also have a judge's decision from the last match. It was a uh, unanimous decision for, oh, sorry, split decision for Cemetery Drive. Really? Yes. Wow. I thought it was going to go to Poly Whip. Me too, but it, it, they pulled it out. Nice job. Wow. Wow. That was a close, close fight. They did get several pins out of there, and it was a good performance by them. Good round of handshakes here uh, between these two competitors. Cage side, see Ariel Smith there in black and green, appropriately. That's her team's colors. And uh, yeah, shaking the hand of these rookie builders here from Schenectady. Now, Drew Davis uh, qualified for the uh, finals last year. He got $5,000, which he donated to his local school district there in Schenectady. He's an English teacher in upstate New York. And, um, and yeah, they are doing great. Now, uh, here we've got video footage here of Waddles coming down for the semifinal match. Waddles has been doing great today. They've already qualified, and uh, they're going to be facing off against Kitchen Grill in the top four, the final four here. Kitchen Grill, one of the bots from Great Britain to come over, doing a beautiful job, already qualified, good chance at winning the tournament if they're able to get past Waddles. Yeah. We've got just three fights left in the 30s before we crown a golden dumpster winner here in the 30s. And um, Brian Boxel. Pretty well positioned here um, to uh, to do pretty well. However, Kitchen Grill, its weapon hasn't gone down all day. Yep. Been hitting hard all day. It brought two AR-500 weapon discs and one S7 tool steel weapon disc. Um, all of them look beautiful. Like, this bot's just really well machined, really well put together. Jack Kelly's done phenomenal work with that. Kitchen Grill also has super long forks, so it's possible that it could get under Waddles, maybe crash uh, Waddles into, uh, into one of these rails here. That is going to be a really interesting fight. We might be seeing Waddles ripping off forks. Uh, yeah, pretty great. All right, we're going to go see our friend Allie. Allie, what do you got for us? So I have Alex, and he is not only a builder here. Aaron, I'm sorry. It's been a long day. Aaron, who is a builder here, but he's also now, obviously, I mentioned this before with uh, Milk Tank. If you build here long enough, we will make you work for us. And he has been helping us out today. But I really wanted to know, as coming from someone who will probably never build a bot, because I just don't think I have that skill, when it comes down to this crunch time with only 20 minutes, how hard is it to repair a bot in that time? Uh, it really depends on what 
kind of breaks and goes wrong, right? So some things are a lot easier to fix than others. So, you know, swapping out a drive motor is a lot less complicated than if you have to, you know, swap out a hub motor for your weapon, right? Um, a lot of it also depends on the robot too, because, you know, if you're working in really tight quarters, you know, a lot of robots are built to be very small and, you know, it, it gets a lot harder to take things out. Um, so, like I said, it really kind of depends on what breaks, yeah. So, again, someone who, who is not a builder at all, but do these builders prep, like, this could potentially break, so I'm gonna already have this half constructed Thursday so that I can bring it here for Saturday. Can you kind of think about what could potentially break and kind of make that fix so it's easier in those 20 minutes before you even get here? Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of people will actually bring complete spare robots. Okay. Um, some people will have like half assembled frames with most of the things in there that are important, like, you know, a spare weapon set up so that you only have to switch over like your receiver or, you know, put a new battery in it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's something that's become a lot more common in the last couple of years to have either an entire Jab spare bot out. or like a mostly assembled one. So you don't have to do a full scramble drill at the end of the day. Yeah, as someone who can't imagine taking a year to build a bot, I can't even imagine 20 minutes to repair one. So thank you so much for your insight. We can't wait to have you working for us again and maybe battling it out again in the future. I think, I think next time uh, it depends on um, the moving situation, but I, I think uh, if I'm still here in June, I will compete. You heard it here first. So we're hoping that that move gets postponed for our benefit, not yours. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna go over to cage one. This is a final four fight here. This is one of our last three fights in uh, the 30 pounds uh, division. We've got kitchen grill here in the pink corner. Oh no, we're switched here. Kitchen Grill is in the blue corner, Eight, yep. and Seven, uh, Waddles, six, Bloodsport five, team member Brian four, Boxel is three, in the pink corner. Two, one, Jack five, Kelly getting five, deep into that fight five. stance he's been in all day. Oh, he's standing up now. Seems to be a delay on this fight. see Jack's team member there proudly displaying the Union Jack on his back. You gotta love that. Today is coronation day, Kyle. I've been here at NHRL all day. Did it go off without a hitch? I have absolutely no idea. Somebody tell us in the YouTube live chat. I'm sure we'll find out. The sun never sets on the British Empire. All right. Waddles running those uh, big googly-eyed armor out front. Well, this match is on. Waddles taking it to Kitchen Grill, trying to eliminate these mini bots. The You're mini bots are huge all in here. Grave Digger, by the way. Every mini bot's a Grave Digger. Wow, testing that anti horizontal plow on Kitchen Grill. Woo! Huge hit there. Kitchen Grill's on its head. Can Kitchen Grill self right? I don't know. They oh! Fox will help you out there. Okay, so they are able to drive in this position and spin up the weapon. That's not a bad place to be. But I worry about those little bunny ears keeping the weapon off the ground once they come into contact with Bryant's... Oh! Weapon! And look at this. The weapon is still running on Kitchen Grill. Absolutely bulletproof reliability from this robot from the UK. Waddles is circling its prey, looking like a hungry penguin indeed. Now, every single time that he takes out one of these miniature minibots, he is racking up damage points. Big hit there from Kitchen Grill on Waddles. All right, Kitchen Grill trying to pin Waddles up against the corner and get some damage in, but... This is an incredibly destructive fight with only 90 seconds left. And look at this, Kitchen Grill tipped into its corner. They still technically have one, uh, one assist from Flo. Kitchen Grill trying to violate the That's self a wheel that's gone. Oh no. Waddles coming in and surgically that's another removing wheel these wheels. It's a tap out. There we go. All Brian right. Is advancing to the finals in the 30s. 
Jack Kelly still qualifies to come back for the November Championships. That was the goal today. Could not get past Brian Boxel, but we will be seeing him back again in December for the World Championships. Look at this beautiful, just testing the, the wedge. Testing the wedge. We saw this huge hit early in the fight where uh, Brian kicks Kitchen Grill onto its head, really catching a corner of that super heavy horizontal plow, anti-horizontal plow. And here, surgically removing the rubber from your wheels. How nice. Both of these competitors here, we see Brian Boxel wearing the Bloodsport uh, kit. And uh, yeah, we just heard, see you in November. So good. Yeah, that was awesome. I am so excited for Jack Kelly and team for qualifying. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, this is incredible. Now, uh, Waddles will advance and will face the winner of Kablooey Tango versus Chibata. We're going to see if uh, Kablooey Tango can uh, eliminate our final international team in the 30s, or will it be a Waddles Chibata final? I am totally down for either. That yeah. sounds like a good time. 30 pound division was a lot of fun today. We are coming Three around Three horizontals to the left in that division. Yeah, amazing. amazing. Never happens. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Um, Kabuli Tango looking beautifully balanced today. I'm very excited to see how they handle themselves up against Chibata. Chibata's just a hard hitter. Yeah. And very well driven. Rato yeah. is a pretty good driver. Yeah, Rato's a pretty good driver. Lucy's a great driver. True. There's a there's an experience factor there that we have to consider. Lucy's had a lot more time behind the sticks. Right. Lucy's been building and driving robots for the last five years. She is the new captain of Valkyrie on BattleBots. Yeah. So, now, you know, Chibata, Chibata probably has more bathroom driving experience. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to head over to Cage 2. We've got inside job here from SME Captain Joe Fabiani on BattleBots facing off against Christine Giver, uh, a friend Eight, of the pod. Seven, she runs her own BattleBots six, podcast called five, Outside the Box. Four, She's running Naga three, here. Two, one, five. She's been Robots doing very well five. driving today, but she's now up against a phenomenal driver in Joe Fabiani. Joe Fabiani, in one of his earlier matches, he uh, punctured the top plate of his opponent so badly that they had to stop the match entirely and send it to the judges. They were unable to physically unstick these two robots. And uh, I have no idea how he got back into the box. Maybe he had to, uh, you know, go with another tooth here. Now here we've got a good pinch here, and you can see Brandon Zielinski, he's in charge of the beak. He's trying to show the ref that he is trying to release uh, Naga. Here's another good oh, pin from wow. Joe Fabiani on Naga. And here comes that pinch. Inside job, completely brushless weapon system for this particular event. Oh, that is right on the center of the plate here on Naga. Totally reinforced crushing mechanism. It is the fastest and strongest this crusher has ever been. Now, can the, uh, can the pincher crack through that top plate on Naga? So far, it has not been able to, but still able to control this fight. Now, Does this is Christine Giver's very first competition ever. This is like the fourth time she's ever driven a robot, like right now. Jumping into the deep end with NHRL and running a Polywog variant built by Ribot Captain David Jin. You can see him right there, cage side, standing next to Christine, giving her encouragement. We're seeing BattleBots builders and captains on both sides of this box. Joe Fabiani really desperate to land another pin here. But uh, I'm gonna say it, he hasn't uh, really damaged his opponent very much at all. Christine here uh, driving around the, uh, the, the back of Inside Job, really hoping to uh, land a hit on the back of the robot. Here we go, there we go, there's a good pin, Christine. Nice pin and grind from Christine. It does seem like the right side drivetrain on inside job is not functioning as well as it possibly could. 
A little bit this. of shifty crab walking going on. This uh, pretty mobile crab walking, but crab walking nonetheless here from uh, Joe Fabiani. He's tested that top plate and uh, he's unable to pierce it. Here we go, Christine, it's time to kill. 10 seconds left here in this fight. Both of these robots have escaped the count out. They will take this to the judges. The judges will decide who will be advancing to the round of 16. Round of applause here. Nice job, Christine. All smiles over on that side of the box. She had a great time. Christine Giver runs the excellent Outside of the Box podcast where she talks to BattleBots engineers every single week. Uh, check it out on YouTube. It's a really good interview show. Now heading on over to Cage 3, we've got Tommy Wong and Droopy here, the winner of NHRL 2020's finals and uh, making his triumphant post-pandemic return to the competition. This is an upside down start for Droopy. Facing off against Twin Beasts and Wagner Presties from Team AGBS. This is the biggest test yet for Droopy in this competition. Twin Beasts running twin uh, hub motors here for this, uh, this competition. It's a uh, pretty innovative design. If you kill one of those uh, hub motors, he's got a second one. Wagner is an incredibly impressive driver. His bot is very powerful. We're gonna see a lot of speed right out of the box uh, from Wagner. He's hoping that he can uh, slow down Droopy before uh, Tommy is able to spin up completely. And uh, you know, the Brazilian style is fast, it's in your face. Lots of box rushes. I just can't believe these bots are in the same weight class. Like, look at the size disparity here. Yeah. yeah. Droopy, it does get a weight bonus for unconventional locomotion. It moves based on the um, the spin up Eight, of those two bars. Seven, six, it kind of walks five, and lumbers on them. Four, and starting upside down, three, this should be a pretty two, chaotic start. One, Good spin up five, here from Tommy Wong five. and Droopy. You can see Wagner hanging back, trying to figure out how to uh, to approach the robot. Wow. Really testing Droopy here. Going in for the kill. Droopy, Droopy coming in for the kill himself. That was some very aggressive driving from a Droopy point of view. Droopy is impossible to plan for. Every single time you make contact, you're gonna be getting hit with one of these weapons. Weapon reliability is key. The other thing that's scary about Droopy is you just don't know how to guard. It could hit you on the side of your bot, on top of your bot, on the back of your bot at any given moment. Now, one of the challenges for Tommy Wong and Droopy is that uh, there's a really thick armor package that's protecting the wheels on Twin Beast. It's gonna be tough to kill those wheels, not impossible. But uh, yeah, Twin Beast and, and robots like it are designed for durability and toughness. Now keep in mind, Twin Beast is coming in at exactly one pound. Droopy, both of its weapon bars Huge are about a pound there. each. Roughly one pound each on just the weapon bars. This is incredible. Every single one of these hits, the, their opponents are you know, flying to opposite sides of the box. I gotta tell you, this is the fastest I have ever seen Droopy get across the box, too. Droopy is looking very mobile. Wagner trying to pick his moments, trying to see if one of these uh, weapons is going to go down first. But again, weapon reliability on Droopy is incredible. Droopy. Really showing why he's an NHRL champion. And Droopy, just such a forgiving design. Even when it loses control, it's still so dangerous. Wow, look at that. Look at that poor, sad face on Droopy. That poor, sad, beige robot. I love this robot. And it is so incredibly mobile. Tommy Wong has done great with this design. 
30 seconds left here in the fight. Tommy Wong spending an awful lot of time in the air, but Twin Beast kind of staying planted in one spot, waiting for Droopy to come to it. It is losing aggression points there by just planting itself and waiting for its opponent. Wagner's almost trying to choose his shot with Droopy, and that is just an impossible thing to do. This is the last uh, image that they are sending to the judges. Twin Beast stationary. Droopy advancing to his prey. Incredible. Such in aggressive driving from Tommy Wong with Droopy. Not something you expect to say about a Droopy match, but he was just on top of Twin Beast that entire match. That was very impressive. Yeah. This one will probably come down to control and aggression because both of these robots look pretty unscathed. Twin Beast was moving very slowly at the end, so you wonder if maybe something happened with the drive. Or if you're wondering if uh, Wagner just didn't want to take any more of those hits. I mean, Droopy hits so hard. This one is going to be a tough call for the judges. It's one of those uh, moments where I'm glad that I'm not a judge, Kyle. Oh, all right, here we are. Voxel versus Aerostar. Now this is a final four match for uh, the 12-pounders. Yep, last six, of the quarterfinal matches. Five, the winner of this match four, has to go on to face Crunk three, in the next round. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. Voxel, of course, scaled up version of the three-pound monster, Voxel. Voxel is this uh, black robot here with a silver beater bar, while Aerostar is running these white bunny ears. Uh, around the weapon housing. Aerostar run by Zoe Lambert from Team Honeycracked. Voxel run by Michael Shore Sr. from Team Shredderbro on BattleBots. Aerostar is a swole bar robot, so these are swole bars are scaled up replicas of the Fingertech beater bar, but in the 12 pound division. Voxel calling for its save from uh, the house bot very early in this fight. And look at this, peeling away part of that... Uh, the that wheel guard is wheel gone, guard yeah. package. Getting under Aerostar. When you're looking at two uh, drum spinners like this, you're waiting to see which robot's weapon is going to go down first. Especially with hits like this, but we just got two very powerful volley hits from Voxel right in a row. It looks like the weapon on Aerostar has gone down. It's very quiet in the box. But Voxel continues to run, tipping Aerostar up against the rail. Aerostar now getting its one save. The house bot is no longer a factor here in this fight. And Aerostar looks like the power is off. The weapon on Voxel so low to the ground, you can hear it scraping against the floor, and you can see it rip that wedge of the minibot up into the air every time they make contact. That is a dangerous weapon if it's that low to the ground. Voxel is your winner by knockout. knockout. They will go on to face Krunk in the next round. Voxel versus Krunk is a match that I want to see. Wow, okay, this is the, se now they, they've advanced to the semifinal round. You've got Michael Shore Sr. on one hand, uh, on one half of that, uh, that bracket. Carmen facing off against Maximizer and his dad uh, running Voxel facing off against Krunk. Now there is a possibility that we could see a father-son final in the 12s, which would be pretty amazing. Zoe Lambert here eliminated on the cusp uh, of of qualifying for the November championship. Absolutely. All right, so we have Allie upstairs. She's got some fun stuff happening. What's going on, Allie? Yes, yeah, so I know the last time you saw me, we were talking about like rush to the finish line of that 20 minutes and super serious. So we wanted to switch it up a little bit and show you what also happens up here at the pits at this time of night. We've got Angel. I must have interviewed him a thousand times, but I've never done it while he's been coloring. So we needed to take this opportunity and I needed to know which ones you're coloring right now, why you chose those. Yep, so this is Hurt Caboose. That's my robot. Um, this is Blackbird. I designed it for Anthony, so uh, I took the CAD that I did for him and turned it into that coloring page. And that's my latest bot, Archangel. 
Uh, that one came out really good for the coloring book because it, it's got so much like trim on it. So that one looks the prettiest, I think. All right. On a more serious note, you are still driving with Blackbird because you're driving the Minibots. I know you're pretty pumped for that. Um, I want to talk about what happened to your other bots. Bring it down. I know I'm bringing the energy down a little bit, but you were honest, and I think we want an honest answer around this time of night. So it started off uh, not too good today. Um, I came in, my weapon didn't want to work. Um, we had figured out like the belt tensioning issue, and it still didn't want to spin up. So I took one of Anthony's motors, put it in my bot, and it worked. That's my dad. Um, <laughs> And he kissed me too, to be quite honest. Oh my God, um, he kisses everybody, yeah, he, yeah. he loves it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we figured out the issue, we had our first fight, we did really good, and then we came out of that to our second fight, we got unlucky, lost a wheel, um, and then it kind of just went downhill from there, but that's okay, we got a win. And this was a mini bot for it that I didn't pack away, just in case Anthony needs it. Uh, it's the same exact mini bot, so just a different color. Well, we're excited to watch you drive with those mini bots with Blackbird. Let's do a quick pan, though, because we really want to give you the full shot of what goes on up here because we got Cheez Its, we got Pop Tarts, and we got a first aid kit and coloring. So if you're ever really wondering what goes on up here besides that, that fixing of the robots and that stress, we got a lot of fun here. We never use the first aid kit, but it's here just in case. Back to you guys at the desk. Now, uh, Milk Tank team member Ashley Beckman uh, really spearheaded this uh, new coloring book that she launched this month. I love it. Pretty amazing. Uh, so yeah, people sent in uh, their their CAD drawings and uh, she turned them into a coloring book. Pretty so awesome. smart. I, we have such cool merch here because we have such a cool community here that's willing to put in the work to, uh, to make these great things. I mean, some of the most phenomenal t-shirts you find back there were designed by Anthony D'Ambrosio. Yeah. And like, it's so cool that everybody just chips in their creative energies, their, their, their time. It's the best. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, yeah, I've got to get my hands on one of those coloring books. That sounds uh, great. Yeah, I think that that would be nice. Well, I need two. Okay. Because I get two kids. Yeah. I'm sure Ashley can hear us up there. Maybe set a couple aside for us. I'm you just, know? you know, maybe doing a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge in Ashley's direction. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Ashley yeah. Uh, straight up attacked me when I walked in the door, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. She, like with a knife, just like. No, she said, Kyle, you need to follow these two people when I got here. Oh. Because the team from Eel Monkey Arts created a, uh, speaking of cool merch, right? They created a plushie just for me. Yeah. And she wanted to make sure that I received it. So um, I, normally I don't follow two strangers uh, to some unknown destination. But when Ashley tells me to go, I trust Ashley. So I went. And it, the coolest little plushie. I'll have to find it later to show you. It's just adorable. Yeah. You've got a Kyle plushie. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, they also made one for me. So uh, you should go and check that out. Absolutely. I'm sure they're going to start selling them at some point. I hope so. All right. So one thing that we want to do at this event is talk about the types of weapons that we see here. Yeah. Let's go into an explainer for Melty Brain Robots right now. Melty Brain Robots. Okay, so Melty Brains are a very interesting thing. We'll just talk about it quickly. The weapon is the bot. So these two wheels spin at incredibly high speed, and depending on how you pulse the speed of these two wheels will depend on if the bot drifts left or right. It is very hard to control, but it hits ridiculously hard because it is the entire weapon doing it. They are very strong. They don't have a weak side but they're also very difficult to control. Now you can see here, this is Project Liftoff, probably the best Melty Brain Spinner in the world at this point, and they are taking out the lights, they are taking out the arena, and they are getting right back up to speed just as soon as they hit the ground. Spinning to win, if you will. Yeah, Project Liftoff, one of those popular robots here in the field, and uh, really incredible. They've been working on this design, working on the technology uh, that runs Project Liftoff for multiple years, and uh, that is just starting to pay off. They are winning more fights than they're losing, and they are picking up an awful lot of fans here at NHL. Absolutely. They've even gone home with one gold dumpster, so. All right, so this is Softlock versus Half-Life. This is Softlock's Eight, first seven, ever NHRL six, and first ever robot five, competition with their four, first ever robot. Three, two, one, We've got a really five, good fast box rush here fight. from Matt, uh, Matt Lantry and Half-Life. The red and white lifter bot here. Softlock, gold and black here. And uh, doing great for rookies. 
So interesting fact about Softlock, they were a little bit overweight, so they punted and came up with a new wheel design. Those are aluminum cleat wheels that they're running just so they could stay within their weight limit. Eli told me that it's working out really well, but he was very skeptical when he came up with the idea. I love it when people do something just because they have to make weight, and it ends up being a pretty cool design change. Now, uh, Half-Life builder Matt Lantry here, famous for Fallout, which is very similar. But look at that. I think that was a fork that uh, just flew off of Half-Life. I think Half-Life lost its, its uh, right side fork there. Yeah, that's gone, you're right. Now you can see uh, Eli's got his mom with him as part of his pit crew today. She told me that she is pit crew and emotional support mom yeah. for this event. Got Eli's mom uh, filming the, uh, the match. A lot of builders, they like to see their footage after the fight so they can uh, diagnose their, uh, their driving, oh, celebrate wow. their successes, fix their, uh, their flaws. All got right. that one save here from soft, for Softlock. We've got a minute 25 left on the clock. They are currently running upside down. That is not ideal. That means the weapon's been wrong. There we go. They were able to get themselves right there. Softlock has mangled the front end of, of Half-Life. The one fork that's left is askew. Yeah, those little lifter arms, they're really not forks. They're not designed. Oh, here we go. Another good pin here on Half-Life uh, Half Life on Softlock. Will we see a lift here, Kyle? Not so far today. But like, you don't need a big lift. You just need to get those wheels off the ground. Hmm. I'm gonna have to talk to Gil about this. I feel like, you know, if you've got a lifter, you should be able to lift your opponents, Kyle. Just enough, just enough to get the wheels off the ground. Why waste it? Yeah, I suppose that's true. He's put a lot of power into that drivetrain, and you can tell. I mean, he's just dominating these other bots with that drive. Softlock doing a great job keeping them at bay here at the end of this match. 15 seconds left here in this fight. It looks like both of these drivers have escaped the countouts. This one will be going to the judges. A lot of stuff here to uh, consider. Ripping off a fork is damage. For a lot sure. of aggression and a lot of control, though, from Half-Life. I would not be surprised if this was a split judge's decision. Yeah, that drivetrain on Half-Life is ridiculous. Nice job, though, to Eli Watkins for his first ever event and his first ever bot. He's performing incredibly well. Yeah. We're going to send this one to the judges. Now we're gonna watch the loadout here. And now I know that cage three is already locked up, but they're waiting for a referee and a cage manager. We're gonna see the uh, process here of making a robot safe. All right, I can see that they are ready here in cage three. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, in one. In cage three, we've fight. got Robot Chainsaw fight. Kitty here in black and Knee Biter here in purple. They're also running two mini bots here. You see a total of four robots in this, uh, this box. Chainsaw Kitty run by Kezia Sky here. And Knee Biter is operated by Dave Hurt from Team 42 Robotics. Now, I just saw parts go flying around inside of the box. I think the Chainsaw Kitty clipped something important. When I spoke with Keziah earlier today, she was worried about belt tension issues on the weapon. I have seen no evidence of that in any of their fights today. Just dominant, look at that, dominant performances from Chainsaw Kitty. Looks like some of those parts were off of one of the minibots. Kezia Sky getting under her opponent, eating away at the top and bottom plates. Now it looks like Knee Biter could be a Weta kit, like a hub motor drum kit. And uh, Chainsaw Kitty, absolutely custom. Really Kezia staying squared up with her opponent with some fast, chaotic driving here from Knee Biter. 
Nice side pin there from Chainsaw Another Kitty. Another big hit from Kezaya on Knee Biter. She's just such an aggressive driver, does not give her opponents an inch. It is incredible that this is her third competition ever. And uh, yeah, making her NHRL debut last November. And uh, yeah, just absolutely tearing up the competition here today. Just very quickly, we do have a split decision for Half-Life on that last fight. Congratulations to them. Wow, with 65 seconds left here in this fight, the drive looks great, the weapon looks great on both of these robots. Keziah, though, consistently getting under her opponent, popping Knee Biter in the air. It's these minor corrections that Keziah does, these little backups and, and readjusts to re-aim the weapon that are just so on point, so impressive, and getting her slight advantages at so many points, like right there where she's able to get to the back side of Huge. Knee Biter. Just so impressive. Yeah, the d driving control is amazing. And you can see kind of the other side of, you know, that drive style in Knee Biter, this kind of frantic arcing, um, you know, trying to reset yourself so you can come around and get a good hit. Knee Biter, though, is squared up with its opponent and, um, and really landing great hits. Now we've got 10 seconds left here. Both of these opponents have escaped to the countout. We've got a good pin here from the uh, the minibot, but it looks like the power is out on Chainsaw Kitty. Ah, not the way you want to end the match. Wow. Wow, I can't believe that one's going to the judges with all those massive hits that we saw. All right, that was fantastic, but right now we're gonna go upstairs to Allie. I believe she has Maximizer. I do, I do, and I have like the best story. So he's actually from Louisville, Kentucky, and you don't say it Louisville, you say it. Louisville. Thank you. And so he said his family right now is watching the Derby on one screen and Robots on the other, and that his pump-up song to get ready for these tournaments is Life is a Highway, Rascal Flats version. So that's how we got to know that he's from Louisville, Kentucky. So I really love the family dedication because it's a big day there, but you're here. So let's talk about Maximizer and who you've got next. So we just qualified for finals. Woo! I can't be more grateful to my entire team. I mean, we're from the University of Cincinnati, so I mean, all of us here has been, it's a dream come true, um, being able to, you know, fight with the best here. Um, I go up against Carmen next. I'm, all, I'm on the edge about that one. You know, it could go either way, but um, I'm just glad that we'll be back here in November. We love NHRL and uh, University of Cincinnati. Go Cats. Um, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, this is the last spot for University of Cincinnati, so woohoo! So we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a full team grudge here in a sec. Well, so you know what you need to do to win, right? You have to lock in. You have to put on Life as a Highway. Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts. Yes. There I'm you go. <laughs> All night long. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, we wish you luck. We can't wait to see it. And we'll talk to you soon, I bet. Thank you. All right. Wow, I gotta tell you, only horizontal left in that tournament. Yeah. It, like, wonderful job. Designed this robot, yeah. made the changes to this robot specifically to take on these vertical spinning weapons that he has had so many struggles with, Jake's had so many struggles with. Love to see it. I, I hope they win. I, I really do. That is uh, now my favorite, my favorite bot in that competition. They're doing phenomenally. Fantastic. Now we've just heard from the judges, there's a unanimous judges decision for Chainsaw Kitty. Wow. Keziah Sky remaining alive in the bracket. Fantastic. Nice job. All, All right. right. So we are going to go do a tale of the tape for the next match that's coming up. This is the second semifinal match in the 30 pound. We have Kablooey Tango versus Chibata. Uh, so Lucy Dew is going to be driving Kablooey Tango. Both of these bots are horizontal spinners. Chibata is a YouTube influencer from uh, Brazil. And uh, this is their first competition ever. Rato is fantastic. Rato is goals. Rato is life. 
Like, uh, if I could grow up and become Rato, that'd be fantastic, all right? Listen, I have never had so much just joy by a man-sized rat in my entire life. And this fight is happening right now in Cage One. We've got Rato here on one side of the box, and we have Valkyrie Captain Lucy Dew on the other. Now, Lucy Dew, at least five years of combat robotics experience, but no experience driving a robot in a bathroom. Eight, seven, We've got six, two horizontals five, here, and uh, Kablooey Tango two, here in the pink one, corner has the, robots the, fight. the low ground here. Rato is a mid-cutter horizontal. And uh, Lucy is going to feed that uh, her opponent's weapon straight into that huge, huge armor front on Kablooey Tango. Kablooey Tango designed by Alex Kreese. It's a four-wheel drive undercutter spinner. The really important thing here that Lucy needs to do is stay squared up with her opponent. She really wants to feed that armor package into Chibata before, uh, you know, really going to work with her undercutter. She'd like to break that horizontal first. Wow, that was a nice move, knocking their weapon out of the way so that she could get behind them and cut away at those wheels. Those wheels are very dense on Chibata's bot, so it's going to take a couple of those hits, but that was really good work. All right, we have 60 seconds down here in this fight. We've got two minutes remaining here. Now, Lucy Dew was saying that uh, the, the main strategy here with an undercutter really, really shines when it is able to rip a plow off of the front of a vert. And uh, here with, uh, with Chibata, she's really hoping that she can break the weapon first and then eat away at those wheels. Definitely a reach advantage for Chibata on this matchup, but with that massive plow on Kablooey Tango, she's able to take these hits pretty well so far. 80 seconds left here in this fight. There's still a massive amount of time. But what you're seeing is Kablooey Tango com continuing to advance in this, uh, in this box, trying to get closer to her opponent, really showing a lot of aggression there. Wow, the weapon on Chibata really slowed down after that last hit. Now they're struggling to get it up to speed. There we go, got a little bit of room away from Kablooey Tango. Oh man, sounds... neither of these bots are spinning up right now. Here comes the weapon from Chibata. Does appear as though the left side drivetrain on Chibata is struggling at this point. And look at this, the weapon from Kaplui Tango is back. Wow, with 30 seconds left, it looks like this could be Lucy Dew here advancing. This is a brutal back and forth matchup. Both of these bots really struggling in these last bits. I believe I do see a belt hanging off of Chibata though. Yeah, I saw that belt peeking out of the front. Yeah, there it is. That is supposed to be on the blade. Not a great way to end up your match. Now, both of these uh, robots took it the full three minutes. This one will go to the judges. They will be deciding who is going to the 30-pound final, Kablooey Tango or Chibata. Lucy Dude spending the last five seconds just getting one more hit in on the wheels for, of Chibata for a good measure, wanting to show those judges aggression, show those judges control, and that everything's functional on Kablooey Tango at the end of that match. Now, both of these robots have already qualified for the November finals, and uh, this is really just for the Golden Dumpster and cash. Let's take a quick look here at this replay. Now, uh, Lucy Dew had a strategy and she executed it perfectly. She continued to feed that huge front armor package into the front of Chibata in hopes of breaking that weapon. She succeeded and snapped the weapon belt. And uh, Rato in the last 30 to 60 seconds. Here we go. Rato, Rato hyping up the crowd. You gotta love that. Listen, this is his first ever competition. He just made it to the semifinals. Yeah, and he's qualified here at he's NHRL. He's qualified at NHRL. He's coming back in November. I, you know what? I don't think losing to Lucy Dew is, no. uh, is anything to be ashamed of for your first time out. That's phenomenal work. Let's see how this decision goes. 
And yes, there we go. Unanimous decision for Kablooey Tango and Lucy Du. Nice job. Lucy will advance to the finals and face Brian Boxel and Waddles. The winner of that fight will be taking home $1,000 cash and a golden dumpster as a trophy. All right, we are now going over to cage two where we have Beetlejuice facing off against Synthesis. Beetlejuice run by Ariel Smith from Team Pandemonium. Synthesis run by Corey Mason from Team Shreddit. Synthesis is just such a big weapon in this weight class. Yeah, it is a scale model replica, a three pound replica of Emulsifier on BattleBots. Emulsifier here at NHRL. Ariel has already qualified for the November finals. She's just here for uh, trophies and cash. Yeah, trophies, cash. And making it slightly easier for somebody else to qualify once she gets one of the qualifying spots. Yeah, there you go. She's just helping, you know? And we can see Ariel talking with Corey here at cage side. Looks like they are getting ready to fight here in cage two. It's a nice shot through the weapon mount on synthesis. Now, Corey Nason, he loves building miniature versions of popular robots. He's built a miniature version of Depth Charge. He's built a miniature version of Copperhead. This is his latest miniature version of a famous robot in Emulsifier. So it looks far. like uh, we're gonna go over to Cage 3. I can see footage here from Cage 3. Oh yeah, there we go. We've got Caldera here in the pink corner and Power Surge 2 in the blue. We're getting a good uh, shot here of the back of Power Surge 2 run by Chris Caps. Is there Eight, already drive seven, struggle on Power six, Surge? Five, Couldn't tell, but it looked four, like they might be having some three, issues on that left side two, of the drive, the right side of the one, drive. Five, oh yeah, I think that's true. Five. They were not able to get that box rush that you would normally want to get against a big horizontal spinner like Caldera. Oh, that was an absolutely vicious hit from Caldera, knocking them all the way across the box. Now grinding away at the bottom plate of the robot and taking out the wheel, it looks like, completely on the left-hand side. Chris Caps absolutely capitalizing here, tipping Glenn Boxel and Caldera up against the rail. That is the one unstick that Caldera gets. One unstick from Brett the Brick. Now Chris Caps is an incredibly aggressive driver here. But it looks like he is uh, slightly off. Oh, it's, he's lost a wheel, Well, that's what Kyle. I'm saying. The left side lost its wheel. The right side wow. was struggling at the beginning of the match. This is either going to go to a count out or a tap out. And there we wow. go. We have a knockout. Your winner is Glenn Boxel. And a rough Knockout. Oh, Caldera. Caldera here advancing and will face the winner of Polywog versus Blackbird. We got it. We got now uh, let's uh, take a look here at the 30 pound bracket. We're about to see the uh, the final uh, final match here, but uh, we're going to see you know the path to to that final uh, match. And there's Glenn Boxel, whose son Brian is going to be in that final match. So Waddles versus Chibata will be that final match. You can see just what a path Waddles has had to go through. Not a single lightweight in there. Yeah. This is going to be Waddles versus Kablooey Tango. That makes more sense. Yeah, and uh, that is going to be a fantastic fight. Let's uh, check in upstairs with Chris in the pits. So it is Kablooey, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hey, Luke, Kyle, I'm here with Brian Boxel. Uh, Brian, you have forfeited eruption. You're moving forward now with your other bot. You're going into the finals against Kablooey Tango. So you have two low horizontals, heavy hitters. What are you thinking? So our undercutter module uh, for Waddles has been doing really, really strong for us all day. However, we also have that option of a vert module to pull out. And uh, 
our vert module also has a wedge on it. So when we fight a, uh, a strictly horizontal uh, weapon like Kablui Tango has, then Eight, we could leverage seven, something like uh, six, uh, five, our, our wedge vert and four, really shake up three, what they might be expecting two, in the finals. One. Fight, right. robots, fight. Sounds like we're going into another match. All right, we're gonna go to cage two. This is a match in progress. Beetlejuice versus Synthesis. We've got Ariel Smith uh, here tipped up against the rail. She is in uh, green and uh, silver. And they just got green their one unstick from Brett the Brick. Corey Nason here running Synthesis, his uh, emulsifier uh, version here, three pound version of emulsifier. It is a really good and uh, stalwart replica of emulsifier as well. I love it. Yeah, it's like emulsifier with wheels. And look at that uh, high centering synthesis. Oh, Huge hit there. No, that was vicious. Beetlejuice getting popped in the air once, twice. Can we make it three? We can make it three. Three times in a row, and it looks like the weapon on Beetlejuice is down. Yeah, that second hit, I believe, took out the weapon. And they do get another. Look at the frame on Beetlejuice. It is completely and totally askew. That is wow. a tap out for Burial Smith. She said, no more damage to my robot, please. Thank you very much. I would like to take it home a in great, somewhat of a full piece. Great match for Synthesis and a smart tap out from Team Pandemonium and Ariel Smith. Ariel with Smith is already qualified. She doesn't need to wreck her robot anymore. <laughs> Good wow. round of uh, congratulations and handshakes here for these two competitors. Corey Nason will be advancing and uh, yeah, really doing great. Synthesis now will face the winner of Underbite and Cemetery Drive. Let's take a look here at a replay of this fight. This the emulsifier-esque uh, weapon getting under the, uh, the horizontal of Beetlejuice and just tweaking that frame. Good little hug there uh, between teammates, uh, Corey Nason and Evan Arias, the captain of Shredder Bro. Yeah, Evan not competing today. He's just here to support his team, support his friends. Here to have fun. Here to have fun, see everybody. I love it. All right, so that was a vicious match. Uh, I think Synthesis is about to watch. That was crazy. Yeah, we saw a rapid succession of roof shots there with Beetlejuice. Uh, you know, three shots in a row, and that frame is not straight anymore. No, that entire backplate is supposed to be in a straight line. It's a zigzag now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a very good tap out that Ariel made there. Yeah. Um, when you're already qualified, why? Why wreck your bot that much? You may as well just call it quits. Move it's on. true. Yeah. Um, I really love the Team Pandemonium story. Uh, this is a team that uh, is a huge fan of combat robotics, huge fan of BattleBots. They discovered NHRL just last summer, yep. and they are are doing great. They, they've already qualified here, and uh, their robots are incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, that especially is to show how cool you can be or how good you can be with a kit bot. I mean, they started out with a vector kit. They've now expanded on that and improved upon that. And now they have a qualifying robot. It's yeah. Really cool work. Yeah, fantastic. All right, great. Yeah, that is their, uh, that's their flagship robot, Beetlejuice. It's their most reliable. It's their hardest hitting. And uh, we're seeing why, you know, yeah. great performance. All right. Okay. Now, I see that we are starting to load in here. Uh, scrambled versus Voxel V1 in cage three. I like Scrambled. It's just a delightful little robot. It is a plucky little egg beater. With an egg on it. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that's it's pretty fun. It's a good theme. It goes well together. Yeah. Um, how do you think that match is going to work out for him? Voxel is a very tough opponent. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like the, the Shores, Michael Shore Sr. and Michael Shore Jr., you know, they are, have been doing great here today. Yeah. All of their robots are still alive in the bracket. Yeah. Voxel in the three, Voxel in the 12s, and Carmen. Yeah, good chance of qualify or good chance of uh, winning with all of those today. Um, yeah. Performing very, very well. It's going to be a tough road to climb for Scramble, but we'll see how it goes for them. Yeah. Um, 
Matt, how hard do you think it is running that many robots? I mean, it's just a two-man team up there. You know, for the Shores, they're a very um, organized and dedicated. Yeah. Uh, they're both engineers. They have kind of that engineering mindset. And uh, for them, I am sure that it is uh, super simple, barely an inconvenience. Probably. Yeah. yeah. All, All right, right so these are the bots that officially qualified in the 30 pounds. That's Chibata, Kitchen Grill, Lil Rip, and Waddles. Kablooey Tango had already qualified, so that's why we're bringing up Little Rip into the 30-pound qualifiers. So uh, we're going to be seeing Anna Zonlikov here in November with her 30-pound version of Ripperoni. Pretty exciting. Kitchen Grill I'm also excited about. You know, we've got a good UK bot here coming back and a bot from Brazil with Rato. I love that. All right, so here we go. We're going to see Voxel V1 versus Scrambled. We see Michael Shore Sr. there in black facing off against Grant here in Teal. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, two one. Two egg beater fight. drums. Robots fight. And uh, look at this. Scramble crossing the box first. But Voxel kicking Scrambled in the teeth twice. A good shower of sparks here. Voxel is not afraid to go weapon on weapon. Kicking scrambled in the air. And look at this, straight into a pin. Wow. Great job, Grant. Yeah, that was an excellent driving from Grant, taking full advantage of that situation. Now Grant can hold that pin for 10 seconds. And look at this, Voxel is stuck up against the rail. Oh man, they are already gonna need their one unstick. Getting that unstick in the first 45 seconds. If Grant can do that again, Michael Shore is going to be out of luck. Michael needs to score a knockout here. Now, in this match, it seems weapon to weapon, most of those engagements going towards Voxel V1. If Michael can keep that weapon pointed at Scrambled and stake towards the center of the box away from that wall, not letting Scrambled take advantage of that wall pin again, they might be able to pull off a win here, maybe even a knockout. To another good hit, Voxel again getting under Scrambled. The geometry and the speed of that weapon on Voxel is favoring this, uh, this robot here. Scrambled now back onto its feet, and it was on its head for quite a long time. Ooh, another big shot in the air. And Voxel landing a good pin. Grant just going full speed weapon straight into the rail. Grant refusing to turn down the weapon, Kyle. And here we go, Grant getting under Voxel. 60 seconds left in this fight. Both of these robots have been trading blows. Wow, Voxel getting the better of that exchange, launching Scrambled up into the air. Scrambled taking a, uh, advantage of the gyroscopic procession of Voxel turning there, and there we go. Both robots now have locked into a pin, trying to see whose weapon can get engagement first, and it was Voxel, and Voxel goes in for a second hit. And a third hit. And a fourth hit. Voxel on a tear right now. And now behind Scrambled, trying to get another pin. Unable to take advantage. 15 Seems seconds left here in this fight. It looks like both of these uh, robots will escape the count out, and this one will be going to the judges. Both I bots am, have done phenomenally in this matchup. I am floored by the reliability of Voxel and of Scrambled. These are two incredibly well-constructed robots. That was a great, great fight. Both drivers did a really great job just taking advantage of the situations presented to them. Both of them walking out of there with a pin. Vox were really getting quite a few volleys there towards the last minute of that fight. All right, so let's go, let's look at this replay here. Now here we saw a really great pin here from uh, from Scrambled on Voxel. Voxel returning it with a pin of its, uh, of its own. And uh, in these weapon-on-weapon -weapon exchanges, there must have been at least two dozen in this match. Voxel was getting under Scrambled for most of them, 
but not all of them. I think that this may be a very close judge's decision indeed. Really great driving and uh, great reliability from both of these robots. All right, let's uh, go and check in with Chris, who is standing by with Kitchen Grill. Hey guys, I'm here with Jack Kelly and Kitchen Grill. Uh, you went head-to-head -to -head with Waddles. Can we see some of this damage close up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the main damage is to the wedge. That's a little bit bananaed. We're going to go downstairs and have a go on the press, see if we can straighten that. I uh, think it should be possible, but uh, I'm not too unhappy if it's a write-off, as I've got another one being made at home at the minute. So, uh, yeah, no biggie. Congratulations on, on ranking fourth and uh, having an opportunity to come back here. Oh, geez, look, at, um, take a look at some of the, the damage back here on the wheels. Oh, my goodness. I'm really lucky on that one. That just got the tread, so the, the hub is absolutely fine. This one, not so much. This one got blown up. But I got plenty more of those in my case. I bought six back wheels and two front Eight, wheels. So I'm actually seven, pleased one got broken six, because I'd feel a right five. muppet taking Four, all that stuff three, and not you're not needing two, to use any of it one, so uh, fight, this is the first thing that's been race. i've been phenomenally lucky uh any other things that you're thinking about uh doing uh for another run here in norwalk yeah definitely gonna maximize the mini bots for next time so we bought these just from uh, target just for fun uh this weighed in 31 point five pounds in its heaviest configuration so we really haven't utilized the the weight bonus that well um so i'm going to chunk this up to 33 pounds and i'm going to bring a five pound dedicated mini bot next time uh jack uh, for coming in uh fourth i just want to tell you right now i don't have it with me but you will be the recipient of one of our Send Cut Send uh, awards. So hopefully that will go a little bit of a ways into helping you do some of the repairs on this bot. That'll be brilliant. That'll be brilliant. I'll pick it up next time. Uh, just before I go, I want to say one thing. Uh, massive shout out to my friend Adam Hamilton. He did most of the design work on this. Without him, I would not be here. So thank you, Adam. I hope I've done you proud. All right. We hope you had a great time here. Back to you guys. Thank you, Chris. We are going to go right to cage two. You can see there is a pin going on. We've got Backlash Wave going up against uh, Portable Apocalypse. Backlash Wave, a uh, really nasty and massive uh, vertical spinner. At least it can be configured as such. You can see right now they're running an actually a relatively small vertical spinner. Um, trying to get a little extra ground clearance, I think, so they don't go bouncing yeah. around. And it looks big enough to have disabled the weapon there on Portable Apocalypse. Yeah, and shedding tires like it's, um, I don't know, a Midas nice. Auto Center. Turning Portable Apocalypse right into a hat there for Brett. Hats are incredibly portable, Sam. Well done by Brett. <laughs> that is amazing. Little tornado move. So, like a Mexican sombrero dance. Oh, There's that three is... out of four. It's a, it's a turkey. We're gonna go for the quartet. A bit quiet in there, though. Yeah, the weapon has uh, apparently gone down on Backlash Wave, or maybe they're just being kind. No, I, I think this is a failed weapon on Backlash Wave. That said, port well, no, Portable Apocalypse is still moving. All right, uh, Backlash Wave, I believe, called for an unstick from Brett as there was a simultaneous uh, countdown happening due to both robots not really having any mobility. The unstick didn't really do it for Backlash Wave, however. Oh, they're just almost moving inchy squinchy over there. Oh, just barely. That's the end of the match. We are going to go to a judge's decision. Yep, double be... knockout, straight to the judges. Well, I don't think, no, the, the time actually ran out there. We didn't go oh, for Oh, the a... time? Okay. Yeah, I, I heard know. him calling for a double knockout, lots of countdowns Very going close, on. you know, overlapping countdowns. There was a lot of uh, struggling mobility there towards the end. Uh, well, either way, it's going to a judge's decision. We're going to see how things go. Um, you can still see there, the Backlash Wave's weapon twitching just a little bit. It wants to go. It wishes it was going. It dreams at night. I dream of 
all four wheels being removed from that robot. So unfortunately, uh, dreams do come true. <laughs> yeah. And here we go in a replay. Backlash wave. You can see just really controlling movement and then dishing out these immense hits. The hat moment. Every good fight has a hat moment, but this this is one of the best hat moments we've ever had, I think. I think it took Brett 900 degrees to remove the robot off of its head. That's incredibly hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just vaporized the hat. It's gone now. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, welcome back to NHRL. We are in our... Uh, Wonderful booth here in Norwalk, Connecticut. I'm Ricky Willems. And I'm Sam Hansen, evil henchman. That, yeah, it's official title, which is kind of amazing. The fact that uh, we're surrounded by horrible, um, wonderful, terrifying robots. And uh, we've got people with the literal job title of evil henchman. Yeah, I never expected my job title to have an alignment, but... Sam, I've known you for a while. I 100% expected your job title to have an alignment. I was just waiting for the world to catch up. Okay, yeah. And we're uh, here. Oh, I've knocked over my tiny mammoth. I was gifted a tiny mammoth today. Oh, that's that's excellent. I it's It's gotten to the point where people just come up and give me robot-shaped things or, like, stuffed animals, and it's really, really nice. And just this... It kind of reminds you of the community that is existing. Yeah. I uh, saw your eel monkey art mammoth, uh, your right. plushie. Right. I've got a plushie now that's, awesome. that's like some combination between our house robots, my robot, and me. And it's a little, it's a little disconcerting. It's like someone put a big vat of, of DNA in a plushie machine and spit out. And that's what came out? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got one too, actually. I Yeah, yours has a mustache. Mine has a mustache. Which is perfect. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> Logical, logical. We're gonna go over to cage three. We're gonna, we're gonna get off All the right. mustache talk, get off the, uh, back into the the robot fighting talk. We've got Spartan facing down Prom Hedda. This is a three pound match. This is gonna be a good one. Eight. Both these robots seven, hit hard. Six. Five. Yeah, Spartan, one of four, the nastiest looking three, robots, and Prom Hedda, one of the nastiest hitting. One, five, uh, things are gonna go flying five. like that. an exchange. Spartan is is really known for how incredibly stable it can be despite yeah. having these big horizontal hits. Um, you can see it is having now drive issues on. Wow! My God, that is the front wedge completely off of Prom Hedda. That does not happen very often. That is even more plastic. It is just shedding pieces left and right. Spartan struggling for a moment and getting back up to speed. There are belts around the arena. Looks like the weapon is down on Prom Hedda. I'm surprised the weapon is even there, Sam. Prom Hedda down one wheel, but that's absolutely fine. Maybe down two wheels. Wow! Spartan going flying. This is exactly the kind of action that you want to see and you expect to see this deep into the tournament bracket. Johnny can barely believe the hits he's dishing out. He's getting so soaked over there. The, the excitement is just off the charts. Neither robot slowing down a lick. Prom Hedda, that weapon is struggling to get back up. Oh, it's upside down. Can still the wheel goes right flying. The yes, Prom Hedda's weapon is down. It is now struggling on drive. Um, only has two wheels left. Their best bet now, Ricky, is just a slam into Spartan. Hope yes. To disable Spartan's weapon or something else on it. Re remember, these horizontal spinners struggle uh, to, to stay balanced, and they often do as much damage to themselves as they do their opponent. Speaking of which. Yeah, you can see that here. Spartan struggling to get its weapon spinning. Not driving as well. One minute left in this match. And we've got a pin. Pins only allowed for uh, 10 seconds here. But when your weapon's down, that, that's sometimes your only option. Functionality-wise, it looks like Spartan is having drive issues on its right side, and its weapon is down. Promheta is missing two wheels, but both left and right drive are still functioning. Oh! Was that a... I hear that weapon motor trying to spin up. Not making any progress, but it is trying. Oh, those are sad noises. Yes, very sad noises. A bit of a whine. 
You can also hear the drive system. These, these robots use cleated wheels that dig into the plywood floors. Uh, and they make a very distinctive kind of chainsaw noise after a while. What an explosive mash. Awesome. Hobbling at the end, but what an entertaining fight. It's all love between both these teams as well. They know they put on a great match. Those are some amazing hits. Corner to corner hits. All right, we can see these replays here. Uh, just absolutely incredible hits in this match. Sparks flying, it was a double wall hit. I think that was the hit where the drive on Spartan started to go out. That was the one that de-wedged him. Mm -hmm. oh. Feels good to dish out a big hit. Don't it though. Spartan, you know, uh, captained by Johnny Supas. He's, he's got a pretty impressive record here. It's 21 and 15. Wow. Uh, on that particular robot. Okay. And first off, that is a long history. That's a lot, that, of, that's fights. A lot of fights. People sometimes go their entire career without having that many fights. Yeah. Uh, all in one robot, I, a, fo a force to be reckoned with, to say Absolutely. the least. Absolutely. We're going to go to Chris up in the pits. Uh, how you doing, Chris? Ricky, Sam, I am once again here with Rato and Chabata. Chabata. It's a warrior. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, first and foremost, congratulations, ranking third today, but more importantly, qualifying, qualifying. for the World Championships later this year. What are some of the moves that you're going to make between now and then? Uh, now we make some movements to so, because th this project building in 20 days, and the, I, I learning so much, uh, and the make some chance in my project, if bring more strong in November to Shibata Nellis. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I, I also want to share to help you get ready for the World Championships. You're going to be getting a Send Cut Save. That's the Send Cut Send Award that we give to our top rank bots here for the day. I hope that goes a long way in getting Chibata ready for the World Championships. Can't wait to see you there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to what see because it's everything new to me. I, I learned a pilot today in my first battle. Uh, <laughs> it's everything in new. Uh, in November, I will bring more people to help me. Uh, I will bring my father, my father building with me these bots. And it's, it's a dream of my father come to United States. I will realize that with, because, because the Norwalk was that it so to my family, to my friends, uh, to my partners, I want to uh, uh, glad you everybody, uh, to my subscribers, make some loud and shot. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Well, it's it's been it's been so fun. We actually we love the energy and the enthusiasm yeah. that your fans bring. It's been a blast watching you in Chibata today. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the World Championship. Okay, back see to you guys. Thanks, Chris. That was, uh, that's awesome. That yeah. entire story arc, I feel like I watched a small drama film in, in our aside in the pit interview. Yeah, it's, it's making me so excited for November. I, I want to know what a uh, person in sunglasses and a rat mask brings as his crew, in addition to his father. Also, is it like, is it going to be a cat mask? Is it going to be like an older, is yeah, it going to be like, like a splinter? Like splinter. That's kind of, I'm expecting the full robe. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Like a bow staff. Uh, genetics, they've got to look somewhat similar. I, I would think. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to assume it's an adoptive father if he's not okay. wearing a mask. But We have a lot more fighting for you here. We are working our way through the brackets. Um, we're probably about the halfway point now. Sounds good. Um, getting, and, and this is for the brackets, not overall fights. Sure. Um, every fight just keeps getting better. It seriously does. Uh, Speaking of fights that are getting better and better, two, uh, two Eight, absolutely incredible seven, robots six, here. We have five, Carmen four, and we've three, got Maximizer. Two, 
One, this is a semi-final match. Fight. Uh, both of these are incredibly mean, powerful robots. They're wow. at it already. Carmen, the vertical spinner here. Uh, maximizer, that long, thwacking horizontal. Maximizer, uh, piloted by Jake Hoffman. They are uh, from Louisville, Kentucky. Have built really incredible robots uh, of this of this style, this archetype, this, this new, yeah, this flavor. I like that. Uh, this flavor growing in popularity. Originally, I think people thought it was maybe like a, a vanilla Coke kind of thing. It was a new take on a on a horizontal spin. Wow. What are we seeing, Ricky? Is this? What? Oh. We are seeing Carmen dead in the water. Just a touch Knock of out. movement from Maximizer. Oh, wow. Right. Listen, we know Maximizer is an impressive robot, but but Carmen is a force. Yeah. Like, Carmen is a favorite to go all the way every event it shows Absolutely. up. That is a huge, huge win for Maximizer and Jake Hoffman. He knows it. Yeah, they are uh, super pleased with this. About to crack into that cage. Get a waft of the fight. Turn off the robots and head back up to the pits. I'm sure they both, well, I'm sure Maximizer has some repairs to do. Yeah, Maximizer did take a couple of good hits there from Carmen and those are never easy to fix. But it seemed as though the whole robot was still functioning, maybe at a, a reduced capacity, but still functioning. So I, I have full faith the team's going to be able to repair in time for the next match. We're getting back into the three pound action now. Naga going up against Canterbury. Canterbury sitting in the blue square, Eight, of course, and seven, Naga in the pink. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And away fight. we go. Robots Up to speed, lickety split. Canterbury, very large, yeah. very out there horizontal spinner. Naga, on the other hand, very compact. That is so much robot in such a small package and then such a different approach to have the wide spread out. A little bit of a, bit of a glitch there. Weapon back up to speed on Canterbury. Now, Sam, you notice the kind of blue hockey puck above and uh, below the weapon? Yeah, what's going on with that? So that is uh, more or less their contact point with the floor. It needs to be wide like that so that there's a lot of surface area. It won't get caught up, uh, and it can kind of glide. But uh, unlike a lot of these robots, that whole thing drags on the ground. As opposed uh, to just, like, the shaft itself dragging? Right, right. And that's why they can manage to have that so much reach, have that weapon so far out in front of them. I guess that stabilizes the front end a bit, too. Very much such so. such a wide contact point. However, uh, not really coming that into play right now. Looks like Naga's still spinning, though. Still spinning, struggling to control the match, but trying its best. Definitely showing some aggression. I would say Naga would be a very tough robot to pilot for your first tournament. Uh, that two-wheel drive is, is difficult to, uh, to steer. And when you throw a, a big, powerful spinner in there as well, it just... Uh, it can be a struggle even for yeah. the most talented of drivers. Absolutely. But Christine's handling it well. So for Canterbury, they're just hoping to swing that weapon into Naga's drum. Yeah, that is essentially uh, their only path forward here is to try and knock out their opponent's weapon, going weapon to weapon. Uh, you see the white chassis of Canterbury. That's soft plastic. It'll take a beating, but 
realistically, the only good hard piece of metal they have that could jam up their opponent is their weapon. Even if it doesn't work anymore, it's still a, you know, uh, a defensive and offensive tool that they have in their arsenal. And, and really the only tool that they have left, yeah. aside from just pure full send. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they have the drive power to, to get grab any pins. Um, but now, having driven robots like this, oh, we're coming down on the last 10 seconds, last two seconds. All right, that's gonna do it for cage two. That one's going to the judges. You can see uh, Lucy Wang in there with uh, driver Christine Givers. Uh, freshman outing, if I'm right. This is, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, a robot that they purchased off another team, or she purchased off another team. Um, came, was so in love with these events that uh, just had to start driving, and, and here we are. And now I've been, I've been watching her podcast uh, for many months now, and it's, it's thoroughly enjoyable. She's got some good guests on. Um, she's got Ashley, who's, who's up in pit control on pretty frequently. They go over some episodes of BattleBots. It, it's a good watch. Mm -hmm. So excited to see her here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I am as well. I would really enjoy. Uh, it's the Outside the Box podcast, if you're interested in watching. Uh, we have a little bit of an update on that previous match. Yeah. Uh, a split decision went both ways, you know, went mm -hmm. both ways. Spartan, the winner. That's a, a good call, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, it was a tough match. Uh, those are both really heavy hitters, but I think Spartan, you know, they seem to be uh, on the delivering end of the majority of those hits. Right. That's, that's and that, I think that's probably what it came down to. Uh, we are going to jump in for a, a little bit of fun here in Cage Seven uh, as the day goes on, and people still have robots that work. You don't want to go home yeah. with a robot that works. You want to throw it in for an absolute blast of a rumble here at the NHRL Cage Seven. A lot of these robots look, kind of look like uh, recolors of each other, and that's that's no accident. Uh, this is the team from Schenectady that's uh, competing under Drew Davis, the, the teacher out of Schenectady. Right. Schenectady. Every robot in this arena right now is one of our competitors' students, high school students. It's really awesome. He, he's he's brought so many people into the sport from it, from his sons to his students now. Yeah, I mean they don't pass the class if they don't show up. So there you it's, go. Uh, it's the opposite of no child left behind. Yeah. <laughs> They're about uh, to get ranked here. Right. If, until you're ranked, you uh, aren't allowed to read Shakespeare. I think that's the way. Yeah, and an English teacher, no less. You know, not biology or um, something science-y related, or even math. Yeah. Um, you know, they're Man over there. Many talents. Yeah. yeah. It's well, and that's something I do love about not just Norwalk, but the entire builder groups. Uh, you have an absolutely tremendously diverse group of talents that come together to make this happen and to make it what it is. Yeah. You don't have to be in STEM to do fighting robots. You could be a clown. Absolutely not. Uh, we have a little bit of word coming through in our past match, that three pound match, uh, Naga Pulled it out, pulled out the win, yeah. unanimous decision. I get that. Uh, I think, you know, we generally saw that coming, but good to make it official. All right. We're going to look at cage three here now for Polywog versus Blackbird. Polywog so, in the, the pink corner, Blackbird so in the blue. Amazing. Every time you turn around, that Lucy Dew is standing cage side, uh, just trying to make robot combat a little more um, robot combat -y. Eight, seven, six. Tony's five, assuming the position four, here on Blackbird team. Three, two, one. Five. Robot uh, the first five. exchange, Polywog wins. Sparks flying from these robots. Blackbird's high centered on its own mini bot there. Just jabbing it out here. Yeah, uh, Blackbird much more stable, but at the same time, Polywog wins almost every weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchange. And it looks like they're trading back and forth on who's getting the better of these exchanges. Well, it's, it depends on where it's hitting as well. Uh, Blackbird, if it can hit anywhere but dead center, it has a much better shot. 
Hollywog, if it lines up and just hits nose to nose, you know, uh, face to face, it ends up on top. So absolutely a test of driver's skill and talent. It's fine for the, the, the most beneficial angle for them. Absolutely. The fact that the drum on Polywalk is a little lower gives them an advantage here as well. The lower your weapon is to the ground, the more you are getting under your opponent uh, rather yeah. than hitting them, you know, uh, head to head. And that, that's what they're looking for, a big destabilizing hit where they can right. start to tumble their opponent towards the wall. Now, for whatever reason, Sam, you notice that the uh, combos, the chains of hits, are relatively low in this match. Yeah, bing, 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 three hits, and then a and, reset. Yeah, exactly, and it's it's a really, it's because both of these robots are so eager to stay stable by design, and because of a lot of, I, I can't drive like this. If, if I was in this fight, I would be driving full blast into my opponent over and over again. This, this takes incredible amounts of reserve and self-control. And this is how you win fights. This is how you win fights and also don't end up in the pits frantically rebuilding everything. We have just under a minute left in this three-pound semifinal fight. Bit of a tonal shift in the ring there. Like both these robots are capable of roofing one another. Absolutely. Nice gyro self right there from Polywog. We're coming down to it, the last seconds of the match here. This is, uh, I want to correct myself. Uh, I said semifinal. This is round three of the, uh, the Norwalk three pound bracket. Let me hear it, uh, NHRL. We, uh, we have quite a ways to go with the three-pound robots. We are, however, getting incredibly close uh, in all of our other brackets, the 12 yeah. and 30-pound brackets. I believe the 30 pounds, we are almost ready for the finals. That's exciting. We're, we're knocking on the finals door. Here in the three-pound world, though, we're gonna go to a replay. Uh, you're right, Sam. I mean, lots of reasons, but they are just trading blows back and forth. Uh, That's a great fight. Neck and neck. I, I wouldn't want to be a judge on this one. I would, however, want to be a spectator. Absolutely, and lucky for you. Lucky, lucky for me. Not only do I get to be a spectator, but I get to talk the whole time. Yeah, and you got one of the best seats in the house. I, truly, truly, it's, it's amazing how different it is uh, sitting up close and personal, especially with the 30 pound and the 12 pound fights. Yeah. The three pound fights though, even, even then, you still feel it in your chest um, when a good hit happens. Yeah, nice roof it's shot. Very visceral, mm. and mm. it's it's wonderful. Uh, have you ever dished I, out a hit like that, Ricky? Say again. Have you ever dished out a hit you could feel in your chest? I, I have. Yeah, some of my earlier robots um, have really hit hard, and uh, having you know the opponent hit the plexiglass in your face Ooh, is just me. it's it's horrible and it's satisfying and it's perfect. So. We are getting ready in cage two right now uh, for Droopy. Ooh. Yeah, everybody loves Droopy. For C and Sea Dragon's Roar. Sea Dragon's oh, Roar is, is a uh, good one. A, yeah, a serious robot, very impressive, big hitter. Uh, but Droopy is Droopy. Droopy is Droopy. Uh, yeah. I, I was watching Sea Dragon's Roar at the very beginning of the day, mm -hmm. and he was smacking robots to the ceiling. So that I, robot is dialed in. Yeah. Uh, it's. Absolute veteran, but look what it's up against. He's up against Droopy, a six-pound terror. Uh, again, because it does not use wheels, it can be twice as heavy as all of its, most of its competitors. Uh, those giant blades are bigger than the weapons on most robots, uh, and there's two of them. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely terrifying. And he's coming off a win against Twin Beast as well. Yeah, and Twin Beast, no slouch. Not at that all. That is one of the most reliably potent robots we have. And it didn't seem like Droopy took a lot of damage in that fight either, so let's let's see if he takes it to this one. Yeah, it's really incredible. We do want to go back a second, folks. Uh, our last fight, Polywog, 
took home the split decision win. All right. So again, it was very close. Uh, Blackbird clearly put up a good fight. Absolutely. Uh, Tony D'Ambrosia, absolute. Um, the driving skill was impeccable. Not enough to the take focus. out. The, the fo focus. The I, focus. I don't have focus at all. Huh? Yeah, exactly. I, w I have no idea what I'm talking about until I've already talked about it, and then I forget. Yeah. But some of the competitors are the complete polar opposite. They are so locked on. Uh, I, the focus in their eyes, like, I, I feel like if I walked between them and the robot, a laser beam would bore like bifurcate me, yeah. top and bottom. Especially if they're stanced out, yeah. ready yeah, to exactly. go. It's a, a kind of Superman or supervillain situation. Oh, interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to the, uh, the droopster in the arena. A sminibot? A sminibot. Uh, Joe Faviani has, has joined the chat, folks. Um, this is a wide boy of a minibot. And uh, for those at home who, who may not know, yeah. you give a weight advantage Eight, if you have multiple seven, robots in the arena. Six, um, five, so you can get a little extra four, weight to play with. Three, and that will be on display two, in this fight. One. Fight, robot So with fight. that alternate mobility system and the minibot, Droopy's going to be bringing all the heat here. Yeah, seven and a half pounds, something like that. Um, Droopy shuffling its way over. Not a lot of movement from Sea Dragon's Roar. I think they were waiting for their moment there. Whoa! A little bit of acrobatics. buttocks. I want to know if the crowd thinks Droopy should have pants. I don't. And I want to know, like, would it wear it? You know, the same question is about a, a dog wearing pants. Does it wear it on the back two legs or the bottom half of all four legs? Where does the belt go? I have questions, Sam. Wow, big chunks being taken off of Sea Dragon's War. Roar. Uh, Droopy's still going full pace. The Minibot, not so much. It's um, wall art right now. Well, oh. I spoke too soon. There it's, we are. Uh, Read off the wall. A little friendly fire never hurt anybody. I love that Droopy is manually controlling the speed on each of those motors. Uh, so he's walking by hand. His his fingers are moving like the robot is moving. Yeah, it's it's analogous to you like walking across your desk with your fingers. It's, it's almost like puppeteering. Yeah, it's true. Like I think Jim Henson Company should show up here and watch the Tommy uh, Wong experience and see what this is like. Really solid hits on Sea Dragon's Roar, but Sea Dragon's Roar is staying together. For the most part, it's looking like some mobility issues on one side. But it's tanking these hits. Absolutely. It has been, uh, whew, my goodness, three years nearly uh, since Tommy Wong last showed up with Droopy. He wanted to come back, make a splash, do a good job, and and boy, is he delivering. Yeah, I was curious if, if the field would have surpassed him in his absence, but he's holding his own. Listen, Tommy is not going home and just sitting on his laurels. He's making this robot better. He's laying in wait. It's a long way out for him. He's here from California. That's a good point. Um, he's not going to show up if he can't bring something that really belongs here uh, in the championship bracket. Bert causing chaos. Bert completely unafraid to uh, take a hit from Droopy there. Unfortunately, Sea Dragon's War stuck in a corner. Will the count out happen before the final time runs out? I don't think so. That's the we match. We are going to a judge's decision. Well, when you're stuck in the corner at the end of a fight, it, and it goes to the JD. It's not a good look. No. Um, but the judges do consider the entirety of the match. That's true. You can end on a terrible note, and if you did well the rest of the match, you'll still win. Exactly. Um, it really just depends on the severity of your terrible position and uh, how else the rest of the match went. So we'll find out momentarily. We're going to go to the replay here, see some of these <laughs> big initial hits. That first hit we just saw before the um, gymnastics, if you will, uh, really set the tone for the rest of the match. Droopy had big hit after big hit. 
not a lot of crippling uh, blows, no. but major damage over and over again. Enough with each hit to accumulate to something substantial. You can see the smiles there on uh, both Tommy and... <laughs> I just <laughs> noticed his shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to go to cage three here. We've got Kickstart going up against Dumb Drum in the blue corner. Uh, Kickstart, uh, a wonderful Eight, vertical seven, spinner. Six, uh, going up five, against Dumb Drum. Four, it's one of three, our young pilots two, here. One, fight, robots fight. Dumb Drum uh, piloted by Dylan Davino. A little one. Yeah, Dylan is uh, 11 years old. He's just getting started here. Uh, let's see, he's been coming since January and um, is absolutely hooked. He seems I to be doing a good job of making sure the spinny side of his robot is facing his opponent. Yeah, he uh, has clearly taken his time with this drive system, being measured and conservative, but he's doing an excellent job. Kickstart so far generally uh, able to control the pacing of this match much better. Oh, I see uh, a belt has oh, come no. off yeah. on Dumb Drum. They are no longer functioning the way they once were, but they are still going. Is that a redundant belt they have for their weapon then? Yes, I believe so, Sam. They have a pair of them, but that second belt will only last so long. So far, it's hanging in there. Kickstart kicking Dumb Drum up, though, with those exchanges. Neither robot has doled out critical damage so far, but uh, but both have certainly taken the, their fair share of exchanges. I'm excited. Both these weapons still going. Oh, interesting kickstart starting to uh, falter there just a bit on the drive side. We'll see if that was a fluke or if it's telling of problems to come. We've hit the halfway mark now. Kickstart very low with the exception of the central rails. All right, is that it? And we have a tap out. Tap out. Kickstart's going to take it by tap out. Dumb Drum put up a great fight in that one. Kept it together as long as he could with that weapon. Well driven bot by an 11 year old. Yeah, I think uh, from what I understand, Dylan is absolutely hooked. And considering this is. Uh, really his first uh, set of, first year competing, we'll put it that way. Um, I'm starting to wonder, do we need, you know, a like Surgeon General's warning at the bottom of every robot, like caution? We definitely uh, do. <laughs> caution, beetle weights are addictive yes. and maybe habit forming. Absolutely. I think that's where we are right now. So if he was here in January, that means he was at our new bots event? Right. Which is, it's awesome to see him back in the more open tournament seeing, like, testing his metal and seeing how his robot does against a full field? I, I think we need to keep in mind, we have, so for those of you at home who don't know, we have a wonder, oh, look, first off, look at this crowd. Look awesome. at these smiles. Hello. Uh, anyway, uh, a little bit of goofiness, perfect. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who don't know, we have a uh, new event, new robot event every year uh, that Sam was just touching on. Uh, people show up with new designs, lots of new builders who have never touched uh, a combat robot before, uh, cutting their teeth, uh, and usually cutting their robots apart. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that is where we tend to see some of the most creative, interesting designs. But it's also where we see a lot of um, uh, teething issues. Okay, yeah, so, definitely. So not every robot that comes in first place in the new robot event is going to immediately jump into a successful career here in the main tournament structure. Uh, it is wonderful to see people getting this far in the brackets with a robot that they just started with months ago. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that is, says a lot about either the talent, the passion, or the intelligence 
um, that they are bringing to the table. I think it says a lot about the community as well. Um, That's true. There's a wealth of resources w within all the builders of, around here and on our Discord, on the internet, and and uh, everyone's just really willing to answer questions and help each other out. And and I think that that rising tide is elevating all bots. I that's the hope anyway, although it is, I will say this, it is fun to see the robots that just come completely out of left field. True, the and outsider artist. Every now and then, you get like a 96-year-old a man out of Kansas who is like, I saw a robot on the TV and he shows up with something bizarre and, or, or, or she shows up with a, a flamethrower in a, a cowboy hat or whatever it is Eight, and wows us. Seven, and I love those moments six, too. So yeah, five, there's really no four, bad situation. Three, We're going to jump back in here two, to one, another fight. Five, Cage 2 has fully five. defined going up against Red Panda. Fully defined is this very wide uh, control robot with a nasty vertical spinner. Red Panda, the little bit narrower nasty robot with the nasty vertical spinner. Fully defined seems to go deep just about every tournament they're in. Yeah, no, they um, they are here to go deep 100% of the time. That I've never seen a bad showing from Fully Defined. Sometimes they uh, don't luck out, and that that happens to anybody. Luck but I've never crucial. seen them show up and just whip it. You can see pieces getting torn off of Red Panda. Are Red Pandas endangered? They're going to be slightly more endangered in a moment. I, I get the, the distinct feeling. How can they be endangered? They always look like they're asking for hugs. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of trust for a big fuzzy animal. <laughs> they're very, you know, they're not actually pandas, Sam. Are they more like raccoons? I, I think they are. I think they're closer, uh, more closely related to raccoons. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, some of my biology facts I shell out mid NHRL event uh, are, are sus. But uh, I trust you 100% on your animal Good. Facts. I trust myself more than 100%, which is always a problem. And it looks like we're lacking some movement on Red Panda. Yeah, speaking of trusting myself, we have a, a countdown here. The winner, as we suspected, will momentarily be fully defined. Knock out. All right. Fully defined is a, uh, I enjoy the name a lot. That's a CAD reference. Oh, okay. So as you put together things in CAD, you define dimensions and sizes and shapes and things. And once everything that can have a size in your computer-generated model has a size, a nice little message will appear that says fully defined. Oh, I've never seen that message. I guess my no, cats are I, sloppy as all get up. It happens. I understand. We'll get a wonderful replay here. Fully defined axe absolutely doing what it, it wants to do. Those black forks controlling the match until the vertical spinner can do the damage. Uh, really just a perfect showing of, of what it's meant to do and how it does it. Look at this in cage three, though, Ricky. We've got Chainsaw Kitty and Voxel. Voxel is uh, absolutely heat. Well, Chainsaw Kitty and Voxel are both serious competitors. Wow, root shot, shot from Chainsaw Kitty on Voxel. Another, another roof shot. Chunks of the ceiling falling down. Remember, folks, these, uh, oh, and Ooh. another. This is one of the fastest combos of roof shots I've ever seen. The entire top of Voxel is now pried up. Wow. That is opened Amazing. like a tin can. Bad Kitty wants some tuna. Some solid And didn't hits. have time to Jab wait out. for a can opener. Ooh, can't wait for the replay on that one. Voxel is a serious robot. To send them to the ceiling three times and to rip that top plate off, that's something special. I, I do want to correct myself. Chainsaw Kitty, I said Bad Kitty. Bad Kitty is a team rather than the robot itself, which is Chainsaw Kitty. Yeah. We are, however, going to go to Chris in the pits. Yeah, let's check with we'll Chris. get away from my little uh, vocal flubs and see what Chris has to say. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys, I'm here with Michael. Michael's holding Carmen. Carmen is a bot that has qualified for the world championships. And behind me is most of Voxel, all 
also qualified for the World Championships. Michael, you got two bots here. Uh, you've technically, um, you've, you've bowed out with, with Voxel. It's up to you. Which one's in third? Which one's in fourth? So, uh, Voxel was a mostly new robot. Uh, last event was its first event, um, and it's been in the works for several months. Uh, and it only got one fight last event, so this is mostly a brand new robot. Um, and it worked far better than I'd, I would hope of. Um, I was testing a lot of new things with the bearings and such. Um, they all worked perfectly. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to pick Voxel as the third place finisher, and Carmen officially as fourth. How do you begin prioritizing fixing both bots up for the World Championships this fall? Well, I honestly don't know. This is my first time uh, running two robots in the same weight class. Um, mostly, I was just trying to use up some spare parts and uh, figure out uh, you know, what my breaking point was running two robots. Um, and it went really well. Uh, I think I just got to prep for events better, um, which I'm slowly improving on. Um, so from there, um, I have some changes in mind for obviously Voxel um, and Carmen. Uh, not sure yet. Definitely some things to be addressed. Uh, they'll both be back sometime this summer, probably with some some slight tweaks, more or less. But uh, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm very excited. Well, uh, this will help you hopefully get to where you need to be in the fall, Michael. You get a send cut save for having a fourth place ranked bot, and you get a send cut save for having a third ranked bot. You know what? Let everybody. No, I can't do that. No, no just you. You get two of them. Okay. Congrats, uh, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, it's been a blast watching both bots go at it today. Can't wait to see you in the World Championships. You got anything to say for your fans out there? Um, I don't know how many fans I have, but uh, thank you, and thanks mom, I guess. Back to you guys. You can't beat the thanks mom. No, you can and guarantee you have at least one fan in mom. Let's see, we're gonna go over to cage two. We get another three pound fight. Synthesis going up against Cemetery Drive. Uh, Synthesis really uh, another one of these nasty Eight, uh, vertical seven, spinners. Six, the Cemetery five, Drive is four, interesting because three, seeing two, a proliferation one, of fight, robots, robots fight. that have sand shovels as weapons is something I never thought I would see yes, that in my life. Lineage. Crash Fest, a uh, very successful robot uh, over the last uh, oh, couple of years. Uh, armed only with a sand shovel. Seeing Cemetery Drive, I guess because it's digging up the graves of the cemetery. I don't know the lineage of, of the naming process, but uh, absolutely a delight. Cemetery Drive, uh, captained by Lucian Clark. Uh, correct. It's, it's, it's only a one-on-one -on -one robot. Uh, not a lot of stick time. Uh, I think it's a relatively new builder. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, oh, so this was actually built by Robert Run. Right, right, which is, which is why we see the similarity to Crash Fest. Yeah, in the description for this bot, they actually list it as Crash Fest with a cooler color scheme. I mean, I do think it's a cooler color. Scheme. The purple's great. It's very goth. It, you know? It's goth, it's spooky, it's iridescent. Yeah, uh, I dig it. I dig it. And he's doing a great job today. I mean, driving really well. But uh, going up against Synthesis is a tough road to hoe with anybody. A, a tough road to sand shovel? Uh, yeah, tough road to sand shovel. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This is a tough one, especially if you just have that sand shovel or doesn't even have the sand shovel anymore. No, it's, it is completely gone. It is completely gone. Oh. oh no, the last chance was the sand shovel. I mean, this particular configuration of opponents is exactly what you don't want to sand shovel yourself into. <laughs> uh, he's just digging himself deeper here. We're coming down on one minute left in this, in this fight. Massive hits. Here's the shovel. Look at it. It's still oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's there. Gonna it's, give those hats to the kids in the audience. This is graphic right here. Yeah, this should, this should have a content warning. That said, what we always see from Crash Fest is the near impossibility of completely disabling it. 
And so far, Cemetery Drive is performing in exactly the same way. This robot's taking a beating, but it has not slowed down one iota. No, not a lick. Those forks are definitely askew at this point, though. Yeah, they not are something you're used to seeing on not this at designer all straight. robot. All right, the winner of this match will have to go on to face the winner of Half-Life and Aluko, which is happening right now over in cage three. You can see smiles all around there. there I don't think so anyone was unhappy coming out of that no match. Way. I mean, he went so deep into this tournament as well. This is a fantastic showing. That said, woo, wow, what a time to cut. Roof all shot right. after roof shot. Aluko in white, uh, absolutely battering Half-Life around the arena. Aluko, of course, one of the Brazilian bots, you can tell because it's small, it's powerful, it's fast, and it's got a drum spinner that's just spinning like it ain't no thing. And it has a really interesting name that you're never quite sure if you're saying it right. I think I, two O's, so I'm guessing it's the long sound, Aluko. I think we're right, I, you just never know. Yeah, you never know. Half-Life, by the way, uh, Lifter Bot, been performing phenomenally all day today and been holding their own in this matchup, but uh, it's starting to wear on them now at this point. Half-Life. Uh, uh, we come to the end of this match. Both of these bots still functioning. Yeah, this Matt will Lantry be a very decision. pleased with his performance. Look at him go. Celebrations all the way around. Thoroughly, thoroughly excited. You can see there's a lot of discussion on what worked, what didn't in this match. I'll tell you what did work is the ability to roof shot your opponent using a impressive, impressive drum spinner. Uh, Half-Life did not slow down to their absolute credit, but it is hard to see how you can argue anything other uh, than a Luko in this match. Yeah, roof shot after roof shot. By the way, we do have a unanimous judge's decision in the last match for Synthesis. Oh, good to know. Good, who yes. will be moving on in the tournament. And it looks like they will be facing off against a Luko in the next round. That's going to be an amazing fight. I'm eager to see. I think we are going to have absolutely amazing fights almost the entirety of the rest of the uh, the day. We're looking at Droopy versus Spartan. The winner of that match will go on to face Chainsaw Kitty. Any any combination, right? You know, do your, your, your three times two times one. Any combination of those robots fighting each other is going to be a pair or a trio of good matches. Absolutely. Super happy for Chainsaw Kitty. I got to watch their match just before I came out here. Deepest in the tournament they have ever gone. Yeah, it's the the stories that are, are just building right now are incredible. I do want to go back in that match to no surprise, unanimous decision for Aluko. Uh, Half-Life put out a great fight. I really seriously was very impressed with yeah. that robot. Um, Absolutely. For a non-spinner bot to go this deep into the tournament and to go out that way at a three-minute fight right. with such a destructive opponent. Absolutely impressive. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be back. I'm sure they will do well. Uh, but it will be a Luko continuing on in the bracket. Yeah, and congratulations to Matt Lantry for a great event today. Oh, yeah, guys. Here we go. Final in the 12 pounds. We are looking at Maximizer versus Krunk. Maximizer, not a vertical spinner, right? Check this out, it's a very Thagomizer-esque design. No, it is It is a horizontal spinner uh, that can whip around at the last minute. So it is armored on one end, it is weaponized on the other. Neither side is something that you wanna try and actually attack. Um, they are are trying to bait and switch their, their opponents uh, over and over again. Jack Hoffman, absolutely incredible. Ranked 21 with a almost perfect record. Now over on the other side, you have Zack Knight, ranked fourth overall with Krunk.
It is a very powerful design. He hits hard. Uh, he's worked very hard on this. Normally his brother d uh, drives this bot, but today since his brother isn't able to make it, he's pinch hitting and driving the bot, but he's the designer and original builder of it. Cool it machine, favored to win. Let's see how this goes. We'll find out. I, uh, I really think it's gonna be interesting which strategy Krunk brings to the table today. Uh, are they going to, you know, go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, nose to nose with Maximizer? Let Maximizer do its thing, the, the, the Maximizer thing that it's designed to do and hope they win? Yep. Or are they going to try and outdrive their opponent? Are they going to try and do something tricky? You, you will have to. Jake was telling me this morning that every improvement that he has made on Maximizer for this event is to guard against vertical spinning attacks. Impressive. I mean, well... Smart. Clearly, is, is that's right what's word. gotten him this far. I mean, the, the bot's new arm system, specifically designed to handle the vertical spinners. The guard on the weapon motor, completely against vertical spinners. We'll see how it goes. But right now, we're going to check in with our friend, Lindsay. Lindsay. Lindsay, how's it going up there? Hello. Oh, man, what a crazy day it's been. Um, but I want to give you just a little update on what's been going on in the a, chat. A taste of the internet. A taste of the internet. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's still... Oh, oh. Thanks, Ashley. Is you know, <laughs> Ashley's bearing giant gifts. Uh, you know what's funny? I, I, not joking, I have that hat at home. <laughs> That oh. does not surprise uh, me. But actually. I, I want to say, oh, look, Chris is just lurking. <laughs> look at him. It's the uh, unhappiest I think he's jealous. Lurk. Oh, I would be too. You know, we were talking earlier, Lindsay, about having a uh, cowboy hat with a flamethrower if you need robot ideas. Uh, oh, there is. It a looks flame like there would be space for one because, you know, my head's only so big. Yeah, that's like a 30 gallon hat. Yeah. That means a 31-gallon head, I at know. least. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Lindsay, tell us about the internet. Does it taste salty? What's going Ooh, on? You know, it is not salty. Hmm. Um, hey, hey. Feet. Ashley gave me that. Yeah, it's true. And uh -oh. besides, we all know What's Chris looks now? better in bread. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, that's not even bread. <laughs> yeah, you're only supposed to wear uh, bread on your head. <laughs> that's going to be very unusual to the people who did not watch that particular episode <laughs> of, of NHRL. <laughs> you know what? Go back. Roll the tape. It's there. Okay. For okay, better or for right. worse. Enough with the hats. I have serious business. Sure. Yes. Sure you do. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've had so many Brazilian fans in the chat all day long chomping at the bit to see their beloved Rato. Um, and, you know, even though Rato has sadly been eliminated, they are still there cheering on AGBS. They're, you know, watching the rest of the bots fight, and they're so into it. So I just want to say to all of our new Brazilian fans, welcome. We love you. We love your excitement. Just thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. It brings such energy and just... I don't know, passion maybe is the right word. Yeah, and uh, to I, the whole ordeal. How cool is that? This is Rato's first fight, or first event ever where he was competing. Mm hmm. Makes it all the way. Yeah, they built a very reasonable robot in 20 days, I think he said. Yeah, uh, 20 days. Drove beautifully, did a great job. And okay, going out to Lucy Du and Kablooey Tango, well, come the, on. There's never any shame in that. No shame in that. Top notch competitor. Congratulations to them. I can't wait to see Rado come back for the December or the November finals. Yeah. I think that's going to be amazing. It's, it will be fantastic. All right, so Lindsay, what else is going on in internet world? Oh, boy. Uh, a, a lot of Brazil. Let me see what else I can come up with. Uh, people are just so excited by, I mean, what Ricky said a little bit earlier, like all of the bots left in this competition, all of them are incredible. And I think, you know, people are really excited to see all the combinations. Um, I just, like, I'm so excited for Johnny, uh, um, Johnny Sumpas and Spartan. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens there. Um, every, like, there's just so much buzz around all of the teams, and I don't think there's, like, a clear idea of 
of who's going to win. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. When you get to that level of excitement, there doesn't really have to be a clear yeah. thing to be excited about. There's enough going on. I'm glad the internet is as excited as we are. Folks at home, if you want to get engaged, check out the YouTube Please live do. stream uh, community. Check out our Discord. Uh, there's, there's a ton of conversation going there. In the meantime, it's time to get nerdy, Kyle. Let's get nerdy. Let's All get right. into the details. What is a hammer saw? A hammer saw is a weapon that is on an actuated arm. So you actually will take that spinner, usually a disc, lift it up into the air, spin it up to full speed, and then bring it down on top of your opponent. Often, you combine that with forks that allow you to pin the opponent against the wall before you do those hits. Right. The prime example is, of course, Megatron, Jameson Go. They are current champion in the 30 pound division with this particular design or sorry were champion last year this year they are runner-up wow look at that nice hit right on top of dragon princess but this is what they do they pin they slam it's yep. really beneficial because they get an opportunity to get the weapon up to full speed before they deliver it where they want it to go onto that top plate where most robots do not have the vast majority of their armor. Yeah, it also allows you to keep your uh, delicate spinning bits out of harm's way until you're ready for it, till that perfect moment. And since that hammer arm moves forward and backwards, if someone sneaks up behind you, just yoink, it's out of, it's out of the way. It's out of the way. And worst case scenario, you now have a vertical spinner if you drive backwards with it. Or worst case scenario, you have a hammer that you can hit someone with if the spinner stops spinning. Absolutely. So you have this lovely redundancy. We're going to go back to Chris, though. Chris, do you have anything redundant to tell us? <laughs> hey, guys, I'm here currently uh, lurching over Johnny Supas, Johnny Bahama, who is as cool as a cucumber, as cool as an island breeze right now. He's currently working on Spartan. Spartan is about to go head to head with Droopy. Uh, Johnny, Droopy is one of the weirdest bots uh, ever made. Do you have a strategy for fighting something that obscure? So his body is TPU. I lost my voice screaming at Zach from the previous match. Um, his body's TPU. I have, I sharpen my blade and I'm just gonna go straight in and hit him really hard. That's all. So you just came out of a judge's decision. What, what kind of damage did you have to Spartan? Was there a lot of repairs that were needed? This was insanity. He actually split me in half. Um, the bottom half, watch out for splinters. Um, yeah. That is that is wild. I came back and I, I came back and the robot literally fell apart. So it, we've really squeaked it out. We were able to just get it in time for Droopy. I think it's working. We'll see in the arena. Is there anything left to do on it right now? No, but I do want to thank Bunny because Bunny overnighted these Onyx pulleys for me, my weapon pulleys, and she's the reason I'm here right now. Um, and her printing service is amazing. The prints are fantastic. And I've only used one weapon pulley this entire tournament. So her onyx is doing better than my aluminum somehow. <laughs> that, is, that is so cool. I don't want to keep you held up anymore. I know getting ready for Droopy, a lot going on. Good luck. We'll go back to you guys. Thanks, Chris. We appreciate it. That Onyx material, absolutely incredible. I did not know that that was a perk of being on Team Malice, is that you get overnighted Onyx pulleys from, from Team Captain Bunny Sario. We want to go back a minute. You know, Johnny <laughs> mentioned losing his voice. Yes. Let's see how that happened. <laughs> do we have that footage? Oh, we do. Here. I like how it can be muted, and I'm 100% sure we'll be able to infer the volume. So looking focused. concentrated, looking concentrated. That look, it's priming, it's building. There it is! <laughs> little bursts, and now it's really gone. <laughs> There's that little pre-eruption and then boom. I think so both those excited. teammates are gonna go home without a voice today. Yeah. That's not a bad way to end your weekend, it's, it's like watching a snake unhinge their jaw to eat a mouse. <laughs> Only it's in reverse and with sound. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm so excited for Johnny. He's having a great event. Well, thankfully, Johnny is also very excited for Johnny. Speaking of excitement, I hear that there's a lot of excitement in the pits. There's this kind of build. Oh, wow. Oh, Did you walk wow. into a picket line? What's no, happening? these are all positive. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little more fun than like the WGA strike. <laughs> Q 
Can you hear them? Yeah. Dang. I love them. Can I say that? Am I, I being can. biased? I no. love them. I think they might be excited. Just a little bit. I don't know why. It's not like they qualified for the finals or anything. <laughs> I think I saw I Heart Maximizer Waifu as uh, a sign. Well, I Is that what why. it says on the <laughs> You're line. right. Yes. Listen, Jay Kaufman, well-deserved praise from his teammates and fellow university students. I love it. Yeah. Hey, when you have your own following um, at Norwalk Havoc, you know you've made it. Yeah. <laughs> At NHRL right National <laughs> Havoc Robotic League. Here we are. Uh, this is what you get for small improvements on a, on a design that's working, right? Right. Small improvements. Didn't change things dramatically. Didn't, didn't completely redesign the bot. Just little changes. Fix the things that didn't work. Yep. Leave the things that did. Find new weak links. And do it on a robot that people love to love. Yes. And I think that's the real key, right? We don't sit around saying, like, hmm. This little tweak on, I don't know, we love Lynx, but, but Lynx is a very bog standard kind of, of, of archetype. Yep. Uh, you see it on Maximizer and you're like, yes, yes. Oh yeah, so here we are. It's like a fleet. This, yeah, it is like a fleet. There you see Lucy Do with Kablooey Tango. Over there we see Waddles. Aw, look at Waddles. It looks so cute. It looks so innocent, but it could very well be walking out of here with a golden dumpster. This is your 30 pound final. Golden dumpster, what comes along with a golden dumpster, Kyle? I believe $1,000 as well as a top seed when you go into the December or the November championships. With that chance to win a cool $10,000. Right, as well as grant money for the STEM charity of your choice. Yeah, yeah, we're not exactly sure how that works this year, but we imagine there's going to be... Um, There'll be something. The, it, it, they'll... We'll sum sum. We'll sum sum. We'll figure out how that I, all works I have a feeling it's going to be a little more than a little sum sum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these two have done a phenomenal job today going undefeated. Lucy rounding the corner. This is really interesting, right? Because there's so often that we see BattleBots competitors trying out new things for their large-scale robots. That's right. Uh, and what do we see here? But the captain of Team Valkyrie showing up with a suspiciously Valkyrie-esque robot with an additional two wheels added on the back. Yeah, what's going on with that? It's a good question. It's a little strange. There's something to consider here, perhaps a sign of things to come. I don't think anybody would mind that sort of a change, but we'll see. Kablooey Tango, designed by Alex Kreese. Currently being driven and captained by Lucy Dew. It's a beautiful bot. It is. It is. I. Eight. No, seven, I got nothing to add. It's a beautiful bot. Six, That's, you summed it up. Five. And four, of course, three, going up two, against an absolutely. One. Fight. Uh, Robots fight. Terrifying an opponent, I guess, is the best way to put it. Oh, yeah. Waddles hits hard. I mean, that's a cute name. Wow. These but hits are insane. Undercutter for, oh my oh. God, what a hit. We've been talking all day about how Blue. Kablooey Tango just takes those hits on that front plow. And Kablooey Tango now upside down. However, Waddle's weapon not spinning whatsoever. No, I don't even know if I hear Kablooey Tango's weapon spinning. It, it is, is spinning, that? it is It is slower, but oh, it yeah, is definitely it is. You're moving. right, you're right. That said, the entire top of Waddle's is just gone. Wow, that was a lot of kinetic energy between these two bots. A tremendous amount. You can see the mini bot getting in on the action. Waddles really taking their, their only tact here is going to be pinning their opponent. So they're taking every opportunity to do that. Oh, I see a wheel has, uh, oh, and some smoke is now escaping. Just a little bit of smoke from Waddles. Now the weapon on Kablooey Tango is still spinning, but not in its ideal position. It is facing upwards. Right, however, Kablooey Tango looks to be either high centered or just not driving whatsoever right now. Hopefully it's high centered because they do still have one unstick from uh, from Fluffy. Yeah, I, oh, there it goes. Oh, or they could just use their own minibot to unstick, perfect. Oh, and the minibots just and, go oh, yeah, flying. Sacrificing the minibots. And I'm gonna be frank with you, I, I think this might be a worse spot for Kablooey Tango. Because now they have to go weapon to weapon. Ooh, oh! Tires and wheels coming off 
of Waddle worse That's or not. What they want, Kablooey Tango is going to try to chew their way through the side and back of Waddles. If Waddles can keep the weapon facing for them, that's some armor, that's some protection, but is it enough? Ouch. Chunks of wheel going missing, big hits. This entire building is shaking. Yeah, we can feel that in our chest over here at the broadcast desk. We've got a uh, lovely amount of space between us, but uh, even at, at, what, 30 feet away, that <laughs> still hits like a truck. Feel like a the impact. Okay, so we have a separation here from Fluffy. So that is the one unstick from Fluffy. Yeah, I don't see any movement right now from Waddles. It's yeah, trying. This very well may go to a uh, judge's decision with this, with just a, what, 23 seconds left in yeah, this Yeah, almost assuredly this is going to a judge's decision, but I think it's been pretty decisive, Kyle. Ever since that one big impact, what, 50 seconds into the match. Coming down on the final countdown. Here we go. We will Four, be headed to a three, judge's decision. Two, one big final one. hit. That's the end of this match. Waddle stuck up on one wheel, not moving, no weapon movement. This goes to a judge's decision, but it's pretty, pretty decisive. Kablooey Tango, Lucy Do. That's gotta feel good. That has gotta feel good. They have already qualified. This was not for qualification. This was for a golden dumpster and $1,000. All that's left is for the judges to weigh in. That hit is absurd. Look at that. Bam. Every one of the big hits in this fight could have been game ending, could have been the end of this fight. The fact that these two robots hung on the entire three minutes is an incredible testament to the engineering and the, the uh, follow through that goes in to building these and competing and keeping them up match to match. Just impressive captaining, driving by Lucy Dew, going undefeated the entire day. Here we go, your judge's decision, undesurprisingly, this is Kablooey Tango, your Golden Dumpster winner for the 30 pound division. Walking home with that thousand dollars and a ticket to the big leagues. Wow, beautiful job. Lucy was telling me she does not have a trophy shelf at her apartment. But she's gonna need to get she's one. She's gonna need to get one. Kyle, do you have a trophy shelf? Uh, no, no, I don't. Not, not for best announcer. I don't, I don't have a trophy for best we, announcer. Well, we should fix that. Yeah. What would it be? Would it be a golden dumpster? No, no. <laughs> I, I, I think it would be a golden headset. Oh, I like that. All right, we are now heading over into cage two. Oh, this is a fight I have been just dying to see, Eight, agonizing for. Seven. So this Six, is Johnny Sumpas five, and Spartan four, going up against Tommy three, Wong and. Two. Drupy fight. Robots fight. Droopy just. Oh! I have been absolutely desperate, and this, this just makes me happy. Now, something that Johnny said in that interview was that Droopy's made out of TPU, so I sharpened my blade. One thing that I'd like to point out: the entire chassis for Droopy is now actually titanium. Oh, speaking of sharpening blades. <laughs> That robot has completely embedded its weapon in its opponent. Oh, and nasty. again! It's like unzipping. Wow! This is bonkers. Droopy needs to be very careful not to burn that weapon motor. Oh, no! Oh, look at that. It is. I just saw Tommy Wong fist bump into the air after that. Get back to puppeting your robot. What are you doing, Tommy? Oh, my goodness. Look at the just ripped out shreds of bot. Droopy's been gone for over two and a half years, and they are back showing that they did not miss a beat. Not in the least. That is a <laughs> terrifying amount of force in those hits. Just peeling your opponent like it's a... Oh, no! Spartan an becoming onion. an entanglement device just because their bot is getting torn to shreds. You can see the weapon belt for Spartan laying 
limp on the floor. It's this is Droopy's match to just tear Spartan in half. As long as it can do so without destroying itself. Droopy's pretty good at not doing that and uh, operating upside down. Yeah, the driving skill and the, the interesting approaches that go into Droopy are just mind boggling. All right, oh, that Droopy's, shot is just indecent. Yeah, that is a lot of damage to Spartan. So Droopy's either standing back or are they are they dead? No, I think Droopy is. Uh, yeah, hey, they he they hear you. Ah, waiting for Spartan to get mobile again. Wow. Spartan now struggling with its left hand drive. Hey, Droopy, we need that box for more fights after this. Come on, buddy. We got nine more, Kyle. It's fine. <laughs> wow, this is ridiculous. I mean, we've seen Spartan take a lot of damage in the past, but this is absurd. Uh, yeah, I have. N I didn't know that part could come off like that. <laughs> This is incredible. I will say Droopy's control is just kind of dropping by the moment. Uh, but their aggression and their functionality is still just full blast. Yeah, the control is really there when they're on their right side. That, Look at that. Those are happy competitors. Johnny ran across all the way before that fight was even over to give him a hug. Yeah. That was incredible. Hey, I know that guy. That What's guy. What's he doing in the audience again? <laughs> hey. Hey. Best facial hair in combat robotics audiences. All right, so here we see Droopy it's getting entangled. a very specific award. <laughs> getting entangled in Spartan. And that, that takes such um, quick reflexes to recognize that, that entanglement has happened and not to destroy yourself in the moment. But the hits don't stop. And, and it, there was no even hesitance to go in again. Not a lick. Man, Tommy is so impressive. Just the amount of control it takes to drive the pure chaos that is Droopy. And the fact that Droopy can just flail around the box like that and still come out driving every time. We have a unanimous judge's decision for Droopy. I, I would riot if, if it wasn't that. Yeah, no, absolutely. We're not saying that Johnny didn't do a wonderful job. We're just saying that, holy cow, Droopy was scary. Speaking of scary, Droopy goes on to face Chainsaw Kitty in the next round. That'll be a good match. Chainsaw Kitty is horrifying, but it also is small, and I kind of expected to get batted around like a bit of catnip. Oh, man. Uh, Kezai was telling me that she was not looking forward to today, that she was having belt tensioning issues, that some of her setups are a little bit sure. sketchy. That's going to get well tested in that next match for her. Droopy is on fire. I cannot believe how... Much Tommy has improved this bot since last time we saw it two and a half years ago. Okay, so we are about to get into the final for the 12 pound bracket. You are looking at Maximizer and Crunk. Maximizer has made its way through a bunch of vertical spinners, right, to get itself to this position. All that work preparing for vertical spinners has clearly paid off. This is honestly the ultimate test. Yeah, Krunk hits so hard and is so well controlled. The Shore family knows what they're doing. And is clearly well dialed in today. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely. have... Uh, Krunk does sometimes uh, struggle when something is slightly amiss. We have seen no signs no of that No signs whatsoever. at all. Krunk is just damaging people. Zach Knight driving the bot today for Eight, his brother who normally seven, operates the bot. Six, five, now you can four, see that new three, armor package on top two, of Maximizer. One. Fight, robots fight. That there is we go. specifically Let's... to protect the weapon motor, or the weapon motor. Maximizer doing exactly what it wanted to do there. And then Krunk doing exactly what it wanted to do. 
Both these robots know how to drive in a way that benefits them. It's just a question of who does it better. You can see that armor or the uh, arm that's holding the weapon on Maximizer is a full aluminum piece. Specifically designed to take hits. Wow! Oh, from a spinner like Crump. Crump now uh, Crump sitting moving? lifeless in the corner. Is Crump moving? I think Maximizer might have this. We're going to come in with the house bot and see what happens. But Crunky is not moving. Jake is already celebrating over there in the corner. What is Zach doing? Zach, can you, Jake is freaking out. The crowd is going wild. What an absolute, just decisive victory. Jake Hoffman. Jake, they are beside themselves. Oh, Zach Knight is crouched down. He is completely beside himself. He cannot believe it. What a way to win. Yo, your winner, Maximizer, Jake Hoffman, UCCR. Nice work, buddy. Wow. You don't see Crunk or any Zack Knight bot get taken out like that. No, not. Not it at was all. A perfect shot, a strategy perfectly executed. Oh! <laughs> Your 12 pound golden dumpster winner going home with $1,000, Jake Hoffman. Absolutely. If you were to put together a robot resume of clips <laughs> to show why your robot belongs in the championship in November, it would be this fight. Yes. These are two robots that are designed with big, with taking big heavy hits in mind. And look, <laughs> look at the excitement. <laughs> they are going nuts. I, I'm stunned. And that, that is the wildest we have seen the crowd all day. All day. Oh, I Oh, yeah. Cincinnati. I, you know, I want to be here. I want to be like, yes, that was an incredible fight. But I, I'm just, there's a sense of euphoria you get. Yeah, absolutely. With, eh. Jake Hoffman is living his best life today. I am so impressed with the work that they've put in to make that bot better. That was just a phenomenal showing. It absolutely was. Speaking of phenomenal showings, we are going to go over to our 30-pound champion, Kablooey Tango's builder, Lucy Dew, or should say Captain Lucy Dew. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm here with Captain Lucy Dew. I'm here with Kablooey Tango. Congratulations, the May 2023 30 pound champion. First thing I'm gonna present you with is this Send Cut Send gift card. And then, of course, uh, without further ado, I will bestow upon you this 30 pound golden dumpster made out of solid gold. Thank you. Usually Any, say here. Thank, what, what, like, oh yes, here. Um, absolutely. Thank you to Alex Kreese for my team for doing a lot of the design on this robot, for letting me drive and destroy his robot over many events. Um, and thank you for my teammates that are here today and a good chunk of Team Robot that helped uh, pit crew for me throughout the day. Can you just like really uh, quickly take us through your day? Like, what were the trials and tribulations to get here to get the dumpster? Um, so. I'm here because I'm trying to practice driving. I'm trying to be better, especially after battle bots and everything. So hopefully, I'm getting really distracted by the... Uh, it's all for you, Lucy. Um, but yeah, it's been tough. I think there's been a lot of late nights getting this robot together, getting, you know, planning, a lot of panic coordinating with my teammate, Alex. But we're here, we did it. My driving can still use work, but I'm pretty proud of us. Congratulations, you are such a worthy champion. Kablooey Tango, awesome day. Can't wait to see it in the finals. Thank you so much.
Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Lucy, and congratulations, Lucy. Something Absolutely mind-blowing about that. She's sitting there holding a golden dumpster and a thousand dollars and saying her driving could use work. Come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even the greats practice. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She did a phenomenal job today. Can you, I went to a doctor once, and they just called it practice. <laughs> it was, man, I was very worried. Yeah, absolutely. I would be a little bit. Well. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal, I guess. I, I'm so I'm told. Listen, Anyhow. she did a phenomenal job, undefeated throughout the entire day. Uh, the robot performed beautifully. It did. Her it driving was did. great. Uh, they took so many big hits and just kept on ticking in that last fight. That was incredible. There was no weak link in any bit of armor that I could tell, uh, figuratively or literally. Yeah, what more can you say? I love it, absolutely. Uh, Lucy Dew, first ever golden dumpster in the 30 pound division. No, no stranger to Golden Dumpsters. She won a few uh, mm -hmm. in the 12 pound weight class, but uh, it's really cool to see her win one in the 30 pound division. Um, so she already qualified, but uh, now I guess double qualified for the uh, world championships. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> you, you do wonder, is she gonna come back and focus on hot leaf juice? Is she gonna come back and focus on Louis? So Kanka? we just did an interview with Lucy on uh, Behind the Bots last week, and uh, the Hot Leaf Juice is not in a position to to actually be competing right now. Interesting. Yeah, and there's no real plans for it. It might happen if other things in the schedule free up. Sure, sure. Uh, but they've been focusing specifically on their three-pound bots and on their 30-pound bots. That's what the team's been concerned with right now. I. I mean, I understand it. You gotta pick and you choose sometimes. Yeah. You, you gotta allocate your resources best you can. But also, I, I love me some hot leaf juice. Everybody loves hot leaf it's juice. It's so calming and nice, has a beautiful aroma. It's uh, the bot. And it makes a good robot, too. It, it's the bot that made the 12 pound division as competitive and scary it's, as it's it true. is. It's true. It set the bar for what a competitive 12 pound robot could be. Yes. And, and pulled everyone along with it. Yeah. I mean, three golden dumpsters with that bot to the podium three times aside from that with that bot. Mm -hmm. Terrifying machine. Um, and now, taken over in the 30 pound division with a very similar design with Kablooey Tango. Alex Kreese, great designer. Very impressed. I'm very yeah. impressed. Can't wait to see them come back in the November finals. It'll be exciting. It'll be exciting. It'll, and you'll be there, right? We hope so. All right, <sighs> so for the rest of the day, we've now gotten our 12 pound Golden Dumpsters uh, winners, they, they've been chosen. Mm -hmm. 30 pound has been chosen. We still are working our way through the three pound weight class. We've got a few fights, like 10 fights left? Uh, thereabouts, yeah. Somewhere about. Now, now that we've gotten that literal but not figurative garbage out of the way. Yeah, right. We can, we can jump back into, you know. By the way, the garbage is in a golden dumpster and the garbage is actually $1,000 for each winner, but still Right, I mean, it's, it's pieces of paper. <laughs> I think it would still be littering. It would just be very unusual littering. It would be to, very expensive. To throw litter, it outside. Yes. <laughs> uh, normally, it's the fine that gets you, but not the material costs of littering. But <laughs> you know how it goes. So we're going to get back into it's going to be nonstop three pound action over and over and over again here. Uh, and of course, until we get down to the finals and we have a, 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 a brief break for repairs and whatnot. Uh, all of the robots remaining in the three pound bracket are heavy hitters. All of them are uh, consummate veterans. I, th there's nothing here short of uh, the makings of beautiful fights for the rest of the evening. I'm excited. I know Kyle's excited. Oh yeah. We're gonna go to cage three. Let the excitement build even farther. This is Aluko versus Synthesis. I think a lot of people have been looking forward to this match. These are two of the most dominant vertical spinners in the three pound division right now. Both so far undefeated today. I'm always entertained that some of the robots have exclamation points as part of their name. You know, we don't add that later. Eight, but I do seven, wonder, am I supposed to be saying, Lugo! Five, Every time? Am four, I supposed to be yelling it? Three, I think you are. Two, I think that. Oh! Whoa! Fight. No! Robots That's an exclamation fight. point right there. Folks, this is a uh, bad matchup for Aluko. Wow! That dented the lights in the top of the arena. Oh, Synthesis in a bad spot. Can Aluko take advantage of it? No! I see belts, I see bits of wheels. 
Wow, Vinicius is trying to keep his bot under control, but it is a struggle right now. The size of the spinner on synthesis is absolutely... And I, so I, I don't much know what the word is. For such a large bot, too. I mean, he is driving it so precisely. It is, it is stunning, the talent and the planning. And in the rock, paper, scissors of robot combat, uh, Aluko has unfortunately lost. Yeah, Corey Nason, phenomenal driving. He has spun down his weapon. He is waiting to see if Burt can get them unstuck. Oh, he goes tapped out! Crazy! Wow, so your winner for that match is Synthesis. They will go on to face the winner of Chainsaw Kitty versus Droopy. Yo. So Synthesis Yikes. is going to have quite a time. Yeah, I mean, neither of those are going to be a fun matchup for Synthesis, but that was a dominant performance against Aluko, who has been just murdering bots all day. That was very impressive. Yeah, you're right about the, the rock, paper, scissors, but let's not discount the fact that Corey did a wonderful job controlling that robot, there, putting that weapon exactly where it needed to go. There was absolutely no mistake in that match, in the driving, uh, in the setup. Everything was executed perfectly. Yeah, They absolutely. had room for error, but they didn't need it. No, no, just flawless execution. Corey Nason moving right along. Just a wonderful bot. Really great uh, downscaled model of the entire uh, the entire line. It's yep. so cool. It, it is truly, truly spectacular. Yep. And it works the way it's supposed to, and, and that is exactly what we saw here. Speaking of working the way it's supposed to, let's go to our 12-pound winner. Hey! Uh, All right. This is probably the loudest group that I've ever seen here at NHRL for good reason. Congratulations! Maximizer is going to the World Finals or qualifies for it now. And we're going to present you with your send, cut, save. You got some money to spend there. And we also have, this is so important, the Golden Dumpster. Take it, show it off. Take the take us through your day. How did this happen? How did we get the golden dumpster in your hand? I mean, the story starts forever ago with this team. I mean, they're everything. I mean, the team is is everything. They've, oh god, this past year has been just so life changing in so many ways. And and this is the end of our our uh, season here. And I can't think of a better way way to do it than than with them. I mean, all day has been. It's all about them. So. The emotion of that final match. We know you emote very well. Um, how how did you kind of control it to get through it to win? Uh, just deep breath in, deep breath out, keep going. Just try to hold it together a little bit. I have so much respect for Zach. He's beat me twice now, so I only lose to Zach. So I knew I was I was pretty nervous going in, but. He's got such a great robot, so much respect for him, so many years and time put into his robots. They're all fantastic. So, I, you know, huge hats off to Zach, but holding it, I don't know if I held it together. I don't know, you watch. So I don't hold know. It together. I mean, come on. Man. You're holding it together now. He just okay. texted his mom to let him know, let her know he won. So that's, he, that's priority one. You still got your priorities straight. Right. But I don't know if you noticed, besides your mom, you have a lot of fans here. This is, this is not, these are my team. This is my your team. team. Everybody. But yeah. they are also yeah. big fans of you and supporters, I should say. Yeah. What do you want to say to them? I can't thank them enough. I mean, every day they get me through. I mean, seriously, it's, it's everything to me. Um, I, my family's at home watching. Uh, their, it's Derby Day in Louisville, Kentucky right now. So they got horses on one TV and bots on the other. And I can't thank my family enough. Oh, my goodness. They're at home watching. I know they're thrilled. We'll let <laughs> you breathe. Julep. I need a mint julep. <laughs> Congratulations. We're going to send it back to the desk, but we are so excited that you're coming back here in a couple months to defend or to win, hopefully. Job's finished. Job's not finished. Job's not finished. We'll send it back to you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That is incredible. All right. We are heading right over to cage two. More three-pound action coming your way.
This is Naga versus Backlash Wave. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Backlash wave hitting harder than I think we have ever seen it in this competition today. So far, the reliability has been pretty good, too. But Naga has been bulletproof. A really excellent bot for your first tournament. Very forgiving, able to take a lot of hits. And a weapon that just will not quit. Oh, you can hear that weapon is starting to scratch on the ground. That is not a good place to be. It's hard to see on screen, but there are little outriggers that stand that drum just off the ground, as close as possible to the ground. Woo! When those outriggers get knocked off, it starts to drag. When it starts to drag, it starts to wear down the system. There's a risk of catching fire. There's a risk of your weapon just not being able to spin anymore, and that's a bad place to be Speaking this deep in. Weapon, oh, oh. Weapon's not spinning. Backlash Wave's weapon just went down. Is it able to spin back up, or has he lost it? I don't know. Kyle, it looks like the belt may still be there, but it is certainly not moving. And it does look like Naga stuck up against the wall there, getting their one unstick. Well, Oops. sort of. Uh, uh, getting the one attempt. more stick. There we go. All right. That worked out a little bit better. Oh, the weapon back up on Backlash Wave. They were just saving it. A little fake me out. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, Woo! nasty hit there. William Marchese being absolutely relentless in this matchup. Now, it does look like the right side drivetrain on yeah. Backlash Wave is having some issues. It is either not functional at all or severely struggling. So the referee is counting. That is a knockout! Your winner is Backlash Wave! Knockout. Wow, Christine Giver having a phenomenal first event. Going on a great run. Yeah, for a first event, this is an absolute, uh, you know, absolute victory. Uh, even if they didn't make it, or she didn't make it quite to the finals. Yeah, all the way to round four, going out against a look veteran. At these, look at these hits. One after another. Uh, just top, head over heels, head over heels. And you gotta, you gotta remember too, Sometimes you roof shot someone and sometimes they just do backflips. It's the same energy. Yeah. You know, it's it sometimes it spins in midair and it, that energy is in part when it hits the ground and sometimes it just hits the roof. Either way, you got to hit hard. Yeah. Yeah, that was really really impressive. Backlash Wave will go on to face Fully Defined in the next round. Scary competitor in Fully Defined. Absolutely beautifully engineered bot. Yeah, all of these uh, competitors this deep into the tournament are absolutely terrifying and, and, and super friendly and nice at the same time. Well, yeah. I, I, there's, it's hard to find someone here who isn't super friendly and nice. Speaking, Speaking you of do. super friendly and nice, we are going to go over to Allie. Who has You're talking about Waddles, right? They're Who's super friendly Waddles? and nice. All right, we got to present them with their send cut send because they did a phenomenal job today and although you're not coming home in first place you're still going home with this so we want to give that to you first congratulations Thank you so, much. so we were joking here because they've already disassembled it to take home but they did admit they're like some of this was done for us reflecting on that bit. match yeah. how you know what happened that you know didn't get secure you guys the win um, well, this really was a newer iteration of the robot. Uh, we, made, we made a lot of small changes from our uh, robot in December, and those worked really well throughout most of the day, uh, but we just certainly got stress tested in our last match. Uh, as you can see here, we got some large chunks taken out of our uh, AR500 blade uh, that we did not think could be removed that easily. Uh, the same gets send, will, gift card will definitely help with that. Yeah, we're that definitely, that will be put to good use. 
and our uh, wheel guards got torn completely off. So yeah. we learned a lot. There's a lot of things that worked really well, a lot of things that need improvement, and we're looking forward to coming back and kicking some bot. Yeah. The, well, it was great watching you. I love the penguin attire, so I'm expecting more next time. And we can't wait to see you guys back here. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. We're going to go over to cage three now. Got a, uh, another lovely three-pound match <laughs> matchup, excuse me. We've got Polywog going up against Caldera. Um, a Team eight, Ribot. Seven, uh, or Team six, WPI, I believe it five, is here. Yep. Uh, four, going three, up against Caldera. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. Caldera, driven by Glenn Boxel, who is a teammate with Brian Boxel, and also the dad of Brian Boxel. Yes, yes. But definitely a uh, seasoned and formidable competitor in his own right. Caldera, probably one of the most reliable horizontal spinners in the competition. Always dishing out great hits and coming back for more. Oh! This is classic David Jin driving. Just cautious, but relentless. Yeah, you have to remember that Polywog is viciously fast if it wants to be. This is 100% on purpose, this reservation in driving. This is precision driving. This is cautious driving. This is reserved driving. Yeah, he's just right there. Like, at the first opportunity to take an effective shot, He's in exactly the right place to take it. When you're going up against a spinner like this and your weapon is down, the way Polywogs is, you need to be on top of your opponent's weapon immediately in order to slow it down, possibly break it. The whole idea is to load. And speaking of breaking... Yeah, that's a very quiet box now. I have a feeling Polywog has done exactly what they meant to do. There is, however, a chance, Kyle, that Caldera is just saving that weapon. Oh, for like the last minute, maybe 30 seconds we of the fight? We do see that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Caldera might decide, you know, that weapon is not going to, uh, not going to win me the match if it breaks. But yeah, we'll in have fact, to see. That, would be, uh, that would be really detrimental to their score if they did end up with a broken weapon. So that is probably a good idea to save it for the last few seconds of the match, just to show that you're fully functional. The mystery here is we won't know until the end of the match. Glenn doing a really nice job of kind of dodging these pins as best he can. Oh, nice one there, but there you go. You can slip right out of it. Yep. It's like an eel. I don't know why I went to eel, but it is like an eel. Well, you, they're slippery. They're very I slippery. It. I get it. You ever try to catch an eel? It's very unpleasant. I have not, but I would imagine. Your hands are sticky difficult. for days, Kyle. Yeah, they, they are, unlike snakes, they are actually very They're uh, very slimy. slimy. Yeah. Um, I like that we've gone to kind of like a golf whisper now. <laughs> as well, I feel like we're matching down. the volume of the match. Yeah, we have, to, we have to match tone. We're now in this very technical driving match. We're in the last 10 seconds. Nobody's weapons are working. This will be a judge's decision. We're going in just a few moments. Neither, both, bot full, both bots fully mobile. Nobody really able to get massive pins there at the end. I saw a weapon twitch on Caldera, but it did not spin up at the end of the match. Oh, wow. Everybody looks a little bit stressed. Ooh. I'm hearing little bits and pieces overheard. It sounds like there were bursts of smoke from one of the weapons here. Uh, just teeny little ones, but still, you know, a sign of uh, things going awry. Yeah, very curious. Very curious as to how the judges are going to score this one. But I got to say, while Caldera's weapon was working, that was an absolute clinic by David Jin on how to drive in that situation. Yes. yes. I mean, David is, a, again, it's a type of driving I just, I cannot do. Where it's so measured and it's so precise and it's so strategic. Um, and, and it's not the only way to do it, but but he has picked a method and he has borderline perfected it. Yeah, I agree. Such an effective little bot in Polywog.
perfect design, just tight, small, low to the ground. So we will see what the judges have to say about that. See the procession back up to the pits. I think both of these robots are uh, probably going to start repairs regardless. While we wait for the uh, judge's decision to come in, we're going to check in with Allie. Allie, yeah. looks like you are pit side as usual. Yeah, I, I love it up here, so I'm going to stay up here. But I'm also here with the second place for the 12 pound division, and I got to present it to Crunk. Here you go. He is no stranger, though, to winning these. We were just talking that he went from the first event third and then second, second. So we're assuming that next time it's going to be first, right? Right. It's been an adventurous year, so I'm having fun this year, and everything's working well. So I'm going to keep trying to do it. But you did admit to me it was it was a tough loss because you had a tough face-off against JMO last time and then today. So going into June... Are you going to change your strategy a little bit? What are you going to do differently to get first place? Honestly, I'm not going to change anything. I know how I am as a builder, a driver. And sometimes you change a little bit for an in-fight, but you got to stick to yourself or you're going to get uncomfortable in the box. And I'm truly, I'm comfortable there. And we did. We shared a story. He's behind us, so you can't see him. But you did bring a friend here. You brought him back into the combatic robotics world. And I want you to tell a little bit more about that story because that's what we like to see here at NHRL. So you can't see him, but Trevor behind the camera is an old high school teammate of mine. Um, we competed together back in 2014 and 2015. Then he helped me out in 2018 while I was in college. He has been away from the sport ever since. His comment to me was when he comes back to when he finishes school, he wants to come back to the sport. So he graduated literally last weekend and now he's here. <laughs> and that's what we like to hear. Well, great event we can't wait to see you next time we know you'll be here and again if we went third second second the only place to go from here is up right i sure hope so but you know i can't predict the future so i'll try my hardest i can no i'm just kidding i wish all right we'll send it back to the desk congratulations hey Thank thanks you. very much listen for this next little moment i'm going to need some help uh from a camera operator i think so if we could have someone come over kyle i'm going to need your help as well sure we've got a little bit of a giveaway to do here oh fun and i was gonna i, I was gonna try to a crowd cheer or something along those lines to decide who's the biggest brett lover in the house oh but i i took a, a moment to look around and i noticed there's a gentleman over here with brett based headwear <laughs> <laughs> and if we could just get a camera onto this and a cheer, yeah, thank you. A little love for this probably best hat in the building. I love it. And I don't know if you saw the hats. Well, you did. You saw the hats earlier on Lindsay. So the best hat in the building is saying a lot. We have these incredible little plushies. Look Brett at this guy. plushies. Right? These are absolutely incredible. Speaking of eels earlier, these are made by uh, Eel Monkey Art. Yes. So this is going to go to the gentleman there with. Uh, Brett-based headwear. Congratulations. I don't know your name, but uh, we can find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Hop, hop the line. Come on up. Grab your grab. Here your Here you go, sir. Congratulations. Bravo. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. Do you want to want to? Second come? visit to HNRHR. Do you want to get a shot with the, with the background? Come on over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here. Stand right in the middle. Congratulations, sir. We reward excellent hats around here. Right. All right, so by the way, that last matchup, tough one, but unanimous decision for Caldera. Glenn Boxel advances. They will be facing kickstart in the next round. That's going to be absurd. Okay. That is, uh, yeah. It is going to be an absolutely absurd matchup. I'm I'm excited. Basically, every matchup we have from here on out and every permutation of matchup we could have. I am just downright giddy for what is currently loading into the box over there to our right. Oh, is that right? Uh, I haven't even... Ah, uh, yes. We have Chainsaw Kitty, who is having the best event of their career, facing off against Tommy Wong and Droopy. This is going to be entirely too much fun. Uh... 
Droopy has been just wrecking people today. Left and right. And I am very impressed with the amount of damage that Chainsaw Kitty has been able to do. Kizaya has been so aggressive mm -hmm. with her driving, uh, just relentless. But where do you hit on Droopy that doesn't hurt your own robot? Uh, there is no spot. <laughs> you can try and go dead center, and that's about the best you're going to be able to do. Even then, you have two death machines on either side of you. Yeah, it's, it's terrifying. Threading a needle through, like, <laughs> a pair of Sphinx laser eyes. I don't know. All right, the so winner the winner here. <laughs> the winner qualifies for the November World Championships. All of the stakes are out there. Holy cow. Tommy said that he wanted to come here and have fun and destroy bots. Well, it looks like he's doing both today, Kyle. But he might have fun destroy bots and qualify for the world championship, Eight, so we shall seven, see. Six, five, four, three, two. And away one. we go. Fight, robots, fight. All right, the people's bot. hero, oh, Droopy, no. going up against. I mean, a chainsaw kitty is a really um, horrible, wonderful concept, so. Whoa. Wow! Nice volley of hits there from Chainsaw Kitty. The absolutely relentless driving, not slowing or not slowing down for this matchup. Wow! The strategy is the same. Just hit him as many times as you can in a row. I love it. And it has to be the only way Chainsaw Kitty doesn't come out of this battered and bruised and in pieces is to stay on top of Droopy as much as they possibly this can. This moment is terrifying. Chainsaw Kitty trying to self right as Droopy just lumbers towards her robot. <laughs> The incredibly uh, slow serial killer that <laughs> follows you, but always catches up, Kyle. How, how do they do it? It's horrifying. <laughs> the scary part isn't that they murder you, it's that they move slower and they're still in wherever you're going before you get there. The weapon on Chainsaw Kitty is now intermittently working. It yeah. seems as though every time they hit, it starts to work. And that's a tap out. That is, oh my, all right. That is the end of Chainsaw Kitty, at least in... Oh, she oh, requested unstick. an unstick. She requested an unstick. Okay, here we go. So the unstick is happening. So Droopy is spun down to allow the unstick. All right, well, uh, looks unstuck to me. Droopy looks as unstuck as it can be. Okay, so we do have some movement. So that is the one unstick from Brett the Brick. It has resumed. Now the weapon is down on Chainsaw Kitty, but that is not slowing. Kazaya down one iota. It's a double iota day, Kyle. Oh my goodness. Oh, you can see the weapon motor just yeah, hanging just off the back. Flailing off the back. That is not what you want that to be. Ouch. That is not a blade of armor. Well, anything's a blade and of armor. Oh, that's gone now. The weapon motor has been completely removed from the bot. So if you're wondering why the weapon won't spin up, that's pretty much why. Yeah. But that does not mean you can slow down. You have to continue to be relentless. Oh, at this, this is point. a bad oh, spot a for bad Chainsaw spot. Kitty. They are stuck. Will Droopy uh, be a sportsman and help him out? Quite possibly. Oh, Droopy, look at that face. Oh, it's at, Droopy they're waiting. Droopy doesn't want to hurt them. Droopy doesn't want to cause this destruction and dismay. Droopy has, uh, he's trying to be a good friend. He just, he just hates that he's so destructive. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that that's the horror. <laughs> Droopy Knock has out. a mouth and must scream <laughs> to wake up in the morning and want to be friends and know that your only appendages are giant blades. So of congratulations death. to the team behind Chainsaw Kitty. They went out as they went in, aggressive, not backing down, taking those shots from Droopy, getting a volley of hits on their own. Very well done. That those are uh, those are happy folks. I think there's, you know, certainly a, uh, a bittersweetness there, but that was a good fight. That was a great Going fight. Going out to Droopy at this point in the competition is absolutely uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, that's a, quali that's a qualifying quarterfinal. I mean, that was really impressive work. Furthest Keizai has gone in this competition. Uh, and, you know, you're going out against a former world champion in Droopy. And this version of Droopy is so much better than the one that won the World Championship two and a half years ago. And the one that won the World Championship probably could have shown up exactly as it was <laughs> and won again. Yeah. Or I had would, a good shot at it. I would it not be surprised. It didn't need to get better, Kyle. And yet, <laughs> what did he do? 
What did he do? I love the look on Droopy's face. It just screams of, I don't want to destroy these things. I hate that I have to be here wrecking these robots, but it's what I do. It's what I do. It's literally what it, I do. It's a full, like, scorpion riding a frog across a, <laughs> uh, across a river kind of moment. Uh, what did you expect Droopy to do? He's droopy. Uh, he's droopy. He shows up. He has fun. He wrecks robots. He feels terrible about it. Right. And then goes home with golden dumpsters and thousands of dollars. He, he, he paws away the tears <laughs> using piles of money. <laughs> you know, before Kazaya walks away, let's see if we can wave down. Nope. There, nope they're gone. They're gone. I, uh, let's, no, I, I want to wave. That it's impossible sometimes. Yeah, too but distracted. I do think perhaps, uh, we could make their day a little better with one more kitty-themed. Aww. Kitty-themed Brett named Pause. I love this. This is so good. Yeah. All right, so if anybody sees Kezaya down in the pits or up in the pits, just, just let them know. We've got a present for them down here. Whatever they're doing, take a minute, pause. Yeah, take a minute, pause. And then go back to what you were doing. I love In the this. meantime, this is going to have a nice little happy seat right here if it can stand stable. We've got so many cat-themed bots here, and they do very well. They do. Yeah. They do. I think a little bonus reward for getting that far into the championship is in order. Though. Very much so. I should say the, the bracket. You know what? I, this is when Keizai is worried about her bot. Oh. I, I cannot wait to see when... When there's a plushie on the line. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. This tournament, <laughs> I mean. This, she was uh, very worried about her bra. Uh, speaking of which, let's get back into the three-pound bracket and talk about where we are right now. So you can see, furthest along, Droopy. Absolutely terrifying bot. We have so many good matches coming your way. Um, so we are going to be seeing Backlash Wave go up against Fully Defined. Very excited about that one. We're going to see Kickstart take on Kadera. Droopy will be facing off against Synthesis in that next round. The winner of that match will go into the finals. So we are six matches away. It is going to be a lot of fun. Where is your money on in the next Synthesis fight? Ooh, it's um, tough. It is tough. It is tough. Uh, I'm going to bet on synthesis. Yeah? Yeah, but that's... It, it could go either way, and it, that's why I'm excited. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a scary... I mean, best that they have been... Or that uh, Backlash Wave has been performing all day. Right. Uh, it's going to be hard to say. It's going to be hard to say. We'll find out. All right, so in the meantime, it is time for a rumble. This is what we do when we get towards the end of the day. We have repair time. Everybody gets 20 minutes to repair their bots. So at least we try yet yeah, at least 20 minutes. So we try to fill the time with chaos, destruction and calamity with rumbles. And if you're here and your bots working and you just want to hang out and watch the fights anyway, there's just no reason not to participate in these. Worst case scenario, you learn some stuff. So this is apparently a all Schenectady rumble. This is all the uh, SCRC team. All Schenectady all the time. <laughs> I love this. Drew Davis gets his entire high school team here to fight each other. This is great with these similar designs. They could very well be, um, you know, like a dance crew, a robot dance crew. I, you know, this is one of those times when the battle boats argument comes to mind. We're talking about synchronized dancing. Let's go synchronized swimming, maybe. Ooh, I like this. I love this overhead shot, by the way. It's ominous sometimes, especially when there's like 30 or 40 of them in there. <laughs> It's like watching a very unhappy ant farm. Synthesis is going to be taking on Droopy in that next round. That's going to be terrifying for Droopy. Backlash Wave is going to be facing off against Fully Defined. Kickstart's going to be facing off against Caldera, but right now, we have the entirety of the Schenectady High School Robotics Club, SCRC, duking it out in one of the big boxes. 
Oh, there you go. That's the flame suppression system from Flo. Why? I, I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. Nobody's catching fire right now, but if they did, Flo could very quickly extinguish that flame, and that's nice. That's indeed, good. indeed. <laughs> this is quite a nice little pile up over here. The yeah, mini bots I, make it really hard. They do. I mean, it's what stuns me is when you get down to the, the three pound class, you can have a one pound mini bot. And, and the way sizing works, right, the the one pound isn't that much smaller than the three pound. You get into the 30s, and, and the small mini bots are, by comparison, pretty small. But a one pound mini bot in a three pound fight is no joke either in weight or scale. That's your match. Everybody's bot is just a little bit stickier with flame suppressant material now. <laughs> Well, I will say, Kyle, we uh, uh, kindly fill uh, the house robot fire extinguishers only with CO2. Oh, good. So uh, rather than the other ones, the uh, the chemical fire extinguishers. Uh, this is just killing all the oxygen. Okay. Right, right. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so let's go check in with our buddy Luke. Luke. He's up in the pits. Luke, what are you doing up there? Hey, I'm just feeling a uh, terror up here in the pits. Uh, reporting live here uh, with William Marchese and Backlash Wave. He is on the cusp of qualifying for the November finals, and he has four minutes left here on the clock to get his robot back together. Now, uh, these are frantic moments, so we're not going to be uh, interviewing William, but we're just going to be watching over his shoulder as he gets his robot together. Now, uh, here we've got Ian McInerney. It's his opponent here with Fully Defined. Hi. And uh, he is just watching William and, uh, you know, uh, all over the shoulder and uh, leering, I would say, you know? Um, William has done great today. This is the furthest that he has ever progressed in the competition. And uh, if he wins this next fight, he will be qualifying for November. Pretty exciting stuff. We're happy for William for, quali uh, for potentially qualifying for the World Championships. This is the longest, shortest time in the entire world. These three minutes that he has left to get this bot back together. It simultaneously feels like an eternity and never enough time. Yeah, it's, it's one of those times when in your life you usually don't say, do I have time to take a sip of water? No, you don't. You don't but have time to breathe. No, no. And it's... What, what is impressive here is not only that you're under this amount of pressure for this period of time, not only that you have to uh, accomplish these tasks, uh, but you have to remember to check a dozen other things that you, you know, maybe aren't on fire literally or figuratively that particular moment. And I, I can tell you under that kind of stress, uh, not a, your, your memory is just gone sometimes, depending on the person. Some people are very good at it, but a lot of times it's just wiped and you have to act essentially on autopilot and practice. Yeah. Um, and this is where the experience of being here for previous events really, really becomes valuable. William is here at almost every single event grinding away. He knows that right now he's got to ignore Ian. He's got to ignore us. He's got to ignore Luke. He can only focus on getting this bot back together. And it appears together to me. Yep, that's the weapon locking going, going in. Okay, he's getting up off the table. He's putting on that fancy jacket. All right, well, here we go. He's ready to rock and roll. He's leaving the jacket behind. He's going. Is he going to go to the test box? Or is he just coming straight in? Ooh, looks like he might be going to the test boxes. All right, moment of truth. Close that lid. Let's see if she spins. Well, 
Pulls it out, closes the top. Latch down. Weapon works and it spins the right way. Yeah, okay. It, oh. Oh. Okay. We got confirmation, it works. Okay. All right, that's all I needed. Wow, that's all you needed, okay. How are you feeling going to this match with Ian? So, fun fact, when I debuted in March 2021 with Sea Dragon's Roar, not March, uh, November, sorry, um, Ian was the very first person to give me a loss with uh, Fully Defined. And now I, we get this rematch, but with my other bot. And what's interesting is that this blade is really good at cutting into TPU armor. So I'm hoping for a different outcome. Obviously he wants the same outcome, but uh, Ian's a really good guy. We've, we've, gone, we've become very friendly with each other uh, since then. And um, you know, I would like to see him in the grand finals, but I would rather qualify myself. <laughs> yeah, this would be your first time qualifying, right? That is, that is correct. Fantastic. This is a huge match for you. Really uh, looking forward to seeing this next one. Thank, thank you, sir. Oof, this is gonna be a fun one. And back to cage four with a uh, entertaining rumble, if I do say so myself. See the crowd, uh, a little confusion there for a moment, but mostly smiles. It's a little bit of Ohio chaos going on in here, it looks like. Just a, a smidgen. Okay, everybody's pushing their buttons. They seem to be ready-ish, maybe? All right. So everybody's now driven to the door. They're adding another bot to this uh, Cincinnati SmackDown, I guess we could call this. Cthulhu now just on top of Voodoo. This is fun. We've got multiple weight classes. We've got various levels of functionality. We've got gold and dumpster winners just having a grand old time. Folks, I'll remind you, this is many thousands of dollars sitting in the <laughs> arena, just being torn to shreds for no other reason than sure, sheer stupid joy. It looks like uh, Maximizer might be stuck in the side panel of the wall now. So they're getting a little bit of unstick help. Yeah, that weapon blade is dug all the way in. Yeah. <laughs> I like the robot can, is now a wall-mounted thwack machine. That is adorable in a weird oh, way. That's so funny. And some of these weapons are working. Some of them aren't. 
Yeah, some not so much. But in a rumble, it's just the last person standing. That's like the most durable LED panel, by the way, I've ever seen in my entire life. The weapon goes down on this bot, but that LED panel. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> I think as I fly my sleigh through the, you know, late December sky, I want that guiding my way <laughs> through the cloudy nights. It makes me think of like the back of the Millennium Falcon, like that's the, the yeah, drive. Yeah, I, I can see what you mean. Oh, and they are free there, uh, Maximizer. Ooh, nice cathonks. You can hear those hardened metal weapons going toe to toe over and over again. Oh, vicious. night rumble kind of looks like you know you got some bots with the drive working some bots with the weapons working everybody's having a fun time you you can um do quite well as an arena hazard <laughs> which is the wonderful thing you don't need to be counted out you just sit there and you hope that an opponent comes to you and more often than not they will what else is there to do yeah you're already <laughs> in that neck of the woods you already came to town I'm just really impressed that these teams have had time to A, make a bunch of signs, B, get all these bots ready for a rumble, and C, scream so loud, I don't think any of them have a voice left at this point. That's why it's so quiet around the box right now. We are now heading over into cage three. This is fully defined. This is Backlash Wave. The winner is qualified for the World Championships and moves on in this tournament. This is the furthest William Marchese has ever gone in a tournament. Backlash Wave now will qualify on a win. Uh, meanwhile, Eight, Fully Defied qualifies seven, either on a win six, or a kickstart win. Five, yeah. So it's four, three, two, interesting how one, this could work. Fight, robots fight. Listen to that weapon on Backlash Wave. It is vicious. It's been hitting harder than ever. Ooh, Ooh but now it might be done. Yeah, there are some chunks missing. Fully defined, just such a smart design. It is a vertical spinner that you don't have to deal with too much gyroscopic precession on. It is wide. It pins and traps its opponent and feeds them into that vicious, but tiny little weapon. Yeah, it is one of the most impressive control robots, and it's not a control robot. Yeah, it's that full just pan width on it that's just so impressive. You would think it would be a liability. Not in this case. They used it to perfection. Qualifying. William Marchese going further in this tournament than he ever has. Wow. Just shy. Just shy of qualifying for the World Championships. So close. We're going to go to a replay here. You can see Fully Defined just doing its thing. I mean, honestly, this entire match 
was a textbook example of what Philly Defined wants to do in any match, which is control its opponent, keep it between its arms, pin it up against the wall, and just deliver, you know, blow after blow with that small but vicious vertical spinner. So Fully Defined will go on to face the winner of Kickstart versus Caldera. William Marchese, he will uh, go on to figure out how to move even further in the next tournament. His bot had definitely a lot of wear on it by the time it got to this match. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Speaking of Caldera and Kickstart, we see them now loading in. The drama's built. Glenn Boxel, looking ready to go. Now he's boxling all right. A little bit of WPI action over here. Kickstart, captained by Cam Collins. Placed second in January 2023 as a rookie. Woo! A little friendly fire on the uh, the mini bot there. A little bop, boop, boop. So, Caldera is going to qualify no, for November no matter what. Um, either they're going to place uh, a little higher or a little lower, but either way, they're walking home with a ticket, taking them to the finals in November. Yep. Uh, this, is, this is for glory. This is for gravy. This is for a shot taking home $1,000 today. Um, yeah, and putting a golden dumpster up there on the shelf, which right. Glenn has yet to do. And, you know, every... Uh, Every person, young and old, is is dreaming of that golden dumpster sitting atop a shelf. Well, there. I mean, Brian has one. Yeah, but that's that's almost Eight, worse, right? Seven, it's just ta sitting six, there taunting. Five, Glenn, Glenn's got to get one just three, just to put on a shelf across two, the room for Brian. One, right. Five, they can scare each other down. Five, Here we go. Big hits right off the bat. Sparks flying. And this is just relentless driving from Glenn. He has got Kickstart pen pinned in the corner. Woo! Wow! And ripping away at the side of those wedges. That was a nice volley from Kickstart to knock Caldera away. All right, there's a pin going on. Minibot putting in a ton of work. Yeah, really operating exactly how most people want to see a Minibot work. That anti-horizontal plow on the front of Kickstart doing a ton of work on its own right. Now they're upside down. That is a perfect opportunity to take advantage. Woo! And they do. Oh, Ooh, yeah. That did some yeah. serious damage to Kickstart. That is a big wobble on Kickstart. Not sure if that's because the frame is bent. Not sure if that's because there's something ripped out of the bottom panel. But that is not great. Oh, wow! Wow, Glenn. Beautiful sweeping motions with that drive system. He's coming around taking big chunks out of kickstart every We're gonna single try for hits. an unstick. That weapon is down. It cannot self-right, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough, Kyle. I don't see those wheels spinning. Oh, they are spinning. All right, if they can get right side up, then there's a chance. There's a Yeah, hope. normally they can drive when they're upside down, but I do believe there seems to be a little bit of frame damage, something that's preventing those wheels from touching the floor. At that this was point. a massive hit while they were upside down. Whew. It is a durable robot that Cam Collins has built, but I don't know any robot that can handle this onslaught. Winner of this fight gonna go on to fight fully defined. This is gonna be a quick turnaround, no matter what happens. All right, by knockout, your winner is Glenn Boxel and Caldera. 
beautiful work. Nice job, Glenn. Kickstart. Knockout. Performing beautifully in this tournament, but falling just shy. Nice job, guys. Of the Caldera. All right. Well, that pulls us into the semifinals, Kyle. We're going to take a look at a replay on how we got there in this fight. You can see there were a lot of glancing blows. Still anyone's game at this point. Uh, and I, honestly, I thought that Kickstart was going to start taking it um, until these hits started happening. Once Kickstart was upside down, it was all downhill. And, uh, you know, that's just where we are. Caldera uh, walking its way, uh, made almost made it look easy towards the end, walking its way towards a semi-final fight with Fully Defined. Wow, that was a very impressive match. Glenn just coming into his own as a driver. Let's go see Luke. Luke, how Luke, you doing? how's it going over there? Hey, I am doing great, and I'm checking in here with William Marchese. He was just eliminated on the cusp of qualifying for the November finals. Now, William, I know that it's been a very long day. Take me through your day. Like, tell me about this experience. This is the furthest that you've ever gotten in this competition. Kind of like talk me through from 9 a.m. to, I guess now, 9 p.m. Oh, boy. Um, I've... Food was an option for, throughout the day for the most part. Uh, I've been very busy running both Sea Dragon's Roar and Backlash Wave. Both bots actually lost their first fights in the qualifiers, had some gremlins, but after that, it was win after win for both bots until Sea Dragon's Roar ran into Droopy. You know, no shame in losing to that. Made the full three minutes, so I will be proud of that. And uh, Backlash Wave losing to uh, Fully Defined, another Golden Dumpster winner. And you know what? If you're going to get eliminated by champions, that's the best way to do it. And um, this was a long day. I had uh, I had my friends in the pits with me, helping me out. Uh, they were a huge help, just trying to make sure uh, we swapped the parts, swapped the batteries. Throughout the one battery after uh, Backlash Wave had a fight where they just puffed up like twice as big. That was a little sketch, <laughs> but. I am so happy with how the robots work today, especially Backlash Wave. If you remember last year, I had many problems with the weapon belt breaking. The weapon is doing what it's supposed to do. It's reliable, it hits hard. I am so happy with how it's working out. Just a, a little bit more tweaks and I think we'll be getting that top four next time. That's amazing. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, the, you're performing so great here in this competition. Did you change anything on the inside? You know, is there a secret to your success in this competition? I literally, every time I come to Norwalk, something changes in the robots. The, I've never come with the same robot twice. Um, one of the things that I do, especially because I was running two bots, I had two copies of each bot, and I tried to keep the electronics as close to each other as possible. The biggest difference being the weapon motors. Uh, Backlash Way's weapon motor is much bigger, so it can spin that weapon and self right if needed. Um, and just try to get as many spares to make the actual pit time as easy as possible. Uh, preparation before the event is very, very helpful. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, tips I can give to someone is just try to prep as much as you can before you get here, because that means less work that you have to do here. I would love to hear a little bit more about the pressure that you feel with 20 minutes and the clock sitting there, you know, uh, when you come all the way to the end, they very helpfully bring you a little uh, timer clock and, uh, you know, you're just kind of watching those minutes tick down. Uh, you know, like, how did you uh, keep focused for the, through that? Um, for the most part, you can't really focus on the clock. You just give a few glances just to make sure you're on a good pace. I, uh, I freaked myself out a little bit because I decided, oh, I'm gonna swap out the legs. And then as right when you came in, you saw us having trouble getting the new leg on because it wasn't catching on the nut strips that are on the inside. So uh, I only swapped out one of the legs. That doesn't matter. That wasn't the, the issue why I lost in the first place. But it could be, it could be pressure when things aren't going the way that it's supposed to. When you don't, it's, if something breaks and you don't know what it is that's going wrong, that's where the pressure comes in. So having the preparation to try to eliminate as many unknowns as possible, I think is really key to helping you succeed in this. And, and honestly, like the 20 minutes, you just have to know your bot. Like, you know, I had my friend DJ helping me and I gave him instructions on what to do, but for some of the slightly more complicated things, I did it because it would take less time for me to 
know how to put it together than to explain it to him because it doesn't always make sense to someone who's not me, but to me, I know what it is because I designed it and I know how it works. William, you had a fantastic day. Congratulations again on your run here today. I know you're gonna get him next time. We'll see you at NHRL again soon. Back to you on the desk. Thanks, Luke, really appreciate that. We are gonna go directly into the tail of the tape here for our semifinal match in the three pound bracket. Droopy on the left side, Synthesis on the right. Ooh. Synthesis is a heavy hitter. This is a classic meta design. Currently ranked 212th with a pretty impressive record overall. It is a vertical spinner robot from Corey Nason. On the other hand, Kyle, tell me about Droopy. Droopy is a kinetic walker bot. It has two pretty close to one pound blades on either side of it that actually cause the locomotion on this bot. It hits so ridiculously hard. It doesn't want to be this destructive force of nature that it is, but it most certainly it is. It's unranked. It is 15 and three in its career. And it is a former world champion two and a half years ago. Yeah, this is as close as you get to someone coming out of retirement uh, to, you know, reclaim their throne. Oh, you can see the nerves are just uh, starting to settle Eight, in here on Tommy's seven, face. Six, there's Corey five, Nason with team four, captain Evan Arias three, behind him, two, providing support. One. Five. Whoa, Robots yes, five. that is exactly what you need to do. Just rush in there on Droopy. Don't let them get fully up to speed. But now, Synthesis is upside down. They're going to get their first unstick within the first 11 seconds of that, this fight. That is exactly what Droopy wants to do. Well, that cut Synthesis in half. Wow, yeah, Synthesis is still just all over them, but is that weapon working on Synthesis? It does I not appear to be. It's trying to twitch. It's just not spinning up. Yeah, that is not happy. The wedge, oh, that is the match, folks. Unless Droopy just decides to be overwhelmingly sportsmanlike, and which they, they do. Why, Tommy, why? Uh, listen, when someone gives you that kind of gift of another Two plus minutes of Droopy versus Synthesis. You don't say no, Kyle. I know. It's you don't question why, the Kyle. The chaos, the chaos. It just makes no sense. He had the fight. Oh, wow. I mean, Tommy knows that he's going to be going to the, the finals. This is this he, is what you described Droopy as earlier, a serial killer lumbering their way towards their victim. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe yeah. Droopy just hasn't had enough. Droopy is compelled to search out the blood of its enemies. <laughs> I, it, like, it doesn't want that, sure. It's, it's the same as getting bit by a werewolf. You know, you don't want to change. It could win with you just up on a part of your bot that you can't roll off of. Right, or but it, it, it could, it, you know, it could tear your throat you, out. <laughs> your bot with no guts left. Right, it, <laughs> I'll, I'll utterly eviscerate you. And that would bring in some peace and satisfaction, if only for the moment. Droopy's dark, man. Droopy is dark. And there we go. That is another uh, a sticky situation. Is this, is this going to be a trio of, of unsticks? No, a I think. a minute left. It does seem like Droopy is finally standing back and not keeping but this look, fight going. Look, it's certainly showing us its good side. Well, yeah. That's, that's what Tommy wants. Knockout. Bravo. Droopy, destroyer of worlds, moving on. They have defeated Synthesis. <laughs> Woo, they will be moving on to the final matchup. They will be facing off against either Caldera or Fully Defined. Well, we'll find out soon. I love that Johnny's over here just eating noodles. Yep, yep. <laughs> He's like, yep, good fight, Tommy. That, that's nice. Got to finish these noodles. A few noodles. <laughs> Check out this replay here. Right here at the beginning, we could see these massive hits just right off the bat, but that weapon went down very quickly on Synthesis, and that was the match, essentially, at that point. Everything else was just Tommy Wong and Droopy satisfying their bloodlust. Bam. All smiles over on that side of the box. Moving on to the finals yet again in their career. Just, you know, a little almost three year long Strutting break. Strutting their way in. Well, yeah. you, like I said, sometimes Droopy takes a while to get to where it wants to go. 
sometimes that's three years is a while, but they're here. Oh, grudge match going on in cage one. Wow, you can almost barely tell it's cage one at this point. He used to say cage one there on the floor. Oh, here we go. That is a very quick shot of a very quick apparent part of uh, everything was just going so fast. Norwalk. Yeah, uh, time flies by. All right, George doing George things. Neither of these weapons spinning what I would consider full blast, or what seems to be full blast. These NERC competitors really having a great day today, fielding their most powerful and largest weapon yet in the competition. NERC, for those who don't know, is the uh, Northeast Robotic Com uh, Robot Club. Um, actually, one of the older and, and better established robot club, ro combat robotics clubs uh, in the entire uh, in the entire world, but yeah. specifically uh, centered in Northeast, obviously, Northeast United States. Run a number of competitions. Uh, previously held some of the best competitions uh, in the world for smaller class robots. Uh, and some of the, you know, the old lore, the, the OG robots in these weight classes uh, are directly descended or even just um, copy and pasted from their competitors. So that's cool. And uh, also, best bucket hats in the game. Yes. Both of these bots really struggling to find their center right now, find each other. Oh, that's a wheel that's supposed to be attached to that robot. So there's no real movement coming there. It's just spinning kind of on the axis of its weapon. Right. Which could be debatably called control, depending on, on the situation. But in this case, not, not so, much. so much. No, not so much. Oh, that's a bad noise. When the two robots hit each other and you hear <laughs> motor controllers resetting themselves, singing the song of their people, you know something um, something is amiss. Yeah, that's the sound you want to hear at the beginning of a match. Yeah. While they're loading in. Not, not necessarily right now. Oof. And the house bot getting involved, smashing the bots into each other in the corner. You know, Fluffy does a great job being reserved throughout all of these fights, and sometimes, sometimes Fluffy has to get their aggression out too. That's mm -hmm. okay. And here is the countdown. This match will be ending. I, you know, we could go to the, the crowd to vote, but I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is a pretty decisive win for our friend George. Absolutely. All right, well, bravo. Thank you for uh, putting on a little show for us there in uh, proper NHRL exhibition style. Happy faces all around. I know, they were having a great time. What's not to love? All right, guys, thank you so much. So, joining Jumping us here at the desk. Yes. The team behind Chainsaw Kitty uh, you guys did a phenomenal job today. The furthest you've ever gone in this tournament. Really impressive work. So, Eel Monkey Arts has created these beautiful plushies. Wanted to reward you guys for your fantastic work with... Excuse me. <laughs> with your very own cat-themed plushie. This plushie is Paws, based after Positively Hysterical, your... Uh, sister cat bot, I guess you could say. So this is for you guys. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty well. <laughs> so, Keza, you told me today you were like really worried. I was. About today. You were saying that your bot, the weapon I... tension wasn't working right. You were like, I'm 
might win a fight. Maybe I'll maybe I'll last a little bit. I but I'm showed not. up with no robots, Bill. Um, mm. I showed up when you opened <laughs> yesterday. I stayed till you closed yesterday. Yep. I showed up when you opened today, and I got one of them working. Nice. Out of, out of three, that is the one that has fought all day long. <laughs> I've just been taking parts out of the two other finished ones to make this one keep working. Um, it actually still works, aside from the fact that Droopy completely removed my weapon motor. Yes, they should. It drives. <laughs> it actually still works. Uh, I, may I? Uh, um, and we... You're saying this robot functions more now than it did when you got here. Actually, yes. yes. Actually, yes. Uh, I'd love to get a shot, by the way, of the, the mount where the weapon motor used to be. If Just you flat can, out the, gone. If you can the look motor at this, is like a squash donut. <laughs> And we were that close to taking out Droopy. We hit the battery, but it did not explode. I, so there are, I don't know how well that's going to show. Yeah, we'll try it. There but are chunks is, missing. That is... So that is where you guys <laughs> hit batter, uh, the battery compartment on Droopy. Got through the bottom of them, hit the battery, but... But did not... I needed another millimeter it. or something. Wow! That close. Okay, so this is what Chainsaw Kitty is capable of on pretty much its worst day at the competition uh, as far as like yeah. how the bot is constructed. Um, I mean, it. I, by this morning, this one's working very well. Um, and I've gotten a lot better at driving it. Wow. <laughs> that helps too, for yeah, sure. I can actually drive it now. Amazing. <laughs> well, congratulations guys. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Enjoy the Absolutely. plushie. It's well adorable. It will go with everything else. All right, we cannot wait to see you guys back at the competition again. We will be again. back in June. All right, cool. See you there. Thank you so much guys, appreciate you. All right, so let's go to our friend Luke up in the pits. Thank you guys so much. Hey, Kyle. Uh, I'm standing by here with Corey Nason, the builder uh, of this finalist uh, robot here. And uh, yeah, it is a miniature version of Emulsifier, absolutely gorgeous scale model replica, and it is qualified for the November finals. Now, Corey, tell me about your day. Um, my day started off very discouraging. I brought a 30-pound version of this. It got knocked out in like 20 seconds. And then my uh, first match with this bot, um, I got hit and then the robot somehow turned off. Going forward, I said, it's it's gonna be a bad day. And then one after another, I just started taking names and going and going and going. Some of the, there's so many great competitors here where I'm like, everyone's top level, so. Now, Corey, thinking uh, back to, you know, your fights earlier today, is there a fight that you're particularly proud of, one that you're gonna drive home and tonight and think about, you know, uh, fondly? Absolutely, the Aluko uh, match. Um, those guys, they make beautiful robots that always hit hard and going head to head with them, it's just, it's absolutely incredible. And the fact that I was able to go against him and sad to say I knocked the last Brazilian out of the, the tournament, but my God, I had no idea how that was going to go. I thought he was going to send me into the ceiling, break my weapon, and then I would have been uh, destroyed. Now, Corey, you've been building robots for several years. This is probably your 15th or 16th robot that you fielded here at NHRL. Um, and these are typically scale model replicas of really famous, really successful robots. What uh, caused you to choose Emulsifier for this, uh, this competition? I notice a lot of people, they're, they're making the new metaware, they're making a robot as small as they can with a big weapon. I made with aluminum and a lot of heavier materials. I decided to make this out of plastic where I could make it really, really wide, like fully defined as a plastic robot. It's so wide that it corrals the robot. So I said I wanted to do something similar. So it's about 12 inches wide. So in order for you to get around my robot, you, basically you're gonna always hit the weapon. And then the weapon being as big as it is and as hard hitting as it is, I feel confident going up against anyone. Now, Corey, uh, one of my favorite facts about you is your day job. You know, you you don't work with robots in your day job. Tell us more about your uh, your what what you do for work. I like to think of this as control chaos. My day job is actually I'm a nurse. I work with uh, a lot of different uh, patients, 16 all the way up to 106. Um, hip replacements, heart, heart uh, diseases. Um, I've been doing it for about 30, 11 years now. It's, it's a very rewarding field, but it's nice to have such a diverse uh, robotics and nursing. So they're so drastically different. It's almost like I get a break from each, ho each hobby and career by doing the opposite. 
fantastic. Now, you have qualified for the November finals, which means that you get to take home one of these send cut saves here from send cut send uh, you got a little bit of cash you've got like a little barcode on the back there so uh corey yeah congratulations on a really successful day here at nhrl thank you thank you very much i'll be coming back to the next one though great back to you uh kyle and ricky <laughs> <laughs> he got there thanks luke we appreciate it i i don't know i get the positivity the confidence yeah it really, I, I don't know. I, I'm eager to see back at the next event, at the events after that, see where it goes. Absolutely. He's had uh, Evan Arias, team captain for Team Shredded, there supporting him all day and uh, encouraging him through the whole thing. I love that he has the, the Black Sheep t-shirt on. Yeah. Yet his entire team has been there supporting him and backing him up. Um, just a cool guy all the way around. And his body hits so hard. It truly does. It is... Uh, that is one of the nastiest uh, impacts that you can have in the box. And it doesn't always show as much as some of the roof shots and things, but you are slamming so hard into the walls. Yeah. And it's an intimidation factor at a certain point. I mean, yeah. you're standing next to those walls while you're driving. Uh, it's scary. It's, it's scary. It's scary. You're banging that thing up against it at 100 miles per hour in some of those cases. Like, absolutely vicious machine. Right. Incredibly strong. All right. So we're going to go into a, another three-pound qualifier here pretty soon, but let's talk about who's qualified for the World Championships. We have Caldera, Droopy, Fully Defined, and Synthesis will all be coming back in November, competing for the Golden Brett and the World Championships in the most competitive Beetleweight tournament in the world, NHRL. Man, that's going to be vicious. It truly is. Some of these we're not surprised on, right? No, no, all of these robots are the usual suspects for people who may find their way into the top four at, at any given event. So it's no surprise we're seeing it. Now, I do find myself wondering, do you think there's going to be a since the bro? You know, it's possible. I hope so. It's I very possible. I think there's room for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I, possible. Just a suggestion. Could happen. Could happen. Could happen. Um, listen, I'm very happy for Glenn Boxel at this event. Oh, yeah. Of qualifying, driving some of the best matches he's driven at this tournament. And he's been here a lot. Yeah. Um, very impressive. He could very well go home with a golden dumpster at some point. Mm -hmm. I would love to see it. Uh, he's got a great shot. He's got to go face fully defined in the next round. Either way, he's got yet another chance at uh, in November to go home with a world championship. Just an impressive guy all the way around. The Boxel family, just a scary little two-person dynasty here. Yeah, I think, uh, and it, it's weird talking to them, right? Because you hear their plans, and they just kind of have this, like, uh, oh, we might do this. It'll be fine. And then you show up, and they're horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I would need this, 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 this might happen. And then horrifying. All right, let's go Speaking check in with our buddy Luke. Are you still trying to say Luke is horrifying? No, but you Where cut me he? off, so now you're never going to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, here we are. It's testing out some horrification. Ricky, uh, Kyle, we're here at the safety box uh, with Glenn Boxel, who is testing Caldera. Now, Glenn, are you uh, seeing, are you liking what you're seeing here? Yes, I am. It's uh, all set and ready to go. Uh, it's been up just fine. I had to change the build after that last match, so I just wanted to make sure. Awesome. All right, so it's driving well, and that spin-up did sound good. It looks like uh, he's going to be ready to take on Fully Find here in just a moment. Casual confidence. That's what you were just saying about that team. Yeah, it's like you don't notice it at first, but after a while and after you know what they can do and after you see it, yeah. it starts to get unnerving in like an American psycho kind of way, <laughs> except they're also lovely people. Yeah, they are really but, good guys. <laughs> like it, it really like... That the calm, cool, collected in the same way that, like, I don't know, uh, talking to an executioner is probably very normal for them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, they're the special forces. They just show up. They do their thing. They walk away. And they're out. It's all normal. They yeah. just murder it's robots just and Tuesday. go home. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a Tuesday. So thanks <laughs> for spending your um, Saturday rather than Tuesday with us. Look all at right. these two. Father-son pair. Uh, dream team uh, I have I've heard whisperings of wandering their way down oh there's Jackson in the background Jackson the bestest boy at NHRL <laughs> <laughs> getting ready to come down to the uh, uh, lower level here where we have our fights 
You know, if you ask Brian at any given tournament which bot is the best bot on their team, he will almost always say Caldera. Yeah, I mean, it's shocking that Caldera hasn't gone deeper as often, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And today we see Glenn at the top of his game driving. Absolutely. Uh, there is a good chance we could see a golden dumpster in his future. I would love to see it, uh, but perhaps more than just a golden dumpster. This is a, a rough, rough road. I mean, it's true. It's true. You've got to get past fully defined and then. And, and let's talk for a minute, Kyle. We have Caldera versus fully defined. That isn't the best matchup uh, for either of these two robots. No, yeah. Uh, not, neither not what they're these... designed to face, for right. sure. Uh, Caldera's going to wander in. They're going to try and hit this robot, and they're just going to get stuck and end up, like, bouncing around in between these, these two outriggers on Fully Defined. Fully Defined is going to have its outriggers hit over and over again by one of the hardest-hitting robots in the field. Yeah. Um, someone's going to take a lot of damage. This will be excellent practice for going up against Droopy, though. Droopy, well known for corralling robots and causing massive horizontal damage. It's, uh, you know, I do wonder what tact Droopy is going to take today. Uh, it's... My guess is slow, lumbering death. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, Droopy it has relatively high weapon blades. It does. And both Caldera and Fully Defined are relatively low robots. So no matter who they fa who, who uh, Droopy faces, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to get them to um, connect where you want to connect, the center of mass hits. All right, so here we go with the tail of the tape. You can see Caldera. They are ranked 21 career-wise, record of 42 to 27. They've had 26 knockouts in their career. They're going up against Fully Defined. More of a control bot with a weapon, right? But they still had 18 knockouts in their career, 28 to 13, and they're ranked 11. Very impressive. And as we were saying, fully defined, small vertical spinner with a control uh, aspect to it, and Caldera as a heavy horizontal hitter. Uh, neither one of these robots built for fighting the other one, uh, but also neither one of them at a uh, you know, complete and blatant disadvantage. So yeah. we're in for a good fight. Driving skill is going to be a huge part of this match. Uh, I'm excited to find out. You look at this matchup, right? Fully Defined is a little less experienced of a robot, or it has a few fewer fights under its belt, but they have a relatively similar win-loss ratio. They do. Uh, so it, you're going to... Uh, how do I put this? It could go anyway. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Ian McInerney smiling, ready to go. Brian Boxel operating the minibot there for his dad and giving him plenty of encouragement. Both of these guys on BattleBots Eight, team, Ribot and Sport, respectively. Six. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight. And Robots away we go. Fight. Right off the bat, the best of that in, uh, that encounter going to fully defined. Fully defined trying to control this, bat, this match and corral Caldera, preventing a full spin up if they can. That vertical doing a phenomenal job just launching Caldera into the air with these hits. Caldera is going to have to get a little bit more tactical about where it's placing that weapon if they want to take advantage of this match. Kyle, we talked about those arms uh, being something for Caldera to bounce on and off. You'll notice Fully Defined has added shorter arms. Yeah. Uh, that makes less of a weak point for Fully or for uh, Caldera to hit. Oh, there's a pin from Caldera's minibot in the corner. If I were Caldera, I would be hitting. Beautiful strategy. They, and there they, they go with it. For the full 10 seconds of the pin and then went in for a hit as soon as it was over. Oh, Taking fully defined full struggling. The they rules. are not yeah, moving. That's not, Their weapon there's... is not spinning. Oh, Ooh, they've got some motion now. They're able to drive fully at them. It does seem as though Ian has full control of the bot. Caldera uh, dishing out some serious damage with fully defined jumping in and out of. Uh, 
Yeah, in and out of mobility, it seems. Yeah, there is some sort of electronics or battery or wiring problem of some sort in that robot. Something intermittently connecting, perhaps. But yeah, now they are stuck in the side. There's no movement. We're going to see a countdown soon. And we'll it see. It started now. We do have a countdown started. Let's see what they are able to get the bot working again. But if not, this will be a Caldera win. No! to the final, they will be facing off against Tommy Wong and Droopy in the final for the Golden Dumpster and $1,000. Will Glenn get his own Golden Dumpster to put on the shelf across from Brian's? 100% That was amazing. Just hard hits from both bots. It really looked at the beginning that of that like fully defined was going to win. They were coming out on top of every single encounter. Weapon to weapon hits were all going their way, but then something inside the bot, something just disconnected. Boom, look at this. Ian doing a beautiful job corralling and controlling this match at the beginning. Glenn just not able to take advantage, and then all of a sudden these hits added up. And Glenn Boxel. Your hard-hitting winner of that semifinal match, heading into the final against Droopy. They have 20 minutes to prepare their bot. Wow. 20 minutes starting from when they get back up into the pits. Right yes. now, they are still safely taking their bots out of the box and get it making their way up there. Yes, we do not want to rush them through the process of getting their robots uh, safe to handle. Absolutely not. But. Once they're up in the stairs and uh, ready to go, the time starts ticking. So he here we are with a little rumble action in cage one. Just some chaos. A little chaos to get you through the 20 minutes that we're waiting for this final three pound matchup. Now I gotta ask you, how does a bot like Caldera prepare for a bot like Droopy? Ooh, it is a good question. I mean, I assume that the boxers have done a little bit of prep to figure out weapon height on Droopy. Sure. That's going to be critical to knowing what their driving strategy needs to be. They can maybe add a bit of armor here and there, but uh, to me, I would just absolutely for certain make sure that they've got uh, everything buttoned up, every piece that they can replace with something fresh and new in the robot, ready to go, assuming they have the time to do that. Yeah. That's a big assumption. Uh, and I, I haven't seen them, I haven't watched them take Caldera apart. So it could be a robot that takes 10 minutes or it could be a robot that takes 10 hours. Uh, you don't know. Glenn seemed to do a belt swap out on it with very little stress between those two last matches. Sure, sure. But I'll bet Glenn's the kind of guy that even if he is stressed out, you would never know. Yeah, I'd buy that. <laughs> he could have just lifted a car off of a, a child to save their life, you know, using pure adrenaline. And you talk to him and he goes, yeah, yeah, uh, what, what you need? <laughs> gotcha. But no, no, I'm fine. Just, uh, you know, I had something I got to take care of. Took care of it. It's fine. That's not what he sounds like, but I want to say that's the demeanor you might see. Glenn got involved in this sport to help out his son, be on, on a team with him and share some quality time. Ended up getting a Caldera. They worked on the bot together and he's been competing with it now for many competitions. He's one of the bots we see here constantly. Today might be the first day he goes home with his very own golden dumpster. But standing in between him and $1,000 and that golden dumpster is the destroyer of worlds, Droopy. Built, designed, and operated by Thomas Wong. He's been gone for almost three years. 
I like to think of him, you know, disappearing into the wasteland for <laughs> some sort of yes. um, spiritual awakening. <laughs> A transcendent moment that guided him back here. some fun over there. I I think there's just a, a smidgen of entertainment <laughs> occurring within the building. Oh, there's Angel Vidal. Head designer for Team Shredded. And they, it looks like they had a good time. I looks like they had, some, so. they had some shenaniganry. A, a scintilla of shenaniganry. Brett looking angry for a moment. <laughs> All right, well, we are back in the pits with Luke. Luke, how are you doing up there? Hey everybody, uh, I'm here with Ian McInerney with Fully Defined. Ian, fantastic job today. Can we uh, take a look at the robots? Yeah, sure. Now, uh, what was the damage that you sustained in that last fight with Caldera? Uh, a lot of bent screws. Uh, that's kind of been the name of today. So uh, we've got we've got a lot of large gashes in the wedge, and uh, somehow they managed to bend my uh, weapon shaft. Weapon still spins freely, but uh, that's not straight anymore. So that might be something I need to fix. Um, other than that, uh, I think I have an electrical issue with maybe a bad wire. Um, I think what happened was upon when Caldera hit me or I hit something, uh, something's jostling loose. Um, I'm really pleased with how deep he got into that. Uh, no one else has been able to get that deep of a groove into these wedges. I love that that is the, uh, that's the, the whole ethos of a builder. I am so pleased that my opponent was able to test my robot like this and really tear into it. That's uh, such a great way of looking at it. Yeah. Um, well, I built this configuration with uh, Caldera in mind because they're, the, uh, they're the one that scares me for certain reasons. Uh, so I was really excited to see how it held up and I'm honestly really pleased. I think I'm gonna keep running this. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, uh, you already have a golden dumpster at home. You know, you took home first place in November. You have now qualified for the November uh, uh, qualifiers here for 2023. Uh, you know, fully defined. This is a really dominant robot. What do you think it is uh, about this design that makes it so successful? Um, I think it's a good mix of having long forks, but also having enough weapon engagement that I'm not missing hits because of my forks. So I'm able to be both stifling and obnoxious, but uh, I'm also able to get a really deep cut into another robot uh, where they are least expecting it. Congratulations also on being the uh, final vert, you know, in the competition. Uh, very brave of you to do so. <laughs> now, uh, the final is going to be two horizontals. We've got Droopy, this weird uh, walking dual horizontal, facing off against a robot that you know really well, uh, the tried and true Caldera, the one that just took you out of the competition. Now, uh, from your perspective, what does Caldera need to do to uh, win the finals against Droopy? Well, I know I was trying, I know there's an exposed piece of battery on Troopy right now. I was gonna try and go for that if I, if I won. Um, but it's a tricky thing, because one of the things you can try and do with Troopy is you can try and reduce the amount of engagement he gets on you by kind of driving into him slowly. But for Caldera, that also kills Caldera's engagement. So I think it, it might end up being a battle of reach, because uh, maneuver doesn't really do much to Troopy. I still pick Troopy. Wow. 
Yeah, it is incredible. Drew B, our 2020 uh, winner, and uh, coming back two and a half years later and absolutely killing it in the competition. Really love to see Tommy Wong back. Now, uh, as a finalist, you did win a Send Cut save here uh, from uh, Send Cut Send, and uh, enjoy this. You know, I know that you want a couple of these, and uh, yeah, just uh, put it in order, I guess. That's more than I got for November. Yeah. All right. Great work. Thank Back you, to you Luke. on the desk. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> All right. That was a phenomenal showing from them. I mean, just a cool design. Dominant robot. Really effective weapon. It and is hard to face Caldera today. Yeah. It truly is. And I, I will say, Caldera did a ton of damage there, on the robot just continued to work. And there's yeah. there's this. When you get this deep into the tournament, there is a really important concept that the best robots have built into them, which is failing gracefully and, and having this uh, level of compliance in their design so that this can get bent out of whack or that can get bent out of whack, whatever it is, and that allows you to continue fighting even if things aren't quite the way you want them to be. Yeah. Uh, that is a perfect example of that that concept in action and a perfect example of why it pays off. I mean, there's no mistake that they got to the semifinals today and it's because, as he said, they saw that all day long and they were still able to just keep hitting and keep hitting and keep winning. All right, so we have been through a journey today to get to this final that is coming up. Let's go ahead and go through the journey that these two bots have gone through today to get to this final. Caldera has been destroying a variety of bots. Uh, they have made their way past Kickstart. They have made their way um, all, like, all the way from the beginning, completely and totally unscathed, taking out Pollywog. Poly I mean, just come on. Uh, a almost, murderer's row. Yes. This is almost 160 robots overall before we even got into the brackets that have been winnowed down to the absolute best. And today, those absolute best are Caldera and Droopy. And they, there is a trail of robot bodies behind these two. Literally, you could say hundreds of robots. I think once you hit 101, it counts as hundreds, right? No. So I, I, it's, it's horrifying when you think about it that way. The match that I want to talk about that yes. happened for Droopy earlier today was they faced off against Spartan. Spartan yes. is an extremely similar design as far as how it hits and sure, where sure. it hits mm -hmm. to Caldera. Spartan was purely shredded at yes. the end of that match. Yes. Now, it's a different material base, right? It is, it is. But the entire top plate was separated from the robot. Yeah. Total destruction, total annihilation. If I had to if I had to put a prediction in the ring, I think what's going to happen here is that if Droopy does their job and is really effective the way that they want to be effective, they're going to end up taking out Caldera's weapon. Yeah. Caldera is going to keep trying the best they can, throw their weapon into Droopy, hope that it breaks one of Droopy's weapons. It probably won't happen because Droopy is like a brick house. Yeah. Uh, but that that's kind of similar to what we saw in the Spartan fight. Uh, it just Spartan also delaminated and had all these piece, pieces get torn <laughs> off and everything. But when you have a horizontal spinner and you have some vertical reach that can come down and, and cut that belt or tweak that chassis so that it can't quite um, make the clearances that it needs to clear, uh, that's the end of a horizontal spinner. And Droopy is in a pretty good place to do that kind of damage. Now let's go to the tail of the tape for these two bots that are going to be in our three-pound final. We see Glenn Boxel. Glenn is ranked 21 overall. He has uh, he's just done so well, but this is the furthest he's ever gone in this competition. Back in April of 2022, he actually did get third place. But Droopy, last time they were here was December. And they won the entire tournament, World Championship. They showed up one time before that to qualify, but then they, you know, just took home the entirety of the tournament. Yeah, I do want to point that out. That is one month, that is a one month career at NHRL. Yeah. That, now, they were also a part of the super team known as Cock. Absolutely. But still, as, as, a, as a singles competitor. Yes, that is a one month career. And in that one month career, they went literally zero to hero. Now, they did have, uh, they, we've seen Droopy before where they've had struggles with themselves, right? What defeated Droopy in the past was Droopy. Right. Tommy Wong putting on a top plate that actually cut the wire to the bot and mm -hmm. prevented them from, from competing in that particular event. 
those are the things that have taken Droopy out in the past. When I talked to Tommy yesterday, he said all of those issues have been solved. The bot comes apart, it goes back together super simply now. It's just a well-oiled machine. Right. Speaking of well-oiled machines, this is Glenn Boxel. Allie is uh, Boxel side. <laughs> I'm Boxel side. I am, and I mean, I obviously all eyes are on this clock ticking down, but my eyes are also on the coffee pot because how incredible is it to bring your own coffee pot for these moments? <laughs> and as you can tell, they are a little bit looser than we've seen them before. He's laughing at my terrible joke. So you can tell that they're obviously, they're focused, but they're relaxed, which is what we want to see going into the finals. We know this team shows a lot of emotion, so it's great to see them be pretty confident going in with nine. Are you guys done working on this? Yes. Holy cow, they are. Okay, so he repeat that for me. You're just... Waiting on the uh, motor to cool down. Uh, I came out of that last match very hot, and it needs a little rest. And how are you feeling? Again, I was making all these jokes and you guys seem really relaxed, but how are you really feeling? Uh, very nervous. <laughs> you hide it very well. Well, that time's ticking down. No more adjustments, just waiting for it to cool down? That's it, just waiting for it. Well, we, you heard it here first, guys. They are ready to go. This is so exciting. Game on. <laughs> that, is, that is what nervous Glenn Boxel looks like? Apparently. I mean... That looks like somebody who's ready to kick up his feet and read a newspaper. I think so. Slippers are in order for that man right now. <laughs> I love the pot of coffee on the table, too. Yeah, yeah just That's a, a sip, team. newspaper, <laughs> foot on an ottoman, just one, you know, cash. <laughs> just totally cash. Chill it out. What are you doing today? Eh, you know, fighting a bunch of Maybe robots. Maybe winning $1,000 in a giant robot competition yeah. in front of uh, hundreds of people and thousands of online fans. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly, but I but also, also browsing the classifieds for like a 78 Camino. <laughs> <laughs> Been in the market, thinking about it. We'll see how it goes. Right. You know, uh, standing between Glenn Boxel and that golden dumpster in a thousand dollars, of course, is death himself. Yeah, the double droopy. bladed hand of death. Oh my goodness, this is the destroyer of worlds. This is Droopy. Droopy has no wheels and all death. It is pure weapon. It is pure aggression. And this is the fastest Droopy we've ever seen. Yeah. This is the most aggressive Droopy that we have ever seen. It's the most controlled Droopy as well. Definitely the most controlled Droopy that we've ever seen. Even the chaos in Droopy this event has been planned. Right. Like, oh, nope, I have to just flail out in this corner so I can get out of that situation. That's a planned motion by Tommy Wong. His driving has gotten a million times better. Droopy has gotten a million times better. And it was already a world championship right. bot. Right. Last there time there you is saw no it. overstating the aggressive potential of this robot. And if I know Tommy, and I don't, uh, <laughs> what I think is going to happen is he's going to win here. And then suddenly we are going to show up. Uh, in November, and it'll be his first time back, and there'll be another pot of mystery for us to pour into our coffee pot. Here's Droopy, by the way. It's like ready to go. He's got clamps on. All right, so we are... Right, Allie's with him. We are with Droopy, and they're actually ready to go. They're just waiting for the time to tick down. They don't even have the clock going, so that's how confident they are right now. Oh, wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on over. I'm going to try to do this gracefully. But you just made a funny joke, so maybe you're a little bit more relaxed, too. Um, you said that the, the well, actually, just repeat what you said, because I can't remember it. Yeah, there is no timer, because they just forget. <laughs> they, just <laughs> they, just, they just forgot. So when all else fails, just swing it, right? But you, you're good to go. You're not touching anything. You're just waiting? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, what is the big challenge you think you're going to face going against Caldrea? Big horizontals are scary because they can hit all the parts that I don't want other robots to hit. You know, mainly, there's a, a motor right here. <laughs> you know, if you go through a little bit of material, there's just a big motor there. And, you know, really, there's a nice edge for horizontals to catch here. So, and my battery and my electronics are right there. So I'd prefer that they don't hit that. We won't tell them you just said that. Hopefully they're not listening. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. It, you, we know it all comes just down to those that was three minutes and, and luck of the draw, right? Well, we cannot wait. It's time sticking down. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'm also extremely excited.
I didn't expect to get this far because there are some really, really good robots here. So. Yeah, and you did it. Maybe we'll be seeing you with a golden dumpster. Stay tuned. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so mm -hmm. Tommy mentions these two weak points on the robot and yet forgets to mention what the armor is around those, which is two one-pound AR-500 steel blades. He has 100% said the best defense is a good offense here. <laughs> this is literally just... just like, oh, oh, you you don't want to hit... It's like having gun-based body armor. <laughs> yes. I, it, it's, it's the closest scary. parallel I can come up with. I The uh, number of times you have seen a weapon actually go down on Droopy, you can count on three fingers, I believe, at this mm -hmm. tournament. It doesn't happen. No, no, the it's bot's, incredibly durable. The bot is so durable. It is pure bulletproof. I am so excited to see how this goes. Don't get me wrong, Glenn Boxel having the the driving day of his life, mm -hmm. just dominating today. This is such a hard challenge. If he was going up against any random vertical spinner in this competition, I'd be like, oh, Glenn's got it today. Yeah. He's right. got it. He's on it. He is on fire. This is scary. This is a scary match for him. Uh, and you wonder with Glenn, is, is this the start um, of new Glenn? You know, yeah. is, are the rest of his fights in this uh, this season going to be at this caliber? Is right. Has he kicked it into a new gear? Has exactly. he found a new level? Is this a new paradigm of Boxel? I would love to see that, actually. I mean, we've always, of... we've always seen Caldera as a bit of a, get, a gatekeeper. You have to get through Caldera if you want to make it into the finals, if you want to make it into the, the final four. Right. The, now... When the gatekeeper, like, picks up their stuff and goes, no, no, I'm out. I'm in the fray. <laughs> you got to worry. Yeah. You got to worry a little bit. The, Dusts off their shoulders and jumps back in. You know, maybe it is the coffee pot at the table. Yeah, we just didn't properly caffeinate him. <laughs> and now we have. We've created a monster. <sighs> I'll, t I'll tell you, while we wait for that three pound, let's, let's look at the 12 pound for just a minute. A couple of highlights. We had an incredible day. Massive, uh, massive hits in almost uh, all of our final fights. Look at that. Ouch. Maximize it. Look at them. Uh, that is the most joy I've Jake. seen in a long time. Jake they are over knew the that was the hit. He knew that was the moment that that fight was over. Yeah, that, that was... So much enthusiasm from that team. Jake no, is just I, phenomenal. That's, they should bottle that and sell that <laughs> as a medication for, for glum folks because... If you could inject that, you could cure so much of the world's ills. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Again, right, caution, it's addictive. But. Let's go check in on the 30-pound championship highlight. Check this out. Bam! Wow. Talk about massive hits. I mean, these are two hard-hitting bots anyway, but they brought it out for this championship. The Kablooey Tango was just horrifyingly effective. The durability is what won the day for them. They ended this entire match with their weapon working, with their drive working. Lucy drove an incredibly strategic match. Yes. Yeah, I mean, just in this event alone, and Lucy, again, not a slouch of a driver to start with, but just today has climbed, I don't know, four or five rungs on the driver ladder. That's been a big goal of her for this season is to just get the stick time in, get the practice time in, and get better and better at driving these undercutter bots, which have their own challenges. Mm -hmm. And she's just getting better and better. But here we have either your first or second place competitor. They are coming down the stairs. After a uh, very sportsmanlike handshake. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's friends here. We're all having a good time. When Tommy comes, it's not just because we want to see his incredibly destructive death machine. It's because we all like Tommy. Right, right. He's just a genuinely cool guy. I, You know what I love about Tommy Wong is he's known for those surrender bots. Uh, yeah, waving little, wa waving little flags. And then he shows up with something just horrifying. <laughs> it, was, it was great to see. It's not even a progression because it's just... Yeah, one day he's building cardboard surrender bots for funsies, just right. to get a, get a laugh out of everybody. And then the next day he's like, oh, I built this? Yeah, by the way, I'm going to win everything. This is the this is this the thing. I don't know what it does. But I, it's a bold strategy. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's copycat bots in there. We've had Zane. We've had a bunch of bots that try to follow right, that right. same thing. It's amazing. We absolutely love having him here whenever he can make it out from the West Coast. We have we have droopy signs out in the audience now. Yeah, the uh, the audience is getting hyped for 
Drooptacular 2023. We uh, we have some, getting word here. Th this makes sense. In addition to our uh, finals fight here in just a moment, we still need to decide who comes in third. We're gonna we're gonna have that fight first. These are the two losers of our semifinal final uh, matchups. Yeah. Uh, which is fully defined in synthesis. Going head to head, which one of these is fourth, which one of these is third, comes down to this match. This is important for rankings. Uh, in, in other cases, this could be important for who gets the you know pass to which uh, event. In this case, it isn't. Uh, essentially, this is for the glory, for the practice, and for the rankings. So. Synthesis is moving up in the rankings so quickly, though. This is only their third event. Very important to point that out. Eight and five record. They're going up against the, the absolute force that is Ian McInerney and fully defined. Nine total events. They are ranked 11 overall. 29 and 13 is their overall record. Ian is a phenomenal driver, and this bot is just so smart. But it is going up against another wide boy in synthesis. So a lot of the advantages that they take when other bots do gyroscopically process, mm -hmm. proceed, they're not going to be able to do that in this particular case. So no. This is going to be a very interesting matchup for them. And their weapon is at a huge disadvantage for reach and power when they're facing off against synthesis. Yeah, it's, uh, well... Yes, I uh, frankly just just yes. Uh, and, and what Synthesis also has, depending on their configuration, is a really uh, meaty place under that weapon to tank those hits until they get lucky and get a hit of their own. Yeah. So it's it's not like there's some Achilles heel hiding behind this robot yep. that a perfect driving experience can can counter. Um, nope. You have to be perfect the whole time, and you have to be lucky, um, or or it's possible that Synthesis could still be having problems from prior fights. Uh, we're at the end of a very, very long day. Uh, these are bots that have already been through their war of attrition and are just coming back for, uh, you know, an extra couple skirmishes, so. Yeah, an extra couple of skir skirmishes just for the record. Just, yeah. just so we know who the third place bot is. This, is, this uh, has to do with their permanent record. This has to do with where their rankings are and where they sit as far as the overall seeding for uh, December, or yep. for November for the actual World Championships, which both are qualified for. Both have had a phenomenal day. I am really excited to see this matchup. And then it looks like right after that, we will be providing you with the three pound world of uh, finals. I, I am actually just getting word, Kyle, we are going straight to the finals. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, the, the third and fourth place deciding we'll match after. will happen after we are. Uh, I dig it. Yes, that was the original plan and there was some schedule changes, but uh, we are going to go straight into a droopy caldera uh, chaos. Yeah, this is going to be. I mean, nobody's coming out of this well. No, no, I. I wouldn't be surprised to see another situation with Droopy taking a major hit to a battery. Uh, it's just a question of is it going to light it on fire this time. Yeah, that's something we saw in that interview with Keziah a little bit earlier that was a huge chunk out of the battery housing that her bot was able to take. There is a much greater chance that Glenn is able to hit that area. Now, you can see Droopy preemptively running upside down, perhaps to prevent those, uh, that, those hits on those rather sensitive bits of the bot. Test spin up working perfectly there. Droopy's a little bit harder to control when he's upside down. But it uh, doesn't prevent it from hitting anywhere near as hard. Oh, look, the Droopy sign's upside down. No, no, the Droopy's running upside down. The sign could be upside down too. And there's the back side of the sign. I love it. Oh. I love it. That's wonderful. All right, this is it. This is the end. It all comes down to this. One of these two bots is going home with a golden dumpster. This is the all horizontal finals. Something you just don't see in any division. But this is a, a buy two horizontal, get one free kind of situation, <laughs> Kyle. 
Oh my goodness, this is gonna be ridiculous. Look, every, thumbs up all the way around. Everybody's ready to go. A that's, pot go. That's nervous, Glenn, by the way. You can't tell. No. Eight. His heart seven, rate his heart rate is lower six, than mine right now. He's five, just so relaxed. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. And away right. we go. Robots up fight. The Glenn is not not backing down, coming in fully aggressive, trying to get these shots on Droopy. Wow, great job picking their shot there. Droopy hit the ground and had to self-correct. Yeah, that was a absolutely surgical strike from Caldera. That's exactly what Caldera is going to need to do. Wait for Tommy Wong to make a mistake and come in there and take them out when their armor, which is their two giant blades, are not spinning in and, their direction. And oh. did you see that Caldera just baiting uh, Droopy into a hit, backing off and then striking when their guard was down? Ouch! That was a beautiful hit from Droopy onto Caldera, launching him across the box. But Caldera unscathed, coming right back into the fight. Caldera up in the air, but uh, Droopy obviously Ooh. unable to capitalize because they don't—they don't drive fast, they don't run fast, they lumber. What does wood have to do with this, Kyle? <laughs> lumber is the locomotion. Lumber is not the material. And there we go. Beautiful hit from Droopy, knocking Glenn Boxel all the way across the box. Caldera. Unscathed, still coming at them. It is amazing that both of these weapon systems are still fully functional after all of these massive well, hits. Speak of the devil, Kyle. It oh looks like Caldera's no. weapon is down. That is exactly what Droopy wanted to do. Now Droopy trying to get themselves out of this corner situation, so they're flailing about in order to get themselves out into an open area where they can get fully spun up. Now that that weapon is down, though, all the brakes are off for Caldera. They are going to try and get as close to Droopy as often as possible. Absolutely. Prevent that weapon from getting up to full speed as well as you can. Droopy spins up pretty darn fast, though. That is a tall order. Control the match. Try to jam up those weapons. Oh, that is drive trouble on Caldera. Their oh, right side no. is struggling hard. You can see a little bit of damage on that armor package, too. That is not great. The lumbering is back. Ah, oh, that was a the massive hit there. Left side wheel now. Armor being shed. Droopy is just ripped away. Just lumbering after slow, slow procession after them. Upside down, walking backwards. They don't care. Droopy's coming in for the kill in the last 36 seconds of this match. Oh, Whoa! that is a massive hit. Now Droopy is all the way across the box. They're gonna have to make their way over. The minibot is taken out. Oh, it survives, but just barely. Now they're both limping, Kyle. Droopy fully functional. Ah, aggressive hit there from Droopy. This is going this is to be going, going to the judges. I cannot believe this goes the full distance to the judges. Caldera is one durable box to hold up to this onslaught from Tommy Wong and Droopy. Absolutely incredible. But it's pretty decisive, I'd say. We just have to wait for the formality of the judges to tell ya. This crowd seems pretty sure of it themselves. <laughs> you can hear the chants and screaming of Droopy in the audience. Damn, that was all. Cool. That was good. That was good. That was good. Almost had him. Almost had him. That's what Glenn just said. Almost had him. Man, you never had me. You never had your car. <laughs> I don't know what accent that was, but. I love you, Droopy. Look at that sign. Aww. Oh, Brandon Zielinski coming in there with congratulations. Well earned. What an event. What hit after hit action. You can see Caldera stuck in there incredibly well. We were talking about um, uh, Mr. Boxel having the absolute driving night of his life. This was just a continuation of that. He went nearly the entire match with zero mistakes. Yeah. That moment right there was the closest he had, and then, then it was all over. Yeah, once that weapon went down after that massive weapon-to-weapon -weapon contact, this was Droopy's fight. Droopy had every opportunity to just slowly make their way over and take all of the damage they wanted to take. Wow.
Tommy Wong, and Droopy, Destroyer of Worlds. We will wait for the official call from our judges. Absolutely sailed through this competition. In fact, both of these competitors sailed through this competition. All right. We have a decision, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner for the three pound finals. Here it comes. They are, here it comes. Unanimous decision, Droopy is your winner. be with you Tommy may Wong. all your droops be he wanted to show up and have some fun and wreck some bots and he certainly did and now he gets to take all that home in a golden dumpster with a thousand dollars Well, we're here with Droopy. Can I get another crowd chant? Because that was pretty amazing. Yeah, the two. Because we want to present you with your Sen Cut Sen for being the champion. You've got a place in the world finals. And I talked to you before, and you know, you didn't have to do much when the clock was ticking down, but you could tell you were I was just a bit nervous. Okay, a lot nervous, actually. Uh, but now, you know, that was the most damage I've ever taken in a fight. Uh, you know, there's a reason why horizontals are very scary, is because they do things like this. And, you know, they absolutely leave massive gashes everywhere in the robot. And I was very surprised that everything was still running. You know, like another millimeter, and my weapon would have seized up. But it didn't. And you've had a great day here. So when you're going home tonight, how are you going to be feeling? Or what's one word to describe how you're feeling right now? I don't know if I can do one word. I just, I, my greatest wish right now is to curl up in a warm bed. <laughs> <laughs> that is the story of a true NHRL competitor after being here like hours and hours. But we have to present you with the golden dumpster. You're putting this on yourself when you get home. Beautiful. Bravo. You Beautiful. know, I will say Tommy struggled to describe this in one word, but I think the crowd knows what word is appropriate to respond to this. It's Droopy. Droopy! I it's still it. one word if you say it over and over again, right? This is so good. Tommy Wong going home with a golden dumpster. It will go on the shelf next to his other golden dumpster and his world championship trophy. And now he's got a chance to get a second World Championship trophy. Yeah. Whew. All right, let's go to Allie. The crowd is chanting Glenn. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Oh, oh, that was a amazing three pound final. I am stunned. I, I uh, am sitting here and my world is like, the computer's blowing up, my phone is blowing up. The love for Droopy that is coming in right now is stunning. And All the right. love for Caldera. So, Nonetheless impressive. I'm going to go ahead and grab this microphone out here and going to pass that over to you, Glenn. All right. Glenn, we couldn't hear you when Allie was interviewing you, so we're going to talk to you. Right. That was an amazing day for you. It, it has been an awesome day. Um, had good fights all the way through. Today's competition, everybody had tough fights all the way through for everyone. Yeah. And... 
Droopy is one heck of a buy. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, I think on any other day, you would have been going home with a golden dumpster today. I think Absolutely. so, too. <laughs> you drove, th this was a phenomenal driving day for you. The bot performed beautifully. It did. You were just so impressive. You qualified. That golden dumpster might not have been yours today, but you have a very good chance at a golden I, I hope to get one uh, later this year. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> so what are you planning on coming back? That's what uh, we'll like be back get. about every about every event this year. <laughs> so. That's where we expect to see you, Glenn. That's when we okay. expect to see you. Thank you so much today. Just phenomenal job. Thank you for always bringing out your best work. And thank you so much for just being a stalwart competitor right. here. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bravo, bravo. Bravo to them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we do want to thank everyone for watching. That was an absolutely incredible final. We're, uh, next event coming up in June. There will be more robots. There will be more builders. There will be more fires. Absolutely incredible action. Uh, I'm... I'm Ricky Willems. I'm here for NHRL. I'm Kyle Kroos. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. We'll see you next time. At NOR, <laughs> at NHRL.